Grandfather is a legendary imperial dragon master guarding the border. Father is a master level imperial beast master in the city. Mother is the vice president of a well-known domestic beast university. But you are low-key and don't seem like a young master from a prestigious family. You only wear unknown brands like Gucci and Prada. The transportation you choose when going out is also just a Kalinan. Even your daily meals consist of mantu with caviar. It's because you are the only male heir of the Gu family. And the Gu family naturally possesses a special dragon bloodline. This makes the family extremely cautious in nurturing you. Until you turn 16. On International Women's Day, you changed your usual behavior and rode a million dollar Herba Big Handlebar to school. Because this is the day of awakening for every young talent. I thought you would awaken an S level talent. But I never expected you to awaken an unheard of mythical level talent. But you didn't show off to the outside world. Instead choosing to keep it a secret. Even to your own father. You just made up a similar talent to fool him. After returning home, Grandfather Guan gave you a precious dragon as a gift. Then you prepared to form a contract with this extremely rare treasure dragon. Treasure dragon. Hello, my name is Gu Y. Be my partner. But the treasure dragon looked at you with caution. Seeing this, you took out a piece of sand smooth bronze, a huge dragon crystal. In the next second, the treasure dragon's eyes turned into a puppy-like look and it directly swallowed the dragon crystal in your hand. You took the opportunity to touch the treasure dragon's head. So cute. Would you like to be my beast? I will give you dragon crystals to eat every day. The treasure dragon's intelligence is not low. When it heard the conditions you offered, its eyes immediately lit up. It was about to nod and agree. But then its big eyes turned around and shook its head. Oh, I see. Since you don't want to, then forget it. I'll find another treasure dragon. After you said that, you turned and left. This action was very smooth, without any hesitation. This directly confused the treasure dragon. It didn't expect things to turn out like this. Seeing that you didn't seem to be pretending, it took more than 10 steps before the treasure dragon suddenly became anxious. The aura on that person just now made it very comfortable. Its instinct told it that there would be many benefits if it could follow this young man. Then the treasure dragon called out twice with all its strength. In its opinion, you would turn back, but something unexpected happened. You kept getting farther away. Seeing this, the treasure dragon immediately ran towards you with its short legs, and Grandfather Guan, who had been watching your actions, couldn't help but give you a thumbs up. Impressive, worthy of being someone with a quarter of my bloodline, truly outstanding. You, who were walking ahead, couldn't help but smirk. Although it's not good to trick a greedy little guy like this, this is how you train beasts. You can't be too accommodating. Otherwise, the beasts will be difficult to handle. It's just like raising a child. You have to control it properly. What's wrong? You heard the voice of the treasure dragon and resisted the urge to laugh as you turned your head to look. The treasure dragon made a childish sound. For some reason, you felt like you understood what the treasure dragon meant. It's quite magical. You mean, it's comfortable to be with me. You want to form a contract with me. The cute treasure dragon nodded. Oh, I see. But I, you wanted to say something more, but when you saw the expectant look in the treasure dragon's eyes suddenly darken, you softened, forget it, let's slowly train later, let's not go too far for now, okay, let's form a contract, treasure, the treasure dragon, who had lost and regained, heard your words and suddenly lifted its head, tilting its small head, looking at you with its big eyes, at that moment, you admitted that your heart was moved, come on, then you opened the entrance to the beast space, and a contract to form a bond appeared in front of the treasure dragon. This time, the treasure dragon didn't hesitate at all and took a step forward into it. Contract established. In this moment, you and the baby dragon have formed a connection. It's a strange feeling, as if our bloodlines are connected. I have finally become a beast tamer, and the contract with the baby dragon is a success. You couldn't help but get excited. Then, you picked up the baby dragon from the ground, and it obediently followed. After the contract, it started to like this young boy more and more, especially the scent emanating from you. It feels so comfortable, which makes the baby dragon happily snuggle into your arms. It's clear that this little guy really likes you. Guan smiled and walked out. When the baby dragon heard the old man's voice, it immediately poked its head out of your arms, showing fear in its eyes. With its high intelligence, it naturally recognized this person who brought it to this place. At the same time, it could sense that this person was quite terrifying. Beasts have an instinctual fear of the strong. When they see someone much stronger than themselves, they instinctively become afraid. Yes, thank you for the gift, Grandpa. Ha ha, let's go. I heard that your talent is perfect enhancement. 
Coincidentally, I know an old friend whose awakened talent is also this. I'll call and ask him which type of resource conversion is the most cost-effective. Although the Gu family is wealthy, perfect enhancement is a talent that consumes a lot of resources. To cultivate a beast to the dominator realm, you need a considerable amount of resources. Every bit saved counts. You nodded. Although your true talent is several levels stronger than perfect enhancement, both talents can convert resources into enhancement points. There must be something to learn from each other. The old man is also a man of action. He immediately took out a satellite phone and dialed a number. The call was quickly connected, and surprise could be heard from the other end of the line. Obviously, they didn't expect Guan to contact them. You listened as the old man showed off to the other person, eventually convincing them to send the resources in the form of a document. Soon after the call ended, the document was sent. Mechanical Rampage Armor Dragon. Project it. Mechanical Rampage Armor Dragon is the old man's fifth beast. It is a beast with the main attribute of machinery and the secondary attribute of dragon. It is also a presence with the bloodline of a dominator. Yes, the mechanical electronic sound came out, and a screen appeared that was even clearer than 4K. The mechanical rampage armor dragon and Guan were in sync, directly projecting the received document. Various data were clearly recorded on it. After understanding it, Grandpa Guan instructed the people below to prepare the necessary items. An hour later, the butler prepared a pile of energy crystals for enhancing beasts. They were worth a total of 50 million beast coins. Xiao Huai, try the effect of your talent. Grandpa Guan's tone was filled with anticipation. Having a good talent is very beneficial for future growth. Okay, under the expectant gaze of Guan and the others, you looked at these energy crystals and reached out to touch them. Detected resource, water energy crystal. Convertible to enhancement points. Total quantity, 10 tons. Convertible to 6 million enhancement points. 6 million? You were stunned by this number. If you remember correctly, the table just now said that 1 gram can be converted to 4 grams. Could it be that there's an additional bonus for a large quantity? With doubts, you tried converting 1 gram of the water energy crystal. Detected resource, water energy crystal. Convertible to 6 enhancement points. Seeing the test result, you became even more excited. Truly a mythical level talent. It's amazing. I wonder how much of a difference there is with other resources, but just this alone has a 50% difference. That's not a small gap. Others with the perfect enhancement talent would need to consume 1 billion resources to obtain the same number of enhancement points, while you only need a little over 66 million. Convert, under everyone's gaze, you naturally converted 20 tons of resources into 12 million reinforcement points, quietly lying on your panel. You looked at the baby dragon panel, and there was a plus sign behind the dragon claw. You pressed the plus sign with your mind, detecting the ability to reinforce the Dragon Claw. The Dragon Claw is at a beginner level and requires 20 reinforcement points to enhance to level 2. Do you want to reinforce it? 20 points? You hesitated. Is it really that cheap? Without thinking, you clicked on the reinforcement. The reinforcement was successful, and the Dragon Claw level increased to LV2. The baby dragon, still eating in a daze, suddenly felt a jolt in its head. A strange yet familiar memory rushed into its mind. The baby dragon's eyes showed confusion. What's going on? How did it suddenly become stronger? But soon, the baby dragon didn't want to think about such confusing things. Getting stronger is a good thing. Just accept it. After a moment, after you consumed 180 reinforcement points, you directly upgraded the dragon claw skill to level 10. Baby, the influx of memories and experiences made the baby dragon unable to focus on eating anymore. It roared twice and the baby dragon immediately showed a proud expression. With the enhancement of the skill, the baby dragon's realm also increased by two levels, directly from the second awakening to the fourth awakening. The improvement in skill level generates energy, which can drive the improvement of the realm. It seems that reinforcement is good. Although Mr. Guan and the others can only see a rough panel and cannot see the level of the baby dragon's skills, with their eyesight, they can naturally see the changes in the baby dragon. Yes, it's really good. The baby dragon's strength has increased a lot. Gu Huai nodded in agreement. That's good. But although this perfect reinforcement can enhance the baby dragon's skills to mastery, I suggest you don't upgrade it to mastery all at once. Hearing this, you also nodded. You also think so. Although your talent is infinite reinforcement, much stronger than perfect reinforcement, it allows the baby dragon to digest the experience well, to lay a solid foundation for the baby dragon. It still needs to undergo more training in actual combat. After consolidating the entry-level Dragon Claw, you can use infinite reinforcement to add points. 
This will be more helpful for the baby dragon's future. Next, you spend some time with your grandfather before leaving. Later, grandpa also hurriedly returned to the army. Because the Tenfang Sea has been restless recently, the Tenfang Sea King has disappeared, which has made the sea creatures in the Tenfang Sea restless. However, before Grandpa Guan left, he left one of his dark lineage demon dragons to protect your safety. In Guan's heart, you are the person he cares most about, even more than Gu Hang. After leaving, you drove to the club, because you feel that at this stage, the baby dragon needs some training. After all, the baby dragon is still just a baby and has no combat experience at all. The scene changed to the neighboring star club. This club can be ranked in the top three in the entire Hang City and is a local enterprise in Hang City. Of course, the most important thing is this club, where the Gu family holds 51% of the shares. You registered your information at the Beast Center and became a trainee Beast Master before arriving at the neighboring star club. Hello, here is the Nebula Club. The receptionist is a sweet girl who is about the same age as you. Especially when she smiles, the dimples at the corners of her mouth seem to suck people in. Hello, I am a newly registered beast tamer. I came here to find newbies like me and experience the feeling of rookies interacting with each other. You don't seem arrogant either. His temperament is generally mild. He also showed the newly obtained trainee beast tamer certificate to the girl. The girl glanced at your certificate and nodded subconsciously. Just as she was about to speak, she heard a somewhat familiar voice. Ruachu, you are indeed here. A young boy appeared in front of you. The boy's name is Lin Yi, a genius from Hangcheng Second Middle School. He awakened an S-level talent this year, favored by the God of Fire. He was born with a talent for Fire Attribute Beast Taming, which can comprehensively enhance Fire Attribute Beasts, not limited to strengthening during battles. After awakening this talent, Lin Ye's whole person seemed to be floating. He also obtained a Fire General with an elementary commanding bloodline, which can evolve into a Fire King an elemental beast with strong talent. This made him feel like the child of destiny. So he came here today to bully some rookies. The girl's eyebrows slightly furrowed upon hearing this voice, but due to work requirements, she still smiled and looked over. Lin Yi, why are you here? He he, I asked my classmates and found out that you are working at this club. So, I immediately came to support you. Lin Yi chuckled and when his gaze fell on you, a sense of crisis appeared in his eyes. Oh my god. Why is this guy so handsome? Well, but I'm busy right now. The girl's name is Bai Ruachu. After she finished speaking, another girl walked over. It's not just Bai Ruachu who is responsible for reception here. They all come in order. One person at a time. Hello, sir. Lin Yi didn't even look at the girl. His gaze was fixed on you. What a coincidence. I just registered as a beast tamer too. And I came here to find newbies to battle. Since you're also a newbie, why don't we have a match right away? Lin Ye's tone was slightly provocative. Let's not talk about other places. But in this generation of Hang Chang, Lin Ye is guaranteed to win. I heard that there are only two people in Hang Chung who awakened an S-level talent this time. One is from Ijong, who awakened the perfect enhancement of S-level talent. And the other is him. In Lin Ye's eyes, what a perfect enhancement is useless in battle if it can't enhance the beasts. So he now believes that he is the no. One in this generation of Hang Chang. All right, you glanced at Lin Yi and happened to be displeased with his attitude. How dare he be so arrogant in your own territory. He he, I will educate you later. But Bai Ruachu, who was standing aside, became anxious because you are handsome and polite, and she has a good impression of you. At the same time, she also knows that Lin Yi has awakened an S-level talent. If you fight with him, isn't it seeking abuse? Lin Yi, if you want to fight, go register on the side and don't cause trouble here. After Bai Ruachu finished speaking, she walked towards you and whispered in your ear, don't agree to his fight, he has awakened an S-level talent. Upon hearing this, a look of surprise appeared in your eyes. You didn't expect your luck to be so good. Besides yourself, there is actually another person in Hang City who has awakened an S-level talent. You naturally know about Lin Ye's situation. Your surprised expression on your face became somewhat strange. You remember at noon during lunch. Your aunt called to congratulate you and mentioned that their company had good luck and signed a contract with a fool who didn't even read the contract properly and directly signed a slave contract. That fool is the owner of another S-level talent. Seems to be surnamed Lin. It seems that the fool in front of you is him. Although Bai Ruachu's voice was low. Lin Yi, who has awakened an S-level talent, has better hearing than ordinary people, so he naturally heard it. Lin Yi immediately showed a proud smile. He had no idea that the young man in front of him was someone who could control his destiny. Just one word from you and Lin Ye's world would collapse. S-level talent, 
Lucky. All right. I agree to your fight. It's a good opportunity to test the strength of my baby dragon. I have already enhanced my baby dragon's dragon claw to level 10. I shouldn't lose. I promise. Bai Ruachu frowned, and her impression of you immediately dropped a lot. In Bai Ruachu's eyes, you belong to the kind of person who seeks attention in front of her without caring about the safety of your beast. Someone who doesn't cherish your beast. Worse than trash. But she is currently at work, so she still needs to maintain her attitude. Sir, are you sure you don't want to reconsider? It's fine. Let's fight with him. You have a carefree look on your face, which annoys Lin Yi who is standing aside. What is this kid pretending for? He hopes that when they fight later, you won't be able to laugh. Since you agreed, Bai Ruachu didn't say much. She is just a receptionist, nothing more. All right, the two of you, follow me. Bai Ruachu's tone became flat, and the smile on her face turned into a signature smile. You nodded slightly, and Lin Yi followed along happily. Bai Ruachu is the popular school beauty of Erzhong. Very sweet looking. He had secretly admired Bai Ruachu for a long time when he was in school. But back then, he didn't have any status in school. He was just an ordinary person. So he didn't dare to show any thoughts to Bai Ruachu, and even talking to her would make him blush. But after awakening an S-level talent, Lin Yi felt different. He felt that he was no longer just the most handsome guy in Erzhong, but the entire Hang City. He confessed to Bai Ruachu on the spot. Although he was rejected, he still didn't give up. He believed that Bai Ruachu only refused because she thought that accepting would make her look like a materialistic woman. He understood. Ruachu, please don't call me that way. What do you call that? 9527. That's my number. Bai Ruachu frowned at Lin Yi's good-looking eyebrows. And just as Lin Yi was about to continue speaking, he heard you chuckle, attracting the attention of the two. Sorry, please continue. I just happened to think of something funny. It really has nothing to do with you. You almost couldn't help but burst into laughter again. Unfortunately, only I understand the meaning of the number 9527 in this world. Neither by Ruachu nor Lin Yi believe what you said. There's no way. It's too obvious. This makes Bai Ruachu want to find a place to take a look at her own face and see if there's something wrong with it. With you interrupting like this, Lin Yi can't continue to chat up Bai Ruachu. This makes Lin Yi glare at you fiercely. And he is determined to play with you later to show you the value of his S-level status. You completely ignore Lin Yi's gaze. Honestly, you really don't take Lin Yi seriously. When you arrive at the battle platform, because both you and Lin Yi are novice trainers, the venue you arrive at is a small arena, about the size of a basketball court. Each of you chooses a side, and I will be the referee responsible for maintaining order. Try to control the intensity of your battle. If you feel it's not working, surrender immediately. Bai Ruachu reminded. These people have all undergone special training. And being a referee is actually just a manager of the battle platform. Because this referee has a mechanical beast of the mechanical system that the Nebula Club has spent a lot of money to buy. Everything is controlled by this mechanical beast of the mechanical system. Bai Ruachu only needs to coordinate on the side. Otherwise, as someone who has just become a beast tamer, how could she have the strength to be a referee? Alright, you agreed and walked towards your chosen side. The red side. Lin Yi saw your choice and didn't say much. He went directly to the blue side. After you and Lin Yi entered the arena, Bai Ruachu also arrived at the referee area and activated the electronic referee robot. This electronic referee robot is a lower level transcendent being, enough to deal with two newcomers who have just become beast tamers. Kid, how about we make a bet? If you lose, you'll cover the expenses for the other person at the Nebula Club today. Alright, I agree. There's no reason to refuse when someone offers you benefits especially since it's your own family's industry. Supporting your own family's industry is not a problem. Are both sides ready? Bai Ruachu interrupted Lin Yi's words and frowned. You raise your hand. Lin Yi didn't back down either. Please summon your own beasts within 10 seconds. When one side doesn't have a beast on the field, the other side wins. Come out. Fire General. Lin Yi was the first to summon his beast, with a proud look on his face. Fire General is a flame that is about 1 meter tall, resembling an ancient general. This flame also has stripes that resemble armor. You can imagine how majestic it will be when Fire General grows up. But for now, Fire General is still very young and doesn't have the aura of a general. You casually glanced at the information of this Fire General. Beast, Fire General attribute, Fire Bloodline, lower level commander strength, awakening third stage skill, fire control technique, intermediate skill, not bad. You instinctively nodded. This Lin Yi can indeed be proud to have Fire General. Baby Dragon. Come out. You also made a casual move. 
and a small purple dragon about 40 centimeters in size appeared. This cute appearance makes people want to hold it and squeeze it hard. A purple baby dragon? Lin Yi and Bai Ruachu were both stunned when they saw the baby dragon. Aren't baby dragons usually blue? Could this be a different colored baby dragon? This made both of them look at you. Although baby dragons are not as powerful as the fire general in terms of bloodline, they are pure dragon species with multiple growth paths and strong abilities. In the market, the price of a regular baby dragon is not lower than that of the fire general, and sometimes even higher. Not to mention Gu Huai's different colored baby dragon. Lin Yi knew that he had encountered a tough opponent, but he wasn't afraid. He was the owner of an S-level talent. He didn't believe that there was anyone in Hang City who could rival him. Lin Yi was invincible in Hang City. However, his expression turned serious when he checked the information of your beast taming. Awakening to the fourth rank, observation technique is a skill that every beast tamer must master before awakening. Even at the fourth stage of awakening, I, with my S-level talent and higher bloodline than the opponent, have the advantage. As the battle begins, by Ruachu's gaze towards you has subtly changed. This young man is so handsome, surnamed Gu, and has a unique colored baby dragon. Could he be the young master of the Gu family? Just the thought of this possibility makes Bai Ruachu tremble a little. But soon she shook her head. This teenager couldn't possibly be that young master of the Gu family. With that person's status, if they were to arrive at the neighboring star club, the store manager would definitely have them put down their hands and come over to greet this young master. You should know that the Gu family owns 51% of the shares in the neighboring star club. And the other shareholder of the neighboring star club was also a vassal belonging to the Gu family. With the surname of Gu and a baby dragon. It should be related to the Gu family in some way, but it's definitely not the Gu family's young master. This was the best explanation by Ruachu could think of. But what she didn't know was that she had ruled out the correct answer from the start. Gu Huai didn't know that just because he had summoned the precious dragon for such a short period of time, Bai Ruachu had thought of so much. But Gu Huai wouldn't care even if he knew. To Gu Huai, Bai Ruxu was nothing more than a laborer who worked in his family business. Something like the drama of a domineering president falling in love with me would never happen to Gu Huai. Instead, Gu Huai's gaze fell on Baby Dragon, who had a curious look on his face. Everything around him was new to Baby Dragon. Gu Huai didn't disturb the Baby Dragon. He also wanted to observe it. Fire General, use a flame attack. Lin Yi, who was on the other side of the room, saw this appearance and was delighted in his heart as he immediately issued a command. General Fire was obedient. It had gone through a few days of preschool education before it contracted with Lin Yi, allowing it to understand sparring. Matchmaking, too was something that was engraved in the bones of imperial beasts. In the wild, if they wanted to fight for anything, they needed to fight with strength. The fire general raised its own right hand, and a red flame appeared in its hand. Fire control art, was a skill of controlling flames. It didn't have a specific stance skill. It was through the control of the flames that it condensed into various shapes and ways of attacking the flames. This skill was extremely maneuverable, but wanting to master it was not that easy. General fire threw out the flames condensed in his hands directly. Baby Dragon, used Dragon Claw after avoiding the attack. Baby Dragon sniffed and also recovered from its curious state. What was this going to be? A fight? The Baby Dragon's eyes instantly became excited. Fighting and what not. This Baby Dragon loves it the most. Bow. Instead of following Gu Huai's instructions, the Baby Dragon directly condensed its Dragon Claws in its hands. Instantly, the claw on its right hand was covered in a layer of white light. Instead of avoiding the flames, the baby dragon excitedly grabbed towards the flames with its own claw. Bang! The flames exploded under its dragon claws, but some of the scattered sparks still landed on the baby dragon's face. Yikes! The baby dragon grimaced in pain. It's, the baby dragon, was angry. Gu Huai's face darkened, but this was good, letting the baby dragon suffer a little bit, so that he himself could better make the baby dragon obey. The relationship between himself and the baby dragon still needed to be strengthened. Then, otherwise, when facing a strong enemy, the baby dragon would still look like this. Then it would be cool. Baby dragon got angry. And the consequences were serious. The baby dragon directly spread its short legs and started running towards the fire general. Lin Yi saw that he had scored a hit, and a look of triumph appeared on his face. Fire general, continue using the flames for your attack. The fire general once again obeyed the order. Only this time the baby dragon had learned its lesson. Although its legs were short, its movements were still very flexible. Its body swayed and it directly dodged towards one side. In fact, standing from Gu Huai's perspective, he was completely able to see that even if the baby dragon didn't dodge, the flames wouldn't be able to hit the baby dragon. Although this fire general was obedient, this accuracy was really hard to praise. Just like the first flame, 
if it wasn't for Baby Dragon's own curiosity in jumping towards the flame, that flame would probably have fallen short again. It really is a rookie pecking. Gu Huai had a bit of a headache. His decision to come to the club was indeed correct. First, he would peck at each other with the rookies here to cultivate feelings and a sense of accomplishment, so that the baby dragons could fight on their own command. This was the purpose of Gu Huai coming to this club. Dragon Claw. The LV-10 ranked Dragon Claw, coupled with the strength of the awakened fourth stage, was just messing around killing in the face of this fire general. The fire general was an elemental type royal beast, and although it was immune to most physical attacks, the baby dragon's cohesive dragon claw wasn't purely a physical attack. The layer of white light attached to the claws was an energy body. Not good. General fire quick. Avoid it. Lin Yi instantly became anxious when he saw that the baby dragon easily avoided the fire general's attack and even reached the fire general's heel. In his panic, he even forgot to use his talent. Bang. The dragon's claw hit the fire general solidly, directly damaging the fire general heavily. Treasure. The baby dragon was ready to strike again with one blow, to teach this fire general a lesson. It's, baby dragon, was very vindictive, clank, but this time, the attack was blocked, and immediately afterward, an electronic tone rang out, general fire has lost his ability to fight, baby dragon wins, baby dragon looked up and saw that it was an iron lump that had blocked his attack and caused him some pain, baby dragon glared viciously at the iron pimple, sort of taking this revenge down, the baby dragon was still very sensible, it knew that with its current strength it definitely couldn't beat this iron lump, so it was prepared to wait until it was stronger and then get this back. I, I lost? Lin Ye's face went white. He hadn't expected at all that he would lose. No, it can't be. I didn't lose. I haven't used my talent yet. Lin Ye was a bit unable to accept this fact. He was the possessor of an S-ranked talent. How could he possibly lose? The sparring match was won, and Gu Huai directly walked over and lifted the baby dragon up with one hand. Baby Dragon didn't resist because the scent on Gu Huai's body was very comfortable, as well as the fact that Gu Huai would give himself something delicious to eat. After the Baby Dragon was lifted up by Gu Huai, it immediately revealed a smug look. The meaning was obvious. That is, he's great, right, begging for compliments. Gu Huai naturally couldn't do what Baby Dragon wanted, not to mention that Baby Dragon's performance just now was simply awful. Originally, with Baby Dragon's strength, he could have defeated that Fire General without any damage. But Baby Dragon had made many mistakes. If it wasn't for the fact that the opposite side of the Fire General was too wasteful, it really wouldn't have been easy for the Baby Dragon to do so. Of course the main point here was that the Baby Dragon didn't listen. The first lesson of the Imperial Beast Master is to cultivate a good relationship with the Imperial Beasts. To be able to make them fight according to your instructions and train according to your requirements. Then, otherwise, if the Imperial Beasts don't listen to you, there's no way to carry out many operations. As for what method to use? This was entirely based on the character of the imperial beast and varied from beast to beast. Gu Huai had let the baby dragon out in the beginning, without forcing the baby dragon to order it, and actually existed to observe the baby dragon's character. And by the way, he was also prepared to take advantage of the situation. Suffice it to say, everything was within Gu Huai's expectations. As for whether or not he would lose to general fire, to be honest, this really wasn't within the scope of Gu Huai's consideration. If he lost, he lost it was no big deal. It's not like he can't afford to lose a little bit of money. The topic has gone too far. Gu Huai's face sank as he looked at Baby Dragon, who was begging for compliments and praise. For some reason, the originally giddy Baby Dragon tightened slightly when she saw Gu Huai's expression. Do you think you did a good job? The Baby Dragon sniffed and raised an eyebrow as it recalled its performance just now. There didn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Did there? By Ruachu and Lin Yi, who are on the side. Saw that Gu Huai was talking to the baby dragon with a stern face, and both of them coincidentally looked over with a curious look in their eyes. Even Lin Yi had quieted down and watched quietly. Why did you pick up that flame in the beginning? Treasure? If you didn't catch it, just with that fire general's accuracy, it wouldn't have been able to hit you. Pa! Once baby dragon thought about it, he immediately revealed a surprised look. It seems to be oh so. There's also that flame the second time. What are you hiding from? The baby dragon didn't pronounce it this time. It just cocked its head and looked at Gu Huai, somewhat puzzled. The enemy attacked. Why didn't you dodge? The second time it attacks you just charge straight through. There's no way it's going to hit you. The time you wasted dodging that flame, if that fire general had been a little smarter, it could have attacked you again. It was only because that fire general was too much of a waste that you were able to take it down in one fell swoop. Gu Huai said seriously. This kind of thing had to be made clear to Baby Dragon. It was a very serious matter. This was fine for a club sparring match. At most, 
one would be injured and lose the ability to fight. But what if you make such a big mistake in the wild? That would be life-threatening. Lin Yi, who was at the side, wanted to retort. Where was his fire general a waste? But on second thought, it seemed that Gu Huai was right. This was the first time he had ever engaged in an imperial beast battle, and he was too excited to care about these areas. This caused Lin Yi's face to blush slightly. It seemed that he had drifted too much. No, later on, he would have to practice the accuracy of the fire general's flame throwing, and after he had practiced this well, he would come back to trouble Gu Huai. At that time, he would definitely get the scene back. He was confident about this. After all, he was the possessor of an S-rank talent. On the other side, after Baby Dragon heard Gu Huai's analysis, the smugness on his face had long since disappeared, and he grudgingly lowered his head with a lost look on his face. Seeing this, Gu Huai felt that this was almost enough for the first time, and immediately said, but this is your first time fighting. It's already great to be able to do this. Baby Dragon sniffed and snapped his head up and said, Bao, really? Of course it's true. Am I still going to lie to you? Gu Huai had a straight face, which caused Baby Dragon to instantly reveal a happy smile. But well, when Baby Dragon heard that there was still a but, he was instantly shocked, and his eyes gleamed as he looked at Gu Huai. Your fighting ability is still too weak. It needs to be strengthened properly. Just now. If you had charged straight forward when that fire general threw fire over, just with that fire general's strength, you could have completely killed the other party in 10 seconds. Baby, baby dragon nodded in deep thought. That fire general was indeed too much of a waste. Lin Yi at the side couldn't help but twitch the corners of his mouth. He was giving a baby dragon contempt? Darn it. This revenge. I, Lin Yi, will definitely get it back. I lost, but next time I definitely won't lose to you again. And can you tell me your name? Lin Ye's gaze went to Gu Huai. Gu Huai swept Lin Ye's eyes and casually said, Gu Huai, Gu Huai, why does that name sound somewhat familiar? Lin Ye frowned, he always felt as if he had heard it somewhere, but he couldn't recall it for a moment. Gu Huai didn't care about Lin Ye. His current focus was going to be cultivating Baby Dragon and fighting with him. Baby Dragon, do you want to defeat your opponent more easily? Bao. Alright then, let's start the subsequent cultivation. If the cultivation is good, there are rewards. Baby Dragon's eyes instantly lit up. Bao, what reward? It's the one I gave you earlier. Bao, awesome. Baby Dragon danced around happily. At the side, Bai Ruachu saw the interaction between Gu Huai and Baby Dragon and revealed a smile. It seemed that she had misunderstood Gu Huai. This teenager was more interesting than she thought. Just as Bai Ruachu was thinking about these things, Gu Huai suddenly called out. 9527. Hmm, continue to keep an eye out for me. But this time, you can put your opponents in the awakening 5 to 7 ranked opponents. Gu Huai felt that it was still too meaningless to fight against newcomers. All of them being like the fire general really only increased the baby dragon's sense of accomplishment, and it didn't have the slightest effect on honing its combat skills. Good, but there will be fewer opponents at this stage. Also, Gu Huai also understood after a brief thought. Right now, the newcomers of this session had just become imperial beast masters and most of the contracted imperial beasts were also awakened first and awakened second stages, the ones who had become beast masters in the previous term, who continued on this path and would come to the club to work out, were basically the ones with good talent. These people, at worst, had trained their imperial beasts to the awakening 10th rank. However, our neighboring star club has an accompanying service, which has awakened 5th order to 7th order imperial beasts, it's just that the price will be relatively more expensive. It's fine, he'll pay for it anyway. Gu Huai pointed to Lin Yi on the side, and it was then that Bai Ruachu and Lin Yi remembered that there was a bet between the two of them before the battle started. The corners of Lin Yi's mouth twitched slightly. What the hell is this? Why did he just mouth off about this? If Bai Ruachu wasn't here, Lin Yi might still find a reason to run away and renege on the debt. But with Bai Ruachu here, he couldn't afford to lose face in front of his goddess. Could he? That's right. I'll pay for it all. Seeing that Gu Huai and Bai Ruachu both turned their gazes to him. Lin Yi could only forcefully hold back the pain in his heart and said, the neighboring star club's fees were very expensive, especially the kind that looked for training. He had only come over here in the beginning to spend a little bit of money to act tough and also train his fire general in the meantime. It would be best if he could just whore himself out for nothing by way of a bet. But now it was a direct loss of money. A big loss. Although his family was a well-off family, he had shed blood in order to cultivate this fire general. Now this was going to throw a few thousand dollars in for nothing. It hurt to think about it that's fine, then how many stages of awakening are you going to challenge first? Let's start with the awakening fifth rank. Bai Ruachu nodded her head, and immediately afterward, she said to the Mai at her mouth, Sister Mei, 
There is a customer service over here that needs to have a training sparring match, requesting an awakened fifth order imperial beast. You help me bring one over. Good. In less than two minutes, there was a middle-aged woman in neighboring star club clothing walking in, holding a device in her hand. This device Gu Huai recognized. It was the temporary imperial beast space. It was something developed by the grand group and was of great use. It was a way to fit a masterless and defenseless imperial beast inside. Rua Chu, here you go. Thank you, Sister Mei. By Rua Chu took the temporary imperial beast space, and then she turned her gaze to Gu Huai. Mr. Gu, let's start then. Good. Gu Huai answered and then turned his gaze to Ling Yi on the side, and Bai Ruachu instantly understood Gu Huai's meaning. Bai Ruachu immediately looked at Lin Yi with an apologetic face. Lin Yi, this place belongs to Mr. Gu now. You, I'll go out. Lin Yi forced a smile, but in fact, his heart was silently crying. He was too sad. Woohoo. Gu Huai spent his money to be alone with his goddess in this sparring ring. Woohoo. This thought made the sadness so great didn't it? But what could he do about it? Who told him to lose the match, and it was the goddess job again. Lin Yi sadly left, but before he left, he directly said in order to show his goddess a very charming scene of himself. Rua Chu, charge me 10,000 first, just deduct the expenses here for later. Good, by Rua Chu sniffed and didn't talk nonsense, this kind of thing where someone recharged. She had a commission, although there was nothing in her heart for Lin Yi, she was really short of money, whether it was the cultivation of the imperial beasts or her home, she was lacking. Actually, someone like Bai Ruachu was extremely sensible. She knew her strengths and weaknesses. Her talent was AB rank talent. A good talent. The money from her family wanted to be paid back. And she definitely couldn't pay it back simply by working part time like this. She had a clear plan for herself. The only way to pay back the money was to work hard on her own to earn money and train her imperial beasts so that she could become an excellent imperial beast master. She had arrived at this place two years early. Also to cultivate a sense of fighting as well as to make some contacts to pave the way for the future. In these two years, there was something to be gained. The president of the neighboring star club was very optimistic about her and was prepared to invest in her. Lin Yi finished charging and left. In the entire sparring room, only Gu Huai and Bai Ruachu were left. Come on, Gu Huai didn't want to waste time either. Good, Bai Ruachu nodded her head and directly summoned the imperial beasts from the temporary imperial beast space. Come out, Wind Wolf. This Wind Wolf is a medium transcendent imperial beast and it will have just one skill. Wind Blade. This skill is a LV7 level skill. How do you need me to accompany you in battle? This kind of accompaniment wasn't cheap. So naturally, they wouldn't just go up and end up in a direct sparring match. The sparring was something that needed to be tailored to Gu Huai's requirements, which was very sweet. Imperial beasts like the Wind Wolf were also trained by specialized Imperial Beast trainers so that they could follow the orders of anyone holding a temporary Imperial Beast space. It was usually only clubs like this that would purchase these types of temporary imperial beasts in large quantities. After all, if they were really to go looking for imperial beast trainers at this stage to act as a chaperone, not to mention whether they could find them or not, the cost of this would be raised quite a bit. Cooperate with me first, and stimulate baby dragon's desire to fight. Good. Someone was paying for it. And the feeling of being able to whore yourself out for nothing was just great. Gu Huai ordered by Ruachu inside for three bells before the baby dragon collapsed to the floor exhausted from excitement. The effect is good. I'll order you again next time I come. Gu Huai's face wore a satisfied smile. These three hours or so were really important to Gu Huai and Baby Dragon. The cooperation between Gu Huai and Baby Dragon had even been directly upgraded by several notches. The current Baby Dragon could not only follow Gu Huai's commands to fight, it could also anticipate Gu Huai's thoughts to fight, and its combat awareness had improved quite quickly. Suffice it to say, if the current Baby Dragon fought against the previous Baby Dragon, it was estimated that it could be killed in a second with just one move. This was still, with the same realm. By the way, the current baby dragon had gotten a boost in strength. The baby dragon's realm had been raised from awakened 4th rank to awakened 5th rank. The LV10 ranked dragon claw was also digested in the constant battles. And when he was already able to bring out the power of the rank 10 dragon claw at the back, Gu Huai strengthened the dragon claw once again, strengthening it to LV11, which was a big breakthrough from introductory to proficient. The harvest was quite fruitful. Good. But I might not be here as a receptionist next time. So you can add my penguin if you need it. Bai Ruachu was very proactive. Compared to Gu Huai's operation in these three hours. Bai Ruachu could only use the word shock to describe it. Yes. It was shocking. In these two years. She had received not a thousand newcomers. But a hundred. Among them. There were many super geniuses. But these super geniuses were nothing compared to Gu Huai's progress in these three hours. If this Gu Huai could keep up this progress. 
she could guarantee that in the future, this Gu Huai would definitely be ranked as a master beast master and become one of the most powerful. In the face of such a talented teenager, Bai Ruachu naturally couldn't let it go for nothing, not to mention whether or not to develop in the future. Adding a friend is always no loss. She was too much more mature than the average girl. Okay, Gu Huai had guessed pretty much what Bai Ruachu had in mind, but Gu Huai really didn't mind. Later on, Gu Huai would also talk to the owner of this club, so that she could properly cultivate Bai Ruachu, and maybe she could become a member of the Gu family in the future. Don't get me wrong, it's the kind of Gu family that becomes Gu Huai's vassal. The Gu family didn't know what the reason was. There weren't many people in each generation, especially the men. There was only one in each generation. In his own father's generation, his father didn't have any brothers, just a sister, Gu Huai's sister-in-law. With such a scarce bloodline, the Gu family naturally had to find a way to make their family stronger and bigger. Thus, the Gu family's ancestors came up with a way to cultivate commoner geniuses, treating them genuinely and letting them work for the Gu family. For so many generations, the Gu family had developed too many civilian geniuses, and after these geniuses grew up, they all formed their own clans as well. However, all of these clans centered around the Gu family as their core, holding together and becoming an extremely large force. By now, no one knew just how terrifying the Gu family's strength was. Some people jokingly said that if the Gu family wanted to, they could just sit in the position of leader of the Dragon Kingdom. That is, the Gu family is not so ambitious. They have been upholding the concept is, people do not offend me I do not offend. If people offend me I will offend. It is precisely because of the Gu family's philosophy that Gu Huai will give Bai Ruachu a chance. Gu Huai is not afraid of Bai Ruachu's ambition. As long as Bai Ruachu can seize the opportunity, Gu Huai does not mind. But the premise is that Bai Ruachu has that ability. After adding penguins to each other's penguins, Gu Huai went straight home. Although there were professionals and equipment on the club's side that specialized in recovery for imperial beasts, these were still slightly insufficient compared to those at home. After Gu Huai left, Bai Ruachu picked up her cell phone again and dialed the number with Big Boss on it. She actually had another task in the club, which was to see if there was any talent worth developing, and if there was, she could contact them. The phone soon connected, and a slightly charming and lazy voice came from there. Xiao Bai, it just so happens that I was going to call you as well. I'm also going over to the club there in a while, so you don't have to pick up any customers for now. Sister Hua, I'm calling you mainly to tell you that just now I saw a super genius. Bai Ruachu was a little helpless about Bai's name, but she had to accept it in the face of her precious person. Super genius? A surprised voice came from the other end of the phone. To be able to make a girl like you say super genius, it's really not too easy. Tell me, if it's good, I can give him a chance, a chance to join the Gu family. Envy also appeared in Bai Ruachu's eyes when she heard the words a chance to join the Gu family. This was a place she had dreamed of going in. If she could become a member of the Gu family just like Sister Hua, then her father, her family, and even her would be changed forever. At that time, not to mention paying back the debt, that party might take the initiative to cancel the debt, or even return all the compensation they received before. Kidding aside, this was the Gu family. I don't know how many people, who had scattered their family's wealth, wanted to join the Gu family. For the vast majority of people, joining the Gu family was the equivalent of squeezing through the doors of high society. And if it's someone like Sister Hua, who can open up new territories for the Gu family, then it's even more of an upper class. Bai Ruachu was fortunate enough to follow Sister Hua to a high class banquet, where Sister Hua was resplendent, and countless big shots in her eyes were filled with humble smiles when they arrived in front of Sister Hua. And before Sister Hua became a member of the Gu family, she was just an ordinary family. It's like this, this person he owns a purple baby dragon. His talent I don't know because he didn't show it during the sparring match. But, Bai Ruachu told Gu Huai's story from beginning to end. Of course it was processed words, picking the highlights. The originally lethargic sister Hua's tone also carried a color of surprise after hearing Bai Ruachu's description. In that case, this is indeed a super genius. Do you have his contact information? Yes. That's fine. Then make a call to him now and tell him that there is a chance to give it to him. Good. Bai Ruachu nodded seriously. Because in her opinion, this was indeed a chance for Gu Huai. A heavenly chance. With the talent that Gu Huai had displayed, if he could really join the Gu family, he might have a chance to ask for a legend. Just as Sister Hua was about to hang up the phone, Sister Hua casually said, By the way, what's this man's name? I'll have someone check his information before informing. Lest it's someone from one of the remaining clans. His name is Gu Huai. Put, what did you say his name was? Sister Hua on the other end of the phone was sitting inside a high-class car, sipping her water. When she heard this name, she directly didn't hold back her spray. She then stood up from her chair, completely forgetting that she was in the car, 
and directly crashed into it, making a thump sound, but Sister Hua didn't care about that. Bai Ruachu was puzzled. Why did Sister Hua react so strongly when she heard this name? However, she still said truthfully, his name is Gu Wai. Sister Hua directly sucked in a breath, forcing her heart to calm down. Is it Gu as in Gu family? Huai as in Huai river? Yes, Bai Ruachu wasn't stupid. And at this time she also noticed the abnormality. That or else with Sister Hua's status, how could she react so strongly to a name? The person on the other end of the phone was silent for a while before slowly saying, there's no need to notify. In addition, if this person comes to the club again, he must contact me first, understand? And Gu Xiao, did Gu why did he say anything before he left? Bai Ruachu could feel that Sister Hua's tone was tense, kind of like a student who was about to undergo an examination. Bai Ruachu didn't know why she had such an illusion. Bai Ruachu thought back very carefully and repeated what Gu Huai said. Wait, I'll be at the club soon. Tell me everything that happened when he arrived at the club. Tell it all. In detail. Good. Bai Ruachu had an answer in her mind about Gu Huai's identity. But the moment she thought about this answer she felt ridiculous and somewhat unable to accept it. How could that polite and handsome teenager be the heaven of Hangzhou? Lin Yi returned home. The more he thought about it, the more depressed he became. How could he lose to such a nameless boy in front of his goddess? It was simply a strange shame. Wait, the name Gu Huai seems a bit familiar. Suddenly, Lin Yi had a flash of insight. It's him. Lin Yi hurriedly flipped open his cell phone and found the announcement sent out by the Hangzhou Education Bureau. Congratulations to students Gu Huai and Lin Yi, who have awakened their s rank talents. It's really him. This kid. Damn it. Lin Yi was instantly enraged, feeling that this kid was the other person with an s rank talent. First middle school. I'm at loggerheads with you. I'll definitely get the scene back next time. This time it's entirely due to my personal mistakes. Gu Huai didn't know that there were several people thinking about him. He left the club and headed straight for home. Back home. Gu Huai had the family specialized imperial healing imperial beast master help restore baby dragon's condition. And prepared a specific lunch for baby dragon. Who ate happily. This set of special dinners. If it was placed outside. It would never be able to go down without a 5000 imperial beast coins. Uncle Yun. Call Lin Hua for me. Uncle Yun was the Gu family's head butler, responsible for managing matters up and down the Gu family. Uncle Yun had grown up in the Gu family since he was a child, and it was Gu Huai's great-grandfather who had brought him into the Gu family, which had treated him very well after he arrived. He then became the Gu family's head butler, and had been for many years. Uncle Yun had never taken a wife in his life, and had treated Gu Huai exceptionally well, almost devoting his heart to the Gu family. Good. Uncle Yun didn't ask why and directly dialed Lin Hua's number. Lin Hua was also the owner of neighboring Star Club. Sister Hua as Bai Ruachu called her. The call was connected in almost seconds. On the other side, as soon as Lin Hua arrived at the club, she immediately found Bai Ruachu. When Yin Bo called, she was inquiring about something related to Bai Ruachu. As soon as Lin Hua saw Yun Bo's call, she immediately told Bai Ruachu to be quiet, and her face was instantly covered in a bright smile. Brother Yun, what are the instructions? Ah, it's young master looking for me? Good good good. A look of trepidation appeared on Lin Hua's face all of a sudden. And this expression and look made by Ruachu, who was on the side, have a deeper understanding of the word power. Even a character like Sister Hua was like this. Young master. Sister Hua's tone became extremely respectful. Not at all the usual strong woman look. This might be unimaginable to others. In that for these people who served the Gu family, the Gu family was equivalent to a country. And Gu Huai was the crown prince of this country. The only crown prince who would surely become an emperor in the future. This kind of existence could almost be said to be able to determine their future with a single word. So to speak. Don't look at the fact that she now possessed a lot. And was a master beast master herself. But as long as Gu Huai said one word. She could lose everything. Everything. Fine. Fine. I'll train Ruachu properly. Well. Don't worry. The phone was connected for such a short while and then hung up. Without saying a few words at all. But when the phone hung up. Lin Hua was as relieved as ever. Afterward, Lin Hua's eyes were filled with envy when she looked at Bai Ruachu. Ruachu, you're taking off. This phone call was just a casual call for Gu Huai, and it was also considered a chance for Bai Ruachu. By the way, this was also considered a class that Gu Huai had cultivated, only to have someone else help him cultivate it. The generals that the Gu family has developed are basically developed by Gu Wen and Gu Hang. Although these people will listen to Gu Huai's instructions, but in the end is not their people. In the affinity will have a certain gap, but if they were his own people, it would be a different story. Only Gu Huai's vision is very high. Ordinary people cannot enter Gu Huai's eyes. Even if it was by Rushu, Gu Huai was only giving her a chance. 
If Bai Ruachu can seize this opportunity and soar, Gu Huai will really let Bai Ruachu become a general of the Gu family. Otherwise, Bai Ruachu would only be considered Lin Hua's person. Summer nights are still relatively cool. After dinner, Gu Huai took Baby Dragon for a walk in the yard to cultivate feelings. Gu Hong was also here. Pops, tomorrow I plan to go out and practice for a while. Going out so soon? Gu Han wasn't surprised at all that Gu Huai was going out to practice. After all, he was the same way back then. Only back then. He only went out a week after obtaining the Imperial Beast. It's almost done. The baby dragon has made a lot of progress. It's now awakened fifth stage. As well as its dragon claw has reached LV11 level. So fast? Gu Hang's gaze looked towards the baby dragon in Gu Huai's arms. His eyes filled with surprise. If he remembered correctly, this baby dragon was only at awakening level 2 when it first arrived today? But when he thought of Gu Huai's talent, he couldn't help but feel emotion. It seems that this perfect reinforcement coupled with our Gu family has really produced a qualitative change. Perfect reinforcement was originally a very strong s rank talent, and as long as one had the resources and conditions, it was a top-tier talent. Especially if this talent was coupled with Gu Huai's family lineage, it was even more remarkable. Gu Huai and Gu Hong smiled similarly. Early the next morning, after breakfast, Gu Huai said goodbye to his reluctant parents and set off on his journey. Of course, Gu Huai's mom, Mu Qing, was definitely not comfortable with Gu Huai going on the road alone, feeling unsafe, and wanted her assistant, Zhang Wan Chen, to follow Gu Huai along and be responsible for protecting Gu Huai's safety. But after Gu Huai said that the old man had left the dark dragon behind to protect him, Mu Qing couldn't say anything more, and could only watch Gu Huai leave with tears in her eyes. For Mu Qing, this was the first time Gu Huai had traveled so far alone. As a mother, she was naturally not too relieved. Hangzhou Station. As the capital city of the province, Hangzhou's train station was naturally extremely busy. There were also not many ways that one could choose if they wanted to go out in this world, of which the moving train was the most convenient and safest way, bar none. Inside the city and outside the city were two completely different worlds. For ordinary people to want to go out of the city, it was an extremely dangerous thing to do, because, the attitude of the imperial beasts towards humans was not all friendly. In the wild, the imperial beasts had another name, which was fierce beasts. The ferocious beasts in the wild had three distinct attitudes towards humans. The first is the attitude of closeness to humans, and these are also the imperial beasts that are most likely to be contracted by humans. The second type was oblivious to humans. As long as humans didn't attack them, they wouldn't attack them either. The last type is extremely disgusted by humans, and will frantically attack as soon as they see a human. These types of ferocious beasts could be quite numerous and were also particularly dangerous existences. When humans went out of the city, if they did not have a certain level of self-protection ability, or if they were protected by a powerful imperial beast master, they would easily lose their lives. As for the moving car, it would be relatively much safer. This was because the moving car adopted a threefold protection. The first one, with the track where the train is traveling as the center, spreading outward for 120 meters there is a layer of protective boundary. This boundary can isolate most of the ferocious beasts accidentally intruded. Even if it is intruded, there is a second layer of protection. The tracks on which the train traveled were all equipped with the most advanced living body detection equipment. If there is a living body close to the track within the range of 50 meters, it will be displayed at the headquarters of the moving car center. And the moving car department will also send people to clean up the ferocious beasts that break into the track. The last layer of protection is the moving car is specially arranged professional beast master in the car, at any time to cope with the sudden intrusion of the beast. Under the layers of protection, the safety coefficient of the moving car was directly raised by several grades. Of course, there were dangers in it, in case there were members of an evil organization, similar to the Black Demon Society, one of the three major evil organizations, directly launching an attack towards the moving train, that would also be dangerous. But in other words, if they really encountered such a situation then there was nothing that could be done. Even if they stayed inside the city, they would still encounter attacks from these evil organizations. A few years ago, the Black Devil Society had organized an attack on a city and directly sacrificed millions of that city's population alive, with only a very small number of people escaping. That incident had a huge impact on the entire East Huang country, and even the whole world. The Black Devil Society also made use of this incident to hit the ground running directly turning from a first-class evil organization in Donghuang country into a world-class evil organization. After a few years of development, it had now become one of the top three evil organizations. For this reason, throughout the entire Donghuang country, and even the whole world, there was no telling how many people from evil organizations wanted to follow the example of the Black Devil Society's people and become famous in one fell swoop. 
so even living in the middle of the city was not safe. However, compared to a few years ago, the safety factor had increased quite a bit. Because of this incident, a new organizational structure, the 17th Bureau, was established in the East Huang country. The topic was far from the point. Gu Huai directly boarded the moving train. Gu Huai didn't ask for privileges and directly had first class seats arranged. The second class seats were more crowded, or the first class was comfortable. The first class seat is much more spacious. The whole carriage is also smaller than the second class seat. There are only 16 seats inside, slightly quieter. Second class was a very large carriage, with a hundred people sitting inside. When Gu Huai arrived at his seat, there happened to be someone on the side, a young girl wearing blue jeans, a white casual blouse, headphones, and a head of black and shiny. The girl was very beautiful, and even Gu Huai, who had seen a lot of beautiful women, couldn't help but look at her twice. However, it was just a couple of glances, but there was no excessive behavior, pure appreciation. Gu Huai wasn't the kind of person who couldn't walk when he saw a woman. The young girl's position was to the outside, and when she saw Gu Huai come over and Gu Huai smiled at her, the young girl instantly understood, slightly sidestepping towards the side. She made room for Gu Huai. Thank you, Gu Huai politely whispered, and the young girl didn't care. When going out, one should still be polite. It could reduce a lot of unnecessary trouble. Even if Gu Huai wasn't afraid of trouble, Gu Huai's destination was Lin Chang, which was not far from Hang Chang, just two cities away. The place, Lin Chang, was a city wrapped in a forest? The forest in that part of Forest City was rich in two types of imperial beasts. One was the plant-based imperial beasts, and the other was the apes and monkeys. Gu Huai had traveled to Forest City this time in order to battle against these ape-type imperial beasts and put a bit of pressure on Baby Dragon. By the way, he was going to meet one more person in Lin City, Grandpa's former old subordinate, who was also the city lord of Lin City now. There were no words along the way. Neither Gu Huai nor the young girl were the kind of people who were self-conscious. The speed of the train was very fast, just less than three hours to the station. Coincidentally, the young girl and Gu Huai got off at the same station. This made Gu Huai and the young girl couldn't help but both look at each other, and at the same time silently smiled, but it was limited to that, without too many words. After leaving the station, there was someone waiting for Gu Huai at the entrance. Little Huai. Over here. It was Lin City City Lord. How Fong. He knew that Gu Huai didn't like ostentation, so he just had his driver drive himself to the side of the road and wait. Even the car he drove wasn't his own exclusive car, but a car he borrowed from a random office. Uncle Hao. When Gu Huai heard Hao Feng's words, he also smiled and walked over. He and Hao Feng were still very familiar with each other, as Hao Feng would travel to the Gu family to pay his respects to the old master every year during the festivals. Even if the old man wasn't there, Hao Feng would still go to the Gu family to talk to his father and get closer. You kid is finally willing to come to Lin City to play. I've called you kid many times before and you refuse to come. This time uncle I'll make sure to treat you well. Go. Hao Feng got out of the car and shook Gu Huai's hand affectionately, pulling him onto the car. The driver was inwardly shocked when he saw the scene. He had been Hao Feng's driver for so many years, and he had never seen Hao Feng treat someone like this, or a young man, but he knew that there were words he shouldn't say or ask, and that he could just honestly do his job as a driver. When Gu Huai got on the bus, the young girl who was sitting with Gu Huai also came out. She just happened to see the scene of Gu Huai getting on the bus. E e you're finally here. Missed me. But before the teenage girl could look at her more, there was a cute looking girl who ran straight over and jumped towards the teenage girl. The young girl habitually lends the girl a hand and reveals a helpless smile. Yell you're exaggerating. We've only seen each other for two days. He he he. Anyway, I just miss you. Go go go. Listen to me when you're in my territory. Later I'll take you to have a good meal of Lin Cheng's food. The cute girl's name was Lin Xiaoyu and she was a local of Lin City. The young girl was named Gung Rui. Stow you, let's just hurry up and get our business done. The college entrance exam is coming up soon. When the college entrance exam is over, there will be plenty of time to eat these delicacies. Lin Xiaoyu skimmed her lips. I knew you're no fun, but with this young lady in charge, everything is fine, but I've also arranged for the noon meal. So when we're done eating, we'll go over there and make sure that your little gold completes its evolution. Gung Rui sniffed and a smile appeared on that serene face. She reached out her hand and pinched Lin Xiaoyu's face earning a blank stare from Lin Xiaoyu. It's still comfortable to pinch yours. As she spoke, Gung Ruei followed Lin Xiaoyu to the car. After getting into the car, it happened that Gu Wai's car drove past from the side, which made Gung Ruei subconsciously look over again. When Lin Xiaoyu saw this scene, she also followed her gaze and saw Gu Wai's handsome side face, which made Lin Xiaoyu instantly ignite the heart of gossip. It was important to know that Gung Ruei, in school, faced all the boys with no pretense. 
Although there were quite a few boys chasing Gung Rui, none of them were able to gain Gung Rui's favor. But now this Gung Rui Yi would even look at a boy like this? This was truly unbelievable. Gung Rui subconsciously asked, Little Yu, aren't you known as Lin City's know-it-all? Then do you know who that boy who just passed by was? Gung Rui Yi regretted this as soon as she said it, because she saw Lin Xiaoyu's gaze with a bad smile. She knew that Lin Xiaoyu had misunderstood, and hurriedly explained, It's not what you think, it's just that I think that boy is more interesting, and just now in the car, that boy was next door to me, and got off at the same station as me, so I was a little curious to ask, Gung Rui Yi does not explain okay, this explanation is even more indefinable, I didn't expect Yi you good this mouth, but just now that boy I don't recognize, shouldn't be a local of our Lin Chang, Lin Xiaoyu's tone was certain, Although Lin Xiaoyu didn't go to high school in Lin Chang, she grew up in this place, and personally belonged to the kind of existence where she had especially many good friends. For someone as handsome as Gu Huai, if he was a local of Lin Chang, there was no way she wouldn't know about it. Like this, Gung Rui's tone was slightly lost, but it was only just a loss, and she didn't take this matter to heart. But that license plate just now seems to be the license plate of the city lord's mansion, only that the serial number is a bit backward so perhaps his family just arrived to take up the position of city lord. The city lords in this world were usually held by locals, and would rarely let outsiders come in. But for some important positions, about half of them were outsiders. Often, there would be outsiders who would come over here to become officials. And for these people, it was normal for Lin Xiaoyu not to recognize them. If you're really interested, I can ask for you. Forget it. Gung Ruei shook her head. Then don't regret it. No regrets. Gu Huai was received at home by Hao Feng and was fed by Hao Feng's wife who personally cooked for Gu Huai in a cordial manner. Hao Feng's family had a son, three years older than Gu Huai, who was currently attending Hang University and was not at home. It was worth mentioning that the Imperial Beast schools on this side of the Dragon Country were graded. Among them, there were three top schools, which were the Imperial Capital University, the Magic Capital University, and the Hangzhou University. Among them, the Imperial Capital University and the Magic Capital University were old supreme academies with deep roots. Hangzhou University, on the other hand, was a new supreme academic institution that had been developing in recent decades with the support of the Gu family. In addition to these three supreme academic institutions, the rest are divided according to the levels of one batch, two batches, and three batches. This one batch, two batch, three batch meant the list of universities that the country gradually joined in order to prioritize some universities to become powerful. The first batch was the 10 universities that were the first to join the National Elite Imperial Beast University, which included the three supreme academies. The second and third batches were also literally the same. Only the third batch is the matter of the Universal Imperial Beast era, belonging to the series of Imperial Beast universities on as long as they want to go on this path. Hao Feng's son Hao Jin Gu Huai is seen, is a sharp young man, very arrogant. Gu Huai is not very like. Of course, this Hao Jin in front of Gu Huai is very obedient and honest. A mouth of Gu Xiao, intimate very, Gu Huai ate lunch and Hao Feng, stayed for a while, ready to say goodbye and leave, Hao Feng naturally did not comply, but Gu Huai said that he was preparing to go to the forest in the forest city to practice, and then will come out to visit, Hao Feng only then give up, Hao Feng even personally sent Gu Huai to the outskirts of the forest in forest city, area 1, as mentioned earlier, forest city is a city wrapped in forests, but these forests are also divided into good and bad, area 1, was the essence of the forests of Forest City? It had all sorts of treasures from the forests, and even the quality of the imperial beasts in it was better than the rest of the places. This made many newcomers want to come to this place to find imperial beasts that could be contracted. If you wanted to enter Zone 1, there was no way to simply spend money. Only finding the right person would do. How Fong, as the Lord of Lin City, wanted to get people into Zone 1. So naturally, it was a matter of words. This is also the reason why Gu Han let Gu Huai come to find Hao Feng, although Gu Han greetings can also let Gu Huai in, but after all, this is Hao Feng's territory, greetings face also pass, Gu Huai is now going to the periphery of the first district, which is full of ferocious beasts in the awakening stage, and there is no transcendent realm, because when they reached the transcendent realm, they would all be driven to the inner perimeter by the forest rangers of forest city, all around the perimeter of the first district. The kind of instruments that could detect the entry of life forms were established, and this was also to prevent others from breaking into it. There were two places for the entrance. Gu Huai was led by Hao Feng to entrance number one. Uncle Hao, just send it here. That's fine. I won't send anyone to protect you since you have the old man to protect you. Little Li, you can wait here for Xiao Huai. 
Hao Feng naturally knew that the Dark Demon Dragon was protecting Gu Huai because the Dark Demon Dragon also came out and greeted Hao Feng. Hao Feng was the old master's old subordinate, and his main Dark Descent Demon Dragon naturally knew Hao Feng. It was also because of the protection of the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon that Hao Feng didn't worry about Gu Huai's safety. With the Dark Demon Dragon protecting Gu Huai in the dark, there weren't many people in the world who could harm Gu Huai. At least Hao Feng, who was the Lord of Lin City, couldn't do it. Hao Feng himself is also a top royal beast master. In the ranks of the royal beast master is also belongs to the very strong kind. That or else also cannot sit on the position of the Lin City City Lord. Lin Chang is also a strong city in the entire Hang province. There were a total of 31 cities in Hang province, large and small, and Lin City belonged to the kind that could be ranked into the top 5, and its comprehensive strength was naturally not weak. Yes, Xiao Li, the driver from before, was shocked. Hao Feng even let him stay here and wait for Gu Huai. What a great honor. Hao Feng had addressed Gu Huai as Xiao Huai without adding his surname. Otherwise, the driver, Xiao Li, would definitely associate Gu Huai with the young master of the Gu family. Gu Huai didn't refuse Hao Feng's request for Li to wait for him. After all, this would be too impolite in refusing. Then thank you, Uncle Hao. Ha ha, Xiao Huai. Why are you still polite with me? We're all on our own. After a few more polite words with Hao Feng, Gu Huai turned around and walked into Forest City's forest, the outskirts of Zone 1. For this kind of scene, Gu Huai himself was not too fond of it. However, as a member of the Gu family, or the only direct heir, even if Gu Huai didn't like it, he still had to do a lot of things and maintain some relationships. This was Gu Huai's mission. The outskirts of Forest City's forest. The most numerous in here were the plant-based ferocious beasts, and a type of ferocious beast called stone monkeys. Stone monkeys, group-dwelling beasts. It wasn't very aggressive, but it liked to fight alone, teasing humans and beasts that passed by. The fact that the stone monkey's name had the word stone in it didn't mean that its entire body was made of stone. In fact, it wasn't too different from an ordinary monkey. The reason why stone monkeys were called that was because they literally popped out of stone. It was a very amazing principle. And Gu Huai was a little shocked for the first time after hearing the way how the stone monkeys popped out of the rocks. When the male and female stone monkeys were breeding, they would pick a suitable rock on which to do the breeding thing. Subsequently, when the two stone monkeys were at that thing, a kind of stone monkey essence would pour into this suitable stone, changing the stone so that it would become the stone that birthed the emergence of the stone monkeys. Gu Huai didn't understand the principle, but that was what the book said. Not all stones had this ability, though, and not every time that thing worked. There weren't many stones that could harbor stone monkeys, and the number of times they could succeed wasn't very high. It is worth mentioning here that stone monkeys are transcendent creatures, ranging from primary transcendent to higher transcendent depending on the individual. With the stone monkey king, being able to possess the bloodline of a primary commander, when stone monkeys are born, they also come with an initial skill called hardening, which is also the stone monkey's master skill. This stone monkey was also the purpose of Gu Huai's trip. The stone monkey was extremely good at fighting, and could even make tools in its own way, making it a rare beast to cultivate in the wild. Gu Huai took the internal map that Hao Feng had prepared for himself and directly rushed towards the smallest stone monkey colony, with a map and a purpose. He naturally arrived at this one very quickly, just like what was described in the book. These stone monkeys were indeed very enthusiastic. As soon as Gu Huai appeared in their territorial boundaries, there were several stone monkeys that were enthusiastic enough to throw mountain fruits at Gu Huai. Mountain fruits, a specialty of Lin City, were somewhat similar to persimmons, except that these mountain fruits were all soft as long as they were ripe, and wouldn't cause any harm if they remained on a person. They were just extremely insulting. Baby dragon, stop these mountain fruits. Gu Huai had already prepared for this, so naturally, he couldn't let these stone monkeys hit him. Bow, the imperial beast space was now present, and the baby dragon, who had long been impatient to come out, instantly made its appearance. Before entering this forest, Gu Huai had spoken to baby dragon. Dragon Claw, the baby dragon's figure was extremely flexible, and as soon as it appeared, the claws in its hands moved frequently, and a few claw shadows slashed through, and five mountain fruits that were flying towards Gu Huai exploded. Bright red juice exploded towards the surroundings, many of which landed on Gu Huai and the baby dragon. Miscalculated. Seeing this scene, these three words unconsciously floated out of Gu Huai's mind. It was indeed a miscalculation. His original intention was to have baby dragon catch these mountain fruits, not for baby dragon to take such a violent approach. Seeing this scene, the stone monkeys hiding in the tree to play pranks burst into exaggerated laughter. Bow. Angry. Baby dragon was angry. What are these slimy things? Two. Sweet. The baby dragon was originally angry, but after accidentally licking the sweet flavor of this mountain fruit, 
It subconsciously wiped the places on its body that had been splattered by the mountain fruit juice again, and shoved it into its mouth. Bow, yummy, the baby dragon's eyes instantly lit up. The baby dragon that was still in the baby stage naturally loved sweets. Gu Huai was also somewhat speechless when he saw the scene. He also had the luxury of hoping that such a move would cause the baby dragon to turn its grief and anger into strength. But how did this baby dragon behave like this? It was good that the baby dragon didn't make Gu Huai lose his mind. It was very vindictive. These mountain fruits were sweet, but these little monkeys throwing themselves at it with this could not be forgiven. Later on, it would definitely beat these little monkeys down and throw them with Gu Huai with the mountain fruit. Wow. Thinking of this, baby dragon's fighting spirit instantly rose, but these stone monkeys moved faster. Not waiting for baby dragon to challenge these monkeys, one of the smallest monkeys provocatively jumped to the front of baby dragon and made the gesture movement of come over here to baby dragon. Although the baby dragon did not understand the meaning of this gesture, but the stone monkey's face that owes a beating expression let the baby dragon's blood rush directly to the head. Eyes are red. The other few stone monkeys, on the other hand, did not mind in the slightest, and one by one, they found a good position to become a spirit. No wonder it's said that the IQ of ape-like monkeys is the closest to humans. Gu Huai couldn't help but sigh in his heart as he watched. The baby dragon angrily charged directly towards the little stone monkey, that fleshy hand lighting up its sharp claws. Dragon claw. A dragon claw with a level of proficiency could already manage to coalesce at any time. The little stone monkey was very arrogant when it was provoking, but when it entered into battle, its eyes and aura changed. This also caused a look of surprise to appear in Gu Huai's eyes, and he couldn't help but observe the stone monkey's information. Imperial beast, stone monkey, attribute, earth, bloodline, primary transcendent, strength, awaken sixth stage, skill, hardening, awakening sixth rank, baby dragon should be able to win. The baby dragon was at least a high transcendent imperial beast, and it also possessed a level 11 dragon claw, so it shouldn't be so bad that it couldn't even defeat an awakened sixth order stone monkey. But something unexpected happened to Gu Huai. The stone monkey's reaction was too fast, or rather the stone monkey completely predicted the baby dragon's movements, his body slightly to the side, his right leg hardened, and he kicked towards the baby dragon whose attack fell short. The baby dragon obviously did not expect that the strike he was aiming for would be avoided by a tiny stone monkey in such a way, and in a state of daze, he was hit by the stone monkey's attack, and directly flipped forward, falling into a dragon eating shit. Yeah. After the stone monkey's attack was successful, it crossed its waist and laughed triumphantly behind the baby dragon. This made the pained baby dragon head up again. Baby dragon. Gu Huai knew that as the imperial beast master himself was going to be on the field, that or else it would be too difficult for Baby Dragon to defeat this stone monkey with this childish fighting style. Although he had practiced with Baby Dragon for a long time yesterday, that place was a club after all, and the Imperial Beasts inside were also accompanying the practice, and this little stone monkey in front of him, although his realm was not high, this combat experience was too rich. I'm afraid that this little stone monkey had grown up in battle since shortly after it was born. Gu Huai had really guessed right. The stone monkeys in this place had to learn to fight not long after they were born. Otherwise, its companions would keep going after it and bullying it. If you want to not be bullied, you have to keep growing up in the midst of the bullying and grow up quickly. So this little stone monkey in front of me, although its realm was not high, it had experienced as many as a thousand battles, and those of its companions, their hands were also really ruthless. If it wasn't for the fact that this forest was very special, it had all been killed. Under such circumstances, the little stone monkey's fighting instincts were cultivated to be quite powerful. Bow. The angry baby dragon couldn't help but turn its gaze toward Gu Huai as it heard the familiar voice, and its eyes became much clearer. Gu Huai took a deep breath, putting himself and baby dragon on the same channel. Baby dragon, let's fight together next. To a certain extent, it was possible for imperial beasts and imperial beast masters to be mentally connected. The prerequisite was that a sufficient bond had been established between the two, and Gu Huai was preparing to use this as a means to accomplish this. The baby dragon's gaze looked fiercely at the stone monkey and then it also followed Gu Huai's example, taking two deep breaths in an effort to calm itself down. The effect was indeed not bad, and Gu Huai was able to barely sense the baby dragon's thoughts. Very good. Gu Huai was delighted in his heart. Gu Huai had never been afraid of failure. There had never been a royal beast master who had never lost, and losing wasn't scary at all. What was scary was not being able to find the reason in failure and continuing to fail in the same way and for the same reason. Yeah. The little stone monkey sensed the change in the precious dragon and couldn't help but turn its gaze towards the human. Before it grinned at Gu Huai and withdrew its gaze, a ferocious beast of the little stone monkey's type was nicknamed a good teacher. And it wasn't just for fun. Seeing that Gu Huai and the precious dragon seemed to have found a bit of form, 
The little stone monkey was also interested. Ya ya, baby dragon, Gu Huai softly exclaimed, and in this current state, he didn't need to speak at all to make baby dragon feel his consciousness. Bow. The baby dragon subconsciously responded and rushed towards the little stone monkey. Only this time, the baby dragon wasn't in that confident state. It was observant as it went over. Dragon claw. This time, the little stone monkey didn't avoid it, but instead, it went hard against the baby dragon. Bear. Comparing attacks, the little stone monkey was naturally no match for the baby dragon. Even if the little stone monkey's realm was one level higher, the LV11 level dragon claw was no joke. The little stone monkey was sent flying by a strike of the dragon claw, and if not for the fact that its arm was in a hardened state, this blow might have dislocated it. Bow. With one strike, the baby dragon was excited, but Gu Huai quickly calmed the baby dragon down. That strike just now was just a test for the little stone monkey. The little stone monkey was testing the depths of the baby dragon. The little stone monkey would take the rest of the way after realizing that its power was not enough for baby dragon. Much like what Gu Huai thought, the little stone monkey began to wander. In battle, it was never a matter of hard fighting to determine the winner. After all, each imperial beast had its own focus, its own area of specialization, and different ways of fighting. When fighting, they all tried to avoid each other's strengths and develop their own. The baby dragon was right under the little stone monkey's fighting style, and was caught in a passive and difficult situation, not being able to utilize its strengths at all. If it wasn't for its level 11 dragon claw, I'm afraid it would have been defeated by the little stone monkey. This also allowed Gu Huai to discover more shortcomings of the baby dragon, more areas that needed to be remedied. The battle lasted for more than 10 minutes, and the exhausted little stone monkey was caught in a break by the baby dragon, who directly took the little stone monkey away with a dragon claw. After defeating the little stone monkey, the baby dragon, which had been in a tight state, also lost its support and collapsed to the ground. Gu Huai hurriedly ran over, wanting to help the baby dragon up and feed it something to restore its energy. However, a stone monkey moved faster and reached the baby dragon's side first, pulling out a fruit and handing it to the baby dragon in a friendly manner. Green origin fruit. Gu Huai initially thought that this stone monkey was trying to take revenge on baby dragon, and his heart was anxious, but he soon realized that he was wrong. Although the green origin fruit wasn't much of a recovery potion, it was only for Gu Huai. With the baby dragon in this state, this green origin fruit was able to alleviate a lot of physical exertion. The other stone monkey went to the side of the little stone monkey and fed the little stone monkey the green origin fruit as well. Yaa! Yeah. The stone monkeys gave Gu Huai a friendly smile, and their smiles were completely a huge change from before. The reason for this was also mainly because Gu Huai and Baby Dragon had earned the respect of the stone monkeys. It wasn't strength, but that pure friendship between imperial beasts and imperial masters, and that will to not give up. Are you inviting me to play in the inner camp? Since awakening his mythic rank talent, Gu Huai felt that his imperial beast comprehension had increased drastically. Yeah yeah. The stone monkey nodded. Alright then, it just so happens that baby dragon and I would like to ask for more advice from you guys. Gu Huai had no reason to refuse, and his purpose for being here was simple, to let baby dragon and stone monkey engage in battle and grow in battle. Letting the baby dragon point the skill dragon claw to perfection was what Gu Huai intended to do. With such a powerful talent, why waste it? Now, as long as the foundation of the baby dragon was built as well as possible, the quicker the dragon claw could be ordered to perfection. A proficient dragon claw would be able to evolve into a battle dragon beast. And this hotfire that surpassed proficiency by two stages was something Gu Huai couldn't even imagine. I'm afraid that no one else could make it this far either. Not long after Gu Huai entered the outskirts of Forest City Forest Area 1, Lin Xiaoyu and Gung Rui also walked into this place. However, their purpose was different from Gu Huai's. They hadn't come to this place to hammer the battle instincts of the imperial beasts. Both of them were the top students of Mordor No. 1 middle school, senior high school students, the kind who would be taking the entrance exams in a few days. Their imperial beasts had already been through a hundred battles. So naturally, they didn't need to come to this place to fight with the stone monkeys. The reason they came to this place was very simple. And that was because in these few days, on the outskirts of Forest City Forest Area 1, there was a mountain named Moon Mountain. This mountain had very mysterious stones named moonstones. Every time night fell, this moonstone would absorb more moon power. This power was of little use and could not be collected, but for the kind of imperial beasts that needed to absorb moonlight to evolve, this power would be useful. Dung Rui's purpose was just that. Her imperial beast Xiao Jin was a stone with the mark of the moon called the moon pupil stone. It was a very magical imperial beast, as it couldn't move when it was at this stage. It could only harden and harden and harden. However, if the moon pupil stone could be cultivated well, it was possible to evolve into a moon pupil beast under the bathing of the power of the moon. The moon pupil beast, 
an imperial beast of the Lord's bloodline, was the embodiment of mystery and condescension, and was also an imperial beast that many people wanted to obtain. Unfortunately, it was too difficult to cultivate a moon pupil stone to the point where it could evolve into a moon pupil beast, and without a certain amount of family and love, it simply couldn't be done. E e e, I'll take you up to set up the grounds now. Arranging more moonstones will make the moon power over there more dense, so that the evolution is a bit more certain. Well, I'm really troubling you this time. Gung Ruei's heart was thrilled that she was finally going to evolve in time for the college entrance exam. She believed that little gold would definitely not let herself down. The difference between a moon pupil stone and a moon pupil beast was too great. Baby dragon. Avoid the stone monkey's attack. Very good. Use dragon claw. Beautiful. The baby dragon was extremely flexible in avoiding the little stone monkey's attack. And after pestering for a while, it found an opportunity to take the stone monkey away with an easy strike of the dragon claw. Yeah. The little stone monkey standing at the side, the one that had engaged in battle with the precious dragon at the beginning, had a look of adoration in its eyes. It couldn't be helped. Who let this week go by? Baby dragon's progress was too fast. It could simply be described as a leap. The little stone monkey that was evenly matched with baby dragon at the beginning, now it couldn't even catch a single move, and had completely transformed into baby dragon's little fan monkey. Just now, baby dragon was battling a stone monkey of the 8th awakening rank. And after fighting for a while, he defeated this stone monkey. Baby, after defeating the stone monkey, Baby Dragon excitedly jumped over to Gu Huai's body with a proud face. Gu Huai also tacitly caught the Baby Dragon. In this week's time, Baby Dragon had really improved a lot. Of course there was not only Gu Huai's additions, but also the joint efforts of Baby Dragon and Gu Huai. Imperial Beast, Baby Dragon, Different Color, Attribute, Dragon, Bloodline, High Transcendent. Strength, Awaken 6th Stage Strength, Awaken 6th Stage. Skill, Dragon Claw LV20, Plus. The Baby Dragon was now in perfect control of the level 20 Dragon Claw. Gu Huai was now already considering whether or not to add the Dragon Claw to level 21, which was the proficient level. The realm had also been raised from Awaken 4th rank to Awaken 6th rank, a speed that could really be described as fast up. Although there was a reason for Gu Huai to add points in this, most people of the same age had only cultivated a good relationship with the Imperial Beasts in the 8 days they had gotten them. It was considered an excellent existence for the realm to have risen by one rank. Most of the newcomers to the Imperial Beasts, after 3 months of summer vacation, were just barely able to fight with the Imperial Beasts. In terms of realm, it was about the 3rd or 4th level of awakening. In terms of skills, it was basically raising the initial skill from level 1 to level 4 to 5. For a normal Imperial Beast Master. If he wanted his initial imperial beast to cultivate a skill from beginner to proficient, it would take him half a year, or even more than a year. Only some geniuses could shorten this time, but it was still extremely rare to see one as fast as Gu Huai. Here, Gu Huai pulled out a piece of dragon crystal and handed it to the precious dragon under its excited gaze. At the same time, Gu Huai pulled out several earth crystals in his hand and distributed them to the group of stone monkeys. In the past few days, Gu Huai stayed with the group of stone monkeys letting the baby dragon fight with them whenever he had time, honing his combat skills and digesting Gu Huai's enhancements to his skills. The stone monkeys also welcomed the two guests, Gu Huai and baby dragon, and cooperated with them. It was a credit to them that the baby dragons had made so much progress. In response, Gu Huai also treated them with sincerity, often taking out resources like earth crystals for them to eat, as well as some precious resources. This also made the relationship between Gu Huai and the stone monkeys better. Yeah. Several stone monkeys surrounded Gu Huai and the precious dragon, and they all laughed happily. To be honest, Gu Huai kinda liked this kind of day, but this group of stone monkeys is still too weak. The strongest one is only awakened 10th rank, at most another week or two, baby dragon will be able to defeat it. Gu Huai shook his head and looked at the sky, it was close to evening now, and night would be falling in a little while. Baby dragon, come over here and eat something for the night. Ya yeah, ya, yeah. the little stone monkey interrupted Gu Huai as he nibbled on an earth crystal. What did you say, little stone monkey? Gu Huai didn't hear too well and asked again. Yeah, you're saying that at night, the king of the forest invites everyone to Moon Mountain for the Moon Festival? Gu Huai hadn't heard of the Moon Festival before, and when he heard Gu Huai's confusion, the elderly stone monkey explained it to Gu Huai. Like this, it dawned on Gu Huai that no wonder he hadn't heard of it. It was because this Moon Festival was a festival that belonged exclusively to the outskirts of their forest city forest area 1, and it was often held. Specifically, the old stone monkey wasn't sure, it just said that there would be a lot of beautiful stone monkeys going to it, and told Gu Huai to be sure to go. In response, Gu Huai was somewhat helpless, it seems that no matter what species, the opposite sex is always so attractive to each other. 
Looking at a few stone monkeys with glowing eyes, Gu Huai decided that he'd better attend and see. The summer evening still carried a slight chill, under the moon mountain. Actually, this moon mountain was just a short mountain, a very ordinary mountain. Two young girls with different styles were on their way to moon mountain. Ee, -e -e, trust me this time, I got a message from the king of the forest. Tonight's night is beautiful, the moon is very round, and the power of the moon will be quite dense. It will definitely allow your little goal to complete its final evolution. The person who spoke was naturally Lin Xiaoyu. Let's hope. If we don't complete our evolution again, we'll have to go back tomorrow at the latest. Gung Ruei's tone was no longer as firm as it was a week ago. It seemed that the current moon pupil stone was still a hair short of evolving into a moon pupil beast. A week ago, they had come to this place to allow her little gold to absorb the power of the moon and begin its breakthrough. But in the past few days, it was always just a little bit short. Now this time was getting closer and closer to the entrance exam. And if there was no way to complete the evolution tonight, they would have to go back. It was now June 8th, and the college entrance exam in this world was June 10th. The content of the college entrance exam was divided into two aspects, the written exam and the battle. Gung Ruei naturally wasn't afraid of the written test. Although she wasn't considered a school bully, she could get 250 points out of a 300-point written test. The next battle is the most critical. The total score for the battle is 450 points, occupying a large portion of the score. If you can't let the moon pupil stone evolve into a moon pupil beast, with the moon pupil stone strength, I'm afraid that she can only get a modest score, so that she can go to a second batch of schools at the end of the day. Tonight, can be considered the last chance. After all, this place was a certain distance away from the magic city. If they failed, they would have to return to Mordor together tomorrow to prepare for the college entrance exam the day after tomorrow. Ee, -e, you believe me, it can definitely succeed. Lin Xiaoyu comforted. Only her tone wasn't as sure as before. Just as the two were conversing, Lin Xiaoyu's pupils shrunk slightly. Watch out. She sensed a crisis. In a moment of crisis, she hastily summoned her imperial beast. It was a walking flower, about half a person tall, and its color was mainly pink. This was the high commander imperial beast, the pink flower king. Bye. As soon as the pink flower king came out, it naturally sensed the crisis. The huge flower bud on its head instantly unfolded protecting Lin Xiaoyu and Gung Rui inside. Transcendent Imperial Beast? Worthy of being a member of the Lin family? There are two brushes. As they spoke, three people wearing black robes appeared. The black robes completely wrapped their bodies, making it impossible to see the men and women. In front of the trio's heels, there were three ferocious-looking Imperial Beasts. Vicious Wolf Hound. Heavenly Poison Scorpion. Flower-tailed Snake. Through the gap of the Pink Flower King, Lin Xiaoyu quickly recognized the information of these three imperial beasts, and at the same time, he also struck the insight technique. All three were primordial transcendents. This caused Lin Xiaoyu to raise an eyebrow. If it was one primary transcendent, with her strength as a Miss Lin clan, she was naturally unafraid. But if it was three, it was difficult. Moreover, she didn't know if these three had a second imperial beast. Although she also had a second imperial beast, her second imperial beast had just been contracted not long ago and currently only had the strength of awakened sixth stage, so she could not participate in the battle at all. Had she known, she would have let her second uncle follow her. Flower-tailed snake, highly poisonous iron tail, evil wolfhound, evil bite, heavenly poison scorpion, giant poison pincer strike. The three imperial beasts instantly attacked, and Lin Xiaoyu could only begin to cope. One against three, even though her pink flower king was stronger than all three imperial beasts, and so was her talent but she knew that defeat was a foregone conclusion. As for Gung Ruoi on the side, if her imperial beast finished evolving, then she could still fight back. But now, forget it. Is it hard not to fold here today? Lin Xiaoyu was unwilling. Ee, -e -e, I'll stall them later. Their aim is me, not you. I can't go. Gung Ruoi refused without even thinking. She, Gung Ruoi, was not a person who was greedy and afraid of death. Ee, -e -e, you listen. Lin Xiaoyu was a bit anxious. They're here for me. They definitely won't hurt me. I'll try to see if the moon pupil stone can evolve. Gung Ruei was just stubborn and summoned her imperial beast, a stone that couldn't be moved. Tiny beads of sweat appeared on Gung Zoe's forehead. Little gold. Evolve quickly. Earth hamster. Impact. A cruel smile appeared at the corner of the mouth of one of the three black robes. Battling against each other was not a game, especially if it was a battle in the wild. Some imperial beast masters would do anything to win. Utilizing a sneak attack to attack the Imperial Beastmaster himself first, this sort of thing was too mundane. Gung Ruei and Lin Xiaoyu's pupils shrunk violently, and seeing this earth hamster that was so close at hand, it seemed that they had no ability to resist at all. Moon Pupil Stone, 
At the moment of crisis, an evolutionary glow appeared on the body of the moon pupil stone, night had already fallen, and the bright moonlight fell on the body of the moon pupil stone, causing it to start evolving. Unfortunately, it was too late, as it still needed some time to evolve, but the earth hamster's attack was already about to land on its master's best friend, but just then, a voice rang out, clank, a small purple dragon that was only 50 centimeters tall appeared in the field at some point, blocking the ground hamster's attack, immediately after that, seven or eight more stone monkeys jumped out from the forest, surrounding the three black robes, stone monkeys, upon seeing the sudden appearance of so many stone monkeys, as well as a baby dragon, the three black robes voices carried a touch of impatience, captain, I told you a long time ago that we should take them away with all our might from the start, so as not to cause so much trouble, the three did not place these stone monkeys who were not even transcendent in their eyes, transcendent and not a transcendent, there was quite a difference there, not to mention that their captain was in possession of an imperial beast of the medium transcendent realm, let's have a quick battle then, the black robe in the center summoned another imperial beast, also a stone monkey, only this stone monkey was not quite the same as ordinary stone monkeys, its body carried black patterns, one after another, somewhat bizarre, the stone monkey's eyes were also scarlet, and its body exuded an extremely violent aura, come out, another similar black pattern stone monkey appeared, its aura a bit weaker than the first one, just a primary transcendent, a medium transcendent, for elementary transcendents, plus an awakened 10th ranked earth hamster, this caused the heart of the rescued Lin Xiaoyu to tighten once again, this lineup, there was no way to fight, what a trouble, Gu Huai's figure also appeared from the darkness, Gu Huai actually didn't want to make a move, but the dark demon dragon reminded himself that these people had a nasty aura and were from the black demon society, regarding the black devil society, ordinary people probably didn't know much about it, only that it was one of the three major evil forces that had destroyed an entire city and was an extremely terrifying existence, but Gu Huai, as the Gu family's young master, knew a lot more than they did, how can I put it, it could only be counted as none of them being human, for doing things that weren't even something one would do, they weren't even as good as animals, slaughter, to them, was a trivial matter, they would take humans and do live experiments on them, and there were toddlers and babies in there, Gu Huai knew that many of the horrors were being done by this black devil society's people, this was also the reason why Gu Huai would come forward after knowing their identity through the dark demon dragon, what's more, with the dark demon dragon protecting him in the shadows, all he needed to do was to move forward, and no one would be able to hurt him, when Gu Huai came out, the moon pupil stone had already completed its final evolution, it evolved from a stone into a noble moon pupil beast, the moon pupil beast was an imperial beast that stood and walked on all four limbs, and its color was mainly purple, giving it a very noble feeling, it also had a closed eye on its forehead, which looked like a curved moon when it was closed, it was also the first time Gu Huai had seen this moon pupil beast, and he curiously checked the moon pupil beast's information, imperial beast, moon pupil beast, half step evolution, incomplete, needs to absorb more moon power to replenish, attribute, darkness, bloodline, primary lord, strength, elementary transcendent, skill, moon power, moon pupil, not fully evolved, it seems to be worried about its master's safety and forced itself to evolve, Gu Huai muttered, and then he heard the woman's voice exclaiming in shock, surprisingly, it's you, it's me, when Gu Huai heard this, he couldn't help but look towards the woman in surprise, and instantly recognized her as well, it couldn't be helped, who made Gung Rui look too pretty? Gu Huai believed that anyone who had seen Gung Rui's looks would not easily forget her. I didn't think we were quite destined to run into each other here. Gu Huai smiled softly at Gung Rui, who subconsciously nodded her head before hearing Lin Xiaoyu's anxious words. You two stop flirting for now. Our situation is bad for us. Gung Rui's face blushed slightly, and under this bright moonlight, it was covered in a layer of charming color. Gu Huai was indifferent. Just as well. Let's use these imperial beasts to complete a magnificent transformation. Baby dragon. Bow. Baby dragon ran to Gu Huai's front with a flutter. Are you ready? Bow. The baby dragon naturally understood what Gu Huai meant by that. During this period of time, it had already endured this kind of power that didn't belong to what it should be able to endure at its age too many times. Very well. Let's begin then. Gu Huai raised his hand. And a mysterious power acted on the baby dragon. Strengthen. LV21 level dragon claw strengthened to LV22 level. Bow. A comfortable power surged into the baby dragon's body, and the baby dragon directly wailed. I'll have these stone monkeys hold back some of these people's imperial beasts, making it bad for them to attack us with all their might. You two's imperial beasts are responsible for guarding our personal safety. These people are from the Black Demon Society. Gu Huai didn't explain too much. He just said the name of the Black Devil Society. 
and he believed that the two girls would know about it. Sure enough, upon hearing the words Black Devil Society, both women's pupils couldn't help but dilate. People from the Black Devil Society. Since it was someone from the Black Demon Society, it would have to be a matter of immortality. The consequences of being caught were worse than death. Yo, I didn't expect you kid to know quite a lot. The black robe on the side mocked. But you think, just with you these stone monkeys can stop us? Sky, Earth Hamster. The black robe growled. Because as he spoke, the baby dragon and one of the stone monkeys took the lead in launching an attack towards his Earth Hamster. The baby dragon and the stone monkeys worked well together. Just kidding, they had fought many fights. The stone monkeys were responsible for blocking the ground hamster's line of sight and attracting the ground hamster. The baby dragon, on the other hand, took the opportunity to open fire. LV-22 level dragon claws, this was no joke. For an ordinary imperial beast master, without training a skill day in and day out for 10 or 8 years, it was impossible to point the skill to proficiency. The sharp dragon claw directly swept past the ground hamster's neck. The ground hamster stared wide-eyed, not thinking for a second that he would die in this place. Gu Huai was extremely decisive, not dragging his feet in the slightest. There was no need to be merciful in the face of the Black Demon Society. They didn't deserve it. I want you all to die without a burial place. Evil Wolfhound. Bite of evil. The Black Robe went crazy. Although he didn't care about the death of his Imperial Beast. After all, it was just his tool. But the death of an Imperial Beast could not be small damage to an Imperial Beast Master. Especially his Imperial Beast Space. If he wanted to repair the Imperial Beast Space. It would take at least half a year. During these half a year, he would not be able to contract a new imperial beast or cultivate his imperial beast space, which was equivalent to wasting a long time. This was something he could not accept. Be careful. That guy's precious dragon is a bit odd. The black robe captain just casually reminded. Not really putting a baby dragon that had only awakened to the sixth rank in his eyes. The black robe didn't respond. Add some points. Facing the attack of the primordial transcendent evil wolfhound. Gu Huai didn't dare to underestimate it in the slightest. Gu Huai could only continue to add points. Crisis, a catalyst for strength. Gu Huai was calm as he directly added three consecutive points, directly strengthening his dragon claw to level 25. A level 25 dragon claw was already almost halfway through the proficiency's progress bar. This sudden change also caused the energy in the baby dragon's body to skyrocket, directly driving the realm up. Awakening 7th rank. What about you? Young Zoe froze when she saw that Gu Huai had actually killed a ground hamster so decisively, and asked, Me? Gu Huai didn't reply as his gaze went to the vicious wolfhound that was charging towards him, and he entered into battle along with the baby dragon. Dung Rui felt the changes in baby dragon and Gu Huai and was slightly stunned. This is awakening 6th order. Wait, awakening 7th order now? Dragon claw. On the dragon's claw, there was a vague dragon shadow surrounding it. A claw blasted out. It directly launched an attack towards the running vicious wolf dog. Awaken 7th order vs primordial transcendent. Bang. What was expected did not happen. Baby dragon didn't give seconds. Only the difference in strength still brought a huge pressure on the baby dragon. Directly sending the baby dragon flying out. Of course the evil wolfhound wasn't easy to bear either. It ate all of the dragon claws from this strike. And its teeth were a bit loosened. So strong. Gung Ruei and Lin Xiaoyu were so close that they both saw this scene and both of them felt very surprised in their eyes. It's hard to believe that this handsome teenager that S rank increase class talent, but even if it's an S rank increase class talent, the boost can't be this big, right? Wait, is this an adept's dragon claw? Gung Zoe was still very eagle-eyed, and she saw that the dragon claw used by the baby dragon didn't seem quite the same. How could it be? This has only awakened to the seventh stage and he's already tempered his dragon claws to proficiency? This is almost impossible to do even if one were to give up cultivation and specialize in exercising dragon claws. As a student of Magic City No. 1 Middle School, she still knew a lot about geniuses. She, along with Lin Xiaoyu, also belonged to the geniuses of Magic City No. 1 Middle School. It was just that she didn't have a strong battle power due to the fact that she was contracted to the Moon Pupil Stone. She just simply had a realm. But Lin Xiaoyu was different. Lin Xiaoyu was an existence that could be ranked in the top 10 over at Magic Capital 1 Middle School. Awakening the a rank talent, the heart of grass and trees, it is also the kind of very comprehensive talent, specializing in the wood system of the royal beast talent. Lin Xiaoyu herself also had resources and worked hard, but even so, Lin Xiaoyu had only worked out the Pink Flower King's initial skill to level 16. This speed belonged to the top few in the entire Magic City 1. It was also just a bit worse than the skills of those Kryptonian Imperial Beast Masters who specialized in their Imperial Beasts. I guess it's like this. It's probably for the baby dragon to train its dragon claw to proficiency during the awakening stage so that it can evolve in that set. 
Gung Zoe thought about it so much that it was actually just a matter of a few breaths. She still accepted the fact that in a country as big as Dongwang, there would always be some existences that were particularly demonic in certain aspects. Gu Huai was probably one of those geniuses who were more proficient in skills and not good at imperial beast realm cultivation. What's more, their first genius of the magic city had cultivated both imperial beasts to transcendent, and one of them had even reached higher transcendent, mastering a proficient skill, and was known as the magic city's once in a decade heavenly pride. If Gung Ruei knew that Gu Huai had only become a royal beast master in less than 10 days, I'm afraid that her three views would be shattered. Dull sister don't daze. Gu Huai frowned. The baby dragon was still too forced. It was also true that baby dragon's bloodline power was only high transcendent. With baby dragon's current strength, it couldn't be said that it had broken the game, and it was questionable whether it could defeat this evil wolfhound. The key now was to rely on these two girls' imperial beasts to block these imperial beasts first, giving baby dragon more time to develop. Gu Huai's gaze casually looked towards a tree. This caused Pei Wu Xie, who was hiding behind a tree and had just arrived at the battlefield, to freeze. This kid found me? Soon Pei Wu Xie shook his head. How could a brat who was only a trainee imperial beast master discover him? After all, he was a fighting master who was proficient in fighting, and was known as the civilian light of the top imperial beast master. Pei Wu enemy. When a royal beast master contracts a royal beast, the quality of his body is also enhanced and it will continuously feed back to the imperial beast master as the strength of the imperial beast increases, allowing the imperial beast master's physical qualities to continuously strengthen. Pei Wu Fei, the possessor of the S-class merging talent. The merging talent, was a very special type of talent. This type of talent could merge with the imperial beast, allowing the imperial beast to be transformed into a force for one's own battles. Coupled with the fact that Pei Wu Xie had loved to fight since he was young, this awakening of the S-rank merging talent was even more of a blessing. He began to frantically exercise his own physical qualities, and contracted various types of imperial beasts that were suitable for the type of weapons he would use after merging, greatly strengthening his individual fighting ability. One could say this, simply by looking at the strength of his physical body itself, I'm afraid that even a legendary imperial beast master would be inferior to him. Pei Wu Xie also relied on his cultivation of his physical body, coupled with his own powerful fighting ability, and even more so, along with Gu Huai's father, Gu Hong. They were all known as the four sealed top royal beast masters. All of them belonged to the kind of existences that, at full power, were capable of engaging in a brief encounter with a hegemonic imperial beast. This kind of existence naturally didn't think that Gu Huai would be able to spot him. It should just be an accident. But this brat's precious dragon, although the realm isn't high, this mastery of skills is really strong. Pei Wu Xie sighed in his heart. And at the same time, he brought a hint of curiosity towards Gu Huai. Let's see this brat's limits. The battle at the scene couldn't be considered a battle at all for Pei Wuhui. Just with his strength, he didn't even need to use the imperial beasts. He could easily suppress these imperial beasts by himself. The title of humanoid fierce beast was no joke. But although the talent of these two little girls on the side is good, their imperial beasts are much more juvenile. The battle had officially started. The other two black robes weren't watching foolishly. This place was the forest city forest after all. It belonged to the Lin family's territory. There were forest rangers in here. If their battle dragged on for too long, it was very easy to attract the attention of the forest rangers, and would cause a lot of unnecessary trouble. Go, dark stone monkeys, tear them apart. The leading black robe gave a direct order to his ace imperial beast. The stone monkey with black stripes all over its body and scarlet eyes came towards Gu Huai and the others to kill them like a zombie. Trouble. I'll protect the two of you later. You guys run. The situation was too critical, and Lin Xiaoyu didn't think there was a possibility of a turnaround. Stupid woman. You told your pink flower king to go back to defense. This forest is your home ground. If you construct a good home ground, we may not be unable to win. And you, your moon pupil beasts are very good at using illusions to fight. These ones in front of us are transformed imperial beasts. They don't have high spirits. Plus this is another place where the power of the moon is extremely dense. What are you guys doing? Gu Huai had a headache. It was obviously not very realistic to have his baby dragon, who was only at the seventh awakening stage fight against five transcendent imperial beasts. Although there were still the stone monkeys who were experienced in sparring to prey on them, these stone monkeys could only play a harassing role, preventing these black robes from dealing with Gu Huai and the others at full strength. After all, Gu Huai couldn't let these stone monkeys be harmed because of his own personal reasons. Therefore, Gu Huai was in great need of these two stupid women's help right now, as opposed to having the dark demon dragon, or that strong man hidden behind the tree. Gu Huai preferred to rely on his own strength and settle the battle. Gu Huai's words directly scolded Lin Xiaoyu into confusion. Lin Xiaoyu was a cute type of beauty, 
A childish giant what's her name kind of girl. No one had ever talked to her like this since she was a child. Good. Gung Rui on the side reacted quickly. Her ability to handle things was clearly a bit better than Lin Xiaoyu. Moon Pupil Beast. Use Moon Pupil. The noble Moon Pupil Beast raised its head proudly. Under this hazy moonlight, it was its own home turf. Little you. Good. Lin Xiaoyu took a deep breath and also reacted. This was their home ground. They didn't see how they could lose. Very well. Later on, you two listen to my command. With two extraordinary strength transcendent imperial beasts joining them, baby dragon's pressure could be quite a bit less. On the opponent's side, because they had to prevent a sneak attack from those eight stone monkeys brought by Gu Huai, they also left two transcendent imperial beasts in place. One was a primary transcendent stone monkey, and the other was a heavenly poison scorpion. Whom, although Gu Huai's imperial beasts were only awakened seventh rank, the kind of aura that Gu Huai brought with him made the two women instinctively obey. Most humans had an instinct to obey the strong. Lin Xiaoyu and Gung Rui both followed Gu Huai's instructions and began to command their imperial beasts. In terms of strength, there was indeed a gap with the other party. However, because of the home ground, and the fact that the moon pupil beast's pupil technique really did not have a small effect on the dark stone monkeys in theirs, it made the battle scorch. This teenager is a bit interesting. The more Pei Wu Xia looked at him, the more surprised he became, and his heart couldn't help but rise with a love of talent. Such a teenager should be valued, and this teenager's ability to control the battle situation was really strong. It's a pity it's not emerging talent, but it's almost over here. The gap in strength is not so good to make up for, not to mention that side is running out of patience. Pei Wu Xia had already bested his intentions to make a move. The black-robed leader was indeed running out of patience. These three little guys were unusually tenacious, and it annoyed him. Time couldn't drag on any longer. Heavenly Poison Scorpion, you go over and help as well. The huge scorpion that was half a man tall waved the huge pincers in its hand, and its gaze was ghostly as it joined towards the battle. When the several stone monkeys saw this, they launched a direct attack, but not on the heavenly poison scorpion, but towards these three black robes. The task Gu Huai had given these stone monkeys before he came in was for them to hold the black robes imperial beasts at bay, not to attack easily, and just to give them pressure from the sidelines. Stupid monkeys, the black robed leader snorted coldly. If it wasn't for these stupid monkeys, he would have already taken down these three brats. The dark stone monkey's reaction was extremely fast, instantly blocking a stone monkey with great speed, and instantly striking towards the stone monkeys on the side. If this dark stone monkey was really allowed to fight with these eight stone monkeys brought by Gu Huai, it was feared that it would be able to defeat these eight stone monkeys at the cost of serious injuries with the power of a single monkey. But its current task was not to defeat, but to protect. Protecting was far more difficult than defeating. It desperately managed to block only three of them and still three of them missed. These three stone monkeys directly attacked the black-robed men, but these three black-robed men did not have any worry or fear. If one could see their faces under their black robes, one could instead see a cruel smile on their faces. Just as the stone monkeys' attacks were about to fall on them, these stone monkeys couldn't help but tremble, and their attacks fell softly on the black-robed men, not bringing them a single ounce of damage at all. On the other side, Gu Huai also saw the black-robed man letting the heavenly poison scorpion come over, and his face was grave. Moon Pupil Beast. Use Moon Pupil on the evil wolf dog. Pollen King. Watch out for our protection. Baby Dragon. Add some points. The first two words Gu Huai roared out. The battle had reached this stage. And the two women had instead become outsiders. Watching the match from the sidelines. Because Gu Huai resented giving instructions to the two women and making them command again was too slow. He directly told them to make the Imperial Beasts listen to their instructions. So that they could better deal with the tense situation. That or that medium transcendent stone monkey was too annoying. That last sentence Gu Huai was what was transmitted to baby dragon by way of induction. So that baby dragon would be prepared for the addition. The baby dragon, who was covered in scars, couldn't help but be shaken. Another point increase? This kind of unearned power was a bit uncomfortable at first, but now it felt really good. Adding points to add points. This time, Gu Huai added the dragon claw to level LB30 in one breath and the experience of adding 5 levels in a row brought the baby dragon to the brink of a breakthrough right away. Baby, baby dragon and Gu Huai's breath merged together, their eyes determined. Dragon Claw A 3 inch long white claw shadow appeared and directly struck the 7 inches of the flower-tailed snake that had been temporarily mesmerized by Moon Hitomi. Flower-tailed snake, die, everything happened in a flash of lightning, and coincidentally, it happened to be in contrast to the 3 stone monkeys that had fallen. The power of technology? Most of Gu Huai's mind was on Baby Dragon's side of the battlefield, but Gu Huai still paid attention to the stone monkeys and them in time, and frowned. The thing he was most worried about had still happened, 
The technological power of this world was far stronger than aquamarine. In a world like this, it was natural that there would be organizations that would specialize in developing technologies on how to deal with imperial beasts for profit. Although these were strictly prohibited by the Donghuang Kingdom and basically wouldn't circulate on the market, these were naturally not binding on organizations like the Black Demon Society. The good thing is that these technologies can basically only deal with some imperial beasts that are not of a high grade, and there is still nothing they can do to face the high grade imperial beasts, that or else the Mi country, which was known for its technological power, would have long since taken off. What are we going to do? The two women, who were basically equivalent to transparent people, naturally noticed. They were just rejoicing at the fact that the flower tailed serpent had been given a kill, but in the blink of an eye, these black robes brought them even worse news. They subconsciously looked towards Gu Huai, who had long since turned into their backbone. This is the only way. Worried in Gu Huai's mind as to whether or not these black robes would make a move against the injured stone monkeys, he directly contacted the dark descendant demon dragon, telling it to be on the lookout to make a move at any time. With the strength of the dark demonic dragon, it could completely block the attack directly when it was about to hit. Even the other party didn't know what was going on. The existence of the dark descendant demon dragon was also Gu Huai's greatest strength. In this night, Everything had long since entered the realm of the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon, including Pei Wu Xia as well. It was only that Pei Wu Xia was entirely due to the fact that his strength wasn't at full strength, that otherwise he would have been able to discover the end. Keep adding points. Baby Dragon. Treasure. Having just handily slain a transcendent imperial beast, Baby Dragon's essence was now at its peak. It was precisely because of this that Gu Huai decided to continue adding points, allowing Baby Dragon to directly point its skills to the mastery stage at this stage. Mastery and proficient skills were two completely different stages. Proficient meant that the proficiency of a skill had reached the realm of great accomplishment, being able to utilize it in a variety of ways, and also being able to unleash the skill in a certain change of form. This was a realm that could be attained by most imperial beasts as long as they had enough time and energy invested in it. But mastery was completely different. To control, you need to have a strong understanding of the skill. You have already developed your own understanding of the skill, and you will be able to understand the skill. At this time, it is not limited to the skill itself, but in the control of the power, the skill will be completed out of the pattern. The skill that is well controlled can also be combined with the rest of the skills in terms of energy to form a more powerful skill, or even an axiomatic attack. Whether or not the imperial beast could become a monarch, there was one very crucial point, and that was whether or not the imperial beast had its own Upanishad. Add points. Consume strengthening points asterisk 100, 000. LV30 level Dragon Claw strengthened to LV31 level. With 100, 000 reinforcement points down, the baby dragon instantly felt a different change. The most intuitive thing was that the baby dragon's realm had once again completed a breakthrough, directly breaking through to the awakening 8th rank. The second thing was that baby dragon's aura had also changed. The two Gung Ruis didn't feel much about this. Their minds were on it, and they were in a panic. But Pei Wu Xie, who was hiding behind a tree, was truly stunned. How is this possible? Mastery stage? This is a fucking joke, right? Pei Wuxia felt like his three views were shattered. It was too unbelievable. An awakened seventh stage. No, now it was an awakened eighth stage imperial beast, but it was actually grasping a skill of the mastery stage? This was really outrageous to open the door to the outrageous, outrageous to the core. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, Pei Wuxia would never have been able to believe it. Is it this baby dragon? Or is it this kid? It should be this baby dragon's unbelievable enlightenment, right? Pei Wu Xie could only think towards the baby dragon so that he could barely accept this fact. After all, Gu Huai looked like a high school student in the past, and a high school student wouldn't be able to do something so unbelievable even if he was a demon. When I was close to the entrance exams, it seems like I was only able to train my skills to level 20 before I couldn't lift them anymore. Pei Wu Xie sighed and had no intention of striking again. A control stage skill. Even if this dragon babe was only awakened at the 8th rank, was enough to deal with the current situation. A mastery stage skill was quite outrageous. The baby dragon only felt as if it had opened up the second chakra, and its understanding of the dragon claws had reached an unimaginable realm. The medium transcendent stone monkey rushed over, its eyes filled with numbness, and it didn't have any sadness for the death of its companion, as if it had no feelings. If it was before, baby dragon would not confront this stone monkey head on. Every time, he would let the moon pupil beast use the moon pupil to influence the stone monkey and then skillfully avoid the attack. The gap in strength is too great, and fighting head-on is just giving it away. But now, Baby Dragon looked straight at the Stone Monkey. Dragon Claw, raising the Dragon Claw to the mastery stage. Along with it, the Baby Dragon's claws also became hard. 
This time, the dragon claw was completely different from the previous one. The previous dragon claw was shrouded with a layer of power on the outside, but this time there was nothing. All the power was condensed within the claws. Bang! The baby dragon and the stone monkey's attacks clashed together. Both Gung Rui girls revealed a worried look. The black-robed man's smile was rampant, finally taking down these three brats. But the expected scene didn't happen at all. A hint of surprise appeared in even the stone monkey's numb eyes. This power. Bang! The stone monkey didn't have any advantage this time, and the attacks of both sides collided together, evenly matched. The stone monkey was surprised and wanted to take a step back and attack with its feet. But as it stepped back it realized that the hand that collided with the baby dragon was wrapped in unknown energy. In the time delayed by this wrapping, the baby dragon's other claw struck viciously towards the stone monkey's head. Dragon claw. A look of panic appeared in the stone monkey's eyes. At this moment, it felt the aura of death. Bang. The time was too short. It had just controlled the hardening power on its feet, and it was too late to transfer it to its head. This also had a consequence. Baby dragon's claws went straight through the stone monkey's head, and the entire head was blown out in a very bloody scene. Medium transcendent stone monkey. Dead. Black blood splattered on the baby dragon's body, adding a coldness to the baby dragon that originally looked extremely cute. The heavenly poison scorpion, which had rushed over in high spirits to do something big, stopped hard, because it felt the crisis of death from the baby dragon. The same was true for the evil wolfhound on the side. The evil wolfhound looked at the baby dragon with vigilance, not moving a muscle. Everything happened in a few breaths. The three black robes, as well as the two women, Gung Rue, didn't react, and things just happened. What is this situation? Lin Xiaoyu gulped. She was somewhat in disbelief of the results she saw. I don't know either. Gung Ruei was also confused. Even with her knowledge, she didn't understand what had happened. Why the baby dragon was suddenly so brave. Skills at the mastery stage were still too distant for her to associate with. The three black robes were also dumbfounded. They stared blankly at the image of the stone monkey's death, and hadn't regained their senses. But Gu Hui didn't care about that. This was a critical moment now. He had to fight quickly. His baby dragon couldn't last much longer. Such a long fight and outburst would be a strict test of the baby dragon's physical strength and perseverance. Baby dragon. Bow. Baby dragon's figure flashed and directly killed towards the evil wolfhound. The originally aggressive evil wolf dog turned its head and ran. It didn't want to die. If it doesn't come out again, these people will run away. When the heavenly poison scorpion saw the vicious wolfhound running, it also turned around and ran. When Gu Huai saw this image, there was nothing he could do. If they were to do it head on with them, the baby dragon would still be able to take them by force. But if they turned and ran, the baby dragon wouldn't be able to chase after them. It didn't have much stamina left now, and it was completely relying on its perseverance to hold on. So Gu Huai directly shouted at Pei Wu Xia behind the big tree. At this sentence, Gung Ruei and Lin Xiaoyu were both a bit stunned. Is there anyone else? Pei Wu Xia behind the tree was even more shaken. He really found me? How is this possible? Pei Wuxia's curiosity about Gu Huai in his heart was even more directly pulled full, but his movements were not slow. These few people from the Black Demon Society, he would not let any of them go. A shadow crossed, that was a speed that Gu Huai couldn't even see. These few imperial beasts, which were not weak in Gu Huai's eyes, rose up with their hands. The three remaining transcendent imperial beasts that hadn't died were then all knocked out on the ground. Along with that, the three black robes did the same. At the same time, Pei Wu Xie's figure appeared in front of Gu Huai and the others. How did you sense me? Pei Wu Xie's gaze was all that was left of Gu Huai. The baby dragon also collapsed directly at this moment because it was too consumed. Gu Huai had already prepared for this, and in the first moment, he received the baby dragon into the imperial beast space, allowing it to recover properly inside. Only after doing all this did Gu Huai reply. Secret. At this moment, Gu Huai also got a good look at Pei Wu Xie's face, and a look of surprise appeared in his eyes. I didn't expect it to be him. Obviously, Gu Huai recognized Pei Wu Xia. It was only that Pei Wu Xia didn't know Gu Huai. Or rather, he only knew the Gu Huai from several years ago. Alright, Pei Wu Xia wasn't surprised to get this answer. And he didn't expect to get an answer as soon as he asked. However, his curiosity about the teenager increased. As he could sense that the teenager didn't seem to be afraid of him. It seemed like, he still had his bottom card? It should be because he doesn't know me and only thought that I was an ordinary intermediate, or even advanced imperial beast master. But even so, this teenager isn't simple. He could be considered to have watched from the sidelines from beginning to end, and there wasn't even the slightest bit of panic regarding Gu Huai's from entering the game to breaking it, as if everything was under control. It was amazing. Introduce yourself. My name is Pei Wu Xia. Pei Wu enemy extended his hand towards Gu Huai, 
somewhat curious as to how this teenager would react when he knew his name. Was it adoration? Or adoration? But it disappointed Pei Wu enemy. Gu Huai didn't have any reaction on his face when he heard his introduction, as if it was as if he didn't know who he was. This made Pei Wao Di frustrated. Could it be that his Pei Wao Di's name was so bad? Hello, I'm Pei Invincible, your Uncle Pei? Before Gu Huai could finish his words, Gung Ruei took the lead. Uncle Pei? Pei Wu Xiaf rose, his gaze looking at the young girl with some familiarity. I'm Gung Ruei of the Gung family. Gung Ruei's tone was a bit excited. Pei Wu Xia's appearance basically meant that they were absolutely safe. You're Zoe? Pei Wu Xia froze, then his tone became extremely emotional. I didn't realize that it's only been two years since I've seen you, and that little girl from back then has grown so beautiful. Pei Wu Xia's eyes as he looked at Gung Ruei were filled with the kindness of an elder looking at a younger generation. It seemed like the relationship between the two wasn't that simple. After all, it wouldn't be like this if they just knew each other from home. But neither Pei Wu Xia nor Gung Roy Yi had any intention of explaining. Lin Xiaoyu, on the other hand, was excitedly pulling Gung Rui Yi's arm. Pei Wu Xia of course she also recognized. It was just that she knew the other party and the other party didn't know her. This person is one of her idols. Uncle Pei introduces you. This is my scale. Lin Xiaoyu of the Lin family. Gung Rui Yi naturally understood her own bestie's thoughts and hurriedly introduced her. You. Are good. Hello. Pei Wu Xia smiled politely at Lin Xiaoyu and his gaze went to Gu Wai. Kid, I'm quite optimistic about you. Are you willing to be my disciple? Pei Wu Xie's heart was still thinking about Gu Wai. He felt that Gu Wai was a good seedling, although it was a bit of a pity that he wasn't a merged type of talent. This teenager's future was definitely not bad as long as he was cultivated, especially since this precious dragon had a deep understanding of dragon claws, as long as he had the cheek to let the Gu family do him a favor. This precious dragon's future would be unlimited, so he intended to give Gu Wai a chance. As for Gu Huai's identity and background, he didn't care, nor did he mind. The fact that he dared to stand up for himself in the face of a moment of crisis was proof enough of Gu Huai's warm-heartedness. When Gung Ruei and Lin Xiaoyu heard this, they both couldn't help but turn their gazes towards Gu Huai. The former's eyes were tinged with anticipation, while the latter was filled with envy. To be able to have an existence like Pei Wufei take as a disciple was something that countless people could only dream of. None of the three people present thought that Gu Huai would reject Pei Wu enemy. Pei? Pei Senior, I may have to fail your generous love. Gu Huai originally wanted to call Pei Uncle as well, but on second thought, he thought better of it. Rejected? Pei Wu Xiaf rose, clearly not expecting this outcome. The same was true for the two Gung Ruei girls. This result was a little too out of their expectations. Gung Ruei was even anxious. Don't mess around. Do you know Uncle Pei's identity? Uncle Pei is known as the light of the commoners. I know. Gu Huai interrupted Gung Ruei. It's just that my path is different from Senior Pei's. But, Gung Ruei opened her mouth, wanting to say something, but she knew what she should say. Elder Pei, thank you for your kindness. I'll take my leave now. After Gu Huai finished speaking, he also smiled at the two women as a greeting and turned around, ready to leave. Pei Wu Xia, with a smile on his face, also smiled amiably at a smile, seemingly not taking the matter of being rejected by Gu Huai to heart. Wait, when Gu Huai had taken a few steps out, Gung Ruei suddenly shouted. Gu Huai stopped his steps and turned his head to look over in confusion. Under the moonlight, Gung Ruei's face was slightly red. That, thank you for saving my life. You're welcome, by the way. In fact, even without me, Elder Pei would have stepped in. Gu Huai didn't take this matter to heart. The reason he would have stepped in was to treat this as a baby dragon's experience. The effect was indeed very good. Awakening 8th rank, LV 31 level dragon claws. But I have to thank you all the same. Gung Rui's tone was serious. And my name is Gung Rui. I'm a senior at Magic City First High School. What's your name? Me? Gu Huai sniffed. Then grinned. Gu Huai. After Gu Huai finished speaking, he turned around and left once again. Gung Rui looked at Gu Huai's back and couldn't help but say, Gu Huai. Thank you. I'll remember you. Besides if you ever go to Mordor, you can contact me. This is my contact information. Gung Rui pulled out a post-it note from somewhere. Wrote her phone number on it ran towards Gu Huai, shoved the post-it note into Gu Huai's hand, and turned away with a red face. Gu Huai looked at the note in his hand, the corner of his mouth slightly raised. This girl, has so much meaning. Unfortunately, master is the boy you can't get. Gu Huai stuffed the note into his pocket and walked towards the stone monkeys without looking back. Those stone monkeys also ran out from the forest and carried the injured three times. Immediately afterward, Gu Huai and the stone monkeys, without looking back, turned around and left. Gung Rui, on the other hand, ran back to the original flavor. 
watching Gu Huai's back gradually disappear, and her mood slowly became lost. Only when Gu Huai's silhouette completely disappeared did Gung Rui bring her mind back, just in time to see Pei Wu Xie and Lin Xiaoyu's strange looks, and couldn't help but explain, I, I didn't mean anything else, just thanking him for saving my life. Oh, I know, what are you explaining? Lin Xiaoyu hemmed and hawed, and Pei Wu Xie also revealed a similar smile, making Gung Rui Yi regret why she had bothered to explain, but Pei Wu Xie looked at the way Gu Huai left. Gu Huai, why is that name somewhat familiar? It seems like your son has this name, right? Early the next morning, Gung Rui and Lin Xiaoyu boarded a moving train to Magic City. Tomorrow was the college entrance exam, and today they had to prepare well to get a good grade. The college entrance exam in this world was like this. On the morning of June 10th, there will be a written exam, and there will only be one subject, called the comprehensive section. Inside the comprehensive section included the seven cultural subjects of the imperial beasts, and each subject had a certain weighting. In the afternoon, there was a break, and then the next day started with the most important test, which was the practical test. The actual combat accounted for 450 points, much more important than the arts. Many schools, moreover, have a certain score limit for the practical. Like last year's Hangzhou University, the scoreline requirement is 681 points, which requires the actual score necessary to have 420 points, otherwise the score is no use, they just do not accept. This is actually understandable. After all, this is the world of the Imperial Beast, the Imperial Beast is important. Of course, here is the Imperial Beast Battle Professional, like some good universities, which can not only only Imperial Beast Battle Professional, there are Imperial Beast Cultivation. Imperial Beast Evolution and so on different professional. These professional college entrance examination content is naturally an Imperial Beast Battle Professional is different. Only every year. Everyone's focus is basically on the Imperial Beast Battle Specialty. When Gung Ruei returned to Magic City, she immediately returned to the Gung family. The Gung family, a large family in Magic City, although not as strong as the Gu family, it was still considered a first class family. Only the Gung family's training method is rather special. They are basically loose before college. The family will only give some basic resources. It was to give only the initial imperial beasts that weren't particularly good, and let them figure out how to train on their own. When the college entrance exams were over, they would be graded based on their performance in the entrance exams, thus determining the status of the family. Of course, all of this is on the surface, and their parents, secretly, will definitely provide some support. This was also something that the Gung family had no way of avoiding. This rule was only relatively fair, as long as they didn't go too far. Everyone turned a blind eye. Miss, as soon as Gung Ru Ae arrived home, the butler respectfully said, Uncle Lai, please help me find information on the next person. This person's name is Gu Huai. He should be from Hang province, or possibly the rest of the provinces. He's a senior in high school like me, and his imperial beast is a precious dragon. Forget it, it's better to wait until the college entrance exams are over. The results of the college entrance exam in this world came out especially fast. The written exam was basically the next day to know the results. In the case of the actual battle, it was even treated as scoring. The specific scores would all be released on the third day. But this is only for ordinary people. For large families like them, the next night will be able to know the results of most people. The various university houses. The next night also began to call and recruit people. And in the face of some extremely outstanding performances, they even directly ran over to recruit people. Yes, the housekeeper retreated out, and it could be seen that Gung Rui's status in the Gung family was very high. In actuality, this was also true. Gung Rui's father, the current head of the Gung family, a top-tier royal beast master. As for Gung Rui's sister-in-law, Gung Qinghan was also Pei Wuxia's wife. That is, the Gung family currently didn't have a legendary royal beast master. That or else with the Gung family's comprehensive strength, how could it be a top-tier great family? Gu Huai. A faint smile appeared on Gung Rui's face when she said Gu Huai's name. No matter which university you go to, I'll follow you. Gung Rui clenched her fists with confidence. With her strength, she could indeed just pick any school and go to whichever one she wanted. The college entrance exams had begun. The college entrance exam was still extremely important to Gung Rui, because it not only determined her college entrance exam results, but also her rating within the family. She would naturally give it her all. Gung Rui devoted her entire body and mind to the college entrance exam, and everything went smoothly. When the results of the practical examination came out, a bright smile appeared on her face. 287 points on the written exam, 438 points for the practical test, a total score of 725 points. With this score, although she couldn't be the top student of the Magic City, 
but ranking in the top five was certainly no problem. This achievement was also considered to be a good explanation to the family. Beautiful. Go home. Dung Ruei excitedly returned home and let her housekeeper start looking up Gu Huai's college entrance exam results. The Gung family had connections in the education bureau, so it was really easy to look this up. During this time, Dung Ruei also knew Lin Xiaoyu's scores, 266 on the written exam, 427 on the practical, and a total score of 693. This was also a very good score. Basically any school in the country could just enter. This also made both of them quite excited. Evening. Miss, this is the test results about Gu Huai from the Hang province side. The housekeeper brought over a report. Gung Ruoi immediately picked it up, only to see that there were more than 30 Gu Huai's names on it, along with their bust photos. The information was quite detailed. Name, gender, imperial beast, written test score, actual combat score, and the place where they were tested. These were still sorted down according to their rankings. Dung Rui's first glance was at the one in first place. Gu Huai, male, imperial beast iron armored rhinoceros, 266 points in the written test, 361 points in the actual combat, total score of 627 points, where the examination site Madu is located. Not this one. Dung Rui's gaze continued to sweep downward. No no no. All of them. Is this information from Uncle Lai correct? Miss. I asked the education department over there, and this information was vetted by them. Like this. Gung Rui frowned. Could it be that Gu Huai? He's not from Hang province, and just went to that place for training like me? Uncle Lai, please help me inquire about the nation called by that name. If you're avoiding trouble, just identify his imperial beast as the baby dragon. It occurred to Gung Rui that there must be a lot of people named Gu Huai in the entire dragon country, so it would still be much more convenient to determine this information about the baby dragon being an imperial beast. Good, but if it's nationwide, it'll be a bit slower. That's okay. For the next two days, Gung Zoe waited for news from Rebo. Every time Uncle Lee got information about a province, he brought it over to Gung Rui, and the end result was disappointment. Nothing? Gung Rui's good-looking brows were furrowed. It was hard to believe that what Gu Huai had told her was a fake name. But Gu Huai, why would he do that? Humph, is this young lady that unpopular? Gung Rui snorted coldly, somewhat annoyed. However, Gung Rui didn't think for a second that Gu Huai was only a sophomore in high school right now, and it had only been less than a month since he had gotten the Imperial Beast. Gu Huai didn't know that someone was thinking about him during his time of training, and even if he did Gu Huai wouldn't care. After leaving that place from the Black Demon Hand, Gu Huai took the injured stone monkeys back to their old home, preparing to heal their wounds. In fact, the three stone monkeys hadn't suffered any injuries, which meant that they had been electrocuted. When the three stone monkeys woke up, Gu Huai prepared earth crystal blocks for all of them. Immediately afterward, Gu Huai began to ponder what the second skill that the baby dragon needed to learn was. According to the Gu clan's evolutionary route, all that was needed was to strengthen the skill dragon claw to mastery. At the mastery stage, basically no one would dare to think about it. It was too difficult. But since he had already strengthened the dragon claw to mastery, Gu Huai's heart became bigger. If he could learn another skill for the baby dragon, and compose the skill with the dragon claw to form an aeon, stimulating the baby dragon's preceding factor. There might be an unexpected surprise. Call and ask grandpa. Although Gu Huai himself was a scholar, his insight was ultimately too little. With a grandfather like this at home, why not make good use of it? But it's too late at this point. Wait for tomorrow morning. It's just as well to plan for the evening itself. Early the next morning, after Gu Huai brought the precious dragons and stone monkeys for their morning exercise, he dialed grandpa Guan's phone, a holographic projection call. Less than three seconds after the call was dialed, the old man's affectionate voice came from the other end of the line. Good grandson Mrs. Grandpa? Yes, Grandpa. The two of them chatted for a while before Gu Huai shifted the topic to the baby dragon. Grandpa, my baby dragon has already raised its dragon claw to the mastery stage, and I called you today mainly because I also wanted to ask me what I should do about this situation. Up to mastery? That's really fast. It seems that this talent of yours is indeed very strong. But right now, the time you've been an imperial beast master is still short, and the precious dragon hasn't reached the tenth stage of awakening yet, there's still a lot of time left, you can try and have the baby dragon raise its dragon claw to the mastery stage, you can give it half a year's time, if you can raise the dragon claw to the control stage, the combat dragon beast bloodline will be purer after evolution by then, and there's a great possibility that it will evolve into a high overlord bloodline in the future, the old master was seriously analyzing Gu Huai, but as soon as Gu Huai heard it, he knew that the old master had misheard him. However, Gu Huai didn't interrupt the old master at once. 
but waited for the old master to say a couple sentences before reminding him with a smile. Grandpa, what I'm saying is that my precious dragon has already raised its dragon claws to the mastery stage. What did you say? The person on the other end of the phone was silent for a few seconds before the volume rose immediately afterward. I'm saying that baby dragon has already raised its dragon claw to the control stage, which is LV31. Really? When have I ever lied to you, grandpa? Also, Guan was silent for a while longer before asking with some uncertainty. Really? Really? Truer than real gold. Gu Huai could also understand the old man's thoughts. If someone had told him before this that a person who had just become a royal beast master for less than 10 days had easily raised the skills of an initial royal beast to the mastery stage, Gu Huai wouldn't have believed it. Instead, he would have thought that this person was a fool, right? Then what is the current realm of the precious dragon? Awakening 8th stage. I. The old master opened his mouth and didn't understand what he should say. After a pause, the old master slowly said, You kid still gave me a big scare. But to be able to raise the dragon claw to the mastery stage so quickly, this is also good news. It just so happens that I have a thought process on my side. Something that the original me wanted to try. Except that grandpa, I still couldn't get the precious dragons to control this arcana after spending most of the year. The old master had nurtured three baby dragons, so he naturally knew the baby dragons extremely well. Moreover, the old master's talent was exceptional. Even for his initial imperial beasts, it took him half a year to barely raise his dragon claws to the mastery stage. But the mastery stage was only the beginning. This path of his, he needed to let the baby dragon learn the skill that the combat dragon beast needed to learn in advance when the dragon claw was raised to the control stage so that this skill and the dragon claw could make a combination to form an arcane skill, which would change the baby dragon's combat factor directly at the baby dragon stage. In this way, he tried to see if he could break the shackles of the overlord bloodline. Unfortunately, he failed. The reason for the failure was because there wasn't enough time, and the baby dragon simply couldn't suppress the energy in its body. If it continued, the baby dragon would have completed its breakthrough and directly advanced from awakening to transcendent. After advancing to transcendent, the unstable evolutionary factor in the baby dragon's body would become stable as a result, and it would no longer be able to evolve through this method. The old man failed all three times, but he was indeed very strong, evolving to the final stage all three times. Thunder Saint Dragon King, Fire Flame Tyrant Dragon King, and Wind Thunder Cloud Saint Dragon, all three of them were of the High Overlord bloodline, and each one of them was ridiculously strong, plus the fact that the old master's other three dragon-type imperial beasts were also terrifying which laid the foundation for the old master's position in East Huang, the strongest dragon imperial master. Gu Huai listened to the old master's words and did not bother to interrupt. He knew that the old master would continue on. The baby dragon is a four-stage evolutionary route. First, it evolves into a basic pure dragon breed combat dragon beast, then branches out to advance into a monarch bloodline imperial beast by learning skills with different attributes, and then undergoes a final evolution. After so many years down the line, our Gu family has gained a deep understanding of the three overlord bloodlines of the Thunder Sacred Dragon King, Fire Flame Tyrant Dragon King, and Wind Thunder Cloud Sacred Dragon, and we can basically guarantee that all of them will be able to allow the precious dragons to evolve to the final stage. That's why your old man and I have all three baby dragons trained. Gu Huai nodded. Pops and Grandpa made sure that they all operated this way, and they all cultivated them successfully. Unfortunately, there's also a flaw here, and that's a shortcoming that I won't find until I'm at this level. And that's that the baby dragon's foundation is so poor that evolving it into a high overlord bloodline basically brings it to its limit. And it's too difficult to go further. In response to this flaw, I've also been trying to improve it. But in the end, the results weren't very good. Grandpa has a suggestion on his side. You can choose one of these three skills for baby dragon to learn. If it can really combine with the dragon claw to form an AOE before it advances to transcendent, it might be able to raise baby dragon's foundation up during its awakening stage. And in the future, it can break the shackles of the hegemonic bloodline. The old master spoke seriously. He had thought about all these things many times. In fact, it wasn't just baby dragon. In fact, there were many imperial beasts that were in the awakening stage that was a stage of laying a good foundation. And many people wouldn't let the imperial beasts pass through the awakening stage too quickly. Instead they would let the imperial beasts stay in this stage for a while longer, so that they could lay their foundation well. The 10,000 foot high building is built from the ground up. This is the truth. Only by building the foundation well could one continuously add more things to it. Good. Gu Huai nodded seriously. He listened to advice. Since the old master had said so, it wouldn't be too much to ask that he himself should raise the dragon claw to its limit anyways, to have a hearth and home, right? But then again, the limit of a primary skill seems to be level 40? 
I wonder if this mythic rank talent infinite strengthening of mine can break this shackle. Skills were divided according to quality. Roughly, they were divided into these eight skills. No quality. Beginner. Intermediate. Advanced. Top. Super rank. Quasi god rank. And god rank. There was a considerable difference in the strength of skills between each quality. Of course this didn't mean that beginner skills were inferior to intermediate and advanced skills. Another thing about low quality skills, aside from the fact that the power of the skill was much lower, was that the difficulty of practicing them was also much lower and easier to control. A high level low quality skill can be stronger than a low level high quality skill. Like a primary skill, it was still possible for someone with a certain amount of talent to point this skill to the mastery stage. However, advanced skills were too difficult, and trying to point the skill to mastery would require a particularly large amount of time, even if it was unlikely. I will now pass these three skills to you. These three skills are all advanced skills, and the difficulty is a bit on the high side for Baby Dragon. You have the perfect strengthening talent. If you can strengthen your skills to proficiency before transcendence, you can try combining two skills. Take Dragon Claw as the main one. Thank you grandpa, ha ha, good grandson and grandpa are polite, I'll pass the resources to you here, if there's something you don't understand feel free to talk to grandpa, in addition, choose which skill also say with grandpa, I will let people send the resources to you, good, the phone hung up, it didn't take long for the resources to be sent over, it was a resource of both video and ppt, and the content inside was very detailed, with all sorts of precautions and teaching processes all over, if this was outside, such a resource could not be bought at the cost of any amount of money. What about yourself? Just ask, and someone will prepare it properly for you. That's why the gap between the commoners and the children of the powerful and noble is really big. The commoners who were able to rise to power were never because of their own hard work, but because there was a bull who saw you and was willing to invest in you. Then otherwise it was just relying on your own constant hard work and effort. Even if your talent was unbelievable, your future achievements would be limited. Gu Huai opened the resources and looked at them. There were three skills in it, all of which were high-level skills. The first one was thunder movement, a skill that exercised the thunder element in the body, stimulating the body's cells for a short burst. Combined with dragon claw, it could directly and drastically increase the power and penetration of the dragon claw, as well as allowing the dragon claw to have a paralyzing effect attached to it. And at the same time, it could also increase the speed of movement and the speed of striking. The second is fire trace. The effect of this skill is to leave fire traces on the opponent's body through a contact type of attack, causing persistent, difficult to recover traces. The combination with Dragon Claw is that it allows the claws of the Dragon Claw to carry the aura of flame, as well as increase the attack surface of the Dragon Claw, continuing to engage in sustained combat. The third is Tornado. The effect of this skill is to form a tornado to attack through the control of airflow. The combination with the Dragon Claw is to utilize the Dragon Claw's driving of the air to form a more powerful multi-channel tornado to attack. And the Dragon Claw can also become sharper, with the wind attributes cutting effect. The combination of the three skills and the Dragon Claws are all very good, and the combination of the above said way, but also just the way the old master suggested. The specific can also be based on their own ideas, their own experience too, is not fixed. Guwai watched the video effects and finally chose the first skill. I've decided it's you. Thunderous movement. After Gu Huai had decided on the skill, he spoke the news to the old master. And the old master immediately had someone send Gu Huai the resources for thunder movement's cultivation. It was mainly just some materials from the thunder system. Wanting to learn a new skill wasn't that easy. It wasn't something that could be learned by looking at it twice down. Or having some kind of skill book to slap on the head of a baby dragon. There was a complete teaching in all of this. And it also required the assistance of props and materials thus stimulating the factors in the baby dragon's body and forming a closed loop in order for the baby dragon to learn the skill. The follow-up is to continuously strengthen this skill is all. For the skills of the imperial beasts, the main thing was also that it was valuable to be precise, not to have more. Even if you want to learn more skills, you should mainly learn some functional skills, so that you can deal with some of the troubles you encounter in the wild. However, there are only two or three major skills. It is also known as the meaning of one trick is good for everything. The battle dragon beast was to continuously strengthen the combination of this dragon claw and any one skill to form an AoE, continuously strengthening the power of the AoE, and ultimately, after evolving, it would form a new skill, a skill that comes with its own rank, before the resources arrive. Baby dragon. Let's work on the dragon claw first. Bow. The resources arrived the next day after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A lot. Because the old man had brought more than just resources to Guhui. He had even moved over a venue suitable for Baby Dragon to train this skill, which forced Gu Huai to come up with. Good man. Everything was ready. So Gu Huai directly started messing around. 
The difficulty of learning advanced skills wasn't low, and if enlightenment was poor, there was no way to learn it even in a year or two. Luckily, Baby Dragon was exceptionally talented, and it only took him a little over four hours to learn the skill of thunder movement. Baby Dragon did a great job, worthy of being a high-level skill. This was only LV1 level, and it already had a powerful effect not weaker than Dragon Claw at LV7-8 level. Bow. The precious dragon that received the praise immediately revealed a smug smile, causing Gu Hui to laugh. Let's work together next. Bow. Just as Gu Hui and the baby dragon were fighting to continue working on the skill of thunder movement, the dark demon dragon suddenly transmitted a voice. Gu Hui. I sense a nasty aura in the depths of the forest. There's fighting inside. Nasty aura? A battle? Gu Hui froze. Well, the fight has that little brat from before, and he's not doing very well right now. That brat from before? Gu Huai didn't react for a moment, but soon Gu Huai reacted. The corner of Gu Huai's mouth twitched, with the identity of a dark demon dragon. He could indeed call Pei Wufei that way. Is that annoying aura from the Dark Devil Society? Yes. In that case, then Grandpa Dark Descent. Let's go over and take a look. The Dark Descent demon dragon froze and asked. You're going to? Naturally, just in time to meet Senior Pei. Gu Huai grinned. It would probably be more interesting to meet in this way. Okay, but wait. You don't get too close. Wait for me to get the situation over there. Forget it. You'd better sit on my shoulder all the time. The dark demon dragon thought about it and still felt that it was safer on his shoulder. As for whether it would be dangerous, as a veteran overlord imperial beast and being in this kind of darkness, it naturally had no fear of anything. The time now was just up to 8 o'clock and the night was in full swing. Then I'll trouble grandpa dark descent. Let's go. The dark descent demon dragon's words fell in Guhui's mind. And in the next second, Gu Huai didn't even know how he got to the Dark Descent's shoulder. As for the baby dragon, it was right on Gu Huai's side, huddled together with him. The size of the Dark Descent demon dragon was large, with the norm being over 5 meters tall. If it was in a fighting state, its size was even better, capable of turning into a behemoth of more than 20 meters. After bringing Gu Huai and baby dragon over, the Dark Devil dragon dived directly into the darkness. Gu Huai and baby dragon sat on the shoulders of the Dark Devil dragon not feeling any bumps, not to mention the flow of air currents. The Dark Devil Dragon had long ago covered the surface of Gu Huai and Baby Dragon's bodies with a layer of darkness-based protective shield, protecting Gu Huai and Baby Dragon within it. The speed of the Dark Descent Demon Dragon was very fast, even in the forest where there were especially many obstacles. In less than five minutes, the voice of the Dark Descent Demon Dragon was heard. Here we are. Wait. You two sit tight. Forest City Forest Area 1. Inner Perimeter. Pei Wuxie's body was glittering with golden light, holding a golden lance in his hand, clad in golden armor, and a large golden tiger on his crotch. This appearance should logically be very imposing, but Pei Wuxie was really as wretched as he wanted to be right now. Mr. Pei, you might as well just tie your hands and surrender. We already knew that you would follow us here, and have already patched up the dragnet over here, specifically targeting imperial beastmasters with emerging talent like you. Around Pei Wufei, there were three black-robed men, only that these three black-robed men weren't wearing hats, but rather masks. Poker masks. All of them were spades, which were the six of spades, the seven of spades, and the nine of spades. At the heels of the three, as well as Pei Wuxia's side, there were more than a dozen imperial beasts covering them. All of these imperial beasts were monarch-level imperial beasts, and each of them exuded an extremely terrifying aura. Pei Wuxia carried a smear of blood at the corner of his mouth, his face pale. His gaze went to a device in the Nine of Spades hands and he smiled bitterly. Count me out. It's me who trusted others too much. Pei Wuxia's heart was uncomfortable. With his strength, if he didn't have a device that specialized in restricting the talent of merging, even if he didn't have the means to arrest these three Black Demon Society executives, he would still be able to escape with ease. But it was the fact that someone inside the country had leaked his whereabouts that had led to today's situation, and Pei Wuxia thought of who it was. That device. A device that was developed by the Meter Country. The effect was also very simple. It was that it would create a biomagnetic field that would affect the degree of fusion between the merging talent possessor and the imperial beast. The effect wasn't much. It would probably lower the strength by 10%. But this strength was extremely fatal to Pei Wuhu. Pei Wuhu was a bit different from most other merged imperial beast masters. Pei Wu Xie's merging method was centered around himself, and all of the imperial beasts were formed to make him individually stronger. There was one main imperial beast that fused with his body giving him strength comparable to that of an imperial beast. For the other imperial beasts, he had weapons, armor, fire spirits, and a golden dragon tiger as a mount. At the core of all of this, it was all centered on him, 
all in service of his individual strength. It was also for this reason that his individual strength would stack up to a very terrifying realm, and even if he fought against a primary overlord imperial beast, he would be able to remain undefeated for a certain period of time. This was still because several of these imperial beasts that he had contracted had not reached the peak of the sovereign realm. Mr. Pei, our organization also admires people like you. If you're willing to join us, we can give you this base today and send you to the top. The nine of spades hammed and hawed as if everything was under his control. Pei Wu's strength was very strong, and if he could be absorbed into the organization, it would be a heavenly good thing for him, and for the entire organization. After all, Pei Wu's talent was also very good, and the possibility of becoming a legend in the future was extremely high. Well, a mocking smile appeared on Pei Wu Xie's face. It's a pity that I'm not half interested in joining your Black Demon Society. Mr. Pei, you may have a certain misunderstanding of our Black Devil Society. The Nine of Spades completely ignored Pei Wu Fei's attitude, still smiling and explaining. The world has a certain misunderstanding of our Black Demon Society. Our Black Devil Society is not an evil organization. The mocking color on Pei Wu Xie's mouth became even more intense, if not for the fact that he was trying to buy more time to recover his injuries so that he could escape. Mr. Pei, this world originally belonged to us humans. It was these imperial beasts that intruded into our homeland and killed our compatriots, and even more so, almost made us humans extinct. Our forefathers had to commiserate with these imperial beasts in order to survive. But the current imperial beast masters have forgotten that the ancestors of these imperial beasts were the ones who brutally killed our human descendants. You have forgotten. But we, the Black Demon Society, have not forgotten. We are here for revenge. In order to make humans the true rulers of this world, imperial beasts, are just tools for us humans, they shouldn't have such a high status. When the Nine of Spades said this, his tone became fiery, and even the two people on his side did the same. Is this your reason for slaughtering the city? A reason to do living experiments? Pei Wu Xia really couldn't listen to it anymore and couldn't help but mention it. The Nine of Spades glanced at Pei Wu Xia, and that look was disconcerting, as if he was looking at a fool. A general's work will be done. In order to be able to make us humans the true helmsmen of the imperial beast world, what is this little sacrifice? What's more, these are strategic sacrifices formulated by our organization. If they knew about it, they would definitely forgive us. The Nine of Spades disgusting words made Pei Wu Xie almost vomit when he heard them. Goddamn strategic sacrifices. They'll forgive you guys? Forgive a. Eh? Forgive my ass. Ha. Huh? Pei Wu Xie froze. Who had spoken the words from his heart? The sudden bellowing sound simultaneously drew the attention of the Nine of Spades and the others. What person? Grandpa Dark Descent. Kill all these disgusting people. Gu Hui used to only know that this Black Demon Society's organization was free from evil. But he didn't think that this organization would be so perverted. Under the banner of doing good to the world, they killed people and said in a beautiful name that they would understand and forgive when they knew what we were up to. These people, they are simply not human. No wonder the Dark Demon Dragon found these guys disgusting. As the words fell, the Nine of Spades and the others felt a power that caused fear to rise up within them. Overlord Breath. The Nine of Spades and the others were horrified in their hearts. Overlord, this was the peak battle power of this world, and every Hegemon was a rather terrifying existence. Even though their Black Demon Society was known as the world's top three evil organizations, there were only three legendary Imperial Beast Masters in their entire Black Demon Society. Of these three legendary Imperial Beast Masters, only one of them was sitting in the Dragon Kingdom. Run, an Overlord Imperial Beast had suddenly appeared in this world. What could they do? Run. That or stay here and wait for death. Domain of darkness. At once, the entire world went black. This blackness, and the blackness of the night was a completely different blackness, as if the entire world had lost its light. Fear, spread within the nine of spades and their hearts. Bear, the instruments in their hands shattered. Kid, hurry up and get your revenge. Don't spare anyone. Kid, that voice. The corner of Pei Wuxia's mouth twitched slightly once he heard this address. Sure enough, it's Senior's partner. Pei Wu Xia instantly became excited. Without the restriction of that instrument, he could finally fire up his power as well. Very well, you will bear my wrath. War God's rage. This was Pei Invincible's self-created skill. Darkness deprivation. Bang. The dark demonic dragon was too terrifying. In fact, the dark descendant demon dragon was still the best at physical combat. And the strength of its physical body was what truly terrified people. With the dark descendant demon dragon and Pei Pei Invincible who had exploded at full strength. These people wouldn't have lasted long at all. In fact, if it wasn't for that instrument, Pei Wu Xia alone possessed the strength to single-handedly take on the three of them. Not to mention that under the pressure of the dark descendant demon dragon, they would have long since lost the will to fight and just run away. 
all of them were killed. Other than a few who were killed when they didn't stop at the beginning, the rest were all captured alive. Senior, after doing all of this, Pei Wusei excitedly ran to the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon's front. His tone thrilled. If it wasn't for the Dark Descent Demon Dragon coming to the rescue today, he, Pei Wow enemy, would have to be planted in the hands of these disgusting human fellows. Kid, you've gotten a lot stronger again. The Dark Descendant Demon Dragon returned to its normal state. The battle just now could really only be considered a warm-up for the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon. Hearing this, Pei Wu Xia heatedly smiled, and when he was about to humble himself, his face directly turned green. It's just that this brain of yours still hasn't grown much. It's too stupid. Senior, you're being too direct. At least give me some face. Pei Wu Xia laughed bitterly, but he soon felt that there really wasn't much need to say this. Although the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon was able to spit out human words and had the ability to communicate with normal people, its body was ultimately a dragon, and it was normal for it to speak more directly. Pei Wu Xia's gaze quickly turned to Gu Huai on the Dark Demon Dragon's shoulder. Elder Pei, how are you? Gu Huai hemmed and hawed and jumped down from the Dark Descent Demon Dragon's shoulders. Gu Huai had originally wanted to watch the show, but Pei Wu Xia had turned his gaze to himself, so it would be impolite if he didn't come down. Still calling Pei Senior? Pei Wu Xia couldn't help but roll his eyes. Uncle Pei, you brat is just doing this to see your Uncle Pei's jokes on me, right? Pei Wu Xia's face flushed, looking at Gu Huai's appearance. He should have recognized himself a long time ago. At the expense of himself, he still wanted to accept Gu Huai as a disciple. This was really a big disgrace. If this matter reached Gu Hang's ears, he would probably laugh at himself for a long time. Pei Wu Xie and Gu Hang's relationship was actually quite good, and they often teamed up when doing quests, or going down to the secret realm. It was just that both of them belonged to busy people, and most of them would just make appointments for places and go over directly. Where is there? Just at that time that occasion well, if I called Uncle Pei, you are not more embarrassed. Gu Huai explained, and Pei Wu Xie felt that this was also the meaning. But isn't tomorrow the college entrance exam? Why are you in this place? The college entrance exam? Gu Huai froze. The current time was June 9th, and tomorrow happened to be the college entrance exam. Yes, the college entrance exam is tomorrow. Although tomorrow morning is a written exam, but how can you not study and prepare for it? That Uncle Pei. What? I'm only a senior in September. Ha? Huh? Pei Wu Xie froze, seemingly somewhat not understanding the meaning of Gu Huai's words. The closing ceremony hasn't been held yet so I should still be considered a sophomore. Your sophomore year? Although Pei Wu Xie and Gu Hang's personal relationship was good, the two of them usually didn't talk about family matters. Pei Wu Xie only knew that Gu Huai was roughly this age, but his exact age was really unclear. Yes, Gu Huai said naturally. Pei Wu Xie's eyes immediately widened, looking at Gu Huai as if he had seen a ghost. You kid is in your second year of high school? Gu Huai nodded, and Pei Wu Xie instantly circled around Gu Huai. If it weren't for the fact that the Dark Demon Dragon was here, Pei Wu Xia would have wondered if Gu Huai was deliberately lying to him. Boy, this senior only formally awakened the talent of the Imperial Beasts on June 1st, right? Even if this precious dragon of yours has had someone work out its skills first before, but in order to be able to let you contract it smoothly, the realm is usually not too high, and the skills hold up to be a LV5 level like this. That is to say, you kid use less than 10 days to do this? Leave me alone. Pei Wu Xie tried to calm his heart before slowly accepting this fact, but he still couldn't help but burst out. Your family are all perverts. The moment Pei Wu Hui's words came out, Gu Huai didn't have much of a reaction. While Pei Wu Hui felt a death stare, it was a death stare from the dark demon dragon, which caused Pei Wao enemy to stiffen and not dare to speak again. Pei Wao enemy was right about that. The Gu family were all perverts. Pei Wao enemy's age was seven years older than Gu Hang's, but the difference in strength between the two sides really wasn't obvious. Gu Hong married early, only 22 years old when he married Gu Huai's mother, gave birth to Gu Huai at 24, and is now only a little over 40 years old. Pei Wu Xia married later, and he was really personally a commoner. He married at the age of 36, 14 years later than Gu Hang. However, Pei Wu Hu was more fierce in that the person he married was 8 years older than Pei Wu Hu's smile, and was also a member of the Gung family in Mordor. After waiting for a while, the dark descendant demon dragon's killing aura slowly disappeared before Pei Wu Hu dared to speak. I'll go in first and see what these people are doing inside. Uncle Pei, I'll go in with you. What's inside might not suit you too well. It'll be more bloody. Pei Wu Xia still said it in a more euphemistic way. In fact, this inside is more than just more bloody. It's not too much to describe it as miserable. Pei Wu Xia couldn't help but vomit when he first saw it back then. I'm mentally prepared. That's fine. Come out later if there's any discomfort. Jean Bao. Watch these people. Don't let them run away. Ow. 
The large golden-colored tiger answered and stayed where it was, the dark demon dragon. On the other hand, followed Gu Huai. After all, who knew if it would suddenly encounter any dangers in here? Following Gu Huai's side would also better protect Gu Huai's safety. During this time, Pei Wu Xia reported the events here directly to the top echelons of the country, and also stated his own speculations as well, while also speaking about the dark descendant demon dragon with Gu En's consent. With Gu An on board, the countryside would naturally pay more attention. At the same time, Gu Huai also knew why Pei Wu Hui was in this place, he attracted the nine of spades of the Black Devil Society to this place, walking into the Black Devil Society's underground research room. It was huge, the entire underground had been hollowed out, and there were quite a few staff members inside. However, these staff members were all sunk in the dark realm of the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon and had no idea what was going on. There was a lot of research going on inside, with all sorts of harrowing images that made Gu Huai's scalp numb even as he watched. It's a good thing that the people from these organizations dared to shout out that they would forgive us. What a shamelessness. All sorts of live body experiments. Even grafting things from imperial beasts onto humans for live experiments. Making people unlike humans and ghosts. It is estimated that there are two to three hundred people used for experiments in here. There is no shortage of children and babies. It was like hell on earth. Gu Huai and Pei Wu Xia came to the deepest part of the research room, which was also the Black Demon Society's most important experiment at the moment called the God Creation Program. According to the Black Devil Society's philosophy, humans should be the masters of this world, and the Imperial Beasts were tools for humans to become stronger. However, the Imperial Beasts do have a strong power that humans don't possess, and even Imperial Beast Masters with the talent of merging are only borrowing the power of the Imperial Beasts, and there's no way to preserve it all the time. So they were researching a gene, a gene that would allow humans to have the same power as the Imperial Beasts. Only the fault tolerance of this gene was too low and there were certain requirements for human physique, and it was hard for them to find so many experiments, so they put their target on the most similar to humans, the ape-like imperial beasts, the stone monkey was their target, in the laboratory, large and small experimental tanks were filled with stone monkeys, these stone monkeys were all experiments, and the expressions on their faces varied, most of them were numb, the bodies of these stone monkeys were, for the most part, mutilated, with few intact, some were even in a state of bloodletting, Gu Huai had been with the stone monkeys for this period of time, and had long since developed a certain amount of emotion towards them, and seeing this target, Gu Huai's anger could no longer endure. What a bunch of beasts. Yes, this organization, the Black Devil Society, must be eliminated, but unfortunately, their infiltration into the human hierarchy is still relatively deep, and there are people that we simply don't know their identities when they don't tear off their own masks. Plus, the remaining few countries are still in a laissez-faire state towards these forces which makes it even more difficult for us at Donghuang to combat them. Pei Wu Xia side, this kind of situation, unless all the countries in the world were genuinely united in targeting them, then only Donghuang was serious, it would not help at all. Gu Huai nodded, but soon Gu Huai's eyes were drawn to a stone monkey in the experiment tank, that stone monkey's eyes were closed and it had needles stuck all over its body, it could be seen that it was in pain and its face was hideous, but it actually had a faint mockery on its face as if it didn't take what was in front of it into consideration. This stone monkey, Gu Huai unconsciously walked over. Grandpa Dark Descent, can you save this stone monkey without damaging it? A small matter. As soon as the Dark Descent Demon Dragon's words fell, this stone monkey was wrapped in a dark force, and immediately afterward, all those needles disappeared, and the wounds on its body recovered for the most part in an instant. It was amazing, but this was the strength of an overlord-class imperial beast. The stone monkey came out of the experimental tank, and that sudden feeling of comfort wrapped around its entire body. The grimace on the stone monkey's face disappeared, and there was a look of doubt in its eyes. Gu Huai also checked the stone monkey's information at that moment. Imperial beast, stone monkey, mutant species. Attribute, dragon plus evil. Bloodline, high commander. Strength, awaken third stage. Skill, none. Dragon plus evil? Gu Huai froze. This stone monkey actually possessed a dragon attribute? Was this the result of that group of guys' experiments? It directly erased the stone monkey's original attributes and turned out two new powerful attributes from scratch. This Black Devil Society's people did have some ability in this aspect of scientific research. It was a pity that they were not on the right path, and their type of scientific research that was unscrupulous in order to achieve their goals was something that the Donghuang Kingdom could not accept. Experiments could be done, but there could be no morality or law involved in this. The stone monkey also just looked at Gu Huai with contempt, as if it knew its fate, and did not resist because it had seen those things that had happened to its companions with its own eyes, it also knew the results of resisting, it was still too weak after all, if it was stronger, 
then it would be able to control its own destiny. The mutant stone monkey clenched his fists, and a thousand tendons popped out of those thin, hairy hands. You're safe. But what the mutant stone monkey didn't expect was that the first words it heard were actually this. Yeah, the mutated stone monkey's tone carried a touch of doubt. I should say yes, you are all safe. From today onwards, you will no longer experience all the pain you suffered before. Gu Huai stretched out his hand with some heartache, wanting to stroke the mutant stone monkey's head, but it was dodged by the mutant stone monkey. The mutant stone monkey's eyes were wary, not knowing what this human was up to. Gu Huai took the mutant stone monkey's behavior in his eyes and didn't get angry. After all, this was a very normal situation. Gu Huai smiled at the mutant stone monkey, then turned his head to Pei Wu Xie, who was at the side. Uncle Pei, I feel like I have a bond with the stone monkey. Can I take this stone monkey away? Don't worry. I'll register it with the state. Pei Wu Xie smiled when he heard Gu Huai's words. If it was someone else, naturally it wouldn't work. But there's still no problem if it's you. You meet the criteria. But although the stone monkey is very special, it's a dragon plus evil attribute, and its initial bloodline is also very good. But its physical condition knows, we don't even know. Gu Huai naturally knew the meaning of Pei Wu Xie's words and explained with a smile. Uncle Pei, I won't take any chances, and there's still my mom. Your mom? Pei Wu Xie froze, then suddenly laughed. That's right, I almost forgot about your younger sibling. With her position in the scientific research world, this is indeed all a small matter. You'll be able to handle it clearly on your own. Then I'll take this stone monkey with me. Well, you can go back first if you have something to do. Just leave this place to me. Then I'll trouble Uncle Pei. Ha ha, not troublesome. To troublesome is also I troublesome you guys. If not have you out. You pay uncle I can really explain in this place. Is Pei uncle owes you a life? Pei Wu Xie's tone gradually became serious. He was serious. Uncle Pei you are overstating it. Everyone is responsible for fighting the Black Devil Society. You are a hero. I just happened to be passing by. Gu Huai naturally wouldn't really take this matter to heart. Not to mention that what he said was also from his heart. Pei Wu Xie smiled and didn't say much. For a person of his character, just say the words once. Whether or not Gu Huai would take this matter to heart. But this favor, he took it down. After chatting with Pei Wu Xie for a few more moments, Gu Huai left with the dark demon dragon. The mutant monkey was also taken away by Gu Huai. And at first, the mutant monkey didn't want to leave. But when he saw the dark descendant demon dragon, the mutant monkey subjugated itself from his heart. At the same time, the mutant monkey longed for the power of the dark descent demon dragon. If it also possessed such a strong power, then it wouldn't have suffered such a crisis itself, and its own companions would be able to survive. Stone monkey camp. The dark demon dragon continued to hide in the darkness after sending Gu Huai nearby. Come with me. Gu Huai didn't say too much to the mutant stone monkey. There were things that couldn't be said on their own. Gu Huai was going to take it inside the camp, so that it could come into contact with those stone monkeys and let those stone monkeys speak for themselves. It was the same kind that was the best lobbyist. Gu Huai believed that the mutant stone monkeys would believe in himself. The mutant stone monkey didn't speak, nor did it resist. Although it couldn't feel the aura of the dark descendant demon dragon, it still understood one thing. Just because it couldn't feel the dark demonic dragon's aura didn't mean that the dark demonic dragon wasn't in this place. The fact that it couldn't feel it was a matter of it not being strong enough. This point the mutated stone monkey was still very self-aware. Go inside. From today onwards, this is your new home. After Gu Huai finished saying this, just as a few stone monkeys jumped over, Gu Huai explained to them and returned to his tent. These stone monkeys were curiously sizing up the newly arrived mutant stone monkeys, and the mutant stone monkeys were also looking at them nervously. Was this, another new experimental base? Yikes, the stone monkey that fought with Gu Huai in the beginning, that is, baby dragon's little fan monkey, was the first to walk up and greet the mutant stone monkey. Who knew that the mutant stone monkey was still arrogant and ignored it, which hurt the little fan monkey. At this time, a female stone monkey walked over with a gentle tone. Yeah yeah. The mutant stone monkey looked at the mother stone monkey, and a light appeared in those eyes. Ya yeah, wah. Ya yeah, wah. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Soon, a happy smile spread across the mutant stone monkey's face. For the next few days, Gu Huai didn't bother the mutant stone monkey. However, Gu Huai was also worried about the mutant stone monkey's physical state, and had always asked the dark demonic dragon to keep an eye on the mutant stone monkey and let the dark demonic dragon remind him if he found anything wrong. However, during these few days of observation, the physical condition of the mutant monkey was still very good, and there were no major problems. It was the mutant stone monkey's mood that might not be so friendly, as it was too weak, although it possessed two attributes of dragon plus evil, and its physical quality was much better than stone monkeys at the same stage. Its realm was too low, 
and it had no control skills. This group of stone monkeys were all fighting maniacs, and as the weakest, it naturally took the most beatings. In fact, getting beaten or something, the mutant stone monkey really didn't care. What it cared about was getting beaten in front of the beautiful stone monkeys, which was something it had no way of accepting. Thus, the mutant stone monkey began to work out like crazy. It had to be said that its enlightenment was really strong, and after taking a few beatings, it had instead taught itself the skill of hardening, while its realm had also risen from awakened third stage to awakened fourth stage. The combat talent was also extremely astonishing, which made Gu Huai have to use the term gifted to describe it. If Gu Huai didn't intervene, I'm afraid that it wouldn't take long for this mutant stone monkey to get rid of its weakest title, and then slowly, step by step, it would become the strongest in this stone monkey camp and enter the inner perimeter of zone 1. But basically, the mutant stone monkey's future would stop at the commander level, and it would be hard to become stronger. It wasn't that the wilderness was bad, but it was too difficult to become stronger in the wilderness. Becoming an imperial beast of an imperial beast master had many benefits. First, the imperial beast space could accelerate the growth of the imperial beasts, allowing them to become stronger faster. Secondly, the imperial beast master would have the resources corresponding to the imperial beast, and systematically train the skills of the imperial beast, the realm, which would also allow the imperial beast to become stronger. Of course, becoming an imperial beast was not without its drawbacks. After becoming an imperial beast, to a certain extent, you will lose your freedom. Moreover, if the imperial beast master is too swinging or stupid, it will also affect the growth of the imperial beast itself, or even make it grow even slower. Therefore, for the imperial beasts, it was also crucial to choose a good imperial beast master. There was actually a sort of two-way running pounce. Not bad. Not bad indeed. This monkey has the talent to become strong. The dark descendant demon dragon had also been observing the mutant stone monkey for the past few days because of Gu Hui's request, so he naturally knew the mutant stone monkey's situation. Well, Grandpa Dark Descent, then what do you think about choosing it for my second imperial beast? As soon as Gu Hui's words came out, the dark descent demon dragon immediately froze and hurriedly said, Little Hui, don't think about it, although this monkey is very good, but, but there's still a certain gap between it and the imperial beast that Grandpa arranged for me right? Gu Hui smiled. As the only heir of the Gu family in this generation, Gu Huai's path was naturally all paved for him, including the choice of Gu Huai's future several imperial beasts. Basically all of them were being arranged as well. Even the old master had made an appointment in advance with some old friends a long time ago, asking them to keep some gifted dragon cubs, just specifically for Gu Huai. Of course if Gu Huai had an unexpected gain and got a better dragon lineage pup during this period, that would be fine. Only this mutant stone monkey was clearly not in that cross-section. The dark demon dragon nodded. Gu Huai smiled. Grandpa Dark Descent. You should have heard the words spoken by the strongest imperial beast evolutionist. The dark descent demon dragon. Did not speak. There is no strongest imperial beast. Only the strongest imperial beast master. Gu Huai's smile was extremely bright as he finished his sentence. The dark descendant demon dragon looked at Gu Huai's smile. And it sensed an extremely large amount of self-confidence from Gu Huai's body. Which caused the dark descendant demon dragon's heart and mind to tremble. It had the feeling that it had seen its old partner. All right, I'll count you as having passed this hurdle, but if you want to contract this mutated stone monkey, you'll still need the old man's consent. Don't worry, I'll convince him. After Gu Huai finished saying this, he walked forward with large strides, aiming in the direction of the mutant stone monkey. The mutant stone monkey, who was exercising his arm against a large tree, sensed Gu Huai's aura and couldn't help but raise his head in confusion. In the past few days, the mutant stone monkey had also learned about Gu Huai and the baby dragon from the rest of the stone monkeys, and naturally, his gaze towards Gu Huai wasn't so wary now. On the contrary, there was a trace of gratitude in the depths of the mutant monkey's eyes as it looked at Gu Huai, only that this gratitude was hidden very deeply. Gu Huai walked to the side of the mutant stone monkey under its gaze. Can I sit down? The mutant stone monkey subconsciously nodded. Gu Huai sat down naturally as well. I've seen you work hard these past few days. The mutant stone monkey didn't say anything it didn't understand what Gu Huai was trying to convey. I can see that you want to get stronger. The mutant stone monkey subconsciously nodded. It wanted to get stronger. But how strong do you think you can become like this? The mutant stone monkey shook its head. It had no concept. Come out, baby dragon. In terms of fooling around, Gu Huai was still very capable. Bao, the baby dragon, which had gone through several more days of exercise, was a bit bigger than before, and was probably close to 50 centimeters tall now. Of course these were not the key. The most crucial thing was still the baby dragon's strength. Imperial beast, baby dragon, different color. Attribute, dragon. Bloodline, high transcendent. 
Strength, Awakening 9th Rank Strength, Awakening 9th Rank. Skill, Dragon Claw LV32, plus, Thunderous Movement LV20, plus, this was Baby Dragon's current panel. In the last few days, Baby Dragon's focus was all on Thunder Move, an advanced skill, and didn't bother much with Dragon Claw, only raising it by one level. Thunder Move was one level short of proficiency, and after Thunder Move was proficient, he could start training the AoE of the combination of these two skills, forming an AoE that could be comparable to a super rank skill. You should have heard about Baby Dragon from those little ones. These past few days, the Baby Dragon had seldom continued to engage in sparring with the Stone Monkeys, mainly because Baby Dragon's strength had risen too quickly, as well as the fact that the skill Thunder movement was dangerous. None of these Stone Monkeys within the camp were now Baby Dragon's opponents. To put it simply, it also meant that this place was no longer suitable for Baby Dragon to exercise for the time being. If it wasn't for the sake of giving the mutant stone monkey a little more time, Gu Huai would have had to leave this place two days ago and head deeper. The mutant stone monkey nodded its head, its eyes carrying a touch of strangeness. Truly speaking, it wasn't very convinced. Baby Dragon, show your hand. Pa, the baby dragon roared with excitement. It had a great desire to perform. The baby dragon directly transformed its left hand into a bright silver colored claw shadow. In fact, this was flashy and not real. It just looked good. But the performance as well. Definitely the more gorgeous the better. And with the strength of the mutant stone monkey, if baby dragon was too introverted, the mutant stone monkey might not even be able to see the effect. Thunder move. Since it was going to be a performance, it was definitely going to be a full set. Baby dragon directly activated the thunder elements that he had cultivated in his body during this period of time, causing these thunder elements to instantly explode from his body causing his cells to become active. Z Z Z Z. At this moment, it was like the sound of a thousand birds chirping. Baby Dragon's figure violently elevated like a bolt of lightning. The mutant stone monkey endeavored to widen its eyes, trying to capture the route the baby dragon was moving. But unfortunately, it failed. Boom! The dragon's claw blasted out. The target was a boulder. The moment the dragon claw blasted out, the power of lightning couldn't help but escape, wrapping the entire dragon claw, like a thunderous boom. The boulder was like a block of tofu, directly blown into countless pieces. The pupils of the mutant stone monkey shrunk. This power was so strong. If this strike was to hit on himself, mutant stone monkey shook his head violently. Just kidding. If this hit on himself, he would become monkey slag. It is too horrible. Little monkey, want to learn? Gu Huai at this time then walked to the side of the mutant stone monkey. The expression was like an old man selling all kinds of divine secrets on the street. Ten dollars a book. Unfortunately, this trope mutant stone monkey had never heard of it, and the current mutant stone monkey only felt his brain heat up and his chi and blood surge. Was such a powerful skill something that he could learn? The mutant stone monkey didn't even hesitate and nodded frantically. Gu Huai's heart was delighted, while a mysterious smile appeared on his face. Gu Huai was well aware of the psychology of humans and imperial beasts. The easier it was to obtain, the less likely it was to cherish it or to doubt it. Gu Huai wasn't prepared to let the mutant stone monkey be so easy to obtain and he had this in mind when he let the mutant stone monkey loose like this for the past few days. If you want to learn, I can teach you, but well, the mutant stone monkey wasn't stupid. It knew that Gu Huai was going to start making conditions. What do you think you have on you that's equal to this? The mutant stone monkey frowned, and it didn't seem to have any. Not true. It suddenly occurred to the mutant stone monkey that the imperial beasts were able to make contracts with imperial beast masters. It was not stupid. Naturally, it could guess what Gu Huai meant. Yeah, yeah. The mutant stone monkey pointed at itself, indicating that it was worth the value. Gu Huai didn't immediately agree, but instead turned his gaze to the baby dragon. How do you think you compare to my baby dragon? The baby dragon was very cooperative at this time, raising its head and holding out its chest in a proud manner. That look really made the monkey want to hit the dragon when he looked at it. The mutant stone monkey looked at the baby dragon and then at his own hand, with confusion in his eyes. I see that you also have self-knowledge. With my family, I was able to choose a better imperial beast than you. Hearing this, the mutant stone monkey turned his gaze to Gu Huai. Gu Huai's eyes were also on the mutant stone monkey, but I think it's quite eye-catching with you. Do you have the confidence to walk together with me on the path of the strong together? Gu Huai extended his hand to the mutant stone monkey. The blow was almost done. And if it continued, Gu Huai was afraid that this little monkey would fall flat on its face. Yeah, are you really willing to contract me? The mutant stone monkey was a little unsure. You don't have confidence? Yeah, yes, louder, yikes, it had to be said that this approach worked quite well, Gu Huai and the mutant stone monkey's hands clasped together just like that, and their eyes interlocked and sparks erupted, bow, there's still me, 
the baby dragon couldn't help but put its meaty paw up as well, placing it together with Gu Huai in the mutant stone monkey's hands. At this moment, both the man and the beast couldn't help but smile. Then let's become stronger together. Bow. Yay. Although it was awkward, it was extremely effective for the baby dragon and mutant stone monkey, who were still in their cub state. No, both the baby dragon and the mutant stone monkey were lit up, and you could feel it just by looking at the sparks that blossomed in their eyes. Gu Huai struck the iron while it was hot, saying, By the way, calling you imperial beasts by your names directly isn't intimate enough for me. There are too many with the same name, so I'm going to give you both a name. Both baby dragon and mutant stone monkey's eyes couldn't help but light up. A name? Great. They're going to have names too. Fantastic. Both the baby dragon and the mutant stone monkey looked at Gu Huai expectantly, hoping that Gu Huai would give them a nice name. But unfortunately, they were destined to be disappointed. Gu Huai and his family, all of them were name wasters. It was like the name that Elder Guan had given to the dark descendant demon dragon, which directly used the first two characters. However, because all of the Gu family's generations own three baby dragons, the names for the baby dragons wouldn't follow the names of the imperial beasts. Of course it was also very random as all. Thunder Holy Dragon King, Fire Flame Tyrant Dragon King, Wind Thunder Cloud Holy Dragon. The old master's three precious dragons were called Thunder Feather, Inferno Feather, and Cloud Feather. Gu Hang's three precious dragons on the other hand were called Thunder Frenzy, Fire Frenzy, and Wind Frenzy. These names made Gu Huai feel, upon hearing them, that it would be better not to take them at all. Baby Dragon, the skill I chose for you is Thunder Movement which means that your future evolutionary path is Thunder Saint Dragon King. Baby, Baby Dragon revealed an excited gaze. Thunder Saint Dragon King ah, what a cool name. So you're called Little Thunder, how about it, Baby? Several question marks appeared on Baby Dragon's brain. Just this name? I resist. The Baby Dragon immediately made a protesting sound. The mutant stone monkey also couldn't help but take a step back, as if letting this human pick the name wasn't a very good choice. You think this name is good too? Gu Huai wouldn't admit that he was bad at picking names. The baby dragon shook its head hurriedly. Sounds good? What's so nice about it? In the end, after Gu Huai bargained with baby dragon and the mutant stone monkey, the name was finalized. The baby dragon was called Lei Bao. The mutant monkey was called Thunder Monkey. Gu Huai thought that these two names were dirt cheap, but he couldn't help that the two little guys liked them. In particular, the mutant stone monkey did not know how. Just feel that the name must be with a thunder word as if it is so that it can show its domineering general, and finally took the name of a thunder monkey. This name Gu Huai is rejected. Thunder monkey, this is not hello? It's a good thing that people in this world don't know the meaning of this thunder monkey. The baby dragon is also dry with the word thunder, but also to add a treasure at the end. Gu Huai is also speechless. Where were these two names as good as the little thunder? Little monkey he thought of at first? Two guys who don't know what they're talking about. Oh, the imperial beast. After the name, the two little guys wailed, one excited for Gu Huai to arrange for them to exercise. Baby Dragon's training program was all arranged by Gu Huai. The next step was to head to the depths of District 1 to exercise, consuming the skill enhancements brought about by the additions, and honing the combinations between the two skills. In the case of Thunder Monkey, it was a bit more troublesome, because the Thunder Monkey wasn't yet Gu Huai's Imperial Beast, there was no way for Gu Huai to add points to the Thunder Monkey. Currently, all Gu Huai could do was to help Thunder Monkey order a training program. Observing the Thunder Monkey from a close distance, it just so happened that old mother and her team would be arriving soon, so they could first test the Thunder Monkey's data and information in detail. They should be arriving soon, right? Truly speaking of Chow Chow, Chow Chow arrived. Just as Gu Huai's words fell, a familiar voice came to his ears. Long time no see, Gu Xiao, Sister Bing. A look of delight appeared on Gu Huai's face. Sister Bing. Full name Qin Bing. Qin Bing was one of Gu Huai's mother's disciples and was deeply loved by her. In terms of age, Gu Huai wasn't sure. Qin Bing was a typical imperial type intellectual woman, wearing gold rimmed glasses and a figure comparable to Tsunade's, which made people want to look at her more. Behind Qin Bing, there were two people following. Both were girls. Gu Huai's mom had a characteristic that all the people inside her lab were female. Without exception, these two girls were somewhat familiar to Gu Huai. They should have both been seen in his mom's lab, belonging to the kind of nodding acquaintance. Is this the little monkey you got? Qin Bing and Gu Huai were still quite familiar with each other. Mu Qing would often bring Qin Bing to the house for dinner. Qin Bing was a workaholic, and after greeting Gu Huai, he went straight to the point. Well, Thunder Monkey and Sister Bing say hello. Yeah. Thunder Monkey lowered his head and somewhat shyly hid behind Gu Huai. Can't you see that this little guy is still a bit sociopathic? Nope. Gu Huai's eyes narrowed 
and it suddenly occurred to him that this little guy was the same way when he faced the mother stone monkey, a little shy but extremely expressive, seems to have caught the point, a playful smile appeared at the corner of Gu Huai's mouth, hello little monkey, later on, sister will give you a test, ing, xiao xiao, get on guys, Qin Bing was indeed thunderous, completely at odds with her name, yes, sister Bing, the two girls behind her were also ruthless people who didn't say much, opening their temporary imperial beast spaces one after another, and two mechanical imperial beasts ran out from within, these two robots, both of which did not belong to the combat type of robots, their own combat power was not strong, and they were specially developed for scientific research, however, when this type of robot was first developed, it was usually relatively simple, subsequent to those functions, it is necessary to slowly increase up according to the user, that is, constantly strengthen the strength of scientific research robots, there were also many types of research robots, as far as Gu Huai knew, his old lady had more than a dozen research robots, each of which had invested a lot of time and energy, little monkey, it'll be done soon, Xin Bing's face wore a gentle smile and her tone was tender, the thunder monkey was still too young, and quickly became addicted to its big sister's gentle smile and tone, and when it reacted, the thunder monkey was already under control, yeah, thunder monkey panicked, good boy, Xin Bing's tone was still gentle at this moment, but the next moment, her tone became icy cold, begin the experiment, yes, the two young girls began to operate at once, their movements flowing like water, Xin Bing was not idle either, and began to observe the thunder monkey's reaction and situation, the thunder monkey slowly calmed down even after its initial panic, it had experienced too many things like this kind of experiment, plus, Gu Huai had also told it just now that it needed to understand its situation well before it could formulate a good future course and training plan for it, Xin Bing and the girls were still moving quickly, these two research robots were both Mu Qing's, and were incredibly efficient. In just less than 10 minutes, various data and information about the Thunder Monkey appeared on the robots. Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey Mutant Species, Attribute Dragon plus Evil, Bloodline High Commander, Strength Awakening 4th Stage, Skill, Entry Level Hardening, Specialty, Contains a weak destructive power within its body, which will constantly try the Stone Monkey's sanity and drag it into the abyss. Strange, but in the data on here, it also says that there is another mysterious force within the stone monkey's body, which is fighting against this destructive force. The dragon plus evil attribute seems to be the product of these two forces fighting against each other. Qin Bing looked at the information above and fell into doubt. This was the first time she had seen such a situation. Sister Bing, what's the result? Is Thunder Monkey it safe? Gu Huai was still more worried about the Thunder Monkey's safety. According to the information on here, the little monkey should have already died. As soon as Qin Bing said this, Gu Huai's heart tightened and he quickly asked, then do you have a way to save it, Sister Bing? Thunder Monkey was also nervous as he looked at Qin Bing, don't be in a hurry, hear me out first, it's like this, the Thunder Monkey's body contains the power of destruction, it's the kind of power of destruction that has an extremely high purity, and this power is constantly destroying the vitality in the little monkey's body, wanting to devour the little monkey, but the problem is that the little monkey also contains a very mysterious and unknown power within his body which is always releasing vitality, protecting the little monkey and fighting against this power of destruction. The little monkey's dragon plus evil attribute is the result of the two forces fighting against each other. However, the growth rate of this mysterious unknown power is too slow to keep up with the power of the power of destruction, and sooner or later, it will be completely devoured by the power of destruction. If the little monkey wants to live, there are only two paths he can take. Qin Bing finished speaking and turned his gaze towards Gu Huai and the thunder monkey. What paths? The first is to find this mysterious power and continue to inject the little monkey. But this power is unknown. I'm not sure if I can find it, or if there is a second copy of this power in this world. The second one is, letting the little monkey master this power, continuously strengthening itself and continuously producing this power. This method is the best, only according to the rate at which the destructive power is continuously strengthening. This path is also difficult. Qin Bing handed the choice over to Gu Wai. In that case, then Sister Bing. How long will the energy in the thunder monkey's body last? Two months, I guess. If the thunder monkey doesn't break through to the transcendent realm within two months, this destructive power will devour it completely. Two months? Gu Huai's eyes narrowed. That's enough. Gu Huai's heart had plans, and it seemed that he was even more pressed for time. Time definitely couldn't be counted that tightly. And that was the time he had to complete the evolution of the baby dragon within a month's time. And by doing so, he became a primary beastmaster. Opening up the position of the second contract, contracting the Thunder Monkey, with the help of the unlimited plus talent and the huge resources, 
Gu Huai was confident that he could make the Thunder Monkey break through to Transcendent and become a Transcendent Monkey in 20 days time. Gu Huai, I'll have the two of them stay behind later, responsible for observing the next changes in the little monkey's physical qualities. Your sister Bing, I'm very busy, so I'll go back first. Gu Huai knew Qin Bing's character and didn't stay. Trouble sister Bing, Qin Bing waved his hand, and then introduced the two girls to Gu Huai. The short-haired girl on the left was named Chang Ying, while the other one with long hair was Hu Xiao. Both of them were intermediate royal beast evolutionists, geniuses in the royal beast evolution world. Imperial beast evolutionists, too, were divided into grades. It was generally divided into five grades, trainee, beginner, intermediate, advanced, master, and grandmaster, which was one less top level than imperial beast master. Wanting to advance is not based on the strength of the imperial beast, but on your results, on your achievements in the evolution world. After reaching the standard, you still have to go through an examination, and you can only advance after passing it. Qin Bing introduced the two men and left. For this next period of time, these two were basically following Gu Huai around this place. Actually, studying this mutated stone monkey was a good opportunity for the two. I'll trouble the two of you next. Gu Huai said politely to the two women. You're very kind. Gu Xiao, Chang Ying and Hu Xiao were somewhat flattered. The two women were naturally aware of Gu Huai's identity, which was why they looked terrified. For the next period of time, Gu Huai led the two women to the depths of Forest City Forest Area 1. A detailed training plan was made for both Lei Bao and Lei Monkey. Time passed quickly, and it was soon June 28th. In two or three days, it would be time for the closing ceremony. Whether or not he participated in the closing ceremony, Gu Huai actually didn't care too much. The main thing was that he would be entering his third year of high school in September, and he would definitely have to be divided into classes by then. The homeroom teacher, Dang Hong, had treated him well without knowing his family background. After this class separation, it was estimated that she would no longer teach herself, and she really needed to go back to take a look and attend the party that night. Those classmates were also on okay terms with themselves, so Gu Huai agreed. It was worth mentioning that during this period of time, a certain vice principal of Hangzhou No, one middle school, surnamed Zhou, had called Gu Huai, saying that he wanted to introduce Gu Huai to an enterprise, so that Gu Huai could meet with their people. The words were true, but the tone, as if he was giving Gu Huai a chance, made people a little uncomfortable. After Gu Huai refused, this vice principal Zhou even opened his mouth to threaten. At that moment, Gu Huai was happy. Usually, Gu Huai had heard from his classmates that this vice principal surname Zhou, relying on his connections in the education bureau, was arrogant and domineering in the school. I didn't expect this guy to be arrogant to his own head. This is really, the old man ate arsenic, living impatiently. Gu Huai directly called Uncle Yun. Gu Huai didn't know who Yun Bo followed up the call with, and what was said in between, but on the next day, Yun Bo sent Gu Huai a link to the Education Bureau. The general content on the link was that this vice principal, surnamed Zhou, had utilized his authority to do wrong in the school, and had also taken a lot of bribes and suborned a lot of students and teachers. After the Education Bureau's inquiries, the matter is true, and now he has been double regulated processing and because the amount of corruption and bribery is too large, has been sent to court, followed by an estimated to be subject to at least 10 years in prison. The topic is far away. The main reason why Gu Huai chose to leave today was because Baby Dragon had already achieved great success with the Aeon. It was just the right time to go back, show the old man and his father, and start working on getting Thunder Treasure to evolve. Finally, I can go home. Gu Huai's face wore a faint smile. Although he had eaten and drunk well here, the accommodations weren't too bad. After all, Gu Huai had brought his own equipment for the accommodations, and he didn't have any problems wanting a hot bath, but home was home after all, and staying at home would be quite a bit more comfortable. Moreover, after not seeing his father and mother for such a long time, there was really a hint of missing them. Gu Xiao, everything is ready. After this half month of contact, the relationship between Gu Huai and the two women, Chang Ying and Hu Xiao, had gotten a lot better. However, the two women still addressed Gu Huai as Gu Xiao and Gu Huai couldn't change it no matter how many times he said it. So, Gu Huai just let them be. Let's go home then. Bao. The baby dragon excitedly opened its teeth and claws. It had grown another size and was now close to 60 centimeters tall. Yeah. Thunder Monkey's eyes were a bit confused. Home. Gu Huai's home. Gu Huai could see the Thunder Monkey's mood and couldn't help but rub the Thunder Monkey's head and said softly. Our home. Yikes. Thunder Monkey's eyes lit up with our home. Leaving Forest City Forest Area 1. Gu Huai went to sit at Hao Feng's house. It couldn't be helped. Who let Hao Feng arrange the driver, who was still waiting outside? Gu Huai was helpless about this, but he couldn't do anything about it. 
People were so enthusiastic. What could he say? How Jian still wasn't home. In Hangzhou University, there was a final test every semester. Final tests were important to these college students. In addition to the basic points they could obtain in the following semester, it also related to a particularly important point: the issue of face. Many people live, in fact, for that face. Especially young and wild college students, they would take the issue of face very seriously. The ranking of the final test was the most direct and effective place to do so because Gu Huai chose a good time to avoid the lunch hour. That is, he sat at Hao Feng's house for more than an hour before saying goodbye. 5:30 in the evening, arrived in Hangzhou on time. As soon as they got off the bus, there was a driver waiting who had already arranged for them and directly drove Gu Huai and Thunder Monkey to the Gu family. Along the way, Thunder Monkey was nervous, seemingly with the feeling of an ugly daughter-in-law meeting her parents. I'm back tonight. Gu Hong and Mu Cheng, two busy people, were both present. Gu Hong, as the lord of a city, naturally had quite a lot on his plate. Mu Qing, on the other hand, was a master of imperial beast evolution and also had many experiments to do on his hands. However, both of them loved Gu Huai very much, and usually, even how busy they were, as long as they weren't away from Hangzhou on business trips, they would spare at least one night a week to accompany Gu Huai. Mu Qing personally cooks for just the family. Of course, sometimes the old man would be added, except that the old man was stationed away all year round, and there were not many times he had a hand in it. Back, Mu Qing hurriedly walked out from her room and ran over when she saw Gu Huai, pulling Gu Huai's hand and circling around him. Huaier, you've lost weight this time out. Mu Qing's eyes were slightly red. A mother worries when her child travels thousands of miles, no matter what a child did outside. Parents were always worried if the child wasn't eating well enough, if he or she was injured, or if he or she was wronged or something. This was the first time Gu Huai had been away from home for such a long period of time, so it was only natural that Mu Qing would be so worried. However, it was estimated that those people outside would never know that Mu Qing, who was known as a workaholic and sensible beyond words, would have such a side. Gu Hong had also arrived at the door of the room at some point. He didn't come over. He just looked at Gu Huai from afar. The smile on his face simply not stopping. Gu Huai looked at his parents like this, and his heart was touched. His own reincarnation this time had really pulled rank. Not only was he able to reincarnate into such a good family, the family atmosphere is also so good. The only regret is that there are not any seven expert sisters. That or else it would really be a ham. This is Thunder Monkey, right? What a cute little guy! Here, this is a small gift for you. Mu Qing pulled out a brown stone from somewhere and handed it to the envious Thunder Monkey on the side. The Thunder Monkey was stunned. It subconsciously took a step back, but after seeing Mu Qing's gentle, uncharacteristic eyes. And the smile and gestures that weren't even feigned. The Thunder Monkey wanted to cry a little for some reason. It was a feeling that seemed to be very endearing. Thunder Monkey, this is a meeting gift from Mom, so just accept it. And this stone is called the Curse Heart Stone. It's very helpful in suppressing the destructive power in your body. There was one thing Gu Huai didn't say, and that was the value of this Curse Heart Stone. Curse Heart Stone. This was a legendary grade treasure. The effects of the Mantra Heart Stone were actually quite simple: suppressing and destroying evil. Meditating the mind and being able to make the wearer learn a thing faster. The effects were just a few, not many, but they were all very strong. Otherwise, there was no way for it to be rated as a legendary grade treasure. Outside, just this curse heart stone, such a tiny piece could fetch the value of a few small targets belonging to the kind of treasures that had a price without a market. Yikes! Thunder Monkey's voice was a whisper, carrying a touch of trembling. It could be felt that Thunder Monkey was very happy right now. Let's go, go home together. As he spoke, Gu Huai summoned the baby dragon as well. When Lei Bao saw Mu Qing, he skimmed his head, a look of unhappiness on his face. Lei Bao, regarding Lei Bao and Thunder Monkey's names, Gu Huai had long spoken to Mu Qing. Mu Qing, who loved the house, naturally wrote down the names very attentively, and also prepared a small gift for both Lei Bao and Thunder Monkey, respectively, saying that it was a small gift. In reality, both of these items were worth several small goals and were quite expensive. I prepared your small gift as well. Mu Qing couldn't help but smile when she saw Lei Bao's adorable movements. She did another magic trick and pulled out a bead from her pocket. This bead was blue in color and had the shape of lightning inside it. And when held in her hand, it would still pulsate with lightning from time to time. Lei Bao, knowing that you chose the Thunder Saint Dragon King as your evolutionary path, I have specially prepared this Thunder God bead for you. The Thunder God bead was a goose egg-sized bead in a blue hue. The bead was very pretty. Lei Bao was moved at the first sight of it. And it surprised Mu Qing by jumping towards him. And Mu Qing naturally took Lei Bao on, handing the Thunder God Bead to Lei Bao. The Thunder God Bead. Likewise, 
was a legendary treasure. There were three effects. First, the wearer could accelerate the absorption of the thunder element, increase the realm cultivation, and accelerate the speed of cultivation. Second, the wearer could feel the thunder element better. And whether it was in the cultivation of thunder skills or the use of thunder skills in a battle, the thunder god bead could provide a good increase. Thirdly, the thunder god pearl could be used as an energy reserve for the thunder imperial beasts, quickly recovering their own consumption for the thunder imperial beasts, making it a rare and precious treasure. Both thunder monkey and thunder treasure had obtained treasures and both walked in with smiles on their faces. The dinner was prepared sumptuously, and there were many things to eat. Naturally, Gu Huai and the three of them weren't the only ones eating dinner. There were also the imperial beasts that belonged to them. For the vast majority of imperial beast masters, the imperial beasts were also their family members, and on an occasion like this, they naturally couldn't miss it. After eating and drinking, everyone was satisfied. Little Huai, you're precious. Lei Bao has already mastered the two skills? After eating, Gu Huai and his family took a walk around the Gu family compound. Gu Hong still didn't hold back from asking. It couldn't be helped. It was really this matter. And even Gu Hang felt that it was outrageous. Pops, you'll know about this matter when grandpa comes back tomorrow. Gu Huai sold a lie and didn't say anything. Alright, Gu Hong knew Gu Huai's nature. And since Gu Huai had said so, he could only wait until tomorrow. Home was just comfortable. Gu Huai slept straight through until after 9 o'clock. Very comfortable. He hadn't slept this late in a while. And in the forest city forest, Gu Huai woke up at 5 or 6 o'clock. When Gu Huai woke up, he saw that Lei Bao and Lei Monkey had already started exercising outside with self-discipline. Gu Huai couldn't help but reveal a pleased smile. Awake? Come over for breakfast if you're awake. Your grandfather just arrived. Because today was Gu Huai's big event. Gu Hong didn't go to the city lord's mansion. As the city lord, this bit of power was still there. As long as it was explained, no one dared to say anything about Gu Hong. Good. Gu Huai responded. And with a hefty smile, he shouted to Lei Bao and Lei Monkey. Eat. Bao. Yeah, the two little guys instantly gave up on the idea of continuing to exercise and directly darted towards Gu Huai. Lei Bao even learned to use his own power. The power of thunder and lightning catalyzing. Thunder movement. Lei Bao directly transformed into a bolt of lightning. And when it was about to come into contact with Gu Huai, all of its thunder attributes disappeared, landing directly and peacefully in Gu Huai's arms. The speed of the thunder monkey was much slower. But fortunately, the thunder monkey was used to it and didn't feel anything. This thunder movement. Gu Hang's eyes narrowed. This Lei Dong seemed to be more than just a simple beginner's proficiency, right? This kid, I guess he's really going to give us a big surprise. After having breakfast, Gu Huai's family then went to the open space in the courtyard. The open space was huge, and this open space was specifically used for fighting. The ground had been processed by several generations of the Gu family and many precious resources had been added, and it had become extremely hard. Even if a hegemonic imperial beast were to engage in battle in this place, it wouldn't be that easy to destroy the grounds. Good grandson come on. Guan's face wore a smile. He was a hundred percent fond of Gu Huai. His grandson. Good grin. Lei Bao. I'm relying on you to perform next. Bao. Lei Bao had a come as you are expression. Causing the crowd to laugh brightly. Guan casually waved his hand. And an awakened tenth level mechanical dragon appeared in the temporary imperial beast space. Grandpa. Awakening level 10 is too weak. This is not enough for Lei Bao to show his strength. The mechanical dragon was the most initial imperial beast of the dragon plus mechanical lineage. Of course, don't think that the mechanical dragon was weak just because it was the most initial imperial beast. The threshold of the mechanical plus dragon lineage was very high, and basically, it was only intermediate imperial beast masters that had the qualifications to contract it. The mechanical dragon, which was initially an awakening level 10, possessed extraordinary strength with a slight addition. All right, then a primary transcendent? Higher transcendent it is. When Gu Huai said this, Guan and Gu Hang both looked at Gu Huai in surprise. Seriously? Aha. Uh -huh. It seems like you're confident in Lei Bao's strength. Had had. Your own imperial beast. Well, it's a must. Alright then. High transcendent is high transcendent. The higher transcendent mechanical dragon Guan hadn't prepared. He had only prepared the primary transcendent. It was mainly because he couldn't imagine that Gu Huai would make such a request. Gu Hong. Go prepare. Okay. I'll have someone send it over. Luckily, with Gu Hang's status in Hangzhou, the higher transcendent mechanical dragon was just a matter of a word. And someone sent it in less than 10 minutes. The high transcendent mechanical dragon has arrived. Neither Gu An nor Gu Hang, nor even Mu Qing said anything about letting Gu Huai be safe. Mainly, a battle like this was too low level. For them, as long as they were in this place, there would be no accidents. 
they were fully capable of blocking the attack before it was going to land on them. Moreover, even if Lei Bao was really seriously injured, it would still be a minor injury in their eyes, and they would easily recover as before. Gu Huai also turned his gaze towards this mechanical dragon. Imperial beast, mechanical dragon, attribute, mechanical plus dragon. Bloodline, none. Strength, high transcendent. Skills, mechanical dragon claw. Death missile, skill, mechanical dragon claw. Death missile. Most of the mechanical imperial beasts did not have the so-called bloodline. After all, they are, by nature, mechanical. However, in order for a mechanical imperial beast to advance to the monarch level, there is one essential requirement, and that is for the mechanical imperial beast to have a so-called spirit. Only when it had a spirit could it be promoted to monarch. This point applied to the rest of the special imperial beasts that were similar to the mechanical imperial beasts. Then let's begin. Gu Huai laughed softly before signaling Lei Bao to take the field. Lei Bao held his head high and had a dignified appearance. I'll be the referee then. Elder Guan stepped inside, and the smile on his face tightened. Then this mechanical dragon will be temporarily controlled by me. Definitely, the mechanical dragon could not be allowed to conduct the battle on its own. Although the mechanical dragon would fight according to the program that had been formulated, it would look clumsy and not be able to exert much strength if it only had a high transcendence and wanted to control itself. Please have both players take their positions. Gu Huai and Gu Hong glanced at each other and walked to their corresponding contestant zones. Gu Huai was in the red zone, and Gu Hong was in the blue zone. This pairing, decent as it was, made Mu Qing on the side of the room chuckle a little as she watched. This grandfather and grandson trio, the battle will begin in 10 seconds. Please prepare both sides. When Gu Huai and Gu Hong raised their hands to signal that they were ready, Gu An announced these words, and both Gu Huai and Gu Hang's auras changed at this moment. The eyes of both parties were extremely serious, both waiting for the last second to descend. Begin. Lei Bao. Gu Huai directly utilized the power of his mind to give orders. Normally, battles took this approach. If you really let you yell out a command, it was a clear sign. Only when there was no psychic connection established with the imperial beasts was shouting, or utilizing some kind of coded signal. The command was taken. Dragon Claw. Lei Bao instantly launched his attack. The power of lightning ran through his body. During this period of cultivation, Lei Bao didn't simply just level up these two skills and then combine them to form an Aeon. Thunder movement was a very good skill. Gu Huai felt that the strength of this skill was far given underestimated. When Gu Huai had leveled Lei Dong to 31, which was the mastery stage, Gu Huai realized that Lei Bao could already explode the power of this Lei Dong in any corner of his body. Thus, Gu Huai began to move towards applying lightning to stimulate the body cells for all aspects of the trial. Now Lei Bao would be able to always let the lightning flow through the cells in his body, accelerating at any time. Not the acceleration of using this skill, but the direct instinctive acceleration that didn't require a time delay, and the consumption of physical strength was also of the pitifully small kind, allowing Lei Bao to continue to fight for long periods of time. So fast? A look of surprise appeared in Gu Hang's eyes. This speed was somewhat beyond his expectations. However, he was ultimately a battle-hardened dragon master, and quickly reacted. The mechanical dragon did not move. Responding to changes with no change was indeed a good choice. Mechanical dragon claw. Dragon claw. With the added speed, the power of the dragon claw was also enhanced. Bang. The attacks of both sides collided together. Lei Bao was only awakened level 10. Even with the addition of this aspect of speed, he was still weak and directly retreated several steps back. The mechanical dragon only retreated half a step. Sure enough, it's a dragon claw at the control stage. This power is so strong. Gu Hong was even more surprised in his heart. With this strike, if he was controlling a primary transcendent mechanical dragon, I'm afraid it would have been nullified with this blow. It's a pity that this power is still not enough. Gu Hong had an idea in his mind, and probably figured out the strength of Lei Bao's dragon claw. The next thing to prevent was that the dragon claw and the thunder movement formed an Aeon. I'll go. This kid is playing dirty with me. But soon Gu Hang's face darkened. That dragon claw move just now was not Lei Bao's full strength. Gu Hong quickly reacted to the fact that Gu Huai's purpose was to approach the mechanical dragon through a weaker dragon claw. Gu Huai was anticipating his prediction. If the power of this dragon claw had been stronger, Gu Hong wouldn't have chosen to fight the hard way, and could have relied entirely on the mechanical missile skill for a semi-long range attack, and fought Gu Huai in a battle of attrition. This kid, unfortunately, it was too late to understand this now. Lei Bao raised his hand, and lightning flashed, at such a close distance. If the mechanical dragon chose to retreat, there would really be no fight. Thunder Claw Flare. This was the combination skill of Dragon Claw plus Thunder Flare. With the originally powerful destructive power of the Dragon Claw, the element of thunder, which was known as the strongest destructive power, 
was added. It directly turned the Dragon Claw, which was originally only a physical attack, into a physical plus mana double damage. Almost as fast as an instantaneous movement, Lei Bao arrived directly in front of the mechanical dragon. Guan's pupils couldn't even help but shrink. With his eyesight, he could naturally see the power of this move. In the next second, he also moved. He wanted to try the power of this move. At the same time, Guan also knew that a mere high transcendent mechanical dragon wouldn't be able to catch it. This move, an AoE combination, could directly blow up a high transcendent mechanical dragon. Bang! The furious and incomparable lightning scattered in all directions with Lei Bao as the center. Elder Guan's figure appeared in the middle of Lei Bao and the mechanical dragon at an unknown time. Only when he raised his right hand, the incomparably terrifying lightning stopped right in front of him, not daring to take half a step beyond the thunder pool, only bursting out around him. In fact, as long as the old master wanted to, with the old master's strength, he could completely suppress this incomparable raging thunderbolt and disappear into thin air. It was just that he wanted to see how powerful this lightning was. The incomparably violent thunderbolt lasted for a while before dissipating. Even the well-informed Gu and Xinjong felt shocked beyond measure. Mastery Stage Dragon Claw plus Mastery Stage Thunderbolt. Both have reached an extremely perfect stage. The power of this skill is enough to be comparable to a proficient super rank skill. Guan was shocked in his heart. Of course, on the surface Guan was still incredibly calm and expressionless, unable to see his inner thoughts. Joking aside, even in front of his own grandchildren, the demeanor that should be maintained needed to be maintained. Holy crap, Xiao why you can do this AoE? This is level 20, right? Guan was able to manage to keep the surface clouded, but Gu Hang's kung fu was still a bit worse, and he couldn't help but burst out, earning a blank stare from Guan. Well, a level 22 AoE. Level 22. Gu Hui's words caused the corners of Guan's mouth to twitch. A level 22 Upanishad. This was equivalent to a level 22 super rank skill. This kid was not to be outdone. One must know that when he was in the baby dragon stage, forget about it, or was it the battle dragon beast stage? He had already been raised to the peak lord limit, and he had just barely raised this Upanishad to level 31. When did he himself raise this Upanishad to adept? It seemed like he did it when he first entered the lords. It was too perverted. A level 22 Upanishad is indeed fine. It just so happens that your thunder treasure should be getting close to being suppressed. Guan spoke at this time, and Gu Huai nodded. It was indeed going to be impossible to suppress it, especially after the battle he had just experienced. Lei Bao was already on the verge of advancing to transcendent at any time. If one was not careful and directly allowed Lei Bao to advance to transcendent, it would be troublesome. Then your father and I will sit in order. Good. Gu Huai nodded. But before that, there's one more thing I need to do. What is it? Gu Huai didn't answer. Just checked Lei Bao's information. Imperial Beast, Baby Dragon, Different Color. Name, Lei Bao. Attribute, Dragon. Bloodline, High Transcendent. Realm, Awakening 10th Stage. Skills, Dragon Claw L43, plus, Thunder Move LV40, plus, AoE, Dragon Claw plus Thunderous Movement LV22, plus, this is Lei Bao's current panel. The AoE side could also be upgraded. And in the subsequent stages, Gu Hui's focus was basically on practicing the AoE piece. And individually, he didn't pay as much attention to Dragon Claw and Thunder action. Add some points. Gu Hui looked at Lei Bao's panel with a touch of madness in his eyes. He was afraid to point before. Afraid that after pointing, Lei Bao would directly advance to transcendent. But now that Gu Hui was ready to let Lei Bao advance, it was only natural that he could continue to add points at this time. It was just the right time to evolve during the process of adding points. Consuming 40 million reinforcement points, LV40 Thunderbolt is upgraded to level 41. Consuming 5 million reinforcement points, LV41 level Dragon Claw is upgraded to level 42. Consuming 5 million enhancement points, LV49 level Dragon Claw is raised to level 50. Because the number of reinforcement points needed was a bit much, Gu Hui had Gu Hong prepare resources for himself in advance. Just for this moment of reinforcement, LV41 level represented raising a skill already to the stage of a furnace. The upper limit of a primary skill was LV40 level. This Gu Hui had determined with his grandfather during this time. This talent of his own was very strong, worthy of infinite reinforcement, allowing primary skills to directly break the shackles. However, the crazy idea in Gu Hui's heart wasn't actually just strengthening the skill from level 41 to level 50. Thunder Treasure, which had received so many consecutive skill enhancements, could no longer suppress its desire to advance to transcendent, but under Gu An's control, it barely suppressed its realm and began to head towards evolution. The force was too strong, and even with Gu An's help, Lei Bao's expression was extremely grim. Lei Bao hold on. Stay with me and go crazy one more time. 
Gu Huai's heart ached as he looked at Lei Bao's situation. However, for the sake of Lei Bao's future, Gu Huai decided to try something. Add more. Gu Huai's voice roared madly in his head. The Dragon Claw skill is detected as a primary skill. It has been strengthened to the upper limit of primary skills. The skill Dragon Claw is currently being revamped. The revamping needs to consume 100 million reinforcement points. Will it continue? The expected successful addition of points didn't appear. Instead, words like this appeared. Gu Huai was slightly stunned when he saw this, but soon Gu Huai confirmed it. Just kidding, this had to be confirmed. Only a fool would not confirm such a good thing. Although 100 million reinforcement points was quite a lot. According to the optimal water and earth energy crystals to transform, it would also need to consume almost 400 million imperial beast coins. It was only with the Gu family's family fortune that they could afford such consumption. Advancement successful. Primary skill Dragon Claw LV50 consumes 100 million reinforcement points. Successfully advancing the skill to Rift Claw, Cracking Claw, Super Rank Skill with Space plus Dragon Attributes with incredible destructive power and speed. On Lei Bao's skills panel, there was also such an additional skill. An unknown, a skill that Gu Huai had never heard of. Rift Claw LV21 plus Super, Super Rank Skill? Gu Huai directly froze. He had to know that he had exhausted himself fusing the two skills, Dragon Claw and Thunder Movement, before combining them to create the Ultra Rank Upanishad. But now this was straightforward? Time didn't allow Gu Huai to think much, because Lei Bao's evolution had reached a critical moment. Gu Huai's Imperial Beast space was beginning to tremble. The evolution of an Imperial Beast would be quite a bit smoother with the help of the Imperial Beast space. Go for it, Lei Bao. Bao. Under the joint efforts of Gu Huai and Lei Bao, as well as Guan, Lei Bao completed its final evolution. It's just that the variety that evolved out was completely out of everyone's expectations. It was a brand new, brand new breed that no one had ever seen before. A dragon with a predominantly blue-purple hue, somewhat like an oriental divine dragon, floated in the air, giving off an extremely majestic feeling. The first thing Mu Qing did when he saw the brand new breed was to check out the dragon's information. Imperial Beast, Unknown. Attribute, Dragon plus Unknown. Bloodline, Unknown. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skill, Unknown. Thunder Domain Space. A piece of it was all unknown. Actually, Observation Art was a skill that was combined with technology. It was possible to link with big data by way of the observation technique, thus matching the corresponding information and data. Of course, if one's own strength was strong enough, then one would be able to observe even more. As for what principle was involved, there was a guardian god beast in the Donghuang kingdom, and that guardian god beast was one that the entire Donghuang kingdom had gone through countless generations before it was cultivated. A mechanical type guardian god beast. It was said that the spirit of this mechanical guardian beast was an extremely powerful beast master in the history of Donghuang kingdom. Of course, there is no clear picture of the exact situation, because after becoming a spirit, he lost all the memories of his life leaving behind only the most primitive and original will, which is to guard Donghuang kingdom forever on behalf of the original body. This mechanical guardian beast possessed supreme power. The observation technique was what everyone used to analyze the imperial beast with the help of its power. Only all that everyone was able to utilize was its insignificant power of transportation. It was only natural that the guardian god beast did not know the information about this newly emerged imperial beast. In fact, there were often new imperial beasts given discovery in nature or created through artificial means. All unknown. Let's see. Guan's authority was higher and he was able to use more transportation power. But what he looked at wasn't even close to Mu Qing's information. Surprisingly, it really is a brand new species. Guan's tone became grave. Let me check first. Discovering a new imperial beast was an irresistible charm to Mu Qing, who specialized in imperial beast evolution. Especially since this imperial beast was extremely powerful by the look of it. This if she could find out a stable way to evolve. Then the possibility of her becoming an evolutionary patriarch would once again increase. It was important to know the gold content of the evolutionary patriarch evil. There were only three evolutionary patriarchs in the whole world. And there was only one in Donghuang country. The information that Gu Huai could see was naturally even more. Because Gu Huai was the owner of the thunder treasure. He was able to ascertain the information of the thunder treasure through the rules of heaven and earth. And at the same time, Gu Huai could also name the new imperial beast. Imperial Beast, Unnamed, Name, Lei Bao, Attribute, Dragon plus Space, Bloodline, Medium Monarch, Realm, Primary Transcendent, Skills, Cracking Claw LV21, Super Rank, Space plus Dragon Stance, Thunder Domain Space LV14, Super Rank, Thunder plus Space, Arcana, Thunder Cracking Claw LV1, Quasi Divine Arcana, Holy shit, upon seeing Lei Bao's information, Gu Huai's entire body was shocked, it was really too exaggerated. 
Although Gu Huai wasn't quite sure what stage his grandfather and father's first evolution was to be for, it definitely wasn't this terrifying. The bloodline of the battle dragon beast was at the stage of lord, cultivated well, it was a high lord, cultivated poorly, it was a primary lord. It required the evolution of the combat dragon beast after choosing its attributes to be a dual attribute dragon imperial beast with a monarch bloodline, but this was a direct step for himself. Although it was only a medium monarch, a medium monarch with quasi-divine arcana was not something Gu Huai had ever heard of. Gu Huai you saw the information? After Gu Huai spoke the information out, the entire family fell silent. Two super rank skills, both with space as a secondary attribute, plus a quasi-divine Upanishad. This is a fucking medium monarch? Even the old man was not calm this time. He knew more than Gu Huai, and he also knew what the quasi-god Aeon represented. If a royal beast wanted to break through from the monarch realm to the overlord realm, there was one of the most basic requirements, and that was to possess a paragodic skill, and it also needed to cultivate its paragodic skill to level 11, which was the proficiency stage. In order to do so, imperial beasts with overlord bloodlines came with their own paragon skills, so for imperial beasts with overlord bloodlines, it wasn't too difficult to ascend to the overlord realm, as long as they raised their paragon skills to level 11. Of course what was said here was the base state. The vast majority of people were very ambitious and would not limit themselves to this. It was like Gu Hong, Gu Hang's main royal beast, the Thunder Battle Dragon, possessed a high monarch bloodline. His ambition was great, and that was to have the Thunder Battle Dragon evolve after raising the Paragon Divine Upanishad that he had already mastered to level 21, which was the proficient stage, which would allow the Thunder Battle Dragon to evolve into a high monarch bloodline, the Thunder Sacred Dragon King. If not, the Thunder Saint Dragon King's bloodline might only be a primary overlord, or a medium overlord. Simply two super rank skills with spatial attributes can establish Thunder Bao as a higher sovereign, right? Little Huai, you really did give us a huge surprise. The two were truly shocked by Gu Huai. Although Gu Huai had evolved an unknown dragon imperial beast, which left Lei Bao with no way to evolve along the original route. However, both of them were not fools, and they could feel Lei Bao's potential. In the future, this Lei Bao might be able to break the shackles of the high overlord bloodline. It was only that this path for Lei Bao would be very difficult. Gu Huai heatedly smiled, and Gu Huai was also pleasantly surprised by Lei Bao's evolution this time. This was a medium monarch bloodline. To be able to have a monarch bloodline royal beast at this stage of a primary royal beast master was an extremely rare thing. Originally, Baby Dragon would still have a gap in the foundation compared to other geniuses because of the bloodline, and could only be brought closer by way of skills and techniques. But now, the corner of Gu Huai's mouth lifted into a wide smile. Now he could crush imperial beast masters of his age in all aspects. Even if it was one of those big families, or a genius imperial beast master who had some kind of miraculous encounter, Gu Huai didn't put it in his eyes. Like many big families, in order for their children to win at the starting line, they would take the step of letting their children have early contact with the imperial beasts that needed to be contracted, so that they could get ahead of the game a bit more. As the saying goes, one step faster, one step faster. Only such an advantage was limited, with the ability of the newbie Imperial Beast Masters, they would only be able to contract Imperial Beasts of the Awakening 5th rank, however, their families would prepare a second Imperial Beast for them, which was specially cultivated by an Imperial Beast Breeding Master, although its realm wasn't high, its skills, battle sense, and other aspects were all excellent, in fact, the Gu family also had one, only that Gu Huai had chosen the Thunder Monkey and didn't want that Imperial Beast. A normal child of a large family basically wouldn't contract an imperial beast with a realm above transcendent, and would only contract an imperial beast at the awakening stage. The reason was simple. The imperial beasts they chose were all imperial beasts with great potential, and most of such imperial beasts needed to lay a good foundation at the awakening stage, so that they would be more helpful in the future. Only some of the group that were not up to par, who were trying to gain an advantage, would go and contract imperial beasts whose realm was at the primary transcendent after they became primary imperial beast masters, so as to bring them closer together. Little Huai, give Lei Bao's race a name. Guan's eyes carried envy. It wasn't that Guan hadn't thought about such a thing as developing a new evolutionary route on his own. His dark descendant demon dragon was prepared to do just that. But unfortunately, it ended up failing and delaying the dark descendant demon dragon. So now, the Dark Descendant Demon Dragon was the weakest of Guan's six imperial beasts in terms of strength division. Racial name? As soon as Gu Huai said this, Lei Bao at the side immediately widened its eyes, trying to stop Gu Huai from opening his mouth. This was because it was afraid that Gu Huai would come straight to some unpleasant name. Great Thunder Dragon King? Lei Bao sweated evilly at the thought. Luckily, this time, Gu Huai was quite forceful. Then let's give you a 
Pale Blue Thunder Dragon Racial Name. Ow. Lei Bao was shocked. Gu Huai was actually someone who could think of such a name. Pale Blue Thunder Dragon? That's not a bad name. But there's no reflection on the space system on that name. When Gu Hong said this, Gu Huai and Gu An's masters couldn't help but look at each other as they both understood what the other meant. No reflection of the space system? It was only good that there was no embodiment. Gu Hong looked at the two men's smiles, and a look of bewilderment appeared on his face. What was wrong with his two masters? Mu Qing at the side couldn't help but laugh lightly at these two old sixes. It was still his own husband who was simple. Lei Bao's evolution was complete, and Gu Huai naturally had to start busily understanding and testing Lei Bao in all aspects. Lei Bao also had to learn more about his abilities. Every time a royal beast evolved, although its strength would increase drastically, there was still a certain amount of time needed to adapt in here before it could fully bring its strength into play. But there was another big thing in here, and that was to complete the contract with the Thunder Monkey. Thunder Monkey? Come on. Yeah yeah. The Thunder Monkey's eyes were filled with a color of anticipation. It would be a lie to say that he wasn't envious after seeing the handsome appearance of his good companion after he evolved. Now that Gu Huai had elevated to primary imperial beast master, he would be able to evolve a contract with himself. Thunder Monkey had been waiting for a moment for a long, long time. The contract went smoothly. Although the Thunder Monkey had been with Gu Huai all this time, it had also been nurtured by Gu Huai, able to eat precious resources, and had a specialized cultivation program. However, because it couldn't receive Gu Huai's reinforcement, the Thunder Monkey's growth was very limited. Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil. Bloodline, High Commander. Strength, Awaken 6th Level Strength, Awaken 6th Level. Skills, Hardening L8, plus, 8 Gates of Evil LV1, plus. Strength was only up to the Awaken 6th Order. But Gu Huai wasn't idle during this time. He had specifically discussed with his mother Mu Qing the evolutionary routes that Gu Huai, a Stone Monkey, could take. There were many evolutionary routes for normal Stone Monkeys most of which went towards the earth attribute piece of evolution. And currently the strongest stone monkey evolution was the earthbound sacred monkey, which was an imperial beast of the medium higher monarch bloodline. As long as it was on top of the earth, it could explode with quite terrifying power and endless battle intent. However, Gu Huai's thunder monkey didn't have an earth attribute in it, but a dragon plus evil attribute. This was coupled with the fact that the thunder monkey possessed two powerful forces within its body one being the power of destruction and the other being an unknown mysterious force. Under the constant collision of these two forces, although the Thunder Monkey's life was threatened, the Thunder Monkey was not without its benefits. Its physical qualities were far stronger than the Stone Monkey's at the same stage. Mu Qing's suggestion was to have the Thunder Monkey focus on constantly refining its own qualities and becoming a saint in the flesh. So the second skill that Gu Huai had the Thunder Monkey learn was, Eight Doors Transported Armor. The Eight Gates of Transported Armor was a very magical skill. The specific effect was a skill that allowed one to gain power beyond their own in a short period of time by stimulating the potential within their body. This skill sounds as if it is very strong, but in reality, it is indeed very strong. It was a top tier skill. It's just that this skill isn't popular, and there aren't many imperial beasts that will learn it, and it can even be described as pitifully few. The first is that the difficulty of learning this skill is too high. It wasn't difficult to get started, but the difficulty of becoming proficient in it was no less than a super rank skill. Secondly, that is learning this skill is too easy to get hurt. A little bit of inattention will get hurt. There is no mind series at home. It is best not to practice, that or really can not afford to practice. The last one, want to practice the skill need very strong perseverance. After having these three points, wanting to learn the skill of eight doors transported armor is also quite a difficult thing to learn. The reason why Gu Huai chose this skill, besides the factors of Thunder Monkey and his own family, the more important thing was his own talent. Gu Huai wanted to see to what extent he could raise this 8 doors escape armor with this infinite addition of his own. Yeah yeah. Completing the contract with the thunder monkey, Gu Huai received another feedback from the power of the imperial beast, and his physical quality was further improved. With this physical quality of my own now, I guess I can have a fight with that little stone monkey from before, right? Gu Huai muttered and didn't care. He wasn't planning on engaging in combat himself. Wasn't it nice to be a quiet and handsome imperial beast master? Thunder monkey? Let's get stronger together. Roar. Plus point plus point. Before Thunder Monkey could speak. At the side. Lei Bao was the first to speak. Yeah yeah. I want it too. Thunder Monkey's eyes were glowing. Adding points and whatnot. It liked it the most. Fine. Fine. All of it all of it. Gu Huai's smile was wide. It was this reinforcement point that was a bit not quite enough. It seems like we need to find pops to get a few more small targets. That or the subsequent consumption will be too great. July 1st. Early. 
After Gu Huai washed up, he took the excited Lei Monkey and Lei Bao out the door. The target, Hang Cheng No, one middle school. Today was the closing ceremony of Hang Cheng No, one middle school, and for the majority of the students, it was still a thing to look forward to, because after the closing ceremony, it represented the arrival of summer vacation. The first year high school students were able to have a pleasant summer vacation, discussing where to go and play. What about the sophomores? When they came to the closing ceremony, they had one more thing to do than the senior students, and that was imperial beasts. Everyone had just become a royal beast master for a month, and they were all eager to discuss things about royal beasts with their fellow classmates, especially the group of people who had contracted a good imperial beast. They couldn't wait for this day to come so that they could show off with everyone. These were the simplest of human desires. As for Gu Huai, well, Gu Huai wasn't free from this low level of fun either. To be honest, Gu Huai also liked to pretend to be something else. It's just that Gu Huai didn't like that kind of skillless pretending. It was too boring. He preferred the ones with padding. Boss, just as he arrived at the school entrance, Gu Huai heard a familiar voice, and a faint smile couldn't help but appear on his face. Boss I'm finally back alive. The person who came was none other than Gui Justice. He had jogged all the way over and the angles had even appeared on his face that was originally full of horizontal flesh. It was obvious how grueling training he had gone through this month. Not bad, much sturdier. Gu Huai patted Guo Jingyi's shoulder. It really wasn't quite the same. That's not true. Boss, do you know how I spent this month? My old man is simply crazy you know? He made me have to get up at 5 every day, and forces me to go to sleep at 9 at night. He also makes me train with the Jade Fist Stone every day. Do you know how outrageous that is? Look at this. The fact that I've spent more than a decade to cultivate. Ah, in just one month's time, how much has it made me evaporate? Woo woo, Gui Justice was in tears. Ha ha, Gu Huai, on the other hand, couldn't help but laugh, earning a grudging gaze from Gui Justice. Chatting with Gui Justice, the two of them walked into the classroom. In fact, most of it was Gui Justice talking, venting out all of his suffering this month, and also telling Gu Huai that his old man had only given him a week's vacation, and that after the week was over. He would have to go through the second stage of devil's training again. When the two walked into the class, many people gathered around. They were naturally curious about Gu Huai, who was the only imperial beast master in their class, or even in the entire school, who had awakened an S-rank talent. I think it's the imperial three, isn't it? The person who said this was Gu Huai's class president of their class, Chen Hongji, a pretty good person, helpful. He would usually help if the class asked him for help with anything, but this person has a problem. He loves to show off. Gu Huai did not have much to say about this. After all, people cannot be good at everything. There are good places. Naturally there will be some minor problems. Understandable and acceptable. Gu Huai shook his head. Not the Imperial Three? Chen Hongji's tone carried a touch of surprise. According to his thoughts, the probability was that Gu Huai should have contracted the Imperial Sanjia. No, it's a stone monkey. Gu Huai casually said. Gu Huai did not say anything about Lei Bao. The main reason was that it was a bit too much of a blow to become a primary imperial beast master after only becoming an imperial beast master for less than a month. Not to mention, the stone monkey was enough. Stone monkey? The crowd couldn't help but stare when they heard the name stone monkey. It wasn't because stone monkeys were bad. The stone monkey group was still quite famous in this part of Hang province. It had a strong sense of combat and many evolutionary roots. Although it was very difficult to evolve into a monarch, and it was almost impossible for them to accomplish. The stone monkeys were considered to be rare and good imperial beasts. One of them who had awakened a B-rank talent had contracted a stone monkey, but the stone monkey is good. But if compared to the royal family, the gap is not half a point. Ordinary imperial three families need three million imperial beast coins to start. The better ones even more tens of millions. But for stone monkeys, basically 50 to 600, 000 could come down. Or a good quality one. A million would be enough to find a very good stone monkey. Well, it's the stone monkey. The scene instantly quieted down, and a number of people looked at Gu Huai with sympathy. Although most of them had contracted imperial beasts that weren't as good as Gu Huai, class president Chen Hongji immediately stepped in to save the day, patting Gu Huai's shoulder and saying, Stone monkeys are also quite good, and in the future, they also have high hopes of advancing into the existence of a monarch bloodline. High school students, in fact, most of them didn't have any bad intentions either. It's just that most of them felt that they were the pride of heaven and would definitely be able to achieve something outstanding in the future. That was what was meant by having a big mouth. He would always think that a master beast master was nothing more than that. As long as he was given time, becoming a master grade imperial beast wasn't something that could be done with a hand. It was only with the passage of time that they would slowly recognize the truth. 
Gu Huai only smiled at everyone's consolation and didn't say anything. Only Guo Zhengyi, who was on the side, and Liao Jinxian, both of whom were looking at Gu Huai with eyes filled with oddities. A stone monkey? The two of them laughed in their hearts. Anyone could have contracted a stone monkey, but it was absolutely impossible for Gu Huai to contract a stone monkey. Especially Guo Zhengyi, he even said in his heart, if the boss really contracted a stone monkey, he would live to shit upside down. Hearing that Gu Huai had contracted a stone monkey, the crowd's focus shifted away from Gu Huai. So class president, the imperial beast you contracted is? Chen Hongji was still comforting Gu Huai a moment ago, but as soon as he heard this, he immediately became energized. Finally, he could put on a good show. Ahem, actually, the imperial beast I contracted. Classmates, everyone be quiet. I'll say a few words. Just as Chen Hongji was about to pretend to be a good pussy, the voice of class teacher Deng Hong came from the doorway. This time everyone's attention shifted all the way to Deng Hong. Only Chen Hongji stayed in place, crying in his heart. Old class, when are you not coming? Why do you have to come at this time? Even 10 seconds later would be good. Woo woo. Although Chen Hongji's heart was like this, but the old class came. As the class leader, he naturally had to set an example. With tears in his eyes, he immediately returned to his seat. The closing ceremony will take place soon, and time is rather tight. What I'm mainly talking about is that after the closing ceremony is over, everyone will return to the class, and later we'll all take a picture together. As a way of remembering the time we've all spent together these past two years, Hongji, when you hear the announcement later, you'll take everyone to the big playground. Okay, teacher. Deng Hong left after saying this. The broadcast soon rang, and everyone, who were all sophomores, also lined up in a very orderly manner and arrived at the large playground one after another. The closing ceremony was actually very dull and boring. It was just a few leaders saying some boring words up there and honoring some students. The main commendations were for the senior students of this year, who had just finished taking the college entrance exams, and the results had come out. This time, the best student of Hangzhou No. 1 Middle School was the captain of Hangzhou No. 1 Middle School's varsity team, Ko Zhongqing. Ko Zhongqing was very good, with a high score of 731 points. He was admitted to Hangcheng University and entered the special recruiting class of Hangcheng University. This time, the entire Hangzhou No. 1 middle school had a really good harvest. Of the 800 students, 14 of them got into the three universities. And although three of them in this group weren't majored in imperial beast matchmaking, such a high percentage was excellent. For the remaining students, there were also quite a few who got into the first and second batch of imperial beast schools. Finally, Ko Zhongqing was asked to come up and say a few words and this closing ceremony was officially over. After it was over, Gu Huai and the others returned to their class, took a group photo together, and entered the final session. Party plus teacher appreciation banquet. Because Chen Hongji's family in the class was quite rich, the arrangements this time were very good. The location of the teacher appreciation banquet was directly placed at the Shanshue Private Resort Center. This place wasn't cheap. Wanting to charter a venue for more than 40 people to go in, this would be a matter of several W's at least. If it is for the class to AA this expense, there must be a lot of people who are not happy. Chen Hongji naturally understood this, so he directly contracted all the expenses, just to let everyone have fun and enjoy themselves. At 11 o'clock, the group was led by two buses to the Shanshue Private Resort Center. The Shanshue Private Resort Center was a relatively famous resort center in Hangzhou, and quite a few people wanted to come to a place for a good vacation. Of course, this did not include Gu Wai. After all, the Gu family also had a private resort center. After all, the Gu family also had a private resort center. The real private resort center was never open to the public, and only entertained some acquaintances. Many rich people were proud to be able to enter the Gu family's private resort center, but it was a pity that the vast majority of people didn't have this opportunity. The food at lunch was good, and it was evident that Chen Hongji had put his heart into it. Many of his classmates ate contentedly, and a sentence of compliments slammed onto Chen Hongji's body making the smile on his face simply unstoppable. Boss, Guo Zhengyi on the side skimmed his mouth. He was a little tired of seeing Chen Hongji's pretentious character. Gu Huai, on the other hand, smiled. Right classmates, there's something on the teacher's side to talk to you about. When she was almost done eating, Deng Hong opened her mouth, and all the gazes of the crowd looked over. It's like this, this year's summer vacation. Probably in the middle of August, Hangzhou City will invite the next door mountain city together in Hangzhou City Sports Square to hold a Hangshan Newcomer Cup competition. The rewards are very good. It is said that if you are able to take the first place, you will be able to take the rewards worth $20 million that are co-funded by the two provinces. If you're all interested, you can all go and participate to see. If you are able to make it to the top 64, by that time, 
you will have the chance to show your face in the TV stations of both provinces, and there will be a live broadcast. Of course the rankings and whatnot don't matter, mainly this is a good stage to play against more newbie imperial beast masters of the same stage. When Tung Hong said this, many people's eyes lit up. Imperial Beast Matchmaking Tournament. If they were able to make it to the top 64, they could even be featured on television. This was a heavenly temptation for the young boys and girls who had just reached adulthood. Many people were moved. Chen Hongji was no exception. This was a moment for him to show his prowess in front of his classmates, especially his beloved classmate Liao Jinxian. Ahem, I, Chen Jihong purposely coughed twice, wanting to attract the attention of the crowd, but only just after he had opened his mouth. Deng Hong turned his gaze to Gu Huai and inquired, Gu Huai, do you have any interest in this competition? Gu Huai was the only S-class talent possessor in this term, but it had made her make a big splash and take home a considerable amount of prize money. There is. Actually, Gu Huai knew about this matter even earlier than Tung Hong. This was because his own old man had spoken to him before this competition had even been officially issued with a document notifying that it was going to be a competition. Gu Hong had also demanded that he had to participate, and that he had to take first place. This matter was related to his bet with the Mountain City City Lord. Mountain City, the capital city of the next province over, was also a superb province, and its overall strength wasn't much weaker than Hang Province, especially their Mountain City of Mountain City University, in recent years take off very fast, has taken several times the National College Student Newcomer Competition Group total score of 4th place. Last year, this Mountain City University even recruited an extremely excellent student, took the National Newcomer Competition. Individual competition runner-up. Hangcheng University only took third place last year, second in the total group score. Alright then, teacher looks forward to your performance. If you need anything you can call with teacher. And Jin Xian, Justice, both of you have good talent as well. You can try as well. Liao Jin Xian had never had much interest in Imperial Beast sparring. Her interest was in becoming a Vita Imperial Beast Evolution Master like Gu Huai's mother. It was only because Gu Huai was competing that she wanted to try as well participating in the same imperial beast competition with Gu Huai, if she could take the first and second place with him, it would be so romantic to think about it. Don't worry, Mr. Tung, I will definitely participate in this competition and come back with a good ranking for you. Guo Jingyi heatedly smiled. If it was before he went through the devil's training, he didn't have much confidence in his own strength, but now it was different. In the entire class, it could be said that other than Gu Huai, he had the confidence to defeat anyone. Old class. What about me? Chen Hongji felt so much grief. Why did Mr. Dang interrupt himself again and not ask if he wanted to participate in this competition? You? Tung Hong froze. She really didn't want to ask Chen Hongji. It wasn't that she didn't value Chen Hongji, but with her understanding of Chen Hongji, this kind of thing that was out of the limelight. As long as Chen Hongji knew about it, he would definitely find a way to participate. Right? But she definitely couldn't say it like that. It was too hurtful. Ahem. Hongji. As the class president of our class, you definitely have to participate on behalf of our class. Just in time. Just in time. Well, just as long as you know what I mean. Tung Hong was somewhat unable to find an excuse, and could only pat Chen Hongji's shoulder with a serious face and say, it had to be said that Chen Hongji was still eating this. Hearing Tang Hong's words, he immediately felt that the mission on his shoulders was quite heavy. Right away, he stood up excitedly. Teacher Tang, I will definitely not fail your hopes. I will carry the light of our first class with me. Brothers, let's participate in this competition together this time. Roar. Don't worry everyone. In order for the light of our first class to keep spreading, I decided that for the next half a month, I'll cover everyone's training expenses. At that time, I will have my father charter a training ground for us so that we can train and fight to our heart's content. Long live the squad leader. Class president is wise. Many of the students shouted in excitement. They were worried about how they were going to save money but they didn't realize that the good class president would just deliver it right to their doorsteps. Getting the feedback from his classmates, Chen Hongji even had a feeling of floating all over the place. That's good. If you need to come to my side later, Peng went on and tell me. By the way, it just so happens that there is a hunting area right at the back of the mountain of this private resort center, and there is a venue in there that is specifically for our newcomers, so all of us will be able to go and try it out later on. Don't worry everyone. I often go to this newcomer's hunting ground. It's very safe inside. The strongest imperial beasts are just awake in sixth stage like this. So there's absolutely no need to worry. And there are also security personnel inside that will be responsible for protecting our safety. Really? That's great. I've been training with my family's Dauda pig every day for the past month. And I haven't had any actual combat in the field yet. Go go go. Many people were excited. Even Gui Justice. 
Guo Zhengyi thought that he must make a good show of himself later on and put on a good show. Seeing that the crowd was so interested, Gu Huai didn't say much. It was just right to go with them to experience it. This kind of thing, it might be once in a lifetime. Deng Hong watched everyone being so excited, and the smile on her face became bright. Although this was her last day to bring them, she was proud to be their teacher. It was exactly at this time that everyone had pretty much eaten, and they all got up, and under Chen Hongji's leadership, they went to the hunting area of the private resort center. The hunting area was a project that had risen in recent decades. Many large private resort centers would have a hunting area. The function of the hunting area was mainly to allow some youngsters to experience the ferocious beasts in the hunting area. Although the beasts in the area have been trained by breeders, they have removed a lot of ferocity and will not take action against humans at will. The hunting area of the Shan Shui private resort center was not small in scale. The hunting area over here is mainly divided into three blocks. The first block has the largest area, and the ferocious beasts in it are basically all below the awakening fifth order, and are our target this time. When everyone arrives inside, they can summon their imperial beasts out, and when they see a suitable target, they can pick one for battle. Chen Hongji was excited inwardly. Finally he could show off his imperial beasts and make a good appearance. It's not easy. Good. Everyone listened attentively. Hunting area ah. Uh, many of them had never been exposed to it. Soon arriving at the edge of the hunting area, Chen Hongji immediately said, Everyone can summon their imperial beasts now. Class teacher Tung Hong didn't follow. She still had work this afternoon. Some school matters needed to be dealt with now. The entire class of 40 students, all of them had arrived. Chen Hongji immediately summoned his imperial beast. Come out. Flame tiger. A white hexagonal light appeared. And a tiger cub with spots of flame on its body appeared amongst the crowd. And was holding its head up majestically. Holding out its chest. I'll go. Class president. You're hiding it so deeply. You actually contracted one of the fire imperial beasts of the imperial three families. The flame tiger. Looking at this color. I'm afraid that this flame tiger is an excellent existence among the flame tigers. Many of the students revealed envy when they saw this flame tiger, which made Chen Hongji's vanity greatly satisfied. Fortunately, fortunately, this flame tiger was obtained by my old man who found some connections. The price is not expensive. It's only 12 million. Chen Hongji's words were like this, but he couldn't hide the smile on his face at all. Gu Huai also casually checked the information of this flame tiger. Imperial beast, flame tiger. Attribute, fire. Bloodline, high transcendent. Realm, Awakening 7th Stage, Realm, Awakening 7th Stage. Skill, Flame Roar. Flame Claw, Skill, Flame Roar. Flame Claw. Gu Huai nodded slightly. This Flame Tiger was indeed not bad. Awaken 7th Order, plus 2 skills. This class leader of his own was not bad. This time, with this push, he guessed that he could pocket it. Not bad, not bad. Awaken 7th Order Flame Tiger. It's not too bad compared to my Jade Fist Stone. Void Justice had also been holding this breath for a long time. And once he read the flame tiger's information, he sighed in relief and hurriedly said, also summoning his own imperial beast in passing. It looked somewhat similar to Little Fist Stone, except that its outside was something similar to what Green Jade looked like, as if it had changed its skin. Imperial Beast, Jade Fist Stone, Attribute, Earth, Bloodline, Primary Transcendent, Realm, Awakening 7th Stage, Skill, Jade Fist, Hardening, Your Jade Fist Stone has also reached the Awakened 7th Order? Guo Zhi Zhang's Jade Fist Stone brought him a certain amount of pressure, but it was only pressure. Chen Hongji was very confident in his own strength. Even if they were at the same realm, his Flame Tiger would definitely be able to defeat Jade Fist Stone. Naturally, a blazing fire blossomed in Guo Zhengyi's eyes. It was also the fact that his own old man didn't allow his Jade Fist Stone to evolve. That or else teaching a little tiger a lesson wouldn't be a simple matter. It's just as well that later we'll see whose Imperial Beast is stronger. Exactly. Guo Jingyi's relationship with Chen Hongji in the class could only be considered okay, not good. The rest of the students had also summoned their imperial beasts. Class 1 was indeed a place of crouching tigers and hidden dragons, and as one looked around, most of the imperial beasts were of transcendent bloodline. Among them, there were also three people whose imperial beasts were awakened 6th order. One was Liao Jinxuan's flower spotted cat. Another was Yan Shi's flower blossom. The last one was Lian Baekwon's stone monkey. This stone monkey was somewhat out of Gu Huai's expectations. Gu Huai, your imperial beast is also a stone monkey, so it's just right to summon it and let them compete as well? Lian Baekwon walked over to Gu Huai's side and smiled heatedly. Most of the students had summoned their imperial beasts out. Just a few hadn't, and Gu Huai was one of them. Good. Gu Huai smiled. In that case, let it come out. A white pentagram formation on appeared, and the thunder monkey's figure appeared. The five-pointed star formation awnings were colored 
and would emerge in a corresponding color based on the level of the Imperial Beast space. From low to high, they corresponded like this. Trainee Imperial Beast Masters corresponded to the white awnings. Beginner, Intermediate, Advanced, Master, and Legendary levels corresponded to green, blue, purple, orange, and gold respectively. Gu Huai was now a junior Beast Master, and the color of the five-pointed star formation awnings should be green. However, Gu Huai had learned feats that could hide the color of the formation awnings. Hiding the color of his formation awnings. Gu Huai hadn't done this just to pretend to be a pig and eat a tiger, but rather to be strategic. When adventuring in the wild and secret realms, one could encounter any crisis. A feat like this one, which hid the color of the formation awnings, might sometimes be able to work wonders. Of course, the main thing was that this gong method was easy to learn, and it didn't take Gu Huai much time to learn it. Although the thunder monkey was a mutated species of stone monkey, its appearance wasn't much different from that of a normal stone monkey, and could even be said to be identical. This one wasn't the same as the stone monkeys with patterns and an evil aura that Gu Huai had encountered before with those black devils club them. Surprisingly, it really is a stone monkey? Wei Justice, who was going toe to toe with Chen Hongji, felt his brain get a little confused when he saw that Gu Huai had actually summoned a stone monkey. He subconsciously tried to check Gu Huai's information about this stone monkey, but he realized that he couldn't probe it. A stone monkey? Liao Jinxian was also quite surprised. By all accounts, it was impossible for Gu Huai to contract a stone monkey given his family's lineage, right? At first, Liao Jinxian thought that Gu Huai was simply joking, and only thought that what Gu Huai had contracted was a high bloodline imperial beast similar to the monkey class, but she really didn't expect that what Gu Huai had contracted was a stone monkey. Many people had tried to check Gu Huai's information on this stone monkey, but they had all failed. After failing, they didn't say anything. The information of a royal beast could originally be hidden. Of course it wasn't impossible to use observation techniques to detect it after it was hidden. Only that if you wanted to detect the information after it was hidden, your own spiritual power had to be a bit stronger than the other parties in order to do so. And the other party is hidden. You still go to detect. This is not to offend people. Hey, Gu Huai, what realm is this stone monkey of yours? Lian Bei Quan hand and hod. His character and the stone monkey were quite similar. Both were the belligerent kind of character, about the same as you, Gu Huai said vaguely, not explicitly, Lian Bei Quan, and the crowd just assumed that Gu Huai's stone monkey was also awakened sixth order. They weren't surprised that Gu Huai was able to cultivate the stone monkey to the awakened sixth order. After all, Gu Huai's talent was an S rank perfect reinforcement. Then let's compete as well? Lian Bei Quan was full of desire to fight. Gu Huai glanced at Lian Bei Quan and nodded slightly. The thunder monkey wailed with excitement when it heard a monkey want to compete with it from the side. Competitions and whatnot. It loved it the most. Boss, what's going on with you? Gua Zhengyi, somewhat unable to stand, came to Gu Huai's ear and asked in a low voice, his tone anxious. You'll know after a while. Gu Huai sold a lie, earning a blank stare from Gui Justice. Gui Justice, it just so happens that there are two blood claw mantises in front of us. These two blood claw mantises are both awakened seventh stage strength, matching our imperial beasts. So let's have a match to see who can solve their opponents faster. It was just as well that Chen Hongji stepped forward at this time, drawing Guo Zhengwei's attention over. Come on, who's afraid? The crowd also gathered around. They were still very interested in the battle between the two strongest imperial beast masters in the class at the moment. Let's wait for their battle to end. Lian Bei Quan and Gu Huai said, and also hurriedly followed them. Soon the crowd arrived at the place where the blood clawed mantis was, and both Chen Hongji and Guo Zhengji wailed for their royal beasts to kill them. Right after the fight, Gu Huai knew that Gui Justice had won. Kidding aside, Gui Jinju, Gui Justice's father, was a master level imperial beast. There was a master royal beast master who specialized in devil training. Plus this jade fist stone was another royal beast that the Gua family had been cultivating for generations. Gua Justice was familiar with the jade fist stone. In this case, winning a small tiger is still not a big problem. Jade fist stone directly responded to all changes with no change. Standing in place. He waited for the Blood Clawed Mantis to attack. The Blood Clawed Mantis was the kind of imperial beast that had a high attack, and the Jade Fist Stone was again defense oriented. Boy Justice's old man had used quite a few more good things for the Jade Fist Stone during this period of time, which had brought the Jade Fist Stone's defense to a rather astonishing point compared to imperial beasts of the same level. The Blood Claw Mantis is going to use its giant pincer attack. I wonder what the outcome will be. The two Blood Claw Mantis's attacks were extremely synchronized both directly using their strongest attack moves to kill towards their targets. The momentum was overwhelming, giving off a feeling of, old me is invincible. The blood clawed mantis was also considered a relatively good imperial beast, only not quite as an initiate imperial beast, 
Because the blood clawed mantis was one of those imperial beasts that was extremely arrogant. Unless you personally defeat it, it can't be that kind of realm crushing way, then it won't even recognize you even if it's dead. In the natural world, there were actually quite a lot of this type of imperial beast. Flame claw. As the king of all beasts, the flame tiger naturally could not avoid it. It chose to fight hard. Chen Hongji would not allow the flame tiger to retreat either. He wanted to win this match magnificently. The claws filled with flames and the giant pincers collided together. The flames scattered in all directions, and several of the flames escaped onto the blood pincer mantis's body, causing its already bright red body to become even more bright red. The flame tiger was directly knocked back by a pincer, which caused Chen Hongji's face to turn slightly red. On the other side, Wu Justice's fighting style was completely different. Harden. Jade Fist Stone's jade-like skin became brighter in an instant. Bang! That condescending blood claw mantis face turned green at this moment. What did it hit here? Even if it was a boulder. This pincer going down. It would be able to smash the boulder to smithereens. But this guy in front of him was too damn hard. This pincer went down. Its pincer was about to crack. Woo woo. Don't hit it. How can this be hit? Can't hit it at all ah. Skillfully hardening. It seems that Justice's experience during this period of time is indeed very good. Gu Wai's eyes flashed with a sense of relief. This guy, Justice, was quite nice and righteous. But he just had that kind of simple-mindedness and developed limbs. The results of the cultural courses were dismal. The exams at the sophomore level were not yet a fusion of all the subjects together. The five main subjects were separate exams. Each worth 100 points. But even then, Gua Jingyi's total score was less than 200 points. This caused Gu Huai to worry about Gua Justice's score in the future. However, if the imperial beasts were cultivated very well, there was still a path that could be taken. Uncle Guo was probably thinking about this aspect and wanted Justice to be in this direction, using the tournament instead of the exam. Jade Fist. Just because the blood clawed mantis had a withdrawal in mind, it didn't mean that Jade Fist Stone felt the same way. Jade Fist Stone immediately lifted its hardening state after seeing that blood claw mantis was somewhat abashed. Jade Fist Stone's ability to harden was actually very strong. It was only that the hardening skill had one major flaw, and that was that it was not possible to move while in the hardening state. However, after strengthening the level of the hardening skill, it was possible to slowly compensate for this flaw, and by the time it reached the mastery stage, it would be possible to harden on the move. The Blood Claw Mantis, which was slightly weakened, already lacked that kind of unrelenting momentum, and along with it, its strength was also discounted. As Jade Fist blasted towards the front, Jade Fist Stone once again used Harden. Because of the inertia of the forward charge, this caused the Jade Fist Stone to not stop immediately. Giant Vice Attack. This time, the bloody pincer mantis really cried out, as it heard a click, and its pincers, in this instant, seemed to have cracked. This pincer was the hardest part of its body, and it usually went through the polishing of countless battles without leaving a mark on it. It had to be maintained every day. Woo woo, no more fighting. The blood claw mantis turned around and ran away, which was a stark contrast to the other side of the vessel that was pressing the flame tiger to fight. Although the jade fist stone had also given up its offense, it had after all knocked the blood claw mantis away. Who was stronger and who was weaker could be distinguished at a glance. At this moment, Chen Hongji's face was as red as a monkey's butt. He didn't think to understand why he couldn't even beat a poor student. This world was too malicious towards himself. The rest of the students also felt surprised. Guo Ji, who had won the match, instead squirmed a bit. Although this winning feels especially cool, but this feeling of the attention of all the people is a little too good. It was just that this feeling was the first time and he was still a bit unable to let go. Chen Hongji saw his flame tiger was suppressed by frequent mistakes, the body are hanging two wounds, some heartache he immediately ordered the flame tiger not to fight, but on the side of that upper blood claw mantis where will care about this, it fights are having a good time, will not let the flame tiger leave, if it continues like this, the flame tiger will probably be seriously injured, the hunting area was not absolutely safe, although the beasts inside have been tamed, and will not actively attack humans, but the beasts are after all beasts. This fight, it is easy to head. Of course this blood clawed mantis would not attack humans, at most it would just beat this little tiger half to death. Flame tiger, seeing that the flame tiger couldn't retreat back, Chen Hongji immediately became anxious. Although Gui Justice was competing with Chen Hongji, he was the first to step in after seeing that the flame tiger was in danger. With Jade Fist Stone strength, there was still no problem trying to stop the blood claw mantis, but something unexpected happened in a moment. As the blood claw mantis fought, its realm unexpectedly broke through. Awakening 8th stage, the huge pincers in his hand swung even more ferociously. The blood claw mantis that had awakened to the 8th stage, coupled with the fact that it also had a certain understanding of its own skills, 
Under this unrelenting aura, its strength had been greatly increased. At this moment, it was estimated that even if a transcendent creature stood in front of the blood clawed mantis, the blood clawed mantis would bravely pick up its own pincers and launch an attack towards the other party. Harden, the time was too hasty, and the jade fist stone couldn't fully harden in time before it was struck by the giant pincers of the blood claw mantis. The enormous force directly blew jade fist stone away, although it didn't bring too much damage to jade fist stone. The pincer after all carried an unrelenting momentum, and it still knocked jade fist stone unconscious. Cha cha cha. With a successful strike, Blood Vice Mantis's aura once again rose by a hair. The Blood Clawed Mantis gaze swept towards the Flame Tiger once again and let out an arrogant cry. Then a very comical picture appeared. A Praying Mantis was flaunting its power at a tiger. While that tiger was looking at the Praying Mantis with vigilance, and some fear, constantly retreating behind it. Flame Tiger. Seeing this scene, Chen Hongji was even more anxious to run towards the Flame Tiger. The Blood Clawed Mantis would not actively launch an attack on a human. But if it was Chen Hongji himself who ran in front of the prey it was attacking, then that would be another matter. Squad leader be careful. The blood claw mantis swung the pincers in its hand, directly launching a fierce attack towards the flame tiger. Chen Hongji also rushed over at this moment. The speed was quite fast, which made one feel compelled to lament that when a person was facing a crisis, he or she would indeed swing to erupt with a power that was normally hard to exert. It was a close call. A lot of people closed their eyes in fear as if they saw the image of the squad leader being given the pincers of the bloody pincer mantis, which made a lot of people couldn't help but tremble. For a group of young boys and girls who had only just reached adulthood, this scene was still too cruel and bloody. Wu Jingyi's face was also pale. He was now extremely remorseful. Why did he want to steal the limelight with the class president? If this squad leader really died, he would feel guilty. Thunder monkey. Only Gu Huai gently called out. And the thunder monkey, who had been impatiently waiting on the side, instantly shot out like a cannonball. The blood claw mantis that was about to hit Chen Hongji stopped its attack at this moment. The perceptions of a ferocious beast were extremely sharp. It could sense that if it continued to attack, its own consequences would be dire. A terrifying existence was approaching itself, and if it didn't stop, it would have no way to deal with it. The blood claw mantis hastily stopped its attack and swung its giant pincers in the direction the thunder monkey was shooting from. Giant claw attack. Harden. Bang. The Blood Claw Mantis body also transformed into a cannonball at this moment, directly flying backwards, breaking a large tree. Where the original Blood Claw Mantis was, a stone monkey appeared. Everything happened in a flash of lightning and many people didn't even see it before it was over. Yeah, the Thunder Monkey knew that the teenager in front of him was Gu Huai's friend. So naturally, he was also its friend. The Thunder Monkey grinned and patted Chen Hongji's shoulder with an air of being fine. Chen Hongji, on the other hand, opened his eyes in bewilderment blankly turning his gaze to the stone monkey in front of him, and he didn't figure out what was going on. Just now, he had rushed out purely because his head was in the heat of the moment. Now that he thought back, Chen Hongji was a bit weak in his feet. This stone monkey, Lian Baekwon was also scared just now. Only he was one of the few who didn't close his eyes. Everything that happened just now was all in his eyes. This caused Lian Baekwon to subconsciously look at Gu Huai. And when Gu Huai felt the gaze, he turned his gaze and smiled at Lian Baekwon. Gulp! Lian Baekwon gulped. Damn it. He even wanted to compete with Gu Huai to see whose stone monkey was stronger. Wasn't that a breaking offense? It was also right. Gu Huai was, after all, the possessor of an S-class talent. And the stone monkey he contracted was definitely not an ordinary stone monkey. How could one be so foolish? What just happened? Why is there a stone monkey over there? Look guys, that blood claw mantis. The gazes of the crowd looked over. And they saw a blood claw mantis lying over there. The right pincer of this blood claw mantis had already split into several halves. This tragic picture made the crowd froze. What had just happened? How did this blood claw mantis become like this? It's a stone monkey. The few people who saw it barely managed to regain their senses from the shock at a moment's notice. One of them said in an extremely complicated tone. A stone monkey? Yes, it's that stone monkey. Just now, that stone monkey rushed out from somewhere. And just by touching that blood clawed mantis, that blood clawed mantis shot out like a cannonball. And then that was it. Are you kidding? Do you think I am? The person who spoke couldn't help but roll his eyes, knowing that it was hard to believe what he said. It's true. I saw it too. And I know who that stone monkey belongs to. Liao Jinxian said in a complicated tone. When the crowd heard Liao Jinxuan's words, they reluctantly believed it. Mainly because Liao Jinxian was the school flower and had good grades. So she definitely wouldn't lie. Who is it? Liao Jinxian couldn't help but look at Gu Huai. It's me. Thunder monkey come back. Since it was exposed, it wasn't hidden. What's more, the script was quite good. This pussy, playing it smooth, 
Gu Huai's face was clouded over, but inwardly, he had long been happy. No one disliked pretending to be a pussy, including him. It was just that there were levels and grades of pretending, and the kind of pretending that was too inferior was uninteresting. Yeah, ah. Lei Monkey sniffed and greeted Chen Hongji, who was still in a state of shock, before walking towards Gu Huai with a naive face. Gu Huai, is this the realm you said was similar to my stone monkeys? Indeed it's about the same. My stone monkey is only at the seventh stage of awakening realm. Gu Huai casually said, awakening seventh stage? You frame me. How could an awakening seventh stage be so strong? Lian Bei Quan didn't believe it, and neither did the people around him. You guys forgot about my talent. Your talent? Crap. S rank perfect reinforcement. At this moment, some people reacted, and one by one, their eyes were filled with envy as they looked at Gu Huai. S rank perfect reinforcement. This was a rather strong talent. Although it couldn't increase the strength of the imperial beasts in battle, the ability was too strong in the piece of cultivating imperial beasts. Your stone monkey wouldn't have strength and hardening to proficiency, right? Someone couldn't help but ask. Gu Huai smiled, not denying it or agreeing with it, but the vast majority thought so. Only a few people's mouths twitched. Skilled? Cheat the hell out of it. This was definitely not the kind of power that skillful hardening could erupt from. Gua Justice and Lian Baekwon knew best. Gua Justice's Jade Fist Stone was the one that had given the skill of hardening to LV11 level, which was the skilled initiation. But even so, when facing the Blood Clawed Mantis, it was still taking a beating. Lian Baekwon, on the other hand, because he had cultivated the Stone Monkey himself, he knew the hardening skill very well. It was impossible for a hardening of skilled difficulty to give the stone monkey such terrifying strength. This hardening should be of the proficient level. In the past two days, the thunder monkey's realm hadn't increased much. It had only increased from awakened sixth stage to awakened seventh stage. However, thunder monkey's strength had increased quite a bit. Thunder monkey's previous foundation was well laid, and he had a certain level of foundation for both the hardening and eight doors of transportation skills, so the speed of adding points in the past two days was relatively fast. Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil. Bloodline, High Commander. Strength, Awakening 7th Stage Strength, Awakening 7th Stage. Skills, Hardening LV30, plus, 8 Gates of Evil LV10, plus. This was the Stone Monkey's panel, and the skill piece had improved too much. In two days time, it was almost time to point Hardening to the Mastery Stage. So you can imagine. I'm afraid that it wouldn't take long for Gu Huai to be able to dislike hardening right up to LV50 level, the peak of hearth and flame. At this time, Chen Hongji also reacted, and he also understood the cause of the matter, which caused Chen Hongji to run up to Gu Huai and say in a very low voice, Thanks, thanks, Gu Huai, all classmates. To be honest, Chen Hongji's actions just now really weren't very rational, but it was precisely because of this irrationality that made Gu Huai impressed with Chen Hongji, being willing to give his own life for his imperial beast. For that alone, Chen Hongji deserved Gu Huai's attention. Although this person had some minor problems, his character was still fine. After this incident, everyone didn't have the heart to continue playing in the hunting area and left the hunting area one after another. Chen Hongji's recovery ability was still very good, and within a short period of time, he had recovered without much difference from before. We'll go to karaoke later. I've booked the venue. And ah, you guys remember Penguin to tell me about our class participating in the newcomer competition. This time, our first class has this great god, Gu Huai, who will definitely be able to lead our first class to a good result. Gu Huai's strength earned Chen Hongji's respect. Good. The crowd also forgot about this matter, and all of them wailed with excitement. The karaoke started for a while, and Gu Huai sang a song and left. Not much happened during that time. Magic City. Gung Family. Gung Rui still hadn't given up looking for Gu Huai since the end of the college entrance exam. Only by looking up Gu Huai's college entrance exam information. The route from name and baby dragon was not going to work. So she asked Lin Xiaoyu to help look up who used that car in the city lord's mansion that day. And by doing so, she was able to find Gu Huai's information. E e found out the information of that car. Who is it? Gung Zoe was instantly excited. It's a car arranged by Hao Feng. Hao Feng is the city lord of our Lin City. Lin City city lord? Gung Ruei also had a bit of a headache. Although their Gung family was a big family. She didn't have the ability to contact a figure like the city lord. What's more, even if she did contact them, they wouldn't necessarily sell her face. E e, I have no way to ask this how city lord for you, but how Fong has a son named Hao Jin. We sort of knew each other back in Lin City. I can ask him. Okay, then I'll trouble you. He he he, for the sake of Ee's love. It's nothing troublesome. Lin Xiaoyu hung up the phone and dialed Hao Jin's number. She also directly explained her intentions. 
Hao Jian still happily agreed. It's not just about asking someone. Small problem. Say it. Ask me who. Gu Huai. Gu Huai Ah. I. What? You say who? Hao Jian, who originally had a bland face, jumped when he heard this name. Gu Huai. Hao Jian heard it clearly this time and his face turned serious. Stao Yu. You wouldn't have messed with this guy, right? If you really messed with this guy, it's better to hurry up and apologize. He's still better to talk to. Hao Jian what are you talking about? I didn't mess with him. Here's the thing. Lin Xiaoyu hurriedly explained the matter all over. Only it wasn't in great detail. She just said that there was a person called Gu Huai, who saved her friend. And her friend wanted to repay but couldn't find anyone. So, that's good. Hao Jian was obviously relieved. Hao Jian, who is this person? Lin Xiaoyu and Hao Jian were considered to be in a circle. Although they usually didn't play much, they knew Hao Jian's character. The person who could make Hao Jian pay so much attention was definitely not a simple person. Who is this person you don't need to care? People also don't lack your repayment. Okay, this matter I advise you or also don't care. Hao Jian hung up the phone after saying this, causing Lin Xiaoyu to be dismayed. Wait, Gu Huai, Lin Xiaoyu originally didn't think in that direction, but combined with Hao Jian's attitude, she had to think in that family's direction. It can't be someone from the Gu family, right? Lin Xiaoyu gulped. Although their Lin family was also very large, it was one of the biggest big families in the entire Lin city, even in the entire Hang province, but if it was really compared to the Gu family, it would really be nothing. No, I have to hurry up and talk to Yi so that she doesn't inquire. How Jian this hung up the phone, feeling that there was still something wrong. This matter is after all related to Gu Huai, which is the real heaven of Hang province. Even if his old man is the lord of a city, if he really pissed off Gu Huai, the end will be equally tragic. It is better to mess with the king of Hades than the Gu family. This sentence was no joke. It's better to talk to Gu Huai. Thinking of this, Hao Jian immediately explained this matter to Gu Huai. After Gu Huai knew about it, the figures of Lin Xiaoyu and Gung Rui instantly appeared in his mind. And with a slight smile, he didn't put this matter on his mind, but once again stepped onto the moving train. This time Gu Huai's goal was the Thunder Sea. Lei Hai was not a sea, but a plane. It was only because the altitude of this plane was particularly high, coupled with the fact that this plane produced a resource called Thunder Crystal Pillars, that caused lightning to fall in this place from time to time, especially the core of the Thunder Sea, that place had lightning falling at all times. The Sea of Thunder was in the hidden province, the Tibetan province was a province with a super wide area, except that this place was sparsely populated, and there were a lot of people places that belonged to the off the beaten path places. It was said that this place in the Tibetan province was quite mysterious especially in the Tian Shan mountain where the Tibetan province and foreign forces bordered. That place was known as the place closest to the sky, and it was said to be infested with extremely terrifying ferocious beasts up there, making it an extremely dangerous place known as one of the four forbidden places of the Donghuang kingdom. In order to prevent people from intruding into this forbidden place and angering the living beings within, the Donghuang kingdom had purposely also drawn up a line of defense, with a special army stationed in this place. Of course this army wasn't stationed purely because of this reason. This side was after all a borderline connecting the two countries, so there was definitely a need for a garrison. Little brother, are you also going to lay high? Gu Huai had likewise bought a first class moving train this time. Sitting next to Gu Huai was an uncle in his forties, who had a kind smile on his face, giving a good first impression. But Gu Huai could feel a dangerous air from the eyes of this kind uncle. This uncle, not as the surface of this. Of course, this does not affect Gu Huai in his chat. People are doing what, and their own have nothing to do. Just chatting, bragging, there is nothing. Yes, this is not the summer vacation. Ready to come out to see the world. Gu Huai didn't care about this uncle's condescending remarks, mainly because with the dark demon dragon following him, Gu Huai was really fearless. He wasn't afraid that this uncle wouldn't find trouble for himself, but he was afraid that he wouldn't have any fun. When the uncle heard Gu Huai's words, the smile on his face intensified. What a coincidence then. Uncle I'm also preparing to go to the Thunder Sea. Why don't the two of us pair up? so we can save some traveling expenses as well. That part of the Thunder Sea, because the magnetic field was too strong, there was no way for moving vehicles, cars, and other types of transportation to run on it. So if one wanted to go up, there was usually only one way. That was to ride on this place's specialty imperial beast, the Thunder Turtle. The Thunder Turtle was charged per turtle, and usually several people would ride the Thunder Turtle in a group to save some traveling expenses. All right. Going out to practice was not just a matter of exercising the imperial beasts and becoming stronger together with them. People's experiences and various insights were also part of the purpose of the training. Then it's a deal. The uncle could barely hide the smile on his face. 
A youngster on the site saw the scene and wanted to remind Gu Huai, but he was glared at by the uncle and didn't dare to speak. All of this, Gu Huai watched. This time, because it was out of the province, it took longer, and it took 10 hours to arrive by train. When he got off the train, the young man purposely bumped into Gu Huai, and Gu Huai felt a ball of paper shoved into his hand. A smile appeared at the corner of Gu Huai's mouth. It was a bit interesting. It's true that the world outside is wonderful, and there are so many routines. Gu Huai casually stuffed the paper ball into his pocket without looking at it. The middle-aged uncle took it all in stride and didn't say anything, still chatting familiarly with Gu Huai, as if he really knew him well. Gu Huai also knew the uncle's name, Li Yong. Of course, whether this was his real name or a fake name, Gu Huai didn't know. I've been to the side of Lehi a few times. I'm familiar with this place, and I happen to know a driver who offers a fairer price. As Li Yong spoke, his eyes never left Gu Huai. At the same time if anyone paid attention, they could see that one of his hands had been stuffed in his pocket. Brother Li, since you're familiar with it, then lead the way. Gu Huai acted as if he was a little fat sheep who didn't know anything. Good. Li Yong was happy in his heart, but he didn't dare to show it too obviously. The Sea of Thunder would also cause normal communication equipment to be in a state of no signal and unusable on it because of the strong magnetic field. This also led to the birth of crime. The crime rate in this place had never been low. Li Yong lightly led Gu Huai to a middle-aged man with a full face of scruff and explained the purpose of his visit. 360 Imperial Beast Coins. The price was indeed fairer. Even cheaper. Generally speaking, a price of 400 Imperial Beast Coins was more normal. Papa Gu. I told you it's cheaper over here. Right? 180 for each of us is fine. A surprise smile appeared on Gu Huai's face in cooperation. Thank you old brother. No need to thank you. When you're out and about. It's all about helping each other. Gu Huai and Li Yong paid the money. And the two of them went straight to the Thunder Turtle. When the bearded man received the money, he directly drove the Thunder Turtle towards the mountains. Although the Thunder Turtle was a turtle, its speed was not slow at all, and could even be described as fast. The size of this Thunder Tortoise belonged to the medium range, and it didn't have much of a problem sitting six or seven people on it. When Gu Huai sat on the Thunder Turtle, he casually checked the information of the Thunder Turtle. Imperial Beast, Thunder Turtle. Attribute, Thunder. Bloodline, Medium Transcendent. Realm, Medium Transcendent. Skills, Thunder Armor. Thunder Walk, a moderate Thunder Turtle, without much character. Medium Transcendent Well. Gu Huai glanced at Li Yong, then at the bearded man in front of him, and the corner of his mouth raised a faint smile. Maybe he didn't even need the Dark Demon Dragon to make a move. He could take them down himself. I didn't expect that every time I went out. I would meet such interesting things. One didn't know if it was good luck or bad luck. It's really a bit of a shame that that little brother didn't come though. Gu Huai muttered. Because he was still in a safe range. Li Yang didn't reveal his intentions and was still chatting amiably with Gu Huai. Because the probability of crime was too high. There were patrols arranged to maintain order in this neighborhood. At the same time, there were also special arrows on the roads marking the routes. Just to prevent outsiders from being pitched at this place. That's why Gu Huai was also curious about what methods they would take to pit themselves. When they reached the halfway point of the mountain, the number of patrolmen was much smaller. Suddenly, Master, my stomach hurts a bit, is there a toilet around here? Li Yang suddenly covered his stomach with a painful look. Gu Huai knew that the show had begun. Gu Huai also began to look forward to it. Okay, I happen to know that there's a toilet nearby. I'll take you there. The bearded man immediately took over, and Li Yang turned his gaze to Gu Huai with an apologetic face. Gu old brother sorry, I've eaten something bad, I might have to delay you a bit. It's not in the way. Gu Huai looked indifferent. And the bearded man didn't want to be delayed. Immediately rushing the thunder turtle towards a place beyond the signpost. Gu Huai also understood their routine. After all, people nowadays weren't stupid. And if they went over directly, they would definitely be wary. This patrol had just passed this way. And it could easily cause unnecessary trouble. Even if they were a bit wary, they would be paralyzed by Li Yang's performance. It was a simple tactic, but very effective. Moreover. This group's tactics were even more skillful than the average gang. Gu Huai's hand couldn't help but touch the paper ball in his pocket. There might be a chance to see that little brother later. Lei Turtle kept running inside the path. His speed faster than when he went up the mountain. The bearded man had been ready to explain to Gu Huai why he was running so fast, but Gu Huai hadn't been suspicious. When they reached the halfway point. I can't help it. Let's go to this place. Okay. Thunder Turtle stopped. Li Yong jumped off the Thunder Turtle with a pale face. And so did the bearded man. Right at the moment both of them left the thunder turtle. The thunder turtle released its skill. Thunder armor. A blue armor appeared. Directly covering its surface. Including its back. 
This group of people were indeed very careful, even if Gu Huai was just a newbie imperial beast master who had just gotten an imperial beast for a month, the two of them didn't intend to give Gu Huai a chance to strike. Instead, they intended to put Gu Huai down directly. If it was the rest of them, they might have succeeded. Unfortunately, the person they wanted to shade was Gu Huai. Gu Huai also reacted in a flash. And before the lightning armor could unfold, Gu Huai also got up and jumped, landing safely on the ground. What are you guys doing? Make a move. Li Yang and the bearded man didn't intend to talk to Gu Huai at all, since ancient times, villains died from talking too much. The two had learned the lessons from all kinds of movies and TV dramas, and they intended to be the quiet bad guys. Two green five-pointed star formations appeared, and three transcendent imperial beasts appeared around Gu Huai, surrounding him in the center. Together with the thunder turtle that was right next to Gu Huai, there were four transcendent imperial beasts in this place. The strongest of them was the thunder beast master. High transcendent strength. One high transcendent and three medium transcendents. This strength was already considered relatively strong amongst the primary imperial beast masters. With intent, even an intermediate imperial beast master would find it difficult to escape from them. Moreover, they didn't lay their hands on everyone. They usually picked high school students like Gu Huai to lay their hands on. It was more stable. Thunder monkey, I'm counting on you. Gu Huai also summoned the thunder monkey, and a white five-pointed star formation aura appeared, and the likeness of a stone monkey appeared in the middle of the field. The bearded man and Li Yong couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief when they saw the scene. Just a trainee imperial beast master. Great. Later on, they could kidnap this teenager, let his family get the ransom, and then tear the ticket. They were doing a long-term business. Naturally they couldn't let the person back in. Then otherwise when the time came to release the setup of their crime, then how could they still make money? However, the two people did not notice. In the blind spot of the two people's vision, there is also a figure appeared. This figure was clearly Lei Bao. The only one who noticed Lei Bao was the thunder turtle that had carried Gu Huai up. Only its IQ was obviously not high, and it only looked at it before launching an attack towards Gu Huai according to its master's instructions. Thunder walk. The massive thunder turtle slammed directly towards Gu Huai. The Thunder Beast Master didn't launch an attack, but merely stepped aside to avoid Gu Huai from escaping. The other two were also guarding one side, not all swarming together. Swarming together was too chaotic and prone to problems. The Thunder Monkey was slightly flustered when he saw such a behemoth charging towards him, but he quickly calmed down. Eight gates of transported armor opened door. Opening the door was the first of the eight gates, capable of unlocking a portion of nature's shackles on oneself and improving one's abilities in all aspects, though after it was over. It would be fatiguing to one's body several times over. Thunder Monkey's aura changed, becoming a little less like before. His eyes icy cold. Harden. Bang. The Thunder Turtle's charge arrived, and the huge impact directly knocked the Thunder Monkey out. However, the Thunder Monkey's appearance also buffered the Thunder Turtle's speed, allowing Gu Huai to casually dodge towards the side. The power gap is still there. It's still not enough if you just open the door. The realm of the Thunder Monkey was too weak. It was just the awakening seventh stage. Yeah yeah. Second gate. Hue gate open. The second gate, which could lift the limitation of physical strength, allowed the thunder monkey to exceed its own limitations for a period of time, and was able to explode into an even more terrifying, more powerful force. Hardening. The thunder monkey's body that flew out backwards stopped instantly, its eyes slightly scarlet. Because of the hardening, the thunder turtle's attack did not pose a threat to it. Blocked it? There's something odd about this stone monkey, but it doesn't matter. Lin Wolf. Go bring this teenager over. Thunder Beast Master. That stinky monkey is all yours. Both of them were a bit surprised by the Thunder Monkey's performance, but they were only surprised. A stone monkey of the seventh stage of awakening was just a stone monkey. So what if it was special? It was just a bit more troublesome. Yeah. The Thunder Monkey began to roar. The high transcendent Thunder Beast Master bringing it a great threat. Lay bow. Just leave the Thunder Beast Master behind. And take care of all the rest. There were still three transcendent mortal imperial beasts here after all, and Gu Huai didn't want to get caught in the gutter. Although his physical quality had been strengthened, it was still too much of a fool's errand to try to fight against the transcendent imperial beasts. Now there is a transcendent imperial beast staring at himself. If he is really careless, well, there is a dark demon dragon. There is no carelessness. It's just that Gu Huai didn't want to get into the habit of letting the dark descendant demon dragon do everything, and being able to solve the problem on his own. He still solved it on his own. Roar. Lei Bao wailed excitedly. Why is there another imperial beast here? Li Yong and the two of them were puzzled. Neither of them knew when this unknown imperial beast appeared. The aura emitted by this imperial beast was also the aura of a transcendent. So the two of them were not too worried. 
For Transcendentals vs. One Transcendent plus One Awakened Seventh Ranked Stone Monkey, no matter how you look at it, the odds were greater for them, or rather, they were winning. Unfortunately, what they didn't know was that the Imperial Beast world wasn't all ordinary Imperial Beast masters like them. There were geniuses in this world. Split Air Claw, a greenish blue claw mark slashed through the air, and after jumping, this claw mark went nowhere. In the next second, Lin Wolf was hit by a claw. Ow. The Forest Wolf was directly crippled by the blow, losing its ability to fight and falling to the ground. Spatial system? Li Yong and the bearded man were stunned. They both knew that they had run into a tough opponent. Spatial department, but it was quite difficult to deal with. Moreover, they did not have the experience of fighting against a space department. After all, space department imperial beasts were quite rare and belonged to the extremely rare series. With their curiosity, it would be too difficult for them to run into a space department. Run. The two looked at each other, both reading the other's meaning. Spatial lineage imperial beasts simply couldn't be judged by common sense, and they didn't want to be delayed in this place. Want to run? Gu Huai glanced at the thunder monkey, who was excitedly battling the thunder beast masters, and the corner of his mouth lifted into a smile. Lei Bao wouldn't let these people have their way. Before Lei Bao had evolved into a pale blue thunder dragon, it had been able to defeat high transcendent mechanical dragons with the strength of an awakened tenth order. One could imagine its current strength. Gu Huai estimated that even a primordial commander might not be a match for Lei Bao. Cracking claw. Lei Bao flung away two more rift claws as if for fun. The rift claws disappeared in the air. And the next second this rift claw arrived in front of the thunder turtle and the other medium transcendent. This time Li Yong and his team were prepared. But in front of the absolute strength gap, there was not much difference between prepared and unprepared. The only thing left in the entire arena was the thunder beast master that Gu Huai had purposely left behind. A look of embarrassment appeared on Li Yong and the bearded man's faces. Elder brother Gu, we were joking with you. Joking? Gu Huai's face wore a playful smile. Yes, we were just joking with you. Wanting to see your strength. After all, the first time I saw you, I thought that you, a person, were a dragon and phoenix amongst men. And no, this test really was. Li Yong's skin was also thick. He knew that the two of them wouldn't be able to run away. And could only hope that Gu Huai would be easier to coax so that they could still escape then otherwise with what the two of them had done, they would be dead if they were really caught. In that case, then it seems like I've still misunderstood old brother. As Gu Huai's words fell, Li Yong's cell phone rang. Answer it. Li Yong awkwardly originally wanted to hang up because he knew who was calling, but Gu Huai's words made him not dare to hang up. Put it on speakerphone. Li Yong cried out, but when he saw Lei Bao's sharp eyes, he knew that if he didn't do as he was told, the consequences would be severe. Only the kid caught it for you guys, right? Li Yong looked up at Gu Huai and saw Gu Huai nodding before returning slightly nervous. That's fine. You guys hurry up and send the person over. I'll wait for you at the usual place. This kid I've just seen. Definitely a fat sheep. Wearing customized goods. TSK TSK. After this ticket is done, we can temporarily leave this place first and have a good time. When Li Yong and the bearded man heard this, their faces were particularly dark. This piecing together of brats is not a pit. Forced by the pressure brought by Gu Huai. There are also two people in their hearts to call this person is also very dissatisfied. It is because of his phone call to make two people are not good at sophistry. So they did not tell the truth, but intend to bluff each other. To die together. Let's go then. Thunder monkey, come back. The thunder monkey was still a bit short in trying to fight a high transcendent under its full power outburst. The realm was too poor. It was also the fact that the thunder beast master was now struggling to protect himself, and had no intention of fighting, which allowed the thunder monkey to fight a not so weak underdog. Who? The Thunder Beast Shifter who had no intention to fight and was afraid of injuring the Thunder Monkey breathed a sigh of relief. It couldn't be beaten. It really couldn't be beaten. Only it's unable to beat it wasn't directed at the Thunder Monkey, but that little blue dragon floating in the air. What its own companion had suffered just now. It had seen in its eyes. That claw that appeared from the void. It couldn't carry it. Even if it was in a state of full concentration, it would be injured if it caught it. Let alone still fighting a monkey that was not afraid of life and death. This was simply an unresolved situation. Of course the most important thing is that its own master has already become someone else's meal. What else does it insist on? The reasoning of confessing to leniency and resisting to severity. It Thunder Beast Master still understands. Yeah. The Thunder Monkey stopped its hand in dissatisfaction. With a look that if I were given more time, I would guarantee that I could take it. This made Gu Huai couldn't help but give the Thunder Monkey a blank stare. What state of his own body didn't he understand? Not to say that you can't fight. But if you keep fighting, Thunder Monkey will have to lie down and heal his wounds when he gets to the Lehigh side, which will take a lot of time.
Thunder Monkey now open the second door is still a little reluctant to open the time is not long okay, let the dark magic dragon to help recover, a quick thing, but if the opening time was too long, then it wouldn't be that easy to recover, it would take some time, lead the way, Gu Hui looked his gaze towards Li Yong, Li Yong was bitter in his heart, he thought he had caught a stupid big fat sheep, but he felt that people were playing with him, he himself was the stupid one, but the thunder turtle it, Li Yong pointed at the thunder turtle, which had already been heavily injured by Lei Bao's strike of splitting claw, Gu Hui directly snapped his fingers and the thunder turtle crawled up with a confused look on its face, who was it and what was it doing here, both Li Yong and the bearded man's pupils couldn't help but shrink, it was too cool and hot, although they didn't understand what the principle of this was and couldn't figure it out, at this moment, they profoundly understood one thing, and that was that what they had kicked it was probably not an iron plate, but a steel plate, go, good drop, after figuring it out, both of them were quite honest and didn't dare to play any tricks, confessing is lenient, resisting is strict, anyway, they could only be considered as a failed kidnapping this time, and would just sit in jail for a few years at the end of the day, the previous things, as long as everyone's mouth was tight enough, they could all be fine, the two of them got on the thunder turtle and led Gu Huai towards a small road, and soon, they saw an abandoned factory, it's just inside, boss Gu, us, how many people are inside, three, two of those three people are primary imperial beast masters just like us, except that one of them isn't far from breaking through, and both of his imperial beasts are higher transcendent, the kind that are close to breaking through, the other one, it's that little brother from the moving station, right, Gu Huai spoke the answer first, provoking Li Yong's shock, you, how do you know, Gu Huai smiled without saying anything, in fact, he had long seen the two of them eyeballing each other, it was only at that time that Gu Huai wasn't too sure, and it was only when he saw that little brother slipping a note to himself later that Gu Huai was sure of his suspicions, these two were in cahoots, this was also a setup. if Gu Huai suspected Li Yong, he would naturally be grateful to the little brother who helped him, and then he would step into the little brother's trap, of course even if they failed, it was nothing, the big deal was that they would change their target, there was always success, what is his strength, trainee imperial beast master, let's go in then, by the way, the two of you shouldn't want to turn against each other, right, Gu Huai looked at the two of them with a smile, if Li Yang and the others hadn't seen the image of Gu Huai letting the thunder turtle recover from its heavily damaged state with a snap of his fingers, there might still be thoughts within them at this time, but now, if they did, they didn't, this teenager, they simply didn't know the depths, white formation, trainee imperial beast master, oh, lies ghosts, that unknown imperial beast was summoned by this teenager, and so was that monkey, who knows if Gu Wai has any new imperial beasts hidden in the shadows, they felt that there definitely was, and the one that helped the thunder turtle recover was probably it, in a situation like this, it wouldn't be good for the two of them to do anything even if they turned against each other, everything went smoothly, Gu Wai let Lei Bao do it after he went in, with Lei Bao's strength, these people were simply not enough to look at, that little brother was also extremely shocked, after tying up all these people, Gu Huai dialed the local patrol and gave them the address, who am I, a kind passerby, the patrols were still very fast, and in less than 5 minutes, a patrolman arrived at the abandoned factory, learning about everything that happened from Gu Huai, this patrolman enthusiastically sent Gu Huai to Lehi, and also left his phone number with Gu Huai, and said to him that if he encountered any trouble in this place, Lehi, he could call him, is this the Lehi? Standing at the edge of the Thunder Sea, with the dozens of meters high, naturally formed stone pillars, and the lightning flowers that flashed from time to time, Gu Huai couldn't help but sigh, it's so beautiful, Lei Bao, the Thunder Monkey is out, ready to start today's workout, roar, Lei Bao shouted in excitement as soon as he came out, he loved the environment of this place, everywhere was filled with the scent of thunder and lightning, making Lei Bao very comfortable, the Thunder Monkey was then a bit listless, the previous battle had consumed a bit too much, which caused the thunder monkey to shrug its shoulders with a hollowed outlook, this place, the thunder sea, was a dangerous place for humans to walk in because lightning could fall from the sky at any time, so if humans wanted to go in, they needed to rent insulated clothing in this place, of course Gu Huai naturally didn't need to rent an insulating suit, he had already prepared it before he came, let's go, the thunder sea was divided into three regions according to the level of danger, the Thunder Sea in the first region was artificially created. Humans created an artificial Thunder Sea by conducting electricity. The power of the artificial Thunder Sea was very low, and it basically only satisfied the needs of awakening stage Thunder Imperial Beasts. This was also Gu Huai's first goal, letting Thunder Monkey go to this place to feel it first, and also letting Lei Bao experience it in the meantime. Mountain Province, 
Lee family. The Lee family, which had been established for tens of thousands of years, had gone through generation after generation and was still well preserved, making it a famous living fossil family within the country of Donghuang. Before the Donghuang kingdom was even founded, the Lee family had existed, and they had even established a regime on their own. Although they were overthrown later on, they still retained a line of people, and have developed into a behemoth-like existence to this day. The size of the Lee family, or rather the number of Lee family descendants was much more than the Gu family, not to mention the Lee family's collateral lineage. The Lee family's direct lineage alone had more than 300 people. The current head of the Lee family, Li Daoshan, was the current 12 earthly branches of the Donghuang kingdom, the dog, an imperial beast master who was also a top-notch beast master in Donghuang, and even in the world. Bo Feng, this time, the bet with the Gu family can only be won, not lost. In one of the Li family's study rooms, Li Daoshan was filled with seriousness. Don't worry, Grandpa, I will definitely defeat that Gu Huai guy and wipe out the previous shame. Li Bufeng was a spirited looking young man, and when he said the name Gu Huai, the corners of his mouth couldn't help but twitch. Very well, your father and I both lost to the Gu family. The hope of this generation rests on you. Don't worry, don't put too much pressure on yourself. We only ask you to win this time. Losing in the future is not relevant. Cough cough. Li Daoshan hurriedly coughed to stop his later words, provoking Li Bufeng's grudging gaze. Feelings? Do you guys think I will definitely lose to Gu Huai in the future? Although Gu Huai, Li Bo Feng shivered. He remembered the fear of being dominated by Gu Huai in his childhood. That guy was so scary that he would. Li Bufeng wanted to cry at the thought of it. How did Gu Huai he dare to do this? He, Li Bo Feng, was the grandson of the 12 earthly branches, the young master of the Li family in Mountain City. Oh, he is a member of the Gu family. So forget it. He really dares. This time, in order for you to win, your second grandpa and I have discussed it and are going to let you enter the ancestral land to cultivate for 10 days. 10 days is enough time for you to complete the final accumulation and for your yen dog to finish evolving. A look of ecstasy appeared in Li Bo Feng's eyes when he heard this. Grandpa you really agree to let me enter the ancestral land? Well, but there are two other people who will also go in with you this time. It's from the second and fourth houses? Li Bo Feng frowned, and Li Daoshan didn't say anything. The Li family and the Gu family were not the same. The position of the Li family's head was extremely important. To use an exaggerated phrase to describe it, the position of the head of the Li family was like an ancient emperor. He held great power and was in charge of hundreds of millions of people. The Li family was different from the Gu family. The Gu family had always had a single line of succession, and there was no competition for the head of the family. But the Li family is qualified to compete for the position of the head of the family in each generation can be quite a lot. Don't look at Li Daoshan as the family head now, but his son wouldn't necessarily be able to become the family head. Don't worry grandpa, I will definitely win that guy this time. Li Bo Bong clenched his fists. Grandpa believes in you. When Gu Huai had just arrived at Lehi, the news about this newcomer competition led by the two provinces provincial councils just exploded in the two provinces. Countless newcomers saw it. Especially after seeing that as long as they were able to take the top 64 places in their respective provinces, they would be able to represent their province in the competition and receive a minimum reward worth 1 million resources. If it was possible to replace their province and defeat a person from the other province to advance to the top 64 of the finals, the prize money was quintupled, and it was directly a reward of $5 million. $5 million. To Gu Huai, this was a small amount of money, but to the vast majority of newbie beast masters, this was a prize that made their hearts flutter. As a result, there was no telling how many people wanted to head to the Imperial Beast Center to register. It was a pity that because the scope involved this time was rather large, it was naturally impossible for all newcomers to enroll. So a condition was set for enrollment. The realm of the Imperial Beasts was no lower than the Awakening 7th stage, and the registration time was cut off on July 8th. That is to say, if one did not raise the realm of their Imperial Beast to the Awakened 7th Order by 2200 hours on July 8th, that would mean that they would not be qualified to participate in this competition. Students who had successfully registered would head to the sports plaza of their respective provincial capitals at 10 o'clock in the morning on July 10th to participate in a three-day elimination tournament to select the final 64 participants. These 64 people will represent their respective provinces. Class president, I want to sign up. I want to sign up too. How can this competition be without me? After this announcement came out, Chen Hongji's penguin rang with a bunch of messages. Representing your respective provinces to fight for the honor of Hang province? Very well. For something like this, I, Chen Hongji, am determined to win. Pops, Hang City. Lin Yi looked at the announcement, and he was shaking as he was eating his instant noodles. A base prize of $1 million. 
And $5 million for defeating someone from Mountain Province and winning honor for Hang Province? I'll go. Isn't this customized for me? The first place would receive a reward worth $20 million, jointly funded by the two provinces. But this was only the reward given by the two provinces. According to the official website above, Hang Province had additional rewards for the participants from their own province. $1 million for advancing. 5 million for the top 64, 7 million for the top 32, 10 million for the top 16. Those who advanced to the top 8 would receive a mystery prize on top of the 10 million grand prize. Lin Ye's eyes were red as he watched. This month, he had suffered too much. Ever since the last time he lost to Gu Huai and was pitched so much money by him, he didn't have much money funds left. In order to keep General Fire from getting malnourished, he had left the rest of his money with General Fire and he himself had to buy a box of those very cheap instant noodles and eat them for most of the month. As long as he took the first place in this competition. No, as long as it was the top 16 he would be able to get out of poverty. General Fire were going to be rich, but let's say for these two days. My funds won't come down until the day after tomorrow. General Fire also nodded seriously. After spending this time with this cheap master of his, the relationship between them had improved nicely. Although a bit stupid, the person was still good. Hang province and mountain province were both large provinces, and the strength of both provinces was among the top in the country. The population is also large. Hang province had 218 million permanent residents and mountain province had 202 million. The number of these newcomer imperial beastmasters was naturally quite a lot, and there were several million of them as well. Although not every one of these new imperial beastmasters would choose the path of imperial beasts, there were still half of them who were interested in it. Although the requirements for enrollment in this competition in the two provinces were not low, with such a large base, the number of people who made it through the enrollment was equally large. In such an environment, the difficulty of trying to break into the rankings could be imagined. Of course none of this had much to do with Gu Huai. Each province had four seated slots, which meant that these four people were required to participate in the selection process and could directly advance, and these combined eight people wouldn't come across each other until the top 16 qualifying rounds. As the youngest son of the Gu family, Gu Huai naturally had a seat. Similarly, so did Li Bufeng, who had entered the ancestral ground for his training. Thunder monkey, very good. That's it. Go and accept this thunderbolt. Inhale this thunderbolt into your body. And run it through your body in the way my dark descendant grandfather taught you. Gu Huai, who had already been practicing in the sea of thunder for a week. His hair was a bit fried and his face was a bit scorched. Looking a bit lousy and not at all as handsome as before. During these seven days, in order for Lei Bao and Thunder Monkey to better integrate into the environment, Gu Huai had also set an example by entering the baptism of thunder and lightning with them. With Gu Huai's physical quality, it was definitely impossible to carry this hard. But with the dark demon dragon here, this was nothing. It was all just a minor problem. With Gu Huai's strategy like this, the results were indeed very good. First was the Thunder Monkey. Under such high pressure training, the Thunder Monkey had once again advanced from Awaken 7th stage to Awaken 9th stage in a week's time. Along with it, the hardened level had perfectly reached level 50. Now Gu Huai took the Thunder Monkey, who had brought his hardening to its limit, to the depths of the Sea of Thunder, and hardened himself against the lightning that would injure even a commander level Imperial Beast hardened against it. 8 Gates of Transportation Life Gate Open The third gate opened, and infinite vitality erupted from the Thunder Monkey's body. Ah, the Thunder Monkey grimaced. This feeling was too damn pleasurable. Pain and pleasure. Thunder Monkey realized that he seemed to enjoy this process of raising his strength and pain and enjoying the process of getting stronger. The Shang Men gave Thunder Monkey more time to accept these thunderbolts and let these thunderbolts become his own power. The power of destruction within the Thunder Monkey's body was too strong, and trying to simply rely on that other mysterious power wasn't enough. Gu Huai had discussed this with Mu Qing, who had given Gu Huai a suggestion, which was to suggest that Gu Huai let the Thunder Monkey take the path of the Thunder System. Thunder, known as the strongest attack, was also one of those extremely violent forces. The thunder stimulates the eight gates of recluse, and then fights against the power of destruction, letting that mysterious power neutralize between the two. Doing so can not only effectively suppress the power of destruction, but also turn this power of destruction into its own use, turning enemies into friends, and enhancing the thunder monkey's strength. Only if one wanted to do so, the requirements for the thunder monkey were very high and one needed extreme perseverance to do so. Gu Huai had asked the Thunder Monkey, and the Thunder Monkey had agreed. What's more, its name carried the word Thunder. Thunder Monkey, go for it. Gu Huai's gaze looked at the Thunder Monkey, who was bathing in lightning, and he clenched his fists. Everything that should be prepared had been prepared, and the rest could only rely on Thunder Monkey itself. For this time, 
Gu Huai had prepared quite a few heavenly treasures for the Thunder Monkey just to get it through. Ah, add more. When it came to the critical moment, Gu Huai hastily utilized his big move. The hardening skill is detected as a primary skill. It has been strengthened to the upper limit of primary skills. The skill hardening is currently being remodeled. The remodeling needs to consume 100 million reinforcement points. Will it continue? Continue. The second time this happened, Gu Huai had long been familiar with it. The power of lightning was absorbed during the strengthening process. The transformed hardening skill was mutated. However, because the power of lightning is not strong, the mutation is not perfect. Is it spending 100 million strengthening points for perfection? Clam? Gu Huai was already prepared for the idea of the hardening skill evolving into a more powerful new skill. But he didn't expect this to come. Reinforce. There was no way around it. So Gu Huai could only grit his teeth. Luckily, he had prepared enough reinforcement points. So much that he would have had to miss this opportunity for nothing. No. I must prepare more reinforcement points when I go back. Mard. This unlimited strengthening talent is really exaggerated. This isn't just swallowing gold anymore. Is it? Gu Huai smacked his lips. It was only his family that could hold up. Anyone else, even the rest of the big families, would have trouble supporting the consumption of this talent. Mutation perfected. The hardened skill eventually changed into the super rank skill Thunder Prison Dragon Body. Thunder Hell Dragon Body? Gu Huai froze as he hurriedly checked what skill this skill that had consumed two of his many objectives was. This skill was likewise an unrecorded skill, meaning that it did not exist in this world. Thunder Prison Dragon Body. A super skill with dual attributes of Thunder plus Dragon. A passive skill of the physique type, capable of continuously strengthening the Thunder Monkey's physique, as well as significantly increasing the Thunder Monkey's own recovery ability. It's become passive? Gu Huai froze. Hardening a skill that fierce and consuming two of his own mini objectives became a super rank passive skill? Even if it was a skill with dual attributes of Thunder plus Dragon, Gu Huai felt that it was a bit of a loss. Crap. However, after seeing the Thunder Monkey's panel, Gu Huai felt it was worth it. Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil. Bloodline, Medium Lord. Strength, Awakening 10th Stage. Skills, 8 Gates of Transportation LV20, plus. Thunder Prison Dragon Body LV10, plus. Stone Monkey's strength had increased from Awakening 9th Stage to Awakening 10th Stage, which Gu Huai didn't care too much about. The realm's elevation was just like that. What mattered was that the Thunder Monkey's bloodline had actually increased. This was an extraordinary thing. One must know that there are only two ways for an imperial beast to improve its physique. The first, naturally, is evolution. The imperial beast is able to enhance its bloodline power through continuous evolution. The second, in fact, was also evolution in essence. Only that this kind of evolution was caused by swallowing certain quasi-divine pills, or divine pills, or something special, thus allowing the imperial beasts to change in essence. The previous thunder monkey had gone through certain special things, causing the genetic factors in the Thunder Beast's body to change, and only then had it become a high commander bloodline. But now, after the Thunder Monkey had gotten a Thunder Prison Dragon Body Passive skill under the reinforcement points, the power of this bloodline had magically changed. This change wasn't even one of those minor stage changes, but rather, it surpassed the yoke of being a commander and directly turned into a medium lord bloodline. If it's the skill of constantly strengthening this Thunder Prison Dragon Body, can it raise the Thunder Monkey's bloodline again? Gu Huai's heart and mind flamed a little. If that was the case, then this skill wasn't as simple as a super rank skill. It's probably some kind of quasi-divine skill, or a precursor skill to a divine skill. Great earnings. Gu Huai spat out a breath, and the Thunder Monkey, after fully finalizing its evolution, also collapsed directly onto the ground due to its dislocation. With a slight movement, the Dark Demon Dragon blocked the lightning falling from the sky outside a black shroud. This shroud extended directly in front of Gu Huai. Just enough for Gu Huai to run over and pick up the Thunder Monkey in a very sweet manner. Grandpa Dark Descent. Thanks. The Dark Descent Demon Dragon sniffed and revealed an ant-like smile. Thunder Monkey. Hard work. Gu Huai knew that Thunder Monkey couldn't hear. But it didn't matter. Gu Huai put the Thunder Monkey into the Imperial Beast space. Which was the holy land of recovery for Imperial Beasts. So as long as there was still a breath in existence, he could slowly recover in it. The length of time was a matter of time. Roar. On the side. Thunder Treasure flew to Gu Huai's side and roared lowly twice. What? Feeling threatened? Gu Huai looked at Lei Bao, which was already 70 centimeters long, and said smilingly, Lei Bao bristled. It wouldn't admit to it. Moreover, just that silly monkey, how could it be a match for this baby? Although Lei Bao's heart was like this, its actions were honest. It directly walked towards Lei Hai. It did feel a threat in its heart from the Thunder Monkey's body, 
When that little monkey developed and Gu Huai reached his bottleneck again, it would drag on for a little while longer, and then it wouldn't be able to easily need the little monkey. This was something Lei Bao couldn't endure. Just at this time, Gu Huai's cell phone rang, and Gu Huai picked it up to see that it was a text message from his father. The general content was mainly to say to Gu Huai that the registration was over, that he had been placed as a seated player, and that he should not worry about the things ahead. However, he still told Gu Huai not to forget the time. The official match with Mountain Province was on July 15th, so it was best for Gu Huai to go there early. There are still six days of training left. Six days should be enough. Gu Huai muttered. He was indeed a little unsure. Although the results of these seven days of training were very good, there was still a gap between being well trained. Gu Huai casually scanned Lei Bao's information. Imperial Beast, Pale Blue Thunder Dragon. Name, Lei Bao. Attribute, Dragon plus Space. Bloodline, Medium Monarch. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skills, Cracking Claw LV24, Super Rank, Space plus Dragon Stance, Thunder Domain Space LV17, Super Rank, Thunder plus Space, Arcana, Thunder Cracking Claw LV5, Quasi Divine Arcana, Lei Bao's Realm was still Primary Transcendent, the Awakening Stage, the Stage of Laying the Foundation, was important, the Transcendent Stage, as the name suggests, is the first stage in which a Transcendent takes off, and this stage is also extremely important, at this stage, or rather from this stage onwards, the sub-realms of division were completely different from the previous ones. Awakening was divided into ten stages. However, the subsequent realms were all divided into four sub-stages, the beginning stage, middle stage, high stage, and peak stage. This was also a little different from the division of the imperial beast's bloodline, which was divided into just three minor stages, the beginning stage, middle stage, and high stage. The lesser number of minor stages also made the difficulty of realm advancement a lot more difficult. Especially since realm advancement after transcendent was originally a substantial increase, it became increasingly difficult. Transcendent stage skills are also very difficult to raise. The number of reinforcement points needed to strengthen them once is a hundred times what it was when it was a primary skill not to mention that even trying to control it isn't that easy. Gu Huai sighed. No wonder once he had read in a book that learning beginner skills, in the early stages, you would feel a sense of fulfillment because of the enhancement, which was visible to the naked eye. Learning advanced skills, you would feel as if you were being a bit foolish. It was too difficult to comprehend the skill, and it often took a long time before you could see a tiny amount of progress. But if it's learning super rank skills, you'll experience the desperate feeling of what it means to stay put. For the next goal, let's just work on Thunder Domain Space to level 21. The stage of proficiency. For now, Rift Claw as you wish, raise it as you can. The focus is still on the Paragod skill Thunder Rift Claw. It's time to find a way to raise it to the proficient stage. Skill leveling up was a small matter. Strengthening it would be fine. But simply strengthening it might not be good for Lei Bao. That crazy reinforcement before was only because Lei Bao was on the verge of bloodline evolution. And under that kind of pressure, Lei Bao could quickly transform the added skills. For Thunder Monkey, raising that Thunder Prison Dragon Body to the skillful stage is about right. At this level, the role that this Thunder Sea can play isn't that strong. The Sea of Thunder could only be considered a naturally formed low-level field. The limit was also the commander level, and there was no need for those above the commander level to come to this place to practice. Even at the commander level, it was only suitable for the first and middle stages. The later stages weren't even suitable to come anymore. That's it. Gu Huai's heart had a plan, and he was prepared to follow it. On July 10th, all parties gathered. Countless geniuses who had passed the examination arrived at the Hangzhou Sports Plaza. These people were all geniuses from the entire Hang province, and everyone's strength in warding off beasts was above the awakening seventh stage. Justice, why isn't this Gu Wai here? Didn't he say he'd be attending as well? At the entrance of the stadium, more than 30 people gathered together. Chen Hongji stood at the front and turned his gaze towards Gua Justice. It had to be said that under Chen Hongji's leadership, Class 1 was still exceptionally united. For this competition, even those who hadn't passed the examination, most of them had come, and the intensive training he had organized this time was still very good. Their class, excluding them, had as many as six people who had passed the test. I can't contact Boss Gu either. Bo Jingyi shrugged his shoulders, but he wasn't the least bit worried about Gu Huai's participation in this competition. While others didn't know about Gu Huai's background, he did know that this competition was led by Gu Huai's family. According to Gui Justice's estimation, Gu Huai should be one of the four seated players. Unlike them, only Gua Justice didn't say any of this. He just said with a disinterested face, What's wrong with this guy Gu Huai? He's the hope of our first class. I've all made a promise with Mr. Dang. Chen Hongji was a bit anxious. He wanted to call Gu Huai's phone. 
But the message prompted was that the phone number you have dialed is not within the service area. Although Gu Huai's cell phone was processed and could receive signals, it was limited to the fact that it could be contacted by a cell phone that had been processed just like his. And at the same time, Gu Huai could use the network satellites exclusive to this type of cell phone to access the internet. It was only that Gu Huai was within the range of the lightning shroud after all. So Gu Huai didn't look at his cell phone much, only placing it in an insulating layer, a double layer of insulation, to avoid the phone from being attacked by the lightning. All right, don't worry about Boss Gu's matter. He can solve it by himself. Let's just care about our own matters. Guo Jingyi hadn't been with Chen Hongji and the others during this time either. He had been enjoying the love from his old man all this time, with the iron fist of love. This time, if it wasn't for this competition, he probably wouldn't have given the release. However, his old dad had also said that if he couldn't get a promotion spot in this tournament, he would just fend for himself. This Guo Justice was under a lot of pressure. But, no buts, the competition is about to start. Let's go in. Guo Justice waved his big hand and turned around. The rest of them looked at each other in disbelief and also hurriedly followed. If it was the previous Guo Justice doing this, everyone wouldn't have convinced him. But ever since Guo Justice defeated the class president last time, everyone would unconsciously listen to Guo Justice's words instead of ignoring them. This was the change brought about by strength. There was also the previous Guo Justice who didn't have this confidence and aura that he had now. And after his strength had been boosted, and then defeating the class in one fell swoop, he himself didn't realize that he had changed a lot. Confidence puts on the light. A group of people walked into the stadium with great vigor. Hangzhou Sports Plaza was still very large. It was claimed to be able to accommodate 200. 000 people at the same time giant plaza. The design of the plaza was the masterpiece of Royal Beast architect Guan Jie. The entire sports plaza didn't cover a particularly large area. It was the utilization of space to the extreme. As well as architecture. The entire plaza had 100. 000 regular seats, but if it was something that wanted to be increased, another 100, 000 wouldn't be any problem. The 36 exits and passageways also allow for maximum evacuation of the population. If it was any kind of crisis, the walls around the plaza could all fall down automatically to form a path, which could be said to pull the safety full circle. After Guo Justice and his group went in, Lin Ye's figure also arrived outside. Gu Huai, I definitely won't lose to you again this time. I'll definitely make Ruachu impressed with me. Go 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 go. After Lin Yi pumped himself full of gas, he walked inside with confidence. Sister Hua, is my state really okay today? A rather sweet looking woman said with some urgency. Bye, you've asked me many times. Don't worry, your condition today is very good. As long as you play freely, advancing will not be too much of a problem. When Sister Hua said this she saw by Ruachu still looking at herself, the corner of her mouth suddenly rose. As a person who had been there before she naturally understood what it meant, because she was also interested in that man in the beginning, Sister Hua shook her head and threw these messy thoughts out of her mind. By Ruachu's conditions were better than hers, so maybe there really would be a chance. Not to mention that Bai Ruachu had her own help. Little Bai, play to your heart's content. That one won't come in this elimination match. Don't have a mental burden. Bai Ruachu was stunned when she heard this and hurriedly asked anxiously, is he not going to participate? No. With his identity, he must be one of those four spots that are internalized. Naturally he doesn't have to come to such a selection. Bai Ruachu was instantly relieved. Since that last phone call from Gu Huai, her life had instantly changed forever. Sister Hua brought her directly to her side, like she was teaching a disciple. Very serious and attentive. Bai Ruachu knew that Sister Hua was indeed a very good person, or else she wouldn't have taken herself in for her parents' sake, and was prepared to train herself as one of her own. But like this cultivation, with Sister Hua's character it is impossible to do so. The reason why Sister Hua would do this is because of Gu Huai's phone call, which made Bai Ruachu especially grateful to Gu Huai. At the same time, Bai Ruachu also wanted to prove to Gu Huai that he had made the right choice in the first place, and deep down, Bai Ruachu actually had a different kind of emotion towards Gu Huai. Cheer up! Sister Hua looked at Bai Ruachu's appearance and naturally knew what Bai Ruachu was thinking. She also very much hoped that Bai Ruachu could really succeed so that her status in the Gu family could be raised by a large margin. The publicity for this competition was sufficient, and there were naturally quite a few people paying attention. A lot of TV stations arrived early to get ready for the real-time broadcast, and some reporters even caught people outside to ask questions. The elimination match began under such an atmosphere of public attention. The rules of the tournament also came out. It was very simple. The elimination match took the form of a points competition. The competition time, 8 in the morning to 2200 hours in the evening, leaving everyone three hours to eat and rest in the middle. It lasts for three days. Because of the large number of participants, 
Each person needs to play quite a number of matches. The specifics depended on the competition. However, in order for all of these contestants to participate in the tournament in a better condition, at least three hours of rest was required after each match before a new matchup could be opened. There were also specialized recovery type imperial beasts that would recover the injured imperial beasts from the matches. The competition is fair and impartial. Everyone has 10 points before the start of the match, 5 points for winning a game, no points for a tie, 2 points for losing a game, and when the score goes to 0, they go out early. The normal situation is that each person participates in a 10 inning game, but if it is encountered special circumstances, there is also the possibility of extra innings. The rules of the tournament were very detailed and basically there were no loopholes. After 3 days of competition, 62 spots were determined. As for why it was 62 places, according to the rules, it was because there were 4 seated players in this tournament. Only 2 of these 4 seated players were internalized. The remaining 2 were chosen from these 62 people. Only the strongest 2, that is, the ones with the highest scores, would get the seating spot. Regarding the benefits of the seating slot, it was also written clearly and understandably. By being chosen as a seated player, one could avoid running into the rest of the seated players until they advanced to the top 16. This seated player, I must get it, seeing this rule appear, compatible thoughts appeared in many people's hearts. The competition, too, went on in such an organized manner, to the general public. These contestants were all newcomers. In the evening of July 12th, a little after 6 o'clock, the places on the Hangzhou province side were determined. The two seated contestants that advanced, one was by Ruachu, the other was from Ningqing City, a teenager with a black ruler on his back. Yi Fan, the seven people from Gu Wise and their class had a good result, with three people advancing, Wei Justice, Chen Hongji, and Liao Jinxian, the rest, all eliminated. However, the results of those who were eliminated weren't that bad, they were all the kind that were close enough to advance. Overall, this time, the first class performed admirably and quite perfectly. Damn it, so close to getting a seated spot, Lin Yi was in tears. At the same time, he didn't figure out why Bai Ruachu, who only had a B rank talent, possessed more strength than up. He had clearly worked very hard. 62 people, standing above the stage, Bai Ruachu and the teenager Yi Fan, who was carrying a black ruler, stood at the very front. Gu Huai, I won't let you down, Bai Ruachu was thrilled. Finally she could stand on the same stage as Gu Huai. Lin Yi looked at Bai Ruachu's figure not knowing in the slightest that his goddess mind was filled with thoughts of another man, a man that he had positioned to definitely wipe out his former shame. Yi Fan's face was cold, making it impossible to see his inner thoughts in the slightest. Number 13. The people on the Mountain Province's side made contact with Hang Province, and Hang Province's side also arranged a hotel, just waiting for these people to move in. In the evening, the people from Mountain Province arrived. For this competition, the Mountain Province side had worked hard. On the 14th, the two sides finalized the candidates and also sent out the cards for the competition. The day was also quiet. On the 15th, the much-anticipated day finally arrived. This was the first time that the two provinces, from both provinces, clashed in a newcomer competition. A comprehensive competition of the strength of the newcomers from both provinces. The top management of both provinces attached great importance to this competition, which also attracted the attention of the whole country. And the whole country wanted to see the strength of these two superb provinces. The start time of the match was 8 o'clock. Players from both sides had to enter by 7.50 and be ready to fight against each other. The combat seats of the two sides were naturally separated, with Mountain Province on the blue side and Hang Province on the red side. The same was true for the costumes of both sides, all of which were customized by the officials. When the match started, one had to wear this costume on the field. In order to make the matches exciting, each person would only compete in one match a day. The rules adopted for the matches were to prioritize the matching of people from the other side, and only match on their own side if there were not enough people on the other side. 128 The matches that advance to the top 64 are not taken live. It is only from the top 64 that it switches to live streaming. 7.42 PM Everyone from both sides had basically arrived, and there was only an empty seat in the red side seated player's position. Wei Justice, didn't you say not to rush Gu Huai? But the elimination matches are over. And Gu Huai the hell didn't even show up. Boss Gu will definitely come. Wei Justice looked at the time and was also a little less confident. Could it be that Boss Gu had directly stood Lord Family Head's pigeon? Wei Justice shivered. With Boss Gu's character, there was a real possibility that he would do so. Will it come? Chen Hongji's gaze went to the position at the very front. The position of the seated players. Is it hard to believe that Gu Huai's position is there? But even if it's there, this time, it wasn't that Chen Hongji hadn't contacted Gu Huai but he really couldn't ah. 
Gu Huai he will come. Liao Jinxian suddenly spoke at this time. Liao Jinxian how do you know? Chen Hongji subconsciously asked when he heard his adored goddess say this. I believe in him. But Liao Jinxuan's words made Chen Hongji feel bad. What do you mean you trust him a lot? Make it sound like you guys are very close. Whoops. It won't happen. It definitely won't happen. On the other side, the seed seats here in Mountain Province were filled with four people. Li Bufeng's figure was clearly among them, still in the front position. His gaze scanned here in Hang Province from time to time. His brows furrowed. This guy wouldn't have not come this time, right? Damn it. I've made all the preparations this time. Don't drop the ball for me. You kid. Seeing that there were only a few minutes left before the match, Li Bufeng was even more nervous than Gui Justice and the others. In order to be able to defeat Gu Huai head on this time, and thus plunder the chi luck that belonged to Gu Huai, his grandfather had done a lot of preparation for him. A heavenly pride like them could normally lose, but if they lost to a heavenly pride of the same level in a formal match like this, there would be a sense that their chi would be taken away by the other side. Such a result would cause them to always be a step slower when facing the other party. Of course this was a metaphysics that his grandfather had told him, as this was the case with all of Li Daoshan and his father. Who is Bong looking at? On the side of Li Bo Bong, sat a man who had a few similarities to his face, but appeared a bit feminine. Who else could it be? It must be young Master Gu. That's right, in people's eyes, I guess it's only young Master Gu who was his opponent. Li Bo Chang, Li Bo Xian, what do you two fellows mean? Li Bo Bong's face sank. These two fellows were the people from the second and fourth house's side. The heads of the second and fourth houses were also the biggest obstacle to their own father's ability to become the head of the entire Li family. That's why the relationship between the few of them had always been bad, and they weren't dealing with each other very well inside the school. What do you mean? Li Bo Cheng's mouth was tinged with a touch of mockery as he brought his head to Li Bo Bong's ear. Li Bo Bong, this time I will make you realize that you are not the best existence of our Li family's generation at all. You, Li Bo Feng was furious, but quickly calmed himself down. He wasn't going to let these two people affect his mood. He's here. The last person in the seed seat was a young girl with short hair. When her voice fell, the gazes of the three brothers of the Li family all coincidentally looked over towards Hang Province. Although all three of them hadn't seen Gu Huai for several years, they still recognized him at first. The eyes of all three of them unconsciously gazed up. The name of the Gu family was too big. As the only heir of the Gu family in this generation, how could they not take it seriously? Why does this fellow look so wretched now? Seeing Gu Huai's wretched appearance, Li Bufeng couldn't help but mutter, and a faint smile unconsciously surfaced at the corners of his mouth. Between him and Gu Huai, although there was a grudge, the relationship between the two was actually okay. Sorry, I ran into something and came late. Gu Huai's current appearance was indeed wretched. His face was a bit tanned, and his hair was in a fright state. The clothes were also several days old and there was no time to change. It couldn't be helped. Who let Lei Bao rush his breakthrough at this time, delaying Gu Huai a bit? which made him almost miss the match. It was good that Grandpa Dark Descent was so powerful that he sent himself over at a very high speed, otherwise he would have had to go out and hide for a while. Although his own old man wouldn't do anything to himself, he would definitely keep chanting in his ear, which was very annoying. Boss Gu, Gu Huai, Gu Xiao. Seeing Gu Huai's figure, two people in the seed seats that stood up. In addition to those 60 ordinary seats, there were also several people who stood up in surprise. He, finally, had come. This caused Yi Fan, who was sitting in the third seat, to also look his gaze over. Is this the first seed? Very good. The better you are, the happier I am. This way I can get more attention. This was what Yi Fan had in his heart, as well as his confidence in himself. Boss Gu I thought you weren't coming. The person sitting in the second seed seat was a graceful teenager. He was originally sitting in his seat with an expressionless face, as if he didn't give a damn about anyone around him. But when he saw Gu Huai coming, he looked like a different person running towards him with a big smile on his face, wanting to give Gu Huai a warm hug. Wang Chong, is the boss something you can hug indiscriminately? Wu Justice directly stopped in the middle of the two, forcing Wang Chong to stop. Wei Justice, you're being very uninteresting. Che, I don't understand who is pretending to be high and mighty on the sidelines. Comedian, who are you talking about? Comedian? Wang Chang's current appearance directly shattered the previous persona of the high cool boy. All right, but a lot of people are watching us now. Gu Huai had a headache on his face. These two guys were really at each other's throats as soon as they met. Boss Gu come sit over here. Hey, we're seated. Wang Chang's latter sentence was specifically used to shade Gua Justice, earning him a grudging look. But what could he do? Their Gua family's cultivation speed in the early stages just wasn't fast, and basically only got slightly better after the Jade Fist Stone went through an evolution. Moreover, in the Gu family, 
Wang Chong and his family's position was indeed stronger than their old Gu family. The reason why the Gu family was extremely powerful. Besides the fact that everyone in the Gu family's lineage was extremely powerful, there was also an even bigger reason why the Gu family's forces were spread all over the country, especially in Hang province. Even the words of the Donghuang kingdom were not as good as the Gu family. The Gu family had seven super strong forces in the country. Five of these seven superpowers existed in the form of families, while the other two were forces. One of them, Wang Chang and their Wang family, was from one of these five families. The Wang family's ancestors had always followed the Gu family and were their loyal subordinates. The Wang family's roots were in that part of Hai Chang, which also belonged to Hang province, but it was a bit far from Hang Chang, being near the sea. The current head of the Wang family worked under Guan, and was the second only to Guan as a vice commander, and likewise a legendary royal beast master. Their Gua family, on the other hand, was a vassal of the Gu family, and had always been dependent on the Gu family, and hadn't gone out to expand their territory. Their Gua family also didn't have a legendary royal beast master. The strongest one was his grandfather, who, like his father, was also a master royal beast master. All right, just cut the crap. Gu Huai and Wang Chong were very familiar with each other. Or rather, in order for these five great clans to maintain a good relationship with the Gu family, they would all send anyone from their family who was qualified to become a head of the family to the Gu family, and come into contact with Gu Huai for a period of time. Afterward, they would also establish a close connection with Gu Huai as a way to maintain it. This was because they were all very clear about the strength of the Gu family. If the Gu family wanted to, they could totally let the rest of the families replace them. Wang Chang's character was good. And aside from being a bit toxic and occasionally a bit of a pretender, he didn't have any major flaws. Lin Yi and Chen Hongji, who were on the side, originally wanted to come up and say a few words to Gu Huai, but after feeling Gu Huai's aura, they all unconsciously wimped out. Is it hard to believe that this Gu Huai has some kind of background? Lin Yi was rather unfamiliar with Gu Huai, and he had only fought with him and was pitted by him. I guess so. Imperial beasts like the different colored baby dragon aren't that easy to obtain. Lin Yi didn't associate Gu Huai with the Gu family. It was mainly insight that determined this. Chen Hongji, on the other hand, felt that Gu Huai was a bit strange at this moment. The Gu Huai in his impression was the kind of student in his class with good grades and a pretty good personality. Although on the day of the party, Gu Huai had saved his life, Chen Hongji still had some faint sense of superiority in his heart. The sense of superiority came from his family. Although their Chen family wasn't a big family, his father was a businessman who had made a lot of money and his family's assets exceeded a billion dollars. That was why he didn't care if Gu Huai and Gu Justice were a bit ahead of him. He believed that as long as he was given enough time, he would be able to catch up and leave the two far behind. But now, it seemed as if that wasn't the case. Gu Huai and Gu Zhang, it seemed, were not ordinary either. This caused Chen Hongji's mood to be somewhat depressed. Gu Xiao, as Gu Huai passed in front of Bai Ruachu, Bai Ruachu called out respectfully. Hmm, when Gu Huai saw Bai Ruachu, he was first a bit puzzled as to who this was, but soon Gu Huai reacted. It's you, 9527. Gu Huai's tone carried a touch of surprise. Bai Ruachu unconsciously puffed out her chest when she heard the surprise in Gu Huai's tone. Only when she heard Gu Huai call herself the number 9527, a color of resentment unconsciously flashed in her eyes. Well, thank you Gu Xiao for what happened before. It's fine, just a small matter. Gu Huai returned unconcernedly and returned to his position. It wasn't good to keep standing like this. It drew too much attention. Bai Ruachu didn't continue either. She would use her strength to prove to Gu Huai that you made the right choice. Lin Ye's heart was sour. He greeted Bai Ruachu, and Bai Ruachu was indifferent to him. At that time, Lin Ye didn't have much of a feeling because Bai Ruachu was like this in school, slightly high and cold. But now that he saw that Bai Ruachu would also be like this to boys, he couldn't accept it. He felt that Bai Ruachu wasn't always like this. Shortly after Gu Huai arrived, the time came to 7.50, the host came out, and after a few brief words of encouragement, he announced the start of the match. On the two large screens, the names of 128 Imperial Beast Masters were written. The right side was red and belonged to Hang Province. The left side was blue and belonged to Mountain Province. Each side had 64 names, and both also had 4 names with boxes. The matching rules were simple. It was all randomized after some simple requirements were entered. The seated players wouldn't touch each other and one would come out of each side. First match matchup candidate. Red. Gu Huai. Blue. Hong Yuza. Second match ready person. It's my turn so soon? Gu Huai froze. He had traveled all the way here, and he was about to go into battle not long after sitting down? It seems like one's luck is good. Gu Huai muttered unconcernedly, although his current state wasn't very good, and his two imperial beasts hadn't fully recovered. 
This wasn't a hindrance to Gu Huai at all. This time, the competition involved a large scale and a wide range of people, and there were quite a few geniuses who had come, but for geniuses of the same age, there weren't many that could be placed in Gu Huai's eyes. It wasn't that Gu Huai was overly proud. With such a family history, coupled with such a powerful talent, the gap between his peers and Gu Huai would only grow wider and wider. Boss Gu, have a good trip. Scram. Gu Huai didn't have the good sense to say. And then he took the lead to walk onto the sparring platform belonging to the red zone under the gazes of many people. This kind of low-level imperial beast matchmaking had a specialized imperial beast master reserve, and the imperial beasts and imperial beast masters were separated from each other. On the other side, Hong Yuza, who had been drawn, wasn't in the same mood as Gu Huai, and his face was piled with sorrow. It's over. It's not going well. Just in the opening round, we ran into the opposite side seated player. How can we play this? Hong Yu then sighed, but he didn't abstain. Being able to stand out from so many newcomers in Mountain Province, he was naturally a genius imperial beast master with extraordinary strength, but all geniuses were more or less a bit arrogant. He felt that he would not necessarily lose, or rather, even if he did lose, he would try to make his face look as good as possible. After all, he was one of the top figures in their school. Go old Hong, let them see the strength of our mountain province. Even just a random player can decimate their seated players. On the side of Hong Yuze was a bald man, from the same city as him, only their schools were different. He was in the third middle school and this bald man was in the sixth middle school. Hong Yuze nodded, and then walked towards the front with his head held high. Confidence was high. He, Hong Yuze, was not weak. During the elimination rounds, he was also an existence that had won 9 out of 10 battles, and was close to becoming a seated player. Both players took their positions. The referee had long been waiting on the field. This referee was naturally much more professional than the one of course that Bai Ruachu was moonlighting as, wearing the referee's clothing. Simply standing there, he gave off a very convincing feeling. Just kidding. The profession of referee was also very rolled, and was likewise graded. Moreover, imperial beast masters who possessed the talent of merging were the most suitable to serve as referees. This current referee was an imperial beast master with emerging talent. Please ask both players to summon their royal beasts within 10 seconds, and the battle will begin after 10 seconds. After the battle begins, when one side does not have a royal beast on the field, the other side wins. The countdown had started as soon as the referee spoke. Come out. Iron Wall Centipede. Hong Yu then summoned his imperial beast without saying a word. When Gu Huai casually swept over, he could only see the Iron Cliff Centipede's realm, and the rest of the information Hong Yu Zhe had hidden all of it. Hiding information was actually a very normal situation. Most people out there would hide their royal beast's information, rather than choosing to expose it. However, if the other imperial beast master's level was higher, it was possible to force them to view it. But well, Gu Huai catalyzed his talent. Gu Huai realized that his talent had a very special magical function. That was, as long as he prodded his talent, he could directly see the details of his opponent's imperial beast. Imperial beast, iron wall centipede. Attribute, poison plus earth. Bloodline, medium commander. Realm, awakening ninth stage. Skills, poison LV11. Iron wall LV8 skills, poison LV11. Iron wall LV8. The iron wall centipede size was not small. About as thick as an adult's arm, with a length of roughly one meter and a half, the exterior looked similar to the color of iron, as if it was covered in iron armor. Worthy of being able to advance to this competition, this random person possesses skilled skills. Gu Huai sighed with emotion and casually dispatched his thunder monkey as well. Finish off the opponent yourself. When a lion fights a rabbit, it also uses its full strength. Gu Huai wouldn't underestimate his opponent just because this iron wall centipede was weak. What's more, Poison-type imperial beasts were the most dangerous. This was because as long as one was accidentally hit by a poisonous imperial beast, they would be poisoned, and the follow-up would be more troublesome. Gu Huai was only letting the thunder monkey fight on its own now. Something that Gu Huai had exercised the thunder monkey long ago. Yay! The thunder monkey looked around excitedly, his body trembling. It was right with Gu Huai. There were so many spectators. It's, the thunder monkey, was about to soar to the heavens on a stage like this. Oh ho! So excited. The battle begins. The white phalanx. The stone monkey? On the blue side seated seat. Li Bo Xian's gaze looked towards Li Bo Bang, and the corner of his mouth lifted up in mockery. This is the guy you consider to be your lifelong enemy? On the side, Li Bo Xian also revealed a mocking expression. If it was just this kind of strength, then it really wasn't enough to look at. It seemed like they were the ones who cared too much about the name of the Gu family. Although the Gu family had been a dragon for generations before without exception, it didn't mean that this generation would definitely be a true dragon as well. A stone monkey? 
Li Bofeng himself froze, he rubbed his eyes in some disbelief, and a color of disappointment flashed unconsciously in his eyes. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't your Gu family's initial imperial beast be a precious dragon? If Gu Wai's contracted imperial beast was an awakened 10th ranked baby dragon, he wouldn't feel surprised. This was because according to the Gu family's cultivation method, it would indeed be delayed for a long time on the baby dragon. But now that it was only a stone monkey, it was puzzling to Li Bo Feng. The short-haired woman on the side was expressionless, and no one could see her inner thoughts. On the other side, the people on the red side were also surprised. Stone monkey? Wang Chong was also dumbfounded. How could it be a stone monkey? It wasn't scientific. Guo Zhengyi, Liao Jinxian, Chen Hongji and the rest of them weren't surprised because they had all seen this stone monkey before. Lin Yi and Bai Ruachu were quite shocked. Both of them had seen Gu Huai summon the precious dragon from inside the imperial beast space with their own eyes back then. But how had Gu Huai summoned a stone monkey now? That baby dragon died? This was Lin Ye's first thought, and it seemed to be the only one that fit his suspicions. Gu Xiao has advanced? Bai Ruachu's thoughts were completely different from Lin Ye's. According to Bai Ruachu's thoughts, with Gu Huai's background, it was definitely impossible for anything to happen to that precious dragon. And now that that precious dragon didn't come out, it could only mean one thing. Gu Huai had already become a primary imperial beast master. And this stone monkey was the second imperial beast that Gu Huai had contracted. Becoming a primary imperial beast master in a month and a half. Such a thing was indeed hard to understand for normal people. But if that person was Gu Huai, it could be explained away. After all, even she had trained her imperial beast to the awakening 10th rank. According to her estimation, it might be another month before she could become a primary imperial beast master as well. No matter what outsiders thought. It didn't affect Gu Huai, nor did it affect the Thunder Monkey whose blood was all ablaze. The Thunder Monkey was enjoying this feeling of having countless gazes coalescing on it, and it was burning up as soon as this match started. Oh roar! The Thunder Monkey didn't have any skills on. It just charged towards the Iron Wall Centipede with such extreme enjoyment. Such a pace was simply flawed in Hong Yu's eyes eyes. Such a person can also be elected as a seated player? Hong Yu's a disdained in his heart. It seemed that it was still their mountain province's overall strength that was stronger. Very well, let's see how I, Hong Yu's A, make a big splash, speedily settle the seated player of Hang province, and become the pride of Mountain province, good timing, dramatic poison, as the thunder monkey approached, Hong Yu's I instantly issued a command, it was only that he was temporarily unable to reach the ability to be able to utilize his mind to communicate with the iron wall centipede, and could only do so by shouting, after the iron wall centipede received the command, it instantly unleashed what it thought was a very quick poison attack towards the thunder monkey, fiercely biting towards the thunder monkey. The thunder monkey did not move. To outsiders, it looked like the thunder monkey was frightened by the iron wall centipede's aura, but only the thunder monkey knew that it only wanted to try out its current level of fleshly defense. How strong it was with just the defense brought about by the thunder prison dragon body without any skills on. Hit. Winning. Hong Yu then got excited. This sparring match was too easy. Even if the stone monkey was in existence at the beginning of transcendence, under the intense poison of his iron wall centipede, there was only one way to lose. Yeah, the thunder monkey cocked his head and looked at the iron wall centipede that was biting his arm. His expression had coalesced and his teeth were partially cracked, and let out a puzzled sound. It probably meant, how long has it been since you've eaten? Hiss, the iron wall centipede was also confused. How could this guy be so hard? One should know that its owner had specifically exercised its bite strength just so that when facing an enemy with a very strong defense, it could also bite open a little bit and infiltrate its poison into it. But now this, can only directly release the poison. It believed that with its own toxicity, even just through the surface of its body it could bring great damage to the other party. Highly poisonous, but something unexpected happened to the iron wall centipede. After it released the poison, this stone monkey still looked at itself like that, as if saying again, just this? The iron walled centipede was being mocked so it couldn't hold back, but after releasing its best skill, what else could it do? When the thunder monkey looked at the iron-walled centipede biting its own hand like this, and there was no follow-through, it got tired of it, it was too weak. Thinking of this, thunder monkey was too lazy to waste time on such a weak fellow, it just so happened that the other party was biting itself and couldn't avoid it. The thunder monkey then directly raised its own fist and blasted down with a very simple punch. This punch was a very simple punch for thunder monkey, not even releasing much power. But this punch was fatal for the iron wall centipede. Bang! As the punch went down, the iron wall centipede's eyes went wide, its body then exploded, and dark green juice gushed out crazily as if it didn't want money. The iron wall centipede's vitality was also frantically draining away. Quick! Healing team! Seeing this scene, the referee immediately gave an order. 
Because this was the first match, the medical staff were watching the match very carefully and went up to the stage extremely fast. In less than three breaths of time, the healing arrived and directly lifted the Iron Wall Centipede's life. Imperial Beast Master, quickly put your Iron Wall Centipede into the Imperial Beast space. Quick, the healer roared in a hurry. Everything happened in a flash of lightning, it happened so fast that many people didn't react, including Hong Yuji himself. It was only when he heard the Rory that Hong Yuji reacted and hurriedly rushed over, storing the Iron Wall Centipede into the Imperial Beast space. He could feel that his Iron Wall Centipede was currently in a state of near death. If he didn't treat it properly and operate it properly, this Iron Wall Centipede would really die. But fortunately, being in this occasion, it was actually difficult for his Iron Wall Centipede to die. Follow me. Yes. Hong Yuji knew that time was now running out and there was no delay. Only before leaving, he looked at the stone monkey with a complicated expression. He wasn't a fool, and naturally reacted to what had happened. The strength of that stone monkey was stronger than he had imagined. The thunder monkey was still a bit bewildered. How had it just punched that iron wall centipede like that with just a random punch? It had only casually counterattacked. Your current attack power is very strong. If you're meeting an imperial beast that isn't even a transcendent, it's best to take it easy. But you don't have to care too much. Imperial beast battles are originally filled with all sorts of crises and risks. Gu Huai comforted the thunder monkey, lest it think too much. The thunder monkey nodded. It originally belonged to the type that came and went quickly. All right, let's come back then. Yeah, the thunder monkey froze. What did it mean? Back to the royal beast space. Yeah, where's the competition? Today's is over. Yeah, that's it? Thunder monkey bristled. That match just now. It really wasn't even a warm up. It was so boring. It's not as comfortable as being struck by lightning. Gu Huai sensed Thunder Monkey's thoughts and was also somewhat speechless. Thunder Monkey, sometimes frying fish is also very good. Thunder Monkey cocked his head with a puzzled expression. Frying fish? What's the point of frying fish? It wasn't like eating fish. Gu Huai brought the reluctant Thunder Monkey off the stage. It was only then that those people around reacted. This stone monkey. Li Buqing frowned. This stone monkey is really unscientific. I told you. That guy who I considered to be the enemy of my life. How could he be so weak? Li Bo Bong grinned. He knew that Gu Huai was definitely not that simple. This stone monkey was definitely not an ordinary stone monkey. As for the joyful Li Bo Feng, Li Bo Chang and Li Bo Huan didn't care. Boss Gu was really surprising. Wang Chang's eyes narrowed. Although this stone monkey had just thrown a simple punch, he could still tell with his eyesight that this stone monkey was very strong. But this is good. Only if the Gu family is strong. Those people will be more honest. Plotting and scheming and stuff, I really don't like it. It's better to follow the right person than anything else. Wang Chong muttered. Then he stood up and greeted them with a sincere smile on his face. Boss Gu is really something. All right, my match is over. I'll go back and rest first. It's been a few days since I've had a peaceful sleep. Gu Huai yawned, his face weary. Then the match behind you? Just watch it for me. Gu Huai waved his hand carelessly, and his figure disappeared under the crowd's gaze. The second match, too, began. Everyone didn't have much of a feeling about Gu Huai's departure. This tournament was originally like this. After the entrance at the beginning arrived on time, the end of the match at the back would be fine. Gu Huai left the sports plaza and didn't bother to call a car, directly letting the dark demon dragon send himself home, which was much more convenient. After arriving home, Gu Huai went to sleep when he reached his head. The match on the 15th didn't last too long. Although there were 64 matches to be fought, everyone wasn't very strong and the imperial beasts were limited within their bodies. So even two people with very different strengths could usually end their fights within 10 minutes. So with a full count, it only took a little more than 8 hours, or just after 4 in the afternoon, for the match to end. There was no break for lunch, meals were taken in shifts. The entire field was scheduled by the time the tournament reached the third game. Everyone was completely free to take care of their own meals with the time they had to play. The results aren't bad. Gu family. After the tournament ended, Gu Huai received the news of the completion. There was also a detailed analysis of all those who had advanced. These materials, naturally, were sent by Pops. At the top, there were several names that were circled with a red pen. Li Bo Feng, Li Bo Huan, Li Bo Chun. These three names are a bit familiar. Right. There's a crybaby who seems to be named Li Bo something or other. Gu Huai pondered for a moment, but still couldn't help but shake his head. Unable to remember. Three brothers from the Li family all three of them possessing transcendent imperial beasts. It seems like the Li family has good luck this time, so they've entered the ancestral land. That's understandable. Gu Huai casually skimmed over it, then looked at the people behind him. Ho Min. This one is also somewhat familiar. It seems like he's from the Ho family over in the mountain province. 
This kid Wang Chong has a transcendent too? TSK. These people are rushing towards me, aren't they? Gu Huai suddenly came to a realization after seeing these people. It was well known. The Gu clan's preliminary stage was a period of accumulation. The reason for this lay in the fact that the baby dragon needed a relatively long period of time to accumulate the skill dragon claw. During the accumulation process, the baby dragon's strength would always be pressed at the awakening 10th rank. The old man had used half a year, and the old dad had also used almost half a year. At this stage, because of the suppressed realm, it was considered to be the weakest stage in terms of strength, and it was also one of the easiest to give a defeat. Before baby dragon had evolved into a battle dragon beast, both master and pops were quite low-key, basically not participating in various competitions, just honestly playing with themselves. It was only after crossing this relatively long period of time that they began to show their talents and soar into the sky. This stage was also the stage where these geniuses would have the easiest time defeating the Gu family members. Normally, though, if some underpinnings weren't used to allow these genius imperial beastmasters to grow naturally, they wouldn't normally allow themselves to become primary imperial beastmasters in a month and a half's time. After all, they also needed to accumulate at this stage. Three months was generally a better time. But this time, it was because of the bet between the Gu family and the Li family, coupled with the fact that Gu Hong had said that Gu Huai would make an appearance, that directly drove the Li family crazy. They had directly utilized the reserves of their ancestral land just so that the three heavenly prides of the current generation of the Li family could shorten their preliminary accumulations and complete their breakthroughs faster. The Ho family and the Wang family also meant the same thing. After all, this was the only chance to be able to defeat themselves in a formal setting. This group is a bit of a dog. Gu Huai skimmed his lips and his gaze went to the last person on the list. Yi Fan. Gu Huai's eyes narrowed slightly. Why did this name sound somewhat familiar? It seemed like the son of destiny inside many novels was such a name. No way. Could it be that I'm the villain? Gu Huai touched his nose in thought and shook his head. It shouldn't be. But Gu Huai also paid attention to the Xi Fan and continued to look over his information. Talent. S rank weapon spirit talent. First imperial beast. Unknown black ruler. Second imperial beast unknown. Never summoned for now. Artifact spirit talent? Gu Huai was a bit surprised. Mainly because this talent was rather special. Imperial beast masters with this talent were considered a rather special classification. They were able to flex and drive spiritual artifacts to fight. Weapons, defenses, special implements, and so on, could all be flexed, a bit like the cultivators in immortal cultivation novels who used their divine sense to manipulate magic treasures. This type of talent, the worst of which was an a rank talent, was extremely strong in combat. Kind of interesting. Gu Huai was delighted at the sight of the hunt. The number of artifact talents was too rare and it was estimated that there weren't more than three in the entire Donghuang kingdom. Thunder monkey, when the time comes, it's expected to be a more enjoyable battle. Ya yeah, ya, yeah. the thunder monkey sniffed and was quite excited. It loves being under this kind of public attention right now, battling against the strong, then defeating the strong, and enjoying the glory. Six primary imperial beast masters. This old dad of mine has really dug a big hole for me. Gu Huai bristled. That is, his own strength was strong enough, that or else there was a real possibility that he might have overturned in the gutter. Number 16. On the first day of the competition, there was no live broadcast taken, only those spectators on site. The second day was different. When Gu Huai and the others arrived at the contestants' area, they saw that the live broadcast equipment had already been set up, and there were two commentators on the sidelines, in charge of commenting on the live broadcast of the match. This time, the number of participants from both sides was not equal. Yesterday, Hang Province's results were a bit better, with 36 people advancing. Mountain Province then only had 28 people. In that case, the first 28 matches would just be red and blue battling each other, and after the last 8 reds were left, it would be those 8 reds who would fight a civil war. This time, again, there would be no battles between the seated players. The battle begins. Begin. The battle began. Gu Huai was the 6th to appear, and his opponent was a flower bantam with awakening 10th rank strength a royal beast that was known for its defense. The strength was good. Unfortunately, in front of Thunder Monkey, he was knocked down with a single punch, and could not utilize his strength at all. Thunder Monkey had also collected his strength this time, fearing that he would accidentally beat his opponent half to death again. The rest of the seated players also easily defeated their opponents without the slightest delay. Gu Huai purposely stayed for a while this time, wanting to see Yi Fan's fight. Why does Yi Fan's opponent also look somewhat familiar? Gu Huai looked at the two players on the stage with doubt in his eyes. Yi Fan's match was later in time, and there was no one left on the blue side, so his opponent was on the red side. In a civil war, Wu Wu, Lin Yi crumbled inside. How could his life be so bitter? 
It was even if this didn't advance to the seated players, but how much did it mean to run into the seated players when this was dragged directly to the Civil War session? He had seen Yi Fan's battle before. Simple, clean, and sharp. It was summarized in three words. Can't be beaten. This also directly caused Lin Yi to collapse. His five million dollars just went down the drain, and his dreams were directly shattered. The two-handed player summons his imperial beast within ten seconds. Yi Fan turned his hand and the black ruler appeared in his hand. At the same time, his figure walked towards the sparring area. Both the possessors of the artifact spirit talent and the merchant's talent were the same. They relied on themselves to fight. Come out. General Fire. Upon seeing General Fire come out, Gu Huai instantly remembered Lin Ye's identity. It's him. Gu Huai suddenly realized. Gu Huai's eyes then took on a sympathetic look. This guy's luck seemed a little less than stellar. The battle begins. The way Yi Fan fought was not quite the same as what Gu Huai had imagined. With the artifact spirit talent, one usually relied on their mental power to control their equipment to fight remotely. But Yi Fan directly held that half-human tall black ruler, and like a charging warrior, he killed towards the fire general. Fire control art. This fire general was much more mature the first time he saw it that time. Three flames appeared under the fire general's control and flew towards Yi Fan. Gu Huai also glanced at this fire general's information in passing. Awakening 9th rank. LV-10 level fire control art. This guy's talent was indeed okay. If he ran into the rest of the opponents, there was still a possibility of winning. But his opponent was Yi Fan then there wasn't the slightest doubt. Gu Huai's main gaze at this time was also on Yi Fan. As the three flames approached, Yi Fan did not hide or let go. He just gently waved the black ruler in his hand. And immediately an invisible wave of air pushed towards the three flames, directly altering the flames path of advancement. What's going on? Lin Yi was startled but it was already completely too late. The fire general couldn't move and was directly hit by the black ruler. The flames on his body all became dimmed the moment it hit. Immediately afterward, the fire general collapsed to the ground, losing his ability to fight. From start to finish, Lin Yi didn't even have a chance to release his s rank talent. Gu Huai saw the information of this black ruler at this time. Imperial Beast, Heavy Blade Black Ruler. Attribute, Dark Plus Wind. Bloodline, High Lord. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skill, Imprisonment LV-20, Airwave LV-13, a bit strong, two skillful skills, especially the first imprisonment was at the peak of proficiency, one step short of being able to step into proficiency, no wonder the fire general couldn't move at all in the end, it was directly imprisoned, the use of the airwave skill is also very good, this Yi Fan is also presumed to have experienced countless battles to develop his battle sense, Gu Huai's eyes carried a look of appreciation, if he could, he could talk to this Yi Fan, I lost. Lin Yi's face was ashen. Another battle where he couldn't even release his talent. Lin Yi was extremely stifled. However, Lin Yi also knew that even if he had released his talent, it didn't have much of an effect on the battle. He would lose just the same. What Lin Yi really cared about was that he had lost so miserably in front of Bai Ruachu again. Lin Yi's gaze couldn't help but look at Bai Ruachu. But what made Lin Yi even more depressed was that Bai Ruachu didn't even look at him. After watching Yi Fan's match, Gu Huai was ready to leave. Boss wait for me. Wang Chong hurriedly chased after him. When Guo Jingyi saw this scene, he was instantly displeased and hurriedly followed him as well. Wang Chong followed Gu Huai to the car before he said in a grave tone, Boss, this Yi Fan is very strong and is from our Hang province. There was a special driver who sent Gu Huai to the competition today, and this driver was now waiting for Gu Huai at the entrance as well, without waiting for Gu Huai to speak. Guo Jingyi, who was directly sitting on the co-pilot, bristled. Nonsense. We can all see this. Wang Chong ignored Guo Justice because he knew that Gu Huai understood what he meant. You want to recruit him? Gu Huai looked at Wang Chong and casually said, Wang Chong hemmed and hawed. Boss is wise. I specifically sent someone to check this Yi Fan's family information and social relationships. This kid's parents are dead. Wait. Gu Huai's scalp went a little numb when he heard this template and directly interrupted Wang Chang's words. What's wrong with the boss? Wang Chong was a bit puzzled. This kid wouldn't have grown up in an orphanage since he was a kid, right? Wang Chong nodded his head. And then, before his royal beast talent was awakened, he was notorious and had always been a little transparent? Boss how do you know? Could it be? Wang Chong stared wide-eyed. Gu Huai didn't reply. And the corners of his mouth couldn't help but appear an odd color. Both of his parents were dead. And in hitching this name, this kid couldn't really be the son of heaven's destiny. Could he? If he really was, and was born in Hang province, he wouldn't really be preparing to brush himself off as a villain. Would he? The son of heaven's destiny is a very mysterious thing. Have you contacted this kid yet? Not yet. Mainly to see what you think boss. Wang Chong was serious about this. Hang province, including their Wang family belonged to the Gu family. 
even if he did accept Yi Fan as one of his own, then he himself would be one of the vassals in Gu Huai's hands in the future, and Yi Fan would be considered Gu Huai's man, no contact, then you don't need to contact him for now, try him first in this competition, okay, the third day's match was completed smoothly, 32 advanced to 16, because the seated players didn't clash with each other today either, the match wasn't very intense, but the match had reached this point, and it was soon going to enter a white hot state, that is, tomorrow, for the top 16 to advance to the top 8, there would be no such thing as seated players, everyone would be able to run into each other, it was worth mentioning that Guo Jingyi and Liao Jinxian were both very powerful, they accomplished a breakthrough during the tournament, relying on their own talent to defeat their opponents hard, and entered the top 16 in droves, Chen Hongji came up short and lost to his opponent, which made him extremely depressed, if everyone hadn't advanced that would have been fine, but the problem was that of the four people in the first class, he was the only one who was eliminated, and the remaining three all advanced, which made him very hurt, especially when he looked at those students in his class, he had the feeling that he had no face to face the fathers and mothers of the first class, not bad, city lord's mansion, Gu Hong looked at the advancement list of this competition with a wide smile on his face, this time, the bet with mountain province was based on scores, not just on who was first, those who advanced to the top 64 were given points, to advance from 128 to 64, advancing one person counted as one point, advancing from 64 to 32, each advancement counts as two points, advancing from 32 to 16, that's three points for each spot, these points are stackable, in other words, a person advancing to the top 16 could bring six points added to their score, currently, Hang province was quite a bit ahead of Mountain province in terms of points, when advancing to the top 64, Hang province had 36 people, which was 36 points, when it advanced to the top 32, it also had 18 people, which was also 36 points, now when they advanced to the top 16, Hang province had 10 people, which was 30 points, 3 cumulative, combined scores would be 102 points, and what about Mountain province, Mountain province's total score was only 74 points, which was 28 points less than Hang Province. If nothing unexpected happens in the follow-up, Hang Province is basically stable, but the specific still depends on the subsequent score. After all, the subsequent score accounts for a higher percentage, advancing to the top 8, a place directly at 5 points, the top 4 doubled, directly adding 10 points. Once you reach the top 4, the later matches are divided into 1st, 2nd and 3rd place. These latter 4 will have to play several matches to determine the ranking. Their corresponding scores also increase by leaps and bounds. Third place, 10 extra points. Second place, 24 extra points. First place, 45 extra points. In other words, if the final ranking was third place, it would bring a total of 31 extra points, directly erasing the gap. For second place, it even brings a total of 55 points. First place, a direct 100 points. To know, according to the total points of this competition, the total points of all of them was 379 points. If this took the first place, all took up more than a quarter of the total points. The scores of the top three combined were all about the same as the scores of the 4-64th place. Yes Lord City Lord, if we win this time, we can take more places, and we can also make a name for our Hang Province, so that more celestial pride will come to study in our Hang Province, or even stay in our Hang Province. The East Huang country was huge, the largest country in the world in terms of area, bar none. The entire Donghuang country, including the various dangerous lands. The actual area of Donghuang country was a full 63, 000, 000 square kilometers. Maybe many people have no probability about this size, but in reality our country is only 9, 6 million square kilometers, which is a full 60 times more than the difference. Only under such a large area, there are not many places where people really live. Because of the ferocious beasts, small scale, like townships, is very difficult to survive in this world. That's why Donghuang country is all about cities radiating out to the periphery. 20 to 30 cities form a province. Of course there are naturally four major special administrative regions, which are all only one city, with the same administrative level as the province. The whole dragon country. There are 95 provinces plus four special administrative regions. The total is equivalent to the meaning of 99 provinces. Each province averages out to roughly 20 cities, which are both large and small and together constitute this, the entire imperial beast's world can be ranked in the top 3 of the superpower, yeah, our Hang city was originally ranked high in the national city rankings, having the top 3 universities in the country, and a rather prosperous economy that can be ranked in the top 10 in the country, Hangchang was actually very strong, only Hang city had a rather fatal flaw, 
which was that it didn't cover a large area and wasn't populated enough, which was not even close to the four major special administrative regions. Hangzhou Province has 31 cities with a permanent population of 218 million, but only 22 million or so belong to Hangzhou City. But what about the four special administrative regions? The smallest one has a population of more than 80 million people, the largest imperial capital that is even more remarkable. A city has 130 million people, and some medium provinces are no less than a city of 130 million people. This is how big it is. The main reason why Hangzhou University was able to be ranked in the top three and had the strength to compete with the Imperial Capital and Magic Capital Universities was because of the Gu family. Without the Gu family, it was questionable whether Hangcheng University could even be ranked in the top ten. Unfortunately that's not bad. Gu Hong, or rather the Gu family had an ambition. That was to make Hangcheng as if it was a truly international big city. Unfortunately, this was all too difficult, which was limited by a number of factors. Hang City was able to attract many geniuses to come over here to attend university, but it was difficult to keep these geniuses here, coupled with the geographical location. It was also hard to compare to those four special administrative regions in terms of scale. This competition is considered an opportunity. If we can win the competition perfectly, not only can we get more spots to enter the secret realm, but we can also raise the reputation of our Hang province once again. It just so happens that our Hang province has a new city plan. When the time comes, an excitement flashed through Gu Hang's eyes. This was the long cherished wish of their Gu family for many years. Son, don't drop the ball for old me. The next day, this day's competition was particularly crowded. The officials had temporarily added 50. 000 chairs to barely accommodate the people. Today was the fourth day of the showdown between the two provinces. And the reason why there were so many people was because today's match would feature a battle between the seated players, which made the crowd quite expectant. This time, our Hang province is way ahead in terms of points, and we definitely won't have any problems winning against Mountain Province. The sports factory, while waiting for the match was still rather boring, they were all discussing the results of the match. Most of the people who were able to rush to this place were from Hang province, so naturally, they hoped that Hang province could win. He he, that's not certain. Who is it? I'm telling the truth. Although Hang province is now 28 points ahead, it ultimately needs to depend on who the top few places are. Only two of Hang Province's four seated players are primary Imperial Beastmasters, but all four of Mountain Provinces are primary Imperial Beastmasters, as long as their luck isn't particularly bad. The latter words were not said, and many people fell silent, because they knew that it was right. It was just that they were unwilling to believe it. Alright, watch the match carefully. I believe in our Hang Province's Imperial Beastmasters. After a moment of silence, someone spoke up. Me too. Plus one. Plus ten thousand and eighty six. Under the crowd's discussion, the order of matches for the 16 advancing to the top 8 was also lined up. When the crowd saw the order of matches, their hearts couldn't help but tremble. The situation they feared the most still happened. The seated players were up against the seated players, and it was the last thing they wanted to see. The first match, Homin vs. Bai Ruachu, both of them were seated players. Only that Homin was a junior imperial beast master and Bai Ruachu was a trainee imperial beast master. It's over. It's all because of your kid's crow's mouth. You can blame me for this too? Seeing this competition list, many people's brows furrowed. Gu Huai's gaze couldn't help but look at Bai Ruachu as well. And he smiled softly at her. Go 9527. I'll work hard. Bai Ruachu squeezed out a smile at Gu Huai. She knew that her real crisis had come. If she lost the match easily in front of Gu Huai, there was a high chance that she would make Gu Huai disgusted and thus lose everything she had now. She couldn't, couldn't let that happen. Junior Imperial Beast Master. Bai Ruachu clenched her teeth and a fierce color appeared in her eyes. What's wrong with a junior imperial beast master? Isn't he also an imperial beast master? I don't believe I don't have a chance to win. At this moment, Bai Ruachu was extraordinarily serious. Both players took their positions. Bai Ruachu and Ho Min were both rare beauties with tall, slender figures. Only Bai Ruachu was a kind of sweet girl similar to the kind of baseball babe. Ho Min had the domineering thousand dollar lady kind of feeling. After the two of them got onto the stage, they looked at each other and both summoned their royal beasts at the first opportunity. Come out, twin flower, imperial beast, twin flower, attribute, wood, bloodline, high transcendent, realm, awakening 10th stage, skill, twin LV18, elementary, concentric, elementary, LV20, by Ruachu's royal beast was the twin flower, a very special pure wood type royal beast. The twin flower possesses two bodies and two heads, and is considered to have two bodies in one life. Moreover, the skills of this twin flower were excellent, especially the concentric one, which was quickening to proficiency. 
This was also the capital that allowed Bairuachu to go all the way to the top 16. It was indeed very strong. Plus, Bairuachu's talent was a very simple talent that added to his overall strength. Heart of Grass and Trees. This type of talent has a large restriction and can only work on pure wood system imperial beasts. But precisely because of the large limitations, even if it's only AB grade talent, the increase is not small. Cultivate to the extreme. That can reach 60% all-round increase. To know the normal B grade on the all-round increase of the addition, usually only 40%. To determine which kind of attribute has the kind, that is, 50%. On the other hand, Gu Huai wasn't too sure about Ho Min's talent, because she hadn't used it in so many matches. Her Imperial Beast Gu Huai had seen it instead. Royal Beast, Wind Skycloth. Attribute, Wind. Bloodline, Medium Lord. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skills, Tornado LV10, Advanced. Wind Blade LV20, Elemental. Wind Elemental LV4, Advanced. Wind Heavenly Cloth. A class of Wind Elves. Belongs to the evolution of Wind Elves. The reason why Wind Skycloth was called this name was because of its small and cute appearance. Floating in the air as if it was wearing a dress that was the same color as the sky. The battle begins. The battle started at the drop of a hat. By Ruachu knew the gap between herself and her opponent. So she planned to explode with all her might from the start. Only by exploding with all her might could there be a glimmer of possibility. Heart of Grass and Trees. Heart of Grass is a passive skill that enables the twin flowers to be able to share the same mind. Understand what's in the other's mind. And cooperate perfectly. It also lends power to the other for a short period of time allowing the other to have strength beyond that of a single entity. By Ruachu's thoughts, if her opponent was an ordinary primary imperial beast, it might have actually allowed her to go beyond the battle. It was a pity that in front of Bai Ruachu was the Ho family's eldest miss. This wind heavenly cloth of hers had been cultivated quite brilliantly, facing the twin flowers whose strength had been augmented and possessed a power that was no less than her own. Feng Tiani did not change her face and still looked at the other party with her own adorable expression. When the attack from one of the twin flowers landed in front of it, its body became vaporized. Wind element. This was a skill that could only be mastered by an elemental type imperial beast. And this skill was disgusting and troublesome. It allowed the imperial beast to elementalize, thus avoiding physical based attacks. However, the skill was difficult to control. And it was hard to use this skill well. Elementalize too early. And the enemy won't be stupid enough to continue attacking when they see it. Elementalize too late. And it's a hit. Elementalization also consumes a lot of energy and you can't do it for a long time and many times. It was all about timing and control of the battle. Falling short. By Ruachu was betting on whether or not the opponent's wind skycloth had mastered the skill, or whether or not she could utilize it well. Obviously, she lost her bet, which made her face turn ugly. Feng Tiani's control of the timing of the elementalization was still very good, and although the skill level was not high, it could be seen that he had practiced hard. After Gemini's attack penetrated, its figure returned to normal. Raising its own hand as slender as a branch, the power of the wind element was frantically condensing. Tornado. A tornado condensed from the wind element was instantly completed in its hand, directly sweeping towards the twin flowers at a rather fast speed. The twin flower wasn't a vegetarian either, and it made a response when the attack fell short. It was a pity that wind skycloth was still a bit stronger, and in its slender hands, wind blades and tornadoes blasted out as if they didn't need any money, ultimately defeating the twin flowers. Blue Ho Min wins. Lost, by Ruachu side. Although she knew that the probability of her losing was high, she was still very upset after she really lost. But this was also something that could not be helped. By Ruachu was a little afraid to look at Gu Huai. She was afraid that Gu Huai would see the disappointment on Gu Huai's face. But to Bai Ruachu's surprise, Gu Huai smiled at her and was not disappointed. This made Bai Ruachu freeze. Actually, this was also Bai Ruachu overthinking. When Gu Huai made that call last time, he only thought that Bai Ruachu might be a talent that he could let Sister Hua cultivate. This time, if Bai Ruachu was able to become a seated player and cultivate the Imperial Beast to the Awakening 10th rank, Gu Huai was already surprised. As for defeating Ho Min, to be honest, it wasn't that Gu Huai looked down on Bai Ruachu. Second generation like them, the education they experienced from a young age was different. This education was not talking about schooling, but rather family education. Coupled with the fact that there were also many resources that Homin could utilize, there were also specialized people who instructed them and made training plans. Under such circumstances, even if Homin's Wind Skycloth was also awake in 10th rank, it was impossible to lose to Bai Ruachu. Next round, Li Bufang vs Yao Yi. The subsequent matches soon began as well. By this round of matches, there were only 6 people left in Mountain City. However, these 6 people were very strong. 
Four of them were junior imperial beast masters from large clans, and their strength far exceeded that of normal people. Although there were ten people on Hang Province's side, the only two who were explicitly strong were Yi Fan and Wang Chong, who were primary royal beast masters, and the rest were all trainee royal beast masters. So many people felt that this round was very unfavorable for Hang Province. Luckily, the other seated player, Gu Huai, didn't run into the opposite seated player and was able to win a game. With the end of the first match, all seven of the latter matches were lined up. Just by Ruachu and Ho Min's group of girls were the only seated players to touch each other. The rest were not. Coincidentally, the rest were forked. Wang Chong fought the last one that wasn't a seated player, and Yi Fan continued the civil war. The subsequent matches, naturally, weren't much to look at, and they were all over very quickly. The eight matches were all over in just under an hour's time. This time, there were four people left on both sides. Both Mountain Province and Hang Province had gained 20 points, and the current points were 94 points for Mountain Province and 122 points for Hang Province. The gap was still 28 points, and it wasn't catching up. Only this was a good start for Mountain Province. These four of them remaining, all of them were junior Imperial Beast Masters. We still have high hopes of winning. Only a handful of people from the Mountain Province were able to come to the scene, but this tournament was live streamed, and the heat was high on the live streaming platform. There were also quite a few threads and forums discussing the match. First of all, we're just 28 points behind, but as long as we have some luck behind us, and one of the three males from the Lee family is able to get first place, we can still catch up. By the way, you guys probably don't know what the concept of the three sons of the Lee family is, just let me tell you about the Lee family in Mountain City. All three of them are direct descendants of the Lee family. Also let me post those two primary imperial beast masters over in Hang Province. That Wang Chong is also a direct descendant of a great family. Only the Wang family is not in the same class at all compared to the Li family. And finally that Yi Fan. That's an orphan. Although I don't know what kind of luck he had to raise his strength to a primary royal beast master. But it's already pretty good for an orphan to be able to get here. Once these posts came out, many people also felt that the probability of Mountain Province winning was extremely high. Yeah, as I said before, let's see who gets the last laugh. Ha ha, looking at these posts and comments. The pressure instantly came to Hang Province's side. They originally felt stable, but after reading these analyses, they seemed to think that the other side was the one that was stable. By the way, is that Gu Huai from the Gu family? I don't think so. If he's from the Gu family, how could he not be a primary imperial beast master? Well, I guess it's just a collateral lineage at the end of the day. Alas, Hang Province which was all singing the praises. Alright, everyone, don't be so lackadaisical about our players. Not to mention that the competition will start in the afternoon, so we'll all know the situation by then. Some people posted consolations, which in turn smoothed out the group of people quite a bit, but inside, they were still extremely annoyed. Originally, they thought they could win. Today's competition was divided into morning and afternoon. In the morning, the 16 advanced to the top 8, and in the afternoon, the 8 advanced to the top 4. Because of the morning's match, everyone didn't have many injuries and their conditions were all fine and wouldn't affect the afternoon. Gu Huai and the rest of them all ate a hearty lunch under the staff's arrangement and rested for a while before it was 2pm. The match was also at this time, and it officially kicked off, since both the blue and red sides have the same number of people remaining. We'll directly take the method of both sides going up to the stage and drawing lots to choose the other side of the match. There are blue and red cards over here with the numbers 1 to 4. The one who draws the number 1 is the first to play, and so on. Got it? Alright. Now all the people from both sides will come up to the stage for the draw. You can decide the order of the draw yourselves. There were just the last 8 people left, and the officials were prepared to let the 8 people show their faces more. Brother Bang. Which one of us do you think will get the championship? Although Li Bo Xian called Brother Bang, his tone was a bit punchy, and he didn't treat Li Bo Bang as a brother at all. However, he wasn't looking down on Li Bo Bang. Li Bo Bang's strength, at least in the Li family's mind, was still a bit stronger than him. It was only because he and Li Bufeng had torn their faces apart a long time ago that he was so reckless. Li Bufeng couldn't do anything about him anyway. In a real fight, he wouldn't necessarily lose. Not to mention that their Li family's family rule was that they couldn't do anything to their own people. This was a very strict rule. This was because there had been one in their ancestry who had killed all of his own brothers and sisters, and had placed his father under house arrest, becoming the last head of the Li family. In order to prevent such a thing from happening, they came up with such a family rule. If anyone did this, they would forever lose their qualifications to become a family head or even enter the elders council. Li Bo Bang glanced at Li Bo Xian and didn't even bother to respond. That Gu Huai of yours? Ah, I guess he won't be able to enter this round. He he he. Li Bo Xian hemmed and hawed. 
His tone was indebted. All right, go up and draw lots. Okay. A group of people went up to the stage in a neat and orderly manner and started drawing lots, regardless of how they were in private. Under this kind of curtain, they still had to maintain a good demeanor and couldn't be too messy. The family scandal couldn't be publicized. Boss, I'm red side number one. Wang Chong came over to Gu Wai's side and showed his card to him. Not bad, just in time to be the first one out. Wang Chong then revealed a bitter smile. Boss, none of these three brothers of the Li family are good to be messed with. Sigh. If I had known that all three of them had become primary imperial beast masters, I shouldn't have participated in this competition. No confidence in yourself? Gu Huai asked rhetorically as he listened to Wang Chang's words. It's not true that I don't have confidence. It's just that all three of them are not to be messed with. Then we can try home in. Forget it. It's better to fight those three brothers. I'm most annoyed by elemental type imperial beasts. Wang Chang shrugged. Gu Huai also glanced at his numbers in passing. Number 4. Thunder Monkey. It looks like we're going to be the last ones out. You can be later in the excitement. Facing these imperial and generations like himself, Gu Huai didn't underestimate his opponents. Each and every one of them could possess the strength to fight against each other across levels. And none of them were simple goods. Although the Thunder Monkey was strong, it was only an awakened 10th rank after all. Gu Huai didn't think about letting the precious dragon come out. Letting the precious dragon come out would be a bit too bullying. Of course, if Thunder Monkey really couldn't beat him, Gu Huai wouldn't be so pedantic as to really not let Baby Dragon come out to play. As the numbers of the two camps were revealed, the venues for the matches were also determined. First match, Wang Chong vs. Li Bo Cheng. Second match, Yi Fan vs. Li Bo Xian. Third match, Wu Xiaojie vs. Li Bo Feng. Fourth match, Gu Huai vs. Ho Min. The names of the three brothers of the Li family were prominent on it. After all, the names of the three were just one word apart. So it was natural to think that this generation of the Li family was really strong. Boss, I'll go first. Cheer up. Wang nodded his head and took a deep breath before walking out towards the sparring stage. Purely in terms of family, there was naturally no way for the Wang family to compare to the Li family. Although the Li family was not as good as the Gu family, it was just a poorer existence, both belonging to giant families. The Wang family was just a large family under the Gu family, and the gap between its overall strength and that of the Li family was not too great. However, Wang Chong was the heir of the Wang family, and Li Bucheng was only someone who possessed the qualifications for succession, which made the difference in their status not particularly large. Coupled with the fact that the Wang family was under the Gu family, Wang Chong naturally didn't have to care about Li Bucheng's thoughts or eye color. Wang Chong and Li Bucheng didn't know each other, and there was no need to be subtle when both parties weren't from the same circle. As soon as the referee spoke, they each summoned their royal beasts. Both summoned only one. It wasn't actually that they didn't want to summon two but that even if they had contracted a second imperial beast at this stage, they weren't in a position to participate in a sparring match between transcendents. In that case, why bother calling it out to disgrace themselves? Li Buqing's imperial beast was a three-headed dog. The three-headed dog was the Li family's exclusive imperial beast. Initially, it was a single-headed dog, a transcendent bloodline imperial beast. After that, they could evolve into a two-headed dog by learning skills with different attributes and allowing them to raise their skill proficiency to the proficient stage. By learning a third skill of a different attribute and raising it to the proficient stage, they could evolve into a three-headed dog, and so on and so forth. The Li clan's old ancestor had once evolved a rather terrifying, hellish nine-headed dragon dog that possessed a quasi-divine bloodline, controlling the nine terrifying powers of gold, wood, water, fire, earth, light, darkness, wind, and thunder. He controlled each power to the extreme. Unfortunately, it was too difficult to achieve this step. And although the current head of the Li clan, namely Li Daoshan, had also evolved his single-headed dog to nine heads, it was a pity that every step he took was not particularly perfect. This also resulted in the fact that his was only a hell nine-headed dog that possessed the bloodline of a high overlord. Wang Chang's imperial beast was Aji. Aji was a humanoid-type imperial beast, possessing an appearance and looks similar to that of a human, except that it was more than one size larger than a human. Of course, Wang Chang's Aji was only in the juvenile stage and was only one. Four meters tall. The battle between the two sides was imminent. Both Wang Chong and Li Buqiang had their talents fully utilized. But unfortunately it was Li Buqiang who was more skillful and took the top spot. Winning the match. Boss I lost. Wang Chong was disappointed and stepped down from the stage. It's alright. The Li family they opened their ancestral land this time and used the power of the ancestral land to make the single-headed dog evolve to a three-headed dog. It's normal that you're not their opponent. Gu Huai comforted. Wang Xiang nodded. The reasoning was this but it was just a bit disappointing. The gap in heritage, even if he also utilized his family's power, 
it would be difficult to defeat Li Bucheng. Don't worry, I'll help you win back later. Gu Huai patted Wang Chang's shoulder. Win back, boss, your stone monkey has reached transcendence as well? Wang Chang's eyes lit up when he heard this. That stone monkey of Gu Huai's was strong, really strong. If that stone monkey really advanced to transcendent, with that terrifying battle power, even if Gu Huai's talent didn't have the effect of increasing the strength of the imperial beasts, he would still have the power to fight with Li Bucheng. Gu Huai shook his head. Thunder monkey to transcendent? This one wasn't there yet. No. Disappointment flashed in Wang Chang's eyes. Battling across levels was a particularly simple matter for a heavenly pride like them. But right now, Gu Huai was facing a heavenly pride as well. Or that kind of top tier heavenly pride. Although there was only a difference of one rank between Gu Huai's imperial beast and the other party. That rank was the difference between awakening and transcendent. There was also the most important point here. That was the issue of the talent of both parties. Gu Huai's talent he knew. It was S-ranked perfect strengthening. A very strong skill. But unfortunately there was no way for the skill to drastically increase the strength of the imperial beasts when they were sparring. An Li. Wait a minute. Wang Chung suddenly reacted to something. And that was that Gu Huai's opponent later on would not be the Li family. But Ho Min. Then what did Gu Huai mean when he said something about getting him back? Could it be that he was going to beat Ho Min first? And then the three brothers of the Li family? Alright. Let's watch the match first. This time it's a good time to see Yi Fan's real skills. Gu Huai's words interrupted Wang Chang's thoughts. This match was Yi Fan versus Li Bo Xian. Both were junior royal beast masters, so it was really worth watching. Although Wang Chong didn't think too highly of Yi Fan and felt that the probability of Yi Fan losing was high. Nope. Wang Chong suddenly reacted. It seemed that if Yi Fan lost, then they would be wiped out? The first four front parts would all be from Mountain Province? When he thought of this, Wang Chong couldn't help but have a jolt. This couldn't be right. He knew a lot of inside information about this bet. If he lost this, his old man would probably educate him severely. This caused Wang Chong to instantly reveal a bitter smile. If I had known earlier, I wouldn't have come to this competition. Wang Chong wasn't the only one who thought so. Someone inside the live broadcast room had already started counting the points. TSK, TSK, the people of Hang province are going to start crying. If this Yi Fan loses, the next two matches will also be lost. And then Hang province will be directly pushed back. Yeah, the score gap has now narrowed down to 18 points. There is no longer any doubt about the third and fourth games. These 20 points can definitely be obtained by Hang Province, which is equivalent to Hang Province leading by two points. I suddenly realized a very interesting thing. If Yi Fan loses as well, what would be the score for Mountain Province? Someone quickly gave an answer. 257 points. Hang Province is still holding on to its previous score of 122 points. Heavens, this gave a reverse push even if it was. It also directly exceeded the score by more than double. This is a face that doesn't even want to be there, right? Such news was naturally seen by the executives of Hang Province, which made each and every one of them look quite ugly. Lord City Lord, this situation seems to be bad for us now. Gu Hang's face was quite natural. Do the math. If two of the remaining three are given a direct elimination and the other takes first place, can we win? Ha! Huh? The rest of them couldn't help but stare. And it wasn't until Gu Hang repeated it for the second time that someone started to do the math. Calculated it. How many and how much? 168 points in Mountain Province. We, we, quickly, we 211 points. Hearing this result, a smile appeared on Gu Hang's face. The smile of a sure win. That's fine. Everyone watched the game in peace. Everyone saw the smile on Gu Hang's face. And their anxious hearts slowly calmed down. Although many people didn't know where Lord City Lord got his confidence. But although Lord City Lord was unreliable in some things, he had never let them down in major matters. Only some people who were on good terms with Gu Hong and knew Gu Huai's identity had a shock in their hearts. Is it hard to believe that the young prince still has a surefire means of victory on him? That's right. After all, he's a member of the Gu family. How could he not have some means? This smoothed their hearts quite a bit. So strong. Most of the people were not optimistic about Yi Fan versus Li Bo Xian. Yi Fan was an orphan and his heritage was definitely inferior to Li Bo Xian. And there was nothing wrong with them thinking that way. But when the match really started, they were all shocked. Yi Fan was really too strong. With all his firepower, he directly pressed Li Bo Xian to fight. Even though Li Bo Xian had turned on his talent, he was still not Yi Fan's opponent. The two sides directly fought for more than 10 minutes before Yi Fan severely injured Li Bo Xian's three-headed dog with a single ruler. If it wasn't for Li Bo Xian's timely admission of defeat, I'm afraid that the three-headed dog would have to be accounted for here. This guy's strength. How could he be so terrifying? Wang Chong couldn't help but suck in a breath of air. And with that demeanor and movement, Gu Huai felt exaggerated when he looked at it. Very good indeed. 
Gu Huai also narrowed his eyes in a rare way. This strength, it could bring pressure to Thunder Monkey. Yi Fan wins. Yi Fan sniffed and turned around without looking back. Very dashing. Yi Fan's strength also directly caused the live broadcast room to boil up again. People from Hang Province stood up. Who said that we have no one in Hang Province? Yi Fan is mighty. Yi Fan is domineering. With this Yi Fan's strength, even taking first place is no problem. Ha what? Hang Province is stable this time. The people from Mountain Province were silent because they didn't know what they should say to make it better. This was because the strength Yi Fan had shown so far was indeed extremely strong. Damn orphans. Li Bo Xian lost the match. All but not bothering to look at the three-headed dog that had already been seriously injured and pulled away by the medical staff. His face dark and scary. He had lost. Actually, it didn't matter that he lost. The point was that he lost to an orphan. And that was what made Li Bo Xian feel ashamed. The kind of disgrace that was a big disgrace. Li Bo Feng's eyes also became heavy. This Yi Fan was a dangerous person. Even he was not 50% sure of winning. The only advantage lies in the fact that I know his bottom card and he hasn't seen me fight at full strength. One of the main reasons why Li Bo Xian would lose just now was that Li Bo Xian didn't put Yi Fan in his eyes at the beginning, and underestimated Yi Fan at the beginning. This allowed Yi Fan to seize the opportunity, and the Qi wave stacked up for an unknown number of layers, directly suppressing Li Bo Xian. If Li Bo Xian was given another chance, even if this Yi Fan could win, there was no way he could win with such panache and ease. When there was not much difference in strength, a lot of times it was all about how both sides handled the details, and the control of the mindset. Third round. Wu Xiaojie vs Li Bufeng. There was no doubt in this round. Wu Xiaojie's Imperial Beast was only awakened 10th rank. Even though he had exploded with all his might from the start, he still didn't have a trace of power to fight back in front of Li Bufeng, and was directly blown away. Soon the match came to the fourth round, which was the match between Gu Huai and Ho Min. If it was before, those people from the mountain province would have been clamoring inside the live broadcast, but because of Yi Fan's strong performance, they didn't dare to say much at all. They didn't have a bottom in their hearts whether they could win or not. In the end, that was how they were pressed into the finals. The city lord's mansion in the mountain province. This place was broadcasting a live stream. Li Daoshan's gaze landed on Gu Wai, who had just appeared on the stage, and his eyes narrowed slightly. Gu an old pimp, I wonder what other backhanders you're hiding. I don't believe you'll let Gu Huai lose the match so easily. Li Daoshan was naturally aware of Gu Huai's identity, and his entire focus was on him. According to his thoughts, there was a so-called chi between the heaven's pride. The reason why he had been suppressed by Guan was because he hadn't won again after losing. One should know that when they first fought, Guan had narrowly defeated him. But ever since he lost, the gap between him and Guan had gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Even though he was now one of the twelve earthly branches, his position was incomparable to Guan's. Guan was ranked in the top three within the twelve earthly branches, and he was only in the top ten. It's just right to let the Ho family's little girl try out Gu Huai's strength. Li Daoshan murmured softly. If Gu Huai was really hiding something, he would decisively ask Li Bufeng to come back. As long as he didn't lose to Gu Huai, everything would be fine. The ring. Ho Min and Gu Huai walked onto the stage together. Long time no see. Ho Min spoke to Gu Huai in a somewhat gentle tone. Gu Huai froze, and the appearance of a little girl unconsciously appeared in his mind. It has indeed been a long time. Gu Huai, you're too insufficient, right? At least we're friends. And you didn't ask me out for something to eat when I arrived in Hangzhou. Ho Min winked at Gu Huai, a look that made Gu Huai a little embarrassed. Their relationship didn't seem to be that familiar. For Ho Min, Gu Huai didn't have a deep impression. He had only seen her once or twice when he was a child, right? By now it had probably been at least seven or eight years. All right, no more jokes with you. Come on. Ho Min naturally understood what Gu Huai was thinking when she saw that he wasn't replying. Come on. The referee also announced the start of the match at this time. Both Gu Huai and Ho Min summoned their imperial beasts out at the first opportunity. Ho Min's wind heavenly cloth was just a bit bigger than a palm. And it was really compact. However, this type of elemental imperial beasts were all very difficult to deal with. The thunder monkey was somewhat restrained. Of course this restraint was only relative. After all, the thunder monkey specialized in physical attacks. Gu Huai also glanced at the thunder monkey's panel in passing. Imperial beast, stone monkey, mutant species. Name, thunder monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil. Bloodline, High Lord. Realm, Awakening 10th Stage. Skills, 8 Gates of Transportation LV22, Top Skill Plus. Thunder Prison Dragon Body LV21, Super Rank Skill Plus. Although the Thunder Monkey's Realm was still Awakening 10th Rank, its Bloodline had been upgraded, raising it from a Medium Lord to a High Lord. This also confirmed one of Gu Huai's suspicions, which was that boosting the strength of the Thunder Prison Dragon Body skill could indeed enhance the Thunder Monkey's Bloodline. 
During this period of time, Gu Huai's focus had also been on the Thunder Hell Dragon body, and it was only yesterday that Gu Huai had upgraded it to the proficient stage. Gu Huai wasn't too sure exactly how strong the Thunder Monkey was right now, so it was just that now was the time to try it out. Hopefully, Homan's Wind Heavenly Clothes would be more powerful and would allow Thunder Monkey to utilize its strength. Thunder Monkey, later on, don't open the 8 gates of evasion first, just use normal to try out Wind Skycloth first. Thunder Monkey nodded, normality right, although there was no way to explode all of his strength, it would be fine. Thunder Monkey licked the corners of his mouth, with a look of excitement on his face. The battle begins. Bang. Thunder Monkey moved. The crowd only heard a crisp sound that seemed to be the clash of thunder and air. The Thunder Monkey's voice suddenly disappeared. That fast? The crowd froze. Was this really the power that an awakened tenth step could exert? Homan also froze, and in just that amount of time, the Thunder Monkey arrived in front of Feng Tiani and swung his fist. Wind Elemental. It was fortunate that Wind Skycloth itself was also battle conscious, and after it sensed the crisis, it autonomously turned on the Wind Elemental. The Thunder Monkey's fist directly passed through Wind Skycloth's body, because it was too fast. The Thunder Monkey did not control its strength well, and it itself followed through, almost falling over. Chen Hongji and the rest of them from Class 1 had all come to the scene this time in order to watch Gu Huai's match. After seeing such a terrifying speed, Chen Hongji subconsciously looked towards Lian Baekwon who was on the side. The meaning was obvious. Yours seems to be a stone monkey too, right? Lian Baekwon even shivered. Don't look at me. There is a gap between people and people. There is also a stone monkey and a stone monkey. I, Chen Hongji instantly didn't know what he should say. Watch the match seriously. Wei Justice said in a rare serious manner. Wei Justice and Liao Jinxian had both advanced to the round of 16. It was just a pity that they had both stopped in the round of 16 as well. Wu Zhengyi's luck was very bad, and he was seconded by Yi Fan during the internal battle. Liao Jinxian, on the other hand, lost to Wu Xiaojie by a narrow margin. Feng Tiani, make a counterattack. Ho Min instantly came back to his senses even after Feng Tiani avoided the attack. Sure enough, the Gu family was just not to be underestimated. Even if the stone monkey of Gu Huai's was only awakened 10th rank, he couldn't be the slightest bit careless. Feng Tiani's speed was very fast, and with a slight movement of his palm, three wind blades coalesced in the air, heading towards the thunder monkey at a very tricky speed. The other hand also moved at this time. Wind Skycloth was known as a wind bomber. It was famous for its superb elemental affinity. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Thunder Monkey was excited. These three wind blades had good power. Thunder Monkey swung his own fist like he was going to directly hammer it over, but soon Thunder Monkey reacted. Wait a minute. He wasn't hammering himself in the thunder and lightning now, but rather, he was fighting. If you're fighting, you're hammering a wind blade. Thunder was born under his feet. The Thunder Monkey avoided towards one side at an extremely fast speed, but because of the location of these three wind blades, its limit was to avoid two of them so it could only find a position to blast out at the wind blade in front of it. Bang! Ya yeah, ya! Yeah. A fist blasted out, directly dispersing the wind blade, but before the stone monkey could be happy, its afterglow saw three more cohesive wind blades, and its monkey face changed. This guy doesn't talk about martial virtues. The thunder monkey hurriedly scattered its legs and ran. If it couldn't fight, could it not run? So annoying. Don't like to fight against this type of guy. It's so troublesome to fight. It's not enjoyable at all. It was also the first time for the stone monkey to fight against an elemental type imperial beast, and the feeling of the first punch hitting nothing made the thunder monkey feel bad. However, Gu Huai didn't prompt thunder monkey either. He was prepared to let thunder monkey fight on his own. With thunder monkey's strength, as long as he opened the eight gates, there was no possibility of losing. Tornado. While thunder monkey was avoiding, Feng Tiani also had time to take the time to release a tornado at this time. The target of the tornado was too large and it was basically impossible to hit the nimble thunder monkey. However, Homan's purpose was not like that either. The powerful thing about the tornado was that it had a strong traction. Homan didn't even think of using the tornado to attack the nimble thunder monkey. Her idea was very simple. That is, to utilize the tornado's traction to affect the air currents. Her wind heavenly clothes were extremely sensitive to air currents. This point of influence wind heavenly clothes could basically be ignored. But it wasn't that way for the thunder monkey. Every time she moved, the thunder monkey would be distracted from resisting some of the air currents. This is only a primary transcendent and you're playing tactics? Gu Huai bristled. The elemental lineage was really dirty. Under Ho Min's maneuvering like this, the normal primary transcendent stone monkey wasn't an opponent at all, and was given a playful hand from the opening round. Unfortunately, Ho Min's opponent was a thunder monkey. The air current did have some effect on the thunder monkey, but this effect was minimal. 
The Thunder Prison Dragon Body brought to Thunder Monkey was not just an enhancement of his physique and bloodline. It had a certain enhancement to Thunder Monkey's all-roundness. The Thunder Monkey's eyes became grave. And although it disliked fighting such an opponent, there was no way for it to pick a favorite opponent. It could only defeat all of its opponents. One by one. Yeah. The Thunder Monkey didn't use the eight gates of transportation. It used pure physical arts. Strength, speed, and reaction were all quite amazing. Wind Skycloth's wind blades were unable to cause damage to the Thunder Monkey at all. Ho Min had no choice. At this rate, her Wind Skycloth would most likely not be able to hold out first. This stone monkey was too terrifying. Ho Min truly couldn't imagine how Gu Huai had cultivated a stone monkey of the 10th awakening stage into this appearance. It could only be considered worthy of being a member of the Gu family. I.e., Ho Min was ready to explode as she activated her Imperial Beast talent. Fong Tiani instantly felt the wind element within her body begin to surge and her size changed from a little larger than a palm to the size of two palms. Exclusive Wind Attribute Talent Enhancement A rank talent Wind Heart? S rank talents weren't that easy to awaken. Even the two from the Li family who had shown their talents were only A rank talents. With Ho Min's current realm, this talent will not be able to be activated for a long time. Thunder Monkey just needs to last through this period of gusty winds. The A grade talent, Wind Heart, had a simple effect. It was able to increase the affinity of wind imperial beasts for the elements of the wind system, as well as reduce the consumption of each use of wind skills, speed up the cohesion and control of wind skills, as well as the most important point of all, which was to temporarily raise the level of wind skills. The magnitude of the increase was based on the control of the imperial beast master. However, a talent that generally increased the battle power was very consuming to the imperial beast master himself. The higher the quality of the talent, the greater the consumption especially in the early stages. There was no way for it to last much longer with their power, and it could only be used at certain critical moments. This was also the reason why the previous Lin Yi hadn't even come to use his talent. His talent was S-ranked, and at his level, lasting 2 or 3 seconds was the limit. That's why he waited for the right moment every time. But every time that moment hadn't arrived yet, he'd already lost. If you want to use an increased class talent for a really long time and multiple times, you basically still need to be a senior imperial beast master before you can do it. This side revises an error from earlier. Guo Jingyi's B-grade talent. The limit for becoming a master royal beast master is zero. Eight times the power increase. It will be lower at the beginning. And requires one's own continuous cultivation of the talent. The same goes for Bai Ruachu's heart of grass and trees. The thunder monkey sensed the crisis and couldn't help but pull the power of thunder on the surface of its body. A stone monkey that can use thunder? The crowd was a bit surprised. It wasn't that stone monkeys couldn't learn thunder-type imperial beasts. This world had no limitations on what attribute skills an imperial beast could learn. Even a fire attribute imperial beast could go and learn water attribute skills. It was just that it would be very difficult to learn, and the power of the skills released would be greatly reduced, and would not receive an attribute bonus. Generally, imperial beasts would go to learn skills of different attributes, mainly to prepare for evolution. This was also the reason why they were unexpected. Currently, the known ways of evolution for stone monkeys were still mainly earth-based, and the thunder-based ones weren't very strong. Wind Blade Storm. It was exaggerated. Fong Tiani's two hands were raised, and that tiny face was covered in concentration. More than ten wind blades coalesced in advance of it, directly turning that piece of space a little twisted. With such a large number of wind blades, Thunder Monkey knew that dodging was definitely impossible, and could only attack strongly. Thunder Monkey clenched his fists. Eight Gate Transportation Armor Open Door. Gu Huai also gave the command. Thunder Monkey's strength without using the eight gates of transported armor again had been tested pretty much. It was able to go over a level and fight against, or even defeat, Heaven's Pride who didn't use their talents. However, if it was using talents, it was still a little bit worse and needed to use the eight gates of evasion. Gu Huai was still satisfied with this point. After opening the door, Thunder Monkey's aura was completely different, and his eyes became icy cold. Yeah, the voice also became low and hoarse. Thunderbolt gathered in his hands, and when the storm of wind blades blasted towards Thunder Monkey, Thunder Monkey blasted out with a fist. The thunder aura engulfed the wind blades, directly turning the battlefield into a sea of thunder and wind that eroded towards the surroundings. It was also that the quality of this ring was high. It was made according to the grounds of a master level imperial beast master, that otherwise the grounds would have been swallowed up by this terrifying power. What? Ho Min froze. Originally she thought that the final result had been determined the moment she used her talent. But now this scene was something she had not expected at all. Yuan, elementalize. Ho Min's command was correct. The Thunder Monkey's figure disappeared after blasting out that punch, instantly arriving in front of Fong Tiani and blasting out a punch once again. 
Feng Tiani reacted instantly, but at this time, neither Ho Min nor Feng Tiani noticed that Thunder Monkey's eyes carried a faint touch of mockery. Do you really think that I will still punch blanks? Thunder Fist, Elementalization, which was immune to physical damage, drastically reduced elemental type damage, but Feng Tiani's body was so delicate, even with the drastically reduced elemental type damage, the thunder power carried by this punch could still cause some damage to Feng Tiani. Moreover, this punch was not Thunder Monkey's ultimate goal. Thunder Fist Phantom, fists carrying thunder and lightning, punch after punch, extremely fast. As the first punch went down, the wind element on Feng Tiani's body dimmed quite a bit, seeing that it was injured. As the second and third punches went down, the wind skycloth was much more illusory. Stop it. I admit defeat. Ho Min roared out in a hurry. As the one who had contracted with Wind Skyscraper, she could feel that Wind Skyscraper's life breath was decreasing. If she really let the Thunder Monkey continue to fight like this, she was afraid that her Wind Skycloth would be given a punch to death alive. This was a scene that Ho Min was unwilling to see. It was just a match, so she decisively admitted defeat. With Ho Min's admission of defeat, Thunder Monkey also decisively closed his hand. Cool. What a blast. No beast can stand peacefully in front of me. Thunder Monkey. Gu Huai wins. The referee looked at Gu Huai's Thunder Monkey with a surprised expression. This stone monkey has been cultivated quite well. With the strength it just displayed, I'm afraid that even if it faced a high transcendent imperial beast, it would have the power to fight. When Gu Huai greeted him, the Thunder Monkey exited the state of eight gates of transportation and ran his ass over to Gu Huai, with a look that said, my performance just now was good, right? Sloppy, but the strength of the normals still needs to be increased, after all. The eight doors transported armor increases its strength based on the foundation of your normals. Gu Huai couldn't let this little monkey get too proud. Yeah. The thunder monkey nodded seriously. It was indeed too bad. According to its thoughts, it should have blown that palm sized thing away without using the eight gates of evil. I lose. Ho Min put Feng Tiani, who wasn't in very good condition, into the imperial beast space and walked to Gu Huai with a complicated expression. Truly, she hadn't really expected to lose. Understood. Gu Huai didn't open his mouth to taunt. It wasn't like he was an enemy. There was no need to be so aggressive. Gu Huai, since you won the match, then treat me to a meal at night, as a way to appease my young heart. Gu Huai sniffed and hesitated. Thinking that Ho Min's old man and his own old man were considered friends, he still agreed. That's fine. That's fine. Right? So reluctant. Ho Min bristled. Then are you going or not? Go. That'll do. After Gu Huai finished saying this, he turned around and left in a straight man's general manner, leaving Ho Min alone in the same place, stomping her feet in anger. Gu Huai actually won. Fake it. Inside the live broadcast room, the result of Gu Huai had long been declared. This was something that even the people of Hang province didn't bother to refute. But something unexpected just happened. Gu Huai won. Everyone was confused. It was really because the result was a bit too much out of everyone's expectations. Crap. Now the difference in this score is another 28 points. Originally, According to their thoughts, the people who advanced to the top four should have three people from Mountain Province, so that the match could be pressed to whoever the champion was in the end. But now this situation, the score came directly to 114 and 142, still a 28 point difference. But this situation right now, it still seems to bet the ending on who will get first place in the end. Without discussing this, don't you guys think that Gu Huai Stone Monkey is handsome? Indeed it's so handsome. That speed. That power. It's simply awesome. I've decided that my second imperial beast will be a stone monkey. On the internet, there were discussions about Gu Huai and the stone monkey everywhere. Blue sighed. After Li Bo Xian lost the match, he left the place in annoyance. So there were two people sitting over here. Li Bo Bong and Li Bo Chang. The two were on bad terms. Only after seeing Gu Huai take the match, the two still couldn't help but glance at each other. I knew this Gu Huai couldn't be that simple. Li Bo Feng even couldn't help but speak out. After all, he's a member of the Gu family. How could he be mediocre? Li Bo Chang sighed. It was himself who had underestimated Gu Huai. That Ho Min. Even if he went all out he didn't have a sure win. Now that this Ho Min lost to Gu Huai, doesn't this mean that he could lose to Gu Huai as well? The other Yi Fan was also very strong. This time there was trouble. Maybe they would all be wiped out. Boss is awesome. Wang Chong couldn't help but growl. To be honest, he really didn't expect Gu Huai to be able to win against Ho Min. This strength, it was simply amazing. Worthy of being his Wang Chang's boss, it was bull. Alright, go back. Gu Huai looked like he didn't care, but he was still a little happy inside. Okay grin. Evening. Gu Huai still contacted Ho Min. Took Ho Min to a private chef with a great flavor for a meal. Chatted for a while, and then there was no follow-up. This Ho Min was not Gu Huai's cup of tea. 
What's more, what's so good about women and whatnot, it would only affect the speed at which he could exercise his imperial beasts. In the short term, at least for the one or two years after he had just become a royal beast master, Gu Huai had no thoughts. On the second day of the tournament, since both the red side and the blue side were two people, the tournament was a match between the red side and the blue side. With the drawing of lots, Gu Huai happened to bump into his old friend, Li Bo Bang. Li Bufling was indeed very strong, a shade stronger than Ho Min. Thunder Monkey, with his first gate open, just fought Li Bufling's three-headed dog. It was also the case that Li Bufling's talent lasted for too short a time, and he ended up losing the match. Li Bo Cheng's opponent was Yi Fan, and the result was the same as Li Bo Shen. Both lost to Yi Fan. At this point, the match belonging to Mountain Province was considered to be over. Not true. In the afternoon, there was still a match between the two brothers of the Li family for the third place, and when this match was over, the match belonging to the Mountain Province would be considered to be officially over. Only not many people were concerned about this anymore, because the scores of Mountain Province and Hang Province had already been locked. Regardless of the results of the afternoon and tomorrow's matches, it wouldn't affect the final score. Mountain Province 124 points, Hang Province 255 points. This score, just a little more than twice that of Hang Province. Such a huge score directly silenced the people of Mountain Province on the internet, not daring to say a word. At the same time, they were now concerned about tomorrow's championship match, whether Gu Huai, the stone monkey that had awakened to the 10th rank, or Yi Fan, who possessed the strength of a primary imperial beast master, was stronger. Judging from the strength shown so far, it was Yi Fan who had a higher chance of winning, his black ruler, and his ruler technique were extremely stunning. Before this much anticipated match arrived, the match between the two brothers of the Li family arrived first. Neither Li Bufeng nor Li Buqing abstained from the match, as both were eager to defeat the other on such an occasion and tell their family that he was stronger. Two three-headed dogs, bombarded with various elements. But although both were three-headed dogs, the elemental powers they chose were not the same. The tactics that Li Bo Bang played with, the three attributes that he chose first were wood, fire, and wind. Fire burned wood and utilized the wind to continuously expand the power of his moves. Li Bo Cheng, on the other hand, played violent bombardment, and he chose the two rather violent attributes of thunder plus fire. Coupled with the mystery of the dark attribute, both sides were very strong, but in the end, it was Li Bo Bang who was more skillful and took the match. The next day, the much anticipated match arrived. Both Yi Fan and Gu Huai stood above the ring. I really didn't expect that my opponent would be you. On the stage, Yi Fan was dressed in black, holding a black ruler with a cold expression. His gaze looked towards Gu Huai with a faint trace of surprise in his eyes. He was indeed surprised. A stone monkey of the 10th awakening stage was able to possess such a terrifying power. And if this stone monkey had broken through to the transcendent stage, then his own chances of winning would not be high even if he exposed his bottom card. Unfortunately, fate was still on his side. The stone monkey of the 10th stage of awakening. He took it. I'm not surprised that my opponent is you. Gu Huai shrugged. And he meant those words. Not surprised? Yi Fan froze before Gu Huai slowly said, Upon seeing the way you fought, I knew that the odds were that they wouldn't be your opponent. I'm quite optimistic about you. Gu Huai gave Yi Fan a friendly smile. Facing such a suspected protagonist, Gu Huai naturally had a way to deal with it. As expected, when Yi Fan heard Gu Huai's words, that originally cold eyes became soft. Orphans like him, when faced with someone else's recognition, although it wasn't to be very happy, at least some of their wariness could be put down. Come on. Let me see your true strength. Gu Huai's tone was very light, but the words fell on Yi Fan's ears like thunder. Yi Fan jerked his head up to look at Gu Huai, his eyes narrowing. He didn't know what Gu Huai's true meaning of these words was. Was it a casual remark? Or did he really see through me? This person is too dangerous. Yi Fan instantly labeled Gu Huai as dangerous. The referee also announced the start at exactly this time. Facing Yi Fan, who was holding a black ruler, Gu Huai immediately had the thunder monkey activate the eight gates of evasion. Open the door. The shackles opened. Thunder Monkey immediately felt that his body was much lighter. And the world's influence on him was reduced. Thunder Monkey hemmed and hawed and instantly shot towards Yi Fan like a flying cannonball. Forbidden. Yi Fan held the black ruler. His face didn't change. The black ruler in his hand turned. The mysterious power operated. And the power of confinement immediately fell on the Thunder Monkey. The Thunder Monkey's movements froze. But it was only stiff for less than a second before the Thunder Monkey broke through the confinement. So fast? An unexpected color appeared in Yi Fan's eyes. He could clearly feel that the confinement's effect on the Thunder Monkey was very low. This low was not that the Thunder Monkey was strong, but the Thunder Monkey. Yi Fan was a little confused about the description. Not good. 
The time of the confinement was out of Yi Fan's expectation, and this directly disrupted Yi Fan's plan. Thunder Monkey's fist had already arrived in front of Yi Fan, on the side of his body, and if he used his black ruler at this time, his speed was a bit unable to keep up. Black shield, there was no other way. Yi Fan could only immediately utilize his second imperial beast. Just like the heavy blade black ruler, it was a utensil type imperial beast. The colors were both black, giving off a very ancient feeling. The black shield completely blocked the thunder monkey's thunder fist, and the silver aura flashed and swirled. Bear. The thunder monkey bared his teeth and hastily retreated back, his face grimacing. There was something odd about that black shield. That hit just now was so painful. There really is a second imperial beast. Gu Huai was not the least bit surprised by Yi Fan's undercard and directly checked the information of this black shield. Imperial beast, silver mantle black shield. Attribute, dark plus thunder. Bloodline, high lord. Realm, primary transcendent. Skill, shield strike LV11, intermediate. Bounce LV8, advanced. Another primary transcendent imperial beast. This Yi Fan is hiding really deep. If it wasn't for the fact that opening the door was able to break nature's shackles on itself, causing Yi Fan to suffer a dark loss. I'm afraid that this black shield wouldn't have come out so quickly, worthy of being able to call this name. Gu Huai muttered. This Yi Fan contracted imperial beasts were all black, and he didn't understand what it meant. The two skills of shield strike, bounce, plus this black ruler, it's a bit difficult to deal with. Thunder monkey, Hugh Gate. The thunder monkey that simply opened the first gate would definitely not be able to defeat Yi Fan. The second gate could be tried instead. The Hugh Gate wasn't a big boost to strength. The main effect was to make the Thunder Monkey's physical strength skyrocket for a period of time, enabling the Thunder Monkey to make frantic attacks. Although Yi Fan was able to manipulate two transcendent mortal apparatus, if he was under the Thunder Monkey's frantic attacks, Yi Fan wouldn't necessarily be able to last that long. Another transcendent, the viewers in both sides' player areas, including the live broadcast room, were dumbfounded. This Yi Fan is so fierce, he's hiding so deeply. Yeah, it looks like there's no way this Gu Huai can win. No one refuted this statement. The strength shown by Gu Huai's Thunder Monkey was already quite terrifying, but no one would think that a Thunder Monkey of the 10th Awakening stage would be able to win the match against two such powerful primary transcendents. But soon, they found their common sense shattered once again. Crap, what's going on here? This monkey? What the hell? These last words were spoken by Yi Fan. To be honest, in Yi Fan's opinion, the victory or defeat had already been determined the moment he summoned the Black Shield. He was about to open his mouth to say a few words to boost his compulsion when the monkey went crazy and launched a frantic attack towards himself. Black Shield. Silver Ons flashed as the power of rebound was added to it. The Black Shield was still fast under the control of his intention. But in the end, it was still no match for the Thunder Monkey. Air Wave. Imprison. Bang. Grass. Under the Thunder Monkey's intense attacks, Yi Fan could only feel his energy depleting particularly fast. And when he wasn't paying attention, the Thunder Monkey's attacks directly struck his body, directly blowing him away. If it wasn't for the fact that he was in this state with a very strong physical quality, he would have been out cold with this punch. This monkey. However, despite this, Yi Fan spat out a mouthful of blood and his face turned white. Went crazy? With an attack that crazy, it wasn't easy for him, and that monkey must have been even worse. After all, the Thunder Monkey had to withstand the rebound force from the Black Shield every time it attacked, and suffered far more damage than he did. In fact, it was indeed similar to what Yi Fan thought. The Thunder Monkey was not lightly injured. If it wasn't because of the Hugh Gates enchantment and the fact that Thunder Monkey himself possessed an extremely powerful physique, the Thunder Prison Dragon Body, Thunder Monkey would have already laid down. Admit defeat or not? Gu Huai looked at Yi Fan, who had climbed up from the ground, and asked carelessly, I will win. Yi Fan wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and his eyes became crazy. He was not going to lose. All right. Gu Huai's words were just a casual question to give Thunder Monkey some time to slow down so he could open the third gate. Yi Fan's resistance was beyond his expectations. There was no other way but to let Thunder Monkey lie down for two more days after it was over. Life gate. Open. The Thunder Monkey exhaled, and a mysterious power ran through its body, causing a faint layer of red color to well up on the surface of its body. Only this faint red color was hard to see under the surface of the lightning. The Shangmen, the final safe zone, could stimulate the potential within its body? allowing its attack, speed, and defense to be boosted. However, this so-called safe zone also just doesn't cause any damage to oneself, but it causes a serious de-energization phenomenon, requiring the Thunder Monkey to properly recover for a day or two. Artifact Spirit Explosion Yi Fan was also not willing to lose this match and directly used his last card. Artifact Spirit Eruption 
A way to let the artifact spirit of the Black Ruler and Black Shield power to explode its own potential. The effect was very good. That is, after each use, the apparatus would fall into a slumber for a period of time to allow itself to recover. Moreover, the skill of the artifact spirit eruption could not be used often. If it was used often it would hurt the artifact spirit and would cause it to suffer permanent damage. Yi Fan chose to erupt the Black Shield, and did not let both apparatus spirits erupt. Moreover, with his current state, erupting one was his own limit, and he didn't have the ability to erupt two artifact spirits. I don't believe it. This can still lose. Yi Fan's pupils couldn't help but shrink just as his words fell. The Black Shield after the artifact spirits erupted. Its aura directly increased from primary transcendent to medium transcendent, one step short of stepping into the higher transcendent realm, but that annoying monkey had also gotten stronger. This, bang, thunder fist, the terrifying power once again acted on top of the black shield. If it was the previous black shield, I'm afraid it wouldn't even be able to carry this punch. The black shield that had received the enhancement was able to carry it, but a part of that terrifying thunder on still passed through the black shield and struck Yifan's body. Crap. Yi Fan's body went numb and he cursed angrily in his heart. Unfortunately, everything was already too late. After using the artifact spirit outburst he was already at the end of his strength, he couldn't even carry this escaping lightning. After receiving this escaping lightning power, he directly half kneeled on the ground. The black shield had lost Yi Fan's control and could not block the thunder monkey's root at all. And the thunder monkey's figure naturally appeared in front of Yi Fan, his fist landing three inches away from his forehead. I lost. Two seconds passed. It was only then that Yi Fan slowly came back to his senses. His eyes complex as he looked toward Gu Huai in the distance and gently spat out these words. Gu Huai wins. The referee also just came back to his senses and announced the result of the match with a shocked face. The entire arena boiled. All the people who were watching the live broadcast were also boiling over. This stone monkey, against all odds. Lin City. How Fong, who was in the Gu family's camp, naturally paid attention to this competition. The Gu family is the Gu family. This time the Gu family has produced another dragon. How Fong sighed, then thought of his own son. Although his own son was not bad, compared to Gu Wai, the gap was really far. How Fong picked up the phone and called. Order that the recent transactions regarding the stone monkeys be stopped for now. The next stone monkeys, the price will multiply several times. Boss is awesome. Wu Justice's voice broke under the stage. Boss was indeed too raw. This stone monkey could simply be called a divine monkey. It's the same stone monkey. How could the difference be so big? Lian Baekwon was a bit skeptical. Clearly his initial imperial beast was also a stone monkey, but this gap was too damn big. Gu Huai. Liao Jinchuan's gaze was fixed dead center on Gu Huai, because it was only on occasions like this that she could look at Gu Huai so recklessly. That's right, she liked Gu Huai. Unfortunately, she knew the gap between herself and Gu Huai, and the gap between her and Gu Huai's family, so this liking she could only hide in her heart forever. Gu Huai won. The stone monkey was on fire. No one understands as to why the stone monkey is so strong, but that doesn't stop a business that runs a stone monkey from instantly turning into a gold lump. No. It should be said that only a few businesses that dealt with stone monkeys did. Most of the businesses in the country that primarily dealt in stone monkeys were bought out by one company. The time of the acquisition was just before July 10th. Young master is young master. God. This company that was frantically acquiring stone monkey businesses was the Imperial Beast House that was under the Gu family's umbrella of a company that specialized with initial Imperial Beasts. The person in charge of this Imperial Beast House was this woman. Her eyes flashed with admiration because on July 7th, Gu Huai had made a call with her, asking her to purchase stone monkeys as much as possible. The reason wasn't stated, and she didn't ask much. Anyway, if the young master ordered something, just do it seriously, without so much as a why. Only at that time, she still had some doubts in her heart. The matter of Gu Huai taking down the mountain and Hangzhou province's newcomer competition quickly spread throughout the country. After all, there were quite a few people who were concerned about this matter, and the end was somewhat shocking, especially those in Hang province, where the media was searching all over Hang city for Gu Huai's figure. Unfortunately, they were destined to be disappointed. It was as if Gu Huai had disappeared and couldn't be found at all. They tried to check Gu Huai's information through some means. But the information they found was either false or still false. Only a very few media outlets had gotten some news from some sources, which was to tell them not to keep looking into it. And the protagonist of this story, Gu Huai, was now leisurely enjoying the sunlight on the beach of a private resort center belonging to his family. Thunder Monkey and Lei Bao, too, had taken a rare break from the beach. After working out for such a long time, they really needed to give their two little guys a vacation, and also let themselves rest for two days in the process. Young Master, Yi Fan is here. While Gu Huai was sunbathing, 
The voice of the butler of the private resort center came over. Invite him over. Gu Huai ordered. And also asked the butler to send over another serving of food in the meantime. Gu Huai also climbed up from his chair, holding a chilled cola in one hand. On a summer day, an ice cold cola was really refreshing. Okay. The housekeeper answered in soon. Yi Fan's figure arrived on the beach. Long time no see. Yi Fan. Gu Huai smiled and greeted Yi Fan. Actually, it had only been two days from the end of the competition until now. Which wasn't long, you're the young master of the Gu family? Yi Fan's tone carried incredulity. Yesterday, Gu Huai had called to invite him, saying that he had something important to find him. It should be the one you're thinking of. Gu Huai did not deny it. Yi Fan sucked in a breath. He really didn't think that Gu Huai was the youngest master of the Gu family, the teenager that even he envied, who had stood in front of countless people since birth. According to Yi Fan's thoughts, the young master who grew up shouting for a golden spoon at birth must be the kind of second generation ancestor who has no one in his sight and doesn't put people in his eyes at all. But Gu Huai, he was really not able to connect the two identities together. Alright, don't think about it so much. What to drink? Gu Huai shook the ice cold cola in his hand, and Yi Fan's gaze followed, unconsciously gulping his saliva. Same as you, I guess. Do you want a chilled watermelon? Yes. Yi Fan's eyes lit up. Knows how to live. Gu Huai hemmed and hawed and soon the butler brought the stuff up. Yi Fan held a chilled cola in one hand and a chilled watermelon in the other, sitting on a beach chair with a look of satisfaction on his face. After eating three pieces of watermelon in a row, Yi Fan then turned his gaze to Gu Huai and inquired, What are you looking for me for? It's not a big deal. It's mainly because I'm looking for someone for my old man. Looking for someone? Yi Fan froze, somewhat confused. You should know the reason why this competition was opened, right? Gu Huai didn't answer directly but asked a rhetorical question. I know, it's because of the bet between Mountain Province and Hang Province. Yi Fan subconsciously said something, and soon he reacted. Is it hard to believe that it's because of this bet? That's pretty much what it means. This time, the bet involves a lot more, so I won't talk to you about the specifics. But this time, the bet mainly involves a secret realm. A secret realm that can only allow people who have just become Imperial Beast Masters for less than two months to enter. After Gu Huai finished saying this, his gaze looked at Yi Fan. Yi Fan naturally understood what Gu Huai meant. You want to invite me to enter the secret realm with you? Gu Huai shook his head. And only under Yi Fan's puzzled gaze did Gu Huai slowly say, It's not that I want to invite you, but I want to give you a chance to enter this secret realm. By the way, this secret realm is a barrier-breaking secret realm, so as long as you pass a certain level, you will be able to get the corresponding benefits. Gu Huai knew that Yi Fan was an understanding person and understood the meaning of his words. Yi Fan frowned obviously pondering what to do. Gu Huai picked up another piece of chilled watermelon and opened it and slowly ate it without urging. After about three minutes, Yi Fan exhaled and gathered his gaze on Gu Huai once again. What do you want? Gu Huai put down the watermelon in his hand and extended his hand towards Yi Fan. Your friendship. My friendship? Yi Fan froze, then he looked deeply at Gu Huai, shook Gu Huai's hand and said in a very serious tone, You as a friend, I recognize you. Cheers. Gu Huai picked up the ice cold cola and directly illustrated his meaning with his actions. Yi Fan's heart warmed, a feeling he hadn't felt in a long time. Cheers. The two of them took the coke in their cups and drank it all in one go. The two didn't have too many words. Friendship between men was sometimes like this. There's still eight days to prepare. I'll call you to come over and gather at that time. And where you live now may not be too good for training. Why don't you just come here to train directly? This also saves me from calling to notify you again. Okay. Yi Fan didn't reject Gu Huai's good intentions and directly agreed. It just so happens that you can also get to know the rest of your teammates. With pleasure. Eight days passed quickly. July 31st. Gu Hong brought Gu Huai and his group to the entrance of a secret realm. Where this place was, truth be told Gu Huai really didn't know. Gu Hang's speed was so fast that he couldn't tell east from west from north from south. There were a total of five people who had traveled to this place with Gu Huai. Yi Fan, Wang Chong, Bai Ruabing, and the other one was Guo Jingyi. When Gu Huai and the others arrived at this place, the people from the mountain province had long been waiting here. The ones who came from the mountain province side were all old acquaintances as well. Li Guoping, Li Bufeng's real father, and also the acting city lord of Mountain City. There were also Li Bufeng, Li Bo Cheng, and Ho Min, four people in total. Li Bo Xian didn't come, presumably given the elimination. Everyone has arrived, so it's time to open this secret realm. Gu Hong and Li Guoping were old acquaintances. And after the two nodded to each other, Gu Hong spoke. I don't know if it was an illusion, but Gu Huai always felt that Li Guoping's eyes were looking at his father with some grudges. Also let me tell you about the rules of this secret realm. This secret realm is a challenge secret realm. 
Of course I'm not sure exactly what kind of challenge it is. It should be that this secret realm is a one-time secret realm, and only a maximum of eight people can enter at a time. But I can tell you one thing, and that is that this secret realm is life-threatening. So you can think about it before deciding whether or not to go in. Gu Hong stated the danger first to avoid any real accidents when the time came, and also to let everyone have a preparation in their hearts in the meantime. Hearing Gu Hang's words, no one flinched. The secret realm, how could it not have risks? They were not surprised at all. Very well, it seems that no one wants to quit. Guo Ping, seeing that no one was quitting, Gu Hong turned his gaze to Li Guoping. Got it. Li Guoping and Gu Hong simultaneously operated the power of the imperial beast, and then the entrance to that secret realm gate trembled violently. This was a prohibition left behind by Li Guoping and Gu Hong for the simple purpose of preventing someone from intruding into the secret realm and consuming this disposable secret realm in advance. You guys go in. Pay attention to safety. As Gu Hang's words fell, many gazes fell on Gu Huai, without a doubt. In the current team of eight, Gu Huai was the core of the core. On the Hang province side, Bai Ruabing, Gui Zhanggang, and Wang Chongyuan were originally Gu Huai's people. Yi Fan was also specially invited by Gu Huai and had also established a deep friendship with Yi Fan in the past few days. So naturally, Gu Huai was also the leader. On the Mountain Province side, Ho Min was originally very favorable to Gu Huai, and if it wasn't for Gu Huai, she wouldn't have even come to participate in this competition. Li Bufeng and Li Bucheng's minds were much more complicated, but both of them basically valued Gu Huai's opinion as well, subconsciously looking towards Gu Huai, wanting to see what Gu Huai was going to do. Old Gu, your son seems to be even better than you were back then. Li Guoping stood at the side of Gu Hang at some point and looked at the picture. Yes, he is my son. Gu Hong had a proud look on his face, which made Li Guoping jerk his belt a little when he looked at his own son. The same imperial and generation. The same top big family. How could the gap be so big? With so many gazes falling on him, Gu Huai was quite frank. Let's go. Gu Huai said, striding forward. Wei Justice, Wang Chong, and Li Ruobing followed closely behind Gu Huai. Yi Fan froze and with a touch of envy in his eyes, he also followed closely. Wait for me. Ho Min on the other side saw this and also hurriedly ran over. There's still me. Li Bo Bang still wanted to act high and mighty, but when he saw that he was the only one left on this side, he also hurriedly ran over. If Li Bo Chang knew what Li Bo Bang was thinking, he probably wouldn't be able to resist storming out. Obviously he was also on the side. Okay, how come you're left all by yourself? You guys like this. Forget it. Wait for me too. There was no way. He wasn't trying to follow Gu Huai, he just had to fit in because he didn't know what would happen in this secret realm. Right, that was it. With this, the group walked into the secret realm's door under Gu Huai's leadership. Soon, everyone's silhouettes disappeared. Uncle Dark Descent, I'm counting on you over here. Gu Hong, who was the lord of a city, naturally didn't have the time to wait for Gu Huai to come out over here. Originally, according to his idea, he was prepared to have an imperial beast wait for Gu Huai here. And it just so happened that the old man's dark descendant demon dragon was also in this place. So he directly requested the dark descendant demon dragon. It just so happened that having a dark descendant demon dragon in this place was safer than him leaving an imperial beast behind. Your old master really values Gu Huai. Even leaving the dark descendant demon dragon behind. Li Guoping, who was on the side, saw it and looked envious. His family wouldn't have this treatment. It can't be helped. It's such an only child. Gu Hang's tone was filled with favor. After Gu Huai and the others entered the secret realm, they saw the world within the secret realm. It was dark and gray, giving off an extremely depressing feeling. Welcome, young imperial beastmasters to the extreme sun secret realm. As soon as they could see their surroundings clearly, a slightly low voice rang out between the heavens and earth, and everyone couldn't help but pull their ears long, wanting to hear the rules of the secret realm so that they could deal with the challenges to come. You guys must be surprised. Why is such a dark and sunless place called the extreme sun secret realm right? To tell you the truth, a long, long time ago, there was a blazing sun in this secret realm, but unfortunately, due to some unexpected reasons, this blazing sun lost its own light, and eventually sank forever. The voice carried a touch of sadness, but it quickly returned to normal. Well, there's no more nonsense with you guys. Cut to the chase. Although the blazing sun disappeared, the humans who once inhabited this place still found a way to create an artificial sun, which also allowed this land to maintain its vitality for a while. But again, it's an accident. No more talking about this. Let me talk about the test of the secret realm. It's very simple. It's that I want to bask in the sun. So yeah, I hope you guys can help me realize this wish. Gu Huai and the others who were listening attentively to the rules heard this and froze in unison. What the hell? What do you mean you want to bask in the sun? 
The strongest among them had only just entered the primary beastmaster not long ago. Where to go to create the sun for you? How the hell is that even simple? But the crowd didn't say anything and continued to wait for the sound of the secret realm. In the eight corners of the secret realm, previous generations have left corresponding switches. All that is needed is for you all to head to these eight places to turn the switches on, and I will be able to bask in the sun. At that time, once I'm in a good mood, I'll give you corresponding rewards based on your performance in the secret realm. All right, let's go. Young Imperial Beast Masters, I'm sure you can accomplish this task. The final voice fell, and the heavens and earth returned to silence. Eight places, eight organs, no wonder it's eight people. Gu Huai muttered, then turned his gaze to the crowd. How? One for each person? Yes, I agree. Then it's happily decided. With exactly eight people, there wasn't much to say. It was impossible to make someone else give up this favor. But if you guys run into trouble and don't have the means to solve it, don't try to be heroic. Gu Huai turned his gaze to Bai Ruachu and Guo Zhen. Of those present, these two were the ones who weren't primary beastmasters and had the weakest strength. Don't worry boss, I'll definitely keep myself safe. Gu Xiao I'll do the same. Let's set off then. The eight places weren't hard to find, and when that voice disappeared, it directly marked those eight places. Gu Huai didn't know how he did it. It was amazing that's all. Gu Huai purposely chose a location that was a bit farther away and called out the thunder monkey, letting it hold itself over. Although he didn't know if there would be more benefits to completing it faster. But on the principle of trying just to try, Gu Huai did so. The rest of them saw Gu Huai's move and also had their imperial beasts carry them towards their corresponding targets. The distance wasn't far, and with the speed of the thunder monkey, it was just less than 5 minutes before they arrived at their destination. It had to be said that it wasn't a very comfortable feeling to have the thunder monkey cupped and running. This made Gu Huai couldn't help but sprout the thought. Should he get a more handsome mount? Similar to a white tiger? Although when Lei Bao grows up a bit, it can be ridden as well. But having a white tiger seems to be good as well. Gu Huai muttered and then turned his gaze to his destination. The destination was a dilapidated stone house. Gu Huai frowned lightly. Could it be that the device was in this dilapidated stone house? Gu Huai didn't get close to the stone house and let Thunder Monkey go over to check the situation from afar. At the same time, Gu Huai also summoned Lei Bao as well, with Lei Bao protecting him at the side. Gu Huai felt that his sense of security had instantly risen a notch. It wasn't that Thunder Monkey wasn't strong enough, but Lei Bao was more capable of bringing a sense of security. Yikes! Thunder Monkey approached the stone house vigilantly, pushed open the door and peered inside, and when he realized that there were no ferocious beasts inside, he let out a cue. No? Gu Huai sniffed and also walked over under Lei Bao's protection. Compared to Imperial Beasts, the body of an Imperial Beast Master was too weak. In a place like the Wilderness, which was full of dangers, the first step that an Imperial Beast Master needed to do was not to fight, but to protect his own safety as much as possible. It was only after protecting their own safety that they could proceed to the next steps. That's. The scene inside the stone house was completely different from what Gu Huai thought. It was clean inside, and could even be described as spotless. The stone house was empty, with nothing but a dull formation drawn on the ground. Gu Huai didn't involve much in formations and couldn't tell what this formation was. Luckily, when Gu Huai saw this formation, the hint came out. Activating the formation with the blood of a ferocious beast will open the mechanism. The blood of a ferocious beast? Thunder Monkey. On his way here just now, Gu Huai had seen some fierce beasts. These ferocious beasts weren't very strong. Most of them were at the awakening stage, with only a few transcendentals. Go get some transcendent fierce beast blood over here. Yeah. The Thunder Monkey led the order and immediately catapulted out. The Thunder Monkey's speed was fast, and in less than three minutes, the Thunder Monkey jumped over carrying a half-beaten black tiger. Bleed it. Gu Huai didn't know how much blood needed to be drained and directly asked Thunder Monkey to operate. With a slash of Thunder Monkey's hand, the Black Tiger let out a hiss of pain, and the blood just stayed on top of the formation. As Black Tiger's blood dripped down on the formation, the decaying formation began to brighten, getting brighter and brighter. In less than 30 seconds, the light of the formation enveloped Gu Huai, Thunder Monkey, and Thunder Treasure. The light was so dazzling that Gu Huai couldn't even open his eyes. When the light news, Gu Huai arrived in front of a tall tower. This is, Gu Huai's eyes looked towards the tall tower which had the rankings of the Tower of Five Elements written on it. The Tower of Five Elements? Gu Huai froze. It was clear that this tower had eight colors. So why was it the Tower of Five Elements? Gu Huai looked at the eight colors, each with corresponding attributes. The most basic was the five elements. Gold, wood, water, fire, and earth. In addition to these three basic attributes, there were also three advanced attributes. Gold thunder, water ice, fire inflammation. The advanced attributes of wood and earth aren't there? 
Thunder, in fact, could not be considered gold. There were actually many attributes of thunder, but it was only because thunder carried a portion of the might of gold that it was categorized as a gold-based attribute. You are the first person to enter the five elements tower and can open your choice. Rules. When the cumulative number of floors the eight of you have cleared reaches 160, the artificial sun will rise in the extreme sun mystic realm. The more layers you accumulate to clear, the brighter the artificial sun's light will be, the happier the secret realm will be, and the rewards given to you will naturally be greater. In addition, there are only 30 floors of the tower for each attribute. So if you pass the attribute of your choice, it is possible to go and help others with the challenge. Gu Huai looked at this and froze. It's possible to help others with their challenges? Gu Huai continued to look down. It's not really helping others with challenges. I guess, it should be considered for yourself. However, for the subsequent challenges, the difficulty will be drastically increased. Counting their tiers from 31, and an individual can cumulatively hit a maximum of 50 tiers of the tower. Hint, the cumulative number of floors cleared by 8 individuals exceeds 160 before the blazing sun rises and you are rewarded. The more layers an individual passes, the more benefits they can receive. Work hard. Junior. Gu Huai read the rule, meaning that the more towers climbed the better the rewards would be. It's a bit interesting. I just don't know how difficult the follow-up will be. With 8 layers, each tower had 30 layers, and the total number of layers would be 240. But this 240th floor was definitely not that easy. You'll know the specifics when you go in and take a look. Also my choice. Gu Huai's gaze first landed on the tower with the thunder attribute and shook his head slightly. The thunder attribute was his own best attribute. Both Lei Bao and Lei Monkey had a high resistance to the thunder attribute. After all, they had just been tempered from that place in the sea of thunder. Let's put the thunder attribute aside for now. The attribute that the seven of them will choose. Gu Huai's mind simulated their choices. And he quickly had an answer in his heart. Wa Jingyi was good at defense. So it was more appropriate to have him choose a tower with a stronger attack like metallic. By Ruachu's was a twin flower. A wood attribute that could fight with the water attribute. The remaining few were stronger. Homin was a wind attribute and was better at playing with fire. Li Bufeng's three-headed dog is wood. Fire. And wind. And those playing tactics can try ice. Li Bucheng is thunder plus fire plus darkness. Violent bombardment. Can choose wood. These two. Wang Chang's Aji is a pure fire attribute humanoid imperial beast. No choice, just play earth. The remaining two were thunder and yen. Yan's temperature is very high. Yi Fan can defend against frontal yen, but not against the effects of the temperature. Thunder is still doable if he's careful. Then I'll choose yen. Gu Huai quickly made his choice, but instead of going in immediately, Gu Huai was prepared to wait in place to see if this place was universal. It was pretty much the same as what Gu Huai thought. It was just less than two minutes before Yi Fan's figure appeared in front of Gu Huai. Gu Huai. After Yi Fan saw Gu Huai, he was slightly stunned, and then he took a fighting stance with vigilance in his eyes. Obviously, Yi Fan thought that Gu Huai was a monster that appeared in the secret realm, and purposely transformed into Gu Huai's appearance in order to make him let his guard down. Gu Huai was still satisfied with Yi Fan's vigilance. Only by being vigilant like this could he keep himself safe in the secret realm where crises abounded. I'll talk when everyone arrives. For now. Let's prioritize keeping our distance. What's more, Gu Huai wasn't quite sure if the Yi Fan in front of him was the real Yi Fan, and he also needed to maintain a certain safe distance. Good. Yi Fan looked at Gu Huai, and then at Thunder Monkey and Thunder Treasure beside Gu Huai, not knowing what he was thinking. During this period of time, Yi Fan had stayed at the Gu family's specialized private resort center, and naturally, he knew that Gu Huai was also a primary imperial beast master, only that he hadn't seen Lei Bao put up a fight. So naturally he wasn't sure how strong Lei Bao was. However, Yi Fan could be certain that Lei Bao's strength was above that of the Thunder Monkey, which also made Yi Fan feel that he had not lost unfairly, and that this Gu Huai was really too strong. This also made Yi Fan's mindset change somewhat. After the original Yi Fan knew Gu Huai's identity, he thought that Gu Huai wanted to directly recruit himself, and he was even prepared to refuse. But with what Gu Huai said later, and the change in his mindset now, if Gu Huai opened his mouth to recruit him, he really wasn't sure if he would go ahead and refuse. The third one to come in was Li Bufeng, who was also keeping his guard up, and Gu Huai had said the same thing to him. The fourth, Li Bo Cheng. The fifth, Wang Chong. The sixth, Ho Min. The seventh, Bai Ruachu. And the last was Gui Justice. All of these latter people, with the exception of Gui Justice who had rushed towards Gu Huai like a big fool as soon as he came in, all of them carried a certain amount of vigilance. This made Gu Huai have to sigh in his heart. Although Gua Justice this guy was a bit silly, he also had the deepest feelings. After all, he had played since he was a child and had been in the same class for years. 
You've all read the rules clearly. The crowd nodded. The final number of floors of this tower determines our final earnings, so I'll talk about how I'm going to distribute them. And if you guys think there's a problem, you can bring it up, and we'll continue discussing it. Gu Huai said what he had thought before. And when the crowd heard this, none of them said anything, only that they looked at Gu Huai with more than a hint of a different flavor in their eyes, especially Li Bo Cheng. He looked deeply at Gu Huai, and in his heart, he even made a decision. Try not to mess with Gu Huai if you can. This guy was scary as hell. If you all don't say anything, that means you accept my opinion? I agree. Whatever the boss says. Alright then, you guys are stronger, so later on, break in as much as you can and take full rewards. Good. He fans few people felt Gu Huai's gaze and nodded their heads. Let's go in then. As Gu Huai's words fell, he took the lead and was the first to walk into the tower with the word Yen written on it. Yen and fire. Although they both belonged to the fire attribute, they were still somewhat different in nature. Yen represented a flame that was of a higher temperature and was more powerful than fire. In a certain sense, inflammation, like water, was the nemesis of flames. Only the water is to annihilate the flame, but the inflammation is to directly swallow the flame, strengthen itself, and become a stronger inflammation. One could also call Yen, the upgraded fire attribute, a higher level of power. The rest of the people saw Gu Huai walk into the tower and also walked into the corresponding tower as assigned by Gu Huai. As all eight people walked into the five elements tower, a shadow slowly emerged. This little guy is a bit interesting. I just don't know how strong he is. If it's possible, it can be entrusted to it. After the shadow said this, it quickly disappeared. Tower of Inferno. Gu Huai walked into the first layer, and a scorching hot aura immediately spread out. It was only the first floor, and the temperature inside this tower was over 50 degrees. Hot as hell. Luckily, it was also hot outside, and Gu Huai was wearing short sleeves so he could barely carry it off. In such an environment, it's time for a quick battle. Otherwise if we stay for a long time, people are going to be roasted. Gu Huai muttered, and soon saw the target of the first level. It was an inferno elemental, and the temperature of the flame was purple. Gu Huai looked his gaze over, and without using his observation technique, the information of this fire elemental surfaced directly. Fierce beast, inferno elemental, attribute, fire, bloodline, high transcendent. Realm, Awaken 6th Stage. Skill, Inferno Explosion Skill, Inferno Explosion. Introduction, All Hand-Filled Templates. Bloodline Realm filled in at your own discretion. Don't care about the Bloodline piece. So thoughtful? Straight away, the attribute panels are all posted. Gu Huai couldn't help but laugh out loud when he saw the information on the Inferno Elemental, especially the introduction column. It seems like the person who made this 5 elements tower was a bit random. Gu Huai muttered, and then his gaze went to this Yen Elemental with a bland look. This inferno elemental was only at the awakened sixth stage. So naturally, it posed little threat to Gu Wai. Thunder monkey, don't settle it too quickly. Learn more about its strengths and weaknesses. As an old partner, Thunder monkey naturally understood the meaning of Gu Wai's words. Wanting to let himself feel out the details, it understood. Thinking of this, the thunder monkey gave up the idea of killing this weak inferno elemental in a second. The gap in strength was there, and the elemental elemental soon found out and was mercilessly killed by Thunder Monkey's punch. In the past few days, the Thunder Monkey thought bitterly about his previous embarrassing performance when facing elemental-type imperial beasts, unable to inflict too much damage on them, and also figured out the method of completely utilizing the Thunder Element and defeating the Elemental with the Elemental. The effect was indeed not bad. Now this punch blast was the result of the training. After killing the Inferno Elemental, no prompting sound rang out, only a step formed entirely of flames appeared in front of Gu Wai's eyes leading to the next level. This is still really hot. Gu Huai muttered, wiping the sweat from his forehead and letting Lei Bao lead him up. At this time, Gu Huai desperately missed ice-cold cola, which wouldn't feel too good if he could have a sip. This wouldn't be bad if there was an ice-type imperial beast. Gu Huai muttered, and in his mind, he began to make plans for the other four imperial beasts. Alas, there are too many imperial beasts needed. It's really hard to choose. Let's not think about so much first. It's still early. He had only just become a primary royal beast master for not much time. If he wanted to step into an intermediate royal beast master, it would take three to five months, right? Even if one could prepare the imperial beasts in advance and cultivate their feelings, it would still take a while. With more imperial beasts, the aspect of feelings with the imperial beasts would need to be seriously considered. The bond between the imperial beasts and the imperial beast master was very important. Like some imperial beast masters, even though they were very strong and had the ability to contract multiple imperial beasts, they still only contracted one imperial beast, 
And this was the bond between the Imperial Beast and the Imperial Beast Master. The second layer. The environment was similar to the first layer. But the temperature didn't seem as hot as before? I guess it's because I'm slowly adapting to the environment in here. The ability of humans to adapt was extremely powerful. Especially since the physical qualities of humans in this world were generally stronger. It was like Pei Wuxia's kind of fighting royal beast master. Even if he didn't engage in merging with the royal beasts, his physical quality was still frighteningly strong. Gu Huai estimated that with that physical quality of Pei Wuxia, he was probably able to fight against a lord imperial beast head on, or even suppress it. The target of the second layer is the inferno elemental again. Just like the first layer, there was the same panel display. Only this layer's inferno general had its strength enhanced. Fierce beast, yen elemental. Attribute, fire. Bloodline, high transcendent. Realm, awakening seventh stage. Skill, inferno explosion skill, inferno explosion. Introduction, all hand filled templates. Bloodline realm filled in at your own discretion. Don't care about the bloodline piece of the problem. This time, there was no need for Gu Huai to give the word. The thunder monkey instantly struck, easily killing this inferno elemental in seconds. As the inferno elemental died, the stairs to the third floor appeared. Continue. As the layers increased, so did the difficulty. When they reached the tenth layer, the strength of the monster became an awakened tenth stage, with a bloodline of a top lord's inferno elemental. This realm was the same as the ninth layer's inferno elemental, that is, the bloodline had been upgraded, which allowed the inferno elemental strength to be upgraded as well. In fact, from the fifth layer, the realm of the inferno elemental was the awakened tenth order. Only then it was a high transcendent bloodline. From the sixth to tenth layer, there was no change in the realm. It was all bloodlines that were raised again. It was basically all one to two small stages of ascension, and the difficulty of each layer continued to rise. The difficulty of the tenth layer isn't too difficult. By Ruachu and Guozhingi should not have too much of a problem if the two of them work hard. I just don't know how difficult the eleventh layer is. Although the same awakening tenth stage, this tenth layer of the Yen Elemental, in the bloodline piece is stronger than the Thunder Monkey. But the Thunder Monkey's practicing degree is too much stronger than the Yen Elemental, which makes the Yen Elemental in front of the Thunder Monkey, can't hold up to a serious punch at all. In the Imperial Beast world, realms are a bit like levels in a game. Bloodline, on the other hand, was like the attributes that increased every time you leveled up. Both of these had a very important role in strength, but they didn't completely determine the final strength. The level of practice, the strength of skills, and so on, were also all heavily related to the final battle strength. 11th floor. Soon, Gu Huai took a step into the 11th layer. The 11th layer had changed greatly from the previous 10 layers. The first thing was that the ferocious beasts on the 11th layer had changed. Before, all of them were inferno elementals, but at the 11th level, they became an inferno velvet king. In the outside world, the inferno velvet king was a high lord bloodline fierce beast, belonging to the type of fierce beasts that could fight and resist. It was very difficult to deal with and was considered a very good fierce beast. Primary transcendent inferno velvet king, it's fortunate that this bloodline power has become higher transcendent again, that or else a few of them wouldn't be able to get through much farther. Gu Huai subconsciously said, but soon Gu Huai reacted. No, the monsters in each tower were different. The one they ran into was definitely not the Inferno Velvet King. Thunder Monkey, try this Inferno Velvet King. Yikes, the Inflammable Velvet King's size was relatively large. It looked a bit like a flame-cloaked porky pig, except that its weapon was not the nine-toothed nail harrow, but a huge wolf tooth rod wrapped in flames. Thunder Monkey's small size was like a child in front of the Inferno Velvet King. Thunder Monkey didn't open the eight gates of evil. This is only the eleventh floor to use the eight gates of evil. Thunder Monkey can't afford it, waiting for some later to say. Thunder Fist. This Inferno Velvet King had two skills. One was siphoning, which could be used to restore itself by touching and absorbing the opponent's stamina. The second one was the Field of Inferno. When it was turned on during battle, a circle around it was surrounded by the power of Inferno, which not only accelerated the recovery of one's own stamina, but also continuously inflicted sustained damage on the enemies around it. Combined with the Wolf Tooth Rod in its hand, it was really difficult to deal with. Fortunately, the Thunder Monkey wasn't a vegetarian either. With this trial and error, the Thunder Monkey had the upper hand. If the Thunder Monkey from a few days ago was facing this Flame Velvet King, I'm afraid that he would have to open the eight gates of transportation to be able to solve it. But now, although the realm is still awakening 10th stage, the strength has increased a lot. Royal Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil. Bloodline, High Lord. Realm, Awakening 10th Order. Skill, 8 Gates of Evasion LV25, Top Rank Skill Plus, 
Thunder Prison Dragon Body LV27, Super Rank Skill Plus? The levels of both skills were raised. Once Thunder Monkey had the advantage with one punch, he heard Gu Huai's command. Take it down at speed. Don't play a protracted battle with it. Playing a protracted battle with the Inferno Velvet King, even if its combined strength was originally stronger than the Inferno Velvet King, it would be defeated by the Inferno Velvet King in turn. Exploding at full strength and ending the battle at speed was the most suitable way to fight the Inferno Velvet King. Therefore, Thunder Monkey exploded. Without using the eight gates of evasion, Thunder Monkey exploded at full strength. With the powerful physical strength brought by the Thunder Prison Dragon Body, without using the eight gates of transported armor, this kind of full force outburst of Thunder Monkey could last for a long time. One minute. After using almost a minute, Thunder Monkey directly blew up the Inferno Velvet King in one. Phew. After doing this, Thunder Monkey exhaled. His exertion was not small. Rest for a while before continuing. By the time he reached this place on the 11th floor, Gu Huai had pretty much adapted to this blazing environment around him, so there was no need to speed pass. Appropriately lowering the speed a bit so that the Thunder Monkey could ensure physical strength to fight would also have a training and exercise effect on the Thunder Monkey. What's more, Gu Huai didn't know the current situation of the rest of the group, and simply being fast on his own was useless. After resting for half an hour or so, the Thunder Monkey was almost recovered before Gu Huai chose the next level. It was just as Gu Huai thought. The ferocious beasts on floors 12 to 20 were all primordial transcendent inferno velvet kings, only that the power of their bloodline was being raised on each floor. The elevation wasn't as great as the ones on floors 5 to 10, they were all just elevated by a small stage. One small stage for one layer, 12 to 20 was 9 small stages, directly elevated from high transcendent to top lord, the same as that inferno elemental on the 10th level. Gu Huai had also discovered that if the bloodline in this place was raised, even the strength of the practicing degree and skills would follow suit. At the 13th level, Gu Huai had opened the first of the eight gates of recluse, and the second at the 17th level. On this 20th floor, Gu Huai even opened the third gate, the gate of life, before winning the battle. It's so difficult. Gu Huai frowned. At this rate of progress, not to mention the 50th floor, even the 30th floor on his side would be difficult. Thunder monkey, it's still okay, right? This time, the life gate opened for a very short period of time, and Gu Huai discovered a problem. That is, in this five elements tower, the thunder monkey's physical quality would be improved after every battle, and its own recovery speed was far superior to that of the outside world. Yikes. The thunder monkey collapsed to the ground and barked a breathless line. It was still holding up. It's still holding up. So let's charge down in one breath. Four floors 1 to 10. Gu Huai used less than half an hour combined. Four floors 11 to 12. Gu Huai had a break in the middle and used an hour of his time. But for floors 13 to 20, Gu Huai had used even less time. Not even 15 minutes. It couldn't be helped. Gu Huai was taking into account the factor of Thunder Monkey using the eight gates of transportation, and wanted a quick battle. Otherwise, if he really let the Thunder Monkey take a break from fighting on one level, and then continue to open the eight gates of transported armor on the next level, the Thunder Monkey would have long since gotten down, and wouldn't have been able to hold out for so long. The Thunder Monkey didn't answer this time, because it really didn't want to waste extra strength. Add some. Gu Huai looked at the Thunder Monkey's situation and added a point to the Thunder Monkey's Thunder Prison Dragon Body in passing. On the 21st floor, the monster had changed once again, and it was an Inferno Monarch. Listening to this name, one could tell that the Inferno Monarch was an existence that possessed a monarch bloodline, and it was a good thing that this tower didn't go too far. The 21st floor wasn't a monarch bloodline, but a top-tier transcendent. But Gu Huai didn't relax just because this fire monarch was a top-tier monarch, but frowned. A layer of bloodline raises a small stage. This 30th layer is the primary monarch bloodline? Primary monarch bloodline ah. Between the primary monarch bloodline and the top lord bloodline. Although there was just a small level difference, the gap between them was quite large. At the same realm, a primary monarch bloodline imperial beast could easily defeat a top lord bloodline imperial beast and its strength was elevated by more than one level. It seems like the 30th floor is hopeless. Unless, Gu Huai's gaze glanced at the thunder monkey, who wasn't in very good condition, and didn't continue speaking. Open door status. Thunder monkey exploded with full force. 21st floor. Less than a minute. 22nd floor. 1 minute. On the 23rd floor, thunder monkey almost collapsed along with the yen monarch. His physical strength was already quite exhausted and coupled with the medium commander bloodline of the Yen Monarch, it was already putting Thunder Monkey under strong pressure. Luckily, it was still Thunder Monkey who was a bit stronger and barely managed to hold on. Thunder Monkey is almost done. Yikes. No, I can still do it. But you're in your current state. Gu Wai's tone carried a touch of worry. 
Yikes. Plus a bit. The Thunder Monkey's eyes were firm. It didn't want to admit defeat so quickly. Are you sure? Thunder Monkey nodded seriously. Good. After so many battles, Thunder Monkey's eight doors of evasion had been raised to level 27, and Thunder Prison Dragon Body was level 29. With such high intensity sparring again, the increase in skill strength was indeed great, but this was also because of the results of Thunder Monkey's recent workouts, which were now being digested. Then all of them should be strengthened to level 30. Since Thunder Monkey was so adamant, Gu Huai naturally couldn't drag his feet, and immediately turned on the enhancements. Both eight doors of transportation and Thunder Prison Dragon Body were strengthened to LB30 level in this manner, and Thunder Monkey instantly felt like he could do it again. Yikes, charge charge charge, let's go. Level 24, a hard-fought victory. In such a state, the 25th floor was definitely out of the question, but after entering the 25th floor, without waiting for Gu Huai to add more points, Thunder Monkey himself stormed out. Eight gates of transported armor injury gate. The wounded gate was the fourth gate of the eight gates of transported armor, and entering this gate was a truly dangerous area. This state was also a true entry into the eight gates of transported armor state. A crimson color emerged all over the Thunder Monkey's body, and this crimson color and thunder fused together, causing the Thunder Monkey's appearance to change in a certain way, with the feeling of a Thunder Monkey from hell. Thunder Monkey you. Gu Huai was shocked. He wanted to stop the Thunder Monkey, but unfortunately, it was too late now. 25th floor. One punch. 26th floor. Two punches. 27th floor. Three punches. It had to be said that entering the true sense of the eight gates of evil was too great an increase in strength. If it was in the outside world, a primary commander would be able to directly punch his way through. However, after passing through the 27th floor, Thunder Monkey was a bit unable to carry on. The side effects brought about by the injury gate were too powerful. And even Thunder Monkey, who possessed the Thunder Prison Dragon body, began to be unable to bear it. The veins of the Thunder Monkey's body had cracked a bit, and a dark red blood appeared at the corner of his mouth. But this blood quickly baked dry under the scorching temperature, leaving only a bit of dark red traces behind. Gu Huai knew that the Thunder Monkey had reached its limit. Add some. It had to be added. If it wasn't, the Thunder Monkey probably wouldn't be able to hold out any longer. With the two skills breaking through to LV31 level almost simultaneously, the Thunder Monkey only felt an extremely powerful force surging within its body. This power was crazily impacting the bottleneck of its awakening 10th rank, and in just less than 3 seconds, this bottleneck fragmented. Along with that, the Thunder Monkey's aura also crazily increased at this moment. Primary Transcendent. Thunder Monkey had advanced. Nope. Gu Huai's gaze landed on the Thunder Monkey's panel, and the Thunder Monkey wasn't simply promoted this time. Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil plus Thunder. Bloodline, Primary Monarch. Realm, Elementary Transcendent. Skills, 8 Doors of Transportation LV31, Top Level Skill Plus. Thunder Prison Dragon Body LV31, Super Rank Skill Plus. Thunder Monkey's changes this time around were somewhat large. First was the appearance. The original Thunder Monkey wasn't too different from a normal little monkey. Skinny and small. Not imposing at all. No momentum. But now the Thunder Monkey became mature and much sturdier. The body of that if there is no thunder and lightning breath, but also to the thunder monkey out of thin air added a dangerous atmosphere. The thunder monkey had also grown a lot taller, and was a head shorter than Gu Huai, about 1 meter 6 in height. With such a size and stature, it wouldn't be good to continue to call it a little monkey in the future. Surprisingly, it's turned into a 3 attribute. Imperial beasts with 3 attributes were not common, and could even be said to be rare. And this bloodline, it directly jumped a realm. Breaking through the blockade of the monarch and becoming a primary monarch bloodline. TSK TSK TSK. Thunder Monkey is considered a bird of prey. This time, Thunder Monkey's strength had truly skyrocketed. Originally, the power of the injury gate that could not be suppressed at all, and could only be allowed to crazily destroy the power of the injury gate in his body, the Thunder Monkey could already barely suppress it. Good job. Keep charging. Gu Huai gave Thunder Monkey a thumbs up, while Thunder Monkey grinned at Gu Huai. It was so good to be one step closer to Lei Bao. This caused Lei Bao on the side to feel a sense of crisis. His eyes filled with vigilance. Damn. This guy was so strong now. Even if he wanted to defeat Thunder Monkey, it wouldn't be that easy. This 8 gate transportation armor. It's too disgusting. No. I have to go back and practice more. So Gu Huai can give himself some extra points. Clam. Dash dash dash. Thunder Monkey directly charged towards the next floor. And when Gu Huai saw this, he also let Lei Bao lead himself to follow. However, just as Gu Huai rushed into the 28th floor, he saw that the stairs leading to the 29th floor had already appeared, 
and Thunder Monkey's figure was already on the stairs, and Gu Hui only had time to sweep his eyes before Thunder Monkey disappeared into the 28th floor. So fast, huh? Gu Hui heatedly smiled. The increase in strength this time was really too big. It was something worth making happy. Go! On the 29th floor, Gu Hui didn't even see the shadow of the Thunder Monkey this time. It seemed that it had already rushed to the 30th floor. This little monkey is really in a hurry. Gu Hui laughed and cursed, but with Thunder Monkey's current state, it really needed to hurry up. The Thunder Monkey had now advanced to Primordial Transcendent, and although it could barely suppress the power of the Injury Gate, the power of the Injury Gate was still too furious, and the Thunder Monkey still couldn't utilize it for too long, as that would hurt the Thunder Monkey's body. But this 30th floor shouldn't be that fast. The 30th floor. But a primary monarch bloodline Yen Monarch. When Gu Huai reached the 30th floor, he realized that he had still underestimated the strength of the Thunder Monkey. The Thunder Monkey, who had only just arrived at the 30th floor not long ago, was already fully suppressing the Inferno Monarch, and it was estimated that a few more punches would have killed the Inferno Monarch. Gu Huai was a bit surprised. On the side, Thunder Treasure was even more wary. If it was allowed to fight this Inferno Monarch, how would it come about? Two cracking claws at most? It was fine then. Lei Bao sighed in relief. But it soon reacted. Wait. It's not like its opponent was this trashy Inferno Monarch King, but this stupid monkey. Lei Bao looked at the Thunder Monkey that was fighting while showing its teeth and laughing at the same time, and shook its head slightly. It was really a silly monkey. Bang. The Thunder Monkey directly made a big spin and kicked out its right foot violently. This kick had gathered most of its power. This kick was so handsome that it directly exploded the Inferno Monarch with a single kick, completely losing its breath of life. As soon as the Inferno Monarch died, the Thunder Monkey directly rushed towards the direction of the stairs, but just halfway through the rush the Thunder Monkey froze. Where are the stairs? Right at this moment, a voice rang out. Congratulations to pass the Tower of Inferno. Next you can choose the remaining 7 tower layers to break through. Cumulatively you can choose 20 layers. You can make your own choices. Note, the last 20 floors correspond to floors 31 to 50, and the strength of the monsters will increase. As the words fell, Gu Hui saw 7 projections. These 7 projections clearly printed the situation of the remaining 7 towers. Currently, the 8 towers had a cumulative total of 112 floors, target 160 floors, total 240 floors. Tower of Gold, Gua Zhengi, 8 layers, Tower of Wood, Li Bo Cheng, 13 layers, Tower of Water, Bai Ruachu, 8 floors, Tower of Fire, Ho Min, 12 layers, Tower of Earth, Wang Chong, 11th floor, Tower of Thunder, Yi Fan, 17th floor, Tower of Ice, Li Bo Feng, 13th floor, Tower of Inferno, Gu Huai, 30th floor, passed, took 1 hour, 52 minutes and 17 seconds. This was the current situation and information. So slow? Gu Huai frowned, only 112 floors by now. This was a bit slow in terms of efficiency, but soon Gu Huai also reacted that it wasn't their efficiency that was slow, but that he was too fast. Let's hope that a few of them give it a go, then otherwise my limit would be 50 floors. Gu Huai didn't immediately choose to brush it, but was prepared to wait and see first, just so he could give Thunder Monkey some more time to rest. The Thunder Monkey had now lifted the 8 gates of evasion and was lying on the ground like a dead monkey. Gu Huai fed the Thunder Monkey some sacred pill for healing, and then put the Thunder Monkey into the royal beast space so that the Thunder Monkey could recover properly. As for Gu Huai's words, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. After successfully breaking into the tower, the scorching temperature had finally returned to normal, and if it wasn't for his physical fitness, he might have been roasted out of his mind. But despite that, Gu Huai also took out a large bottle of water and gulped it down. Lei Bao, keep me safe. I'll squint for a while. After Gu Huai said this and left food for Lei Bao, he pulled out a floor mat and quilt from the Imperial Beast space and went straight to sleep. Under the exertion of this environment, Gu Huai was physically and mentally exhausted even though he hadn't been involved in the battle. The time spent sleeping passed extremely quickly, and when Gu Huai woke up, it was already 7 hours later. This sleep was so comfortable. Look at everyone's progress. Gu Huai stretched his back. To be honest, it had been a really long time since he had slept so comfortably. Gu Huai opened the progress of everyone's clearance and frowned. These people were really slow. Currently, the 8 towers had accumulated 166 floors, target 160 floors, total 240 floors. Tower of Gold, Gua Zhengi, 12 floors, eliminated. Tower of Wood, Li Bo Cheng, 22 floors, Tower of Water, Bai Ruachu, 12 floors, eliminated. Tower of Fire, Ho Min, 21 floors, Tower of Earth, Wang Chong, 21 floors, Tower of Thunder, 
Yi Fan, 25th floor, Tower of Ice, Li Bofeng, 23rd floor, Tower of Yen, Gu Huai, 30 floors, passed, took 1 hour, 52 minutes and 17 seconds. It had now been more than 9 hours since Gu Huai and the others had entered the tower, but none of these people had still cleared the level. It was reasonable to say that apart from Guo Zhang and Bai Ruachu, the two who were almost there, both of whom were awakened 10th order imperial beasts, the rest of them were all primary transcendents, and none of their bloodlines were low. Wang Chang's Aji was a primary lord bloodline, Ho Min's Feng Tani was a medium lord bloodline, and the two of them, Li Bo Qing and Li Bo Feng, both had their three-headed dogs that had evolved to a high lord bloodline. Yi Fan's black ruler and black shield were both high lord bloodline as well. Each of them had strong practical combat abilities, stronger than ordinary imperial beast masters of the same rank. Logically, their speed should be very fast, but Ho Min, Wang Chong, and the others had only just passed the 21st floor. Although the monsters on the 21st floor were medium transcendent, their bloodline power was only top tier transcendent. Although the imperial beasts in here are quite a bit stronger than those of ordinary imperial beast masters, this speed of theirs, Gu Huai frowned, looking at the pass like this, it was estimated that Yi Fan was the only one who could possibly pass the level and help himself. 240 floors. Trouble. Gu Huai looked at the progress of a few people and pondered in his mind what to do. Guo Jingyi and Bai Ruachu's two sides together were 36 floors, and he himself could only digest 20 floors, which was really hard to top. One person will brush five floors first. There was no way around it. Gu Huai could only do so. Gu Huai looked at Thunder Monkey, who was still recovering and then prepared to let Lei Bao take the stage. It had also been a while since Lei Bao had made an appearance. Lei Bao was Gu Huai's first imperial beast and had the deepest bond with him, and when it saw Gu Huai's eyes, it knew what Gu Huai was thinking. Baby, Lei Bao was excited. It was finally its turn to fight. It had been a long time since it had engaged in much intense combat, and it really missed that feeling. Actually, Gu Huai had thought wrong. The reason why Wang Chong and the others were progressing so slowly was because after every battle they had fought, they had let the imperial beasts recover almost as much as they could before letting them move on to the next level. They all saw the rules and understood them. Under such circumstances, they naturally wanted to brush as many layers as possible to make the rewards they received even better. So none of them dared to be the slightest bit careless. Only Bai Ruachu and Guo Jingzheng were truly helpless. And after both of them failed, they were both directly summoned to the entrance place and were waiting for Gu Huai to go out with a look of hopelessness on their faces. At the same time, they could see the crowd beating the tower from outside. Boss is really mighty. Wu Justice saw that it only took Gu Huai less than two hours to clear the Tower of Inferno that belonged to him, a speed that really made Gu Justice feel the gap between himself and Gu Huai. At the same time, it also alerted Gu Justice. They, the Gu family, were vassals belonging to the Gu family, people who specialized in protecting the Gu family. But if the gap between him and Gu Huai was too large, then wasn't this bullshit? At this moment Gu Justice could finally feel the heavy burden on his father and even his grandfather, following such a master was a lot of pressure. Yeah, Bai Ruachu answered from the side. In these few hours, her relationship with Guo Justice had gotten a lot better, and she also knew a lot of things about Gu Huai from Guo Justice. At the same time, Bai Ruachu Yi was extremely envious of Guo Justice. If she also grew up with Gu Huai, how good would that be? But how come the boss hasn't moved for so long? Probably observing the situation. Just as the words fell, they saw a change in the message. Crap. The boss has changed. Where? 31st floor. Holy shit. Is this so fast? The 31st floor just stayed for less than a minute. And in an instant, the number 31 changed to 32. This caused both of their pupils to shrink. This girl is definitely a pervert. Outrageous. Tower of Thunder. Yi Fan had already summoned both imperial beasts. After taking some effort to brush through the 26th floor as well, Yi Fan wiped the beads of sweat from his forehead. These monsters are really tough. Rest. At this stage, Yi Fan also started to be careful. Although these monsters couldn't beat him, he wanted to defeat them at a certain cost and consumption. I don't know how many floors Gu Huai he has beaten. With his strength, he might have cleared the level by now, right? Yi Fan looked at the time. They entered the secret realm at close to 10 p.m. and started breaking into the tower at around 10.20 p.m. And now the time had reached 8.30 p.m. From the 15th floor onwards, although he had rested in every battle, after experiencing so many long battles in 10 hours, even his energy was a bit overwhelmed. Fortunately, this secret realm doesn't have a specified time, so I'll take a good rest later, have a good sleep, and nourish my spirit before continuing. But before that, first brush up the 27th floor. As Yi Fan thought of this, he began to recover his own strength. He understood what Gu Huai meant. It was necessary to pass the level. 
and also to brush more levels afterward, so that he could make up for the missing layers of the rest of the people. But what Ji Fan didn't know in the slightest was that while he thought that Gu Huai might have already cleared the level, Gu Huai had already slept for more than 7 hours, and had also brushed all 40 layers at a very fast speed along the way. Layers 31 to 40 were, naturally, much more difficult. The monsters on floors 31 to 40 were all high transcendence, and every single one of them was strong. The initial bloodline was the primary commander, and after 9 bloodline enhancements, the last one even reached the medium monarch bloodline. It was also that Lei Bao was strong, that otherwise with the strength of the thunder monkey, he could only dry up to the 40th floor in a single breath by opening the wounded gate again. Why are these people so slow? After beating the 40th floor, Gu Huai looked at the progress of the crowd that hadn't changed much, and became a bit annoyed. This speed is no one's fault. If only there was no limit on the total number of floors an individual could break through, then I could still see where Lei Bao's limit is. Gu Huai sighed. Although he knew that even if he liberalized the total number of floors of the personal limit, he probably wouldn't be able to pass many, but it would be good to at least let Lei Bao have his fun. The monsters on the 41-50th floor should be the primary commanders, and the 50th floor is probably the high monarch bloodline, so I guess I can let Lei Bao have a good time. Lei Bao's current strength was really strong. Although this realm was still a primary transcendent and the bloodline was only a medium monarch, Lei Bao's strength simply couldn't be viewed with common sense. Gu Huai glanced at Lei Bao's panel. Royal Beast, Pale Blue Thunder Dragon. Name, Lei Bao. Attribute, Dragon plus Space. Bloodline, Medium Monarch. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skills, Cracking Claw LV30, Super Rank. Space plus Dragon Stance. Thunder Domain Space LV21, Super Rank. Thunder plus Space. Arcana, Thunder Cracking Claw LV10, Quasi-God Arcana. The rank of the skill wasn't high, but the gold content of the skill was quite high. Two Super Rank Dual Attributes both with spatial system attributes, plus the quasi-divine Upanishad that was formed from the combination of these two skills was just so exaggerated and outrageous. Those in the same realm, even imperial beasts of the same monarch bloodline, couldn't carry a claw in front of Lei Bao. This was Lei Bao's strength. This was still the reason why Gu Huai hadn't forced the thunder cracking claw. A quasi-divine arcane 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 that or else Lei Bao's strength would have been even stronger. For the thunder cracking claw Aeon, Gu Huai decided that it would be better to strengthen the two super rank skills, Cracking Claw and Thunder Domain Space, so that Lei Bao could continuously comprehend and perfect the Aeon on his own. It was true that directly adding points could shorten this process, but what Gu Huai cared more about was the foundation. Feel free to try the 41st level of difficulty. Just train for a while and continue tomorrow. Gu Huai couldn't figure out if these people could clear the level or not now, and was prepared to leave 9 chances to improvise. Next layer. Choose Tower of Water. As Gu Huai's words fell, a handful of stairs leading to the next floor appeared right in front of Gu Huai's eyes. Without saying a word, Gu Huai led Lei Bao towards the stairs. 41st floor. The space of the Tower of Water was completely different from the Tower of Inferno. In the Tower of Inferno, the temperature was extremely high, and a few flames rose up around it from time to time. The Tower of Water, on the other hand, was like coming to the underwater world, but it was good that there was a waterproof bubble specifically for Imperial Beast Masters which allowed them to stay inside safely. The ferocious beasts inside the Tower of the Five Elements would not attack the Imperial Beast Master, just like which sect was specializing in a space for their disciples to cultivate. Gu Huai's gaze went to the monster on the 41st floor, a huge octopus that was about 5 stories tall. At this size, Lei Bao was as tiny as a tadpole in front of it. Water Mang Giant Octopus. Gu Huai recognized this octopus the moment he saw it, and also checked the information of this octopus in here in passing. Fierce Beast, Water Mang Giant Octopus. Attribute, Water. Bloodline, High Commander. Realm, Elementary Commander. Skills, Whirlpool. Water Cannon Shot. Entanglement, Introduction, All Hand Filled Templates. Bloodline Realm filled in at your own discretion. Don't care about the Bloodline piece. High Commander Bloodline? Gu Huai froze when he saw this Bloodline power. According to the nature of this tower, the Bloodline power would be strengthened once for every layer after that. And after this High Commander was strengthened nine times. Wasn't this a top-tier monarch bloodline? Playing a bit big this time. Gu Huai's eyes narrowed. This watermang giant chapter in front of him Gu Huai wasn't afraid of it. Even though it was a primary commander, its strength might not be as strong as the monsters on the 40th floor. But if it was a primary commander with a top-tier monarch bloodline, it would be completely different. The watermang giant chapter is also one of the tougher monsters. With ridiculously strong defense and boundless strength, completely jutting out the word mang in its name. The Watermang Giant chapter had infinite strength, but it was also for this reason that made most of the Watermang Giant chapters quite reckless. 
Lei Bao had only just appeared in front of this Water Mang Giant chapter, when the Water Mang Giant chapter couldn't help itself, instantly twitching its huge legs and swinging towards Lei Bao. As the Water Mang Giant chapter moved, the water current instantly surged. Although Lei Bao didn't have the water attribute, he had already evolved into an existence similar to the Eastern Divine Dragon, so naturally there was no problem with fighting in the water. The Eastern Divine Dragon, however, was an existence that was able to take on land, sea, and air, and could handle battle with ease in any environment. It was only that Lei Bao had fought underwater too few times, and it was still a little less applicable. Looking at the Water Mang Giant chapter that was raging towards his attack, the expression on Lei Bao's face didn't change at all. It wasn't until the giant whip reached Lei Bao's front that Lei Bao released his skill. Thunder Domain Space. The first thing that appeared was a lightning cube that looked like a small Rubik's Cube, and after the lightning cube appeared, it expanded at an extremely fast speed, instantly wrapping Lei Bao, as well as the Water Mang Giant chapter in it. As if millions of birds were calling, in the Thunder Domain Space, lightning bombarded towards the Water Mang Giant chapter as if it didn't need any money. ZZZ. The mighty Water Mang Giant chapter only lasted less than 3 seconds under the effect of these countless thunderbolts before it lost its life and fell to the ground. Killed in seconds. Only after doing this did Lei Bao wave his claws and put the Thunder Domain space away. His face as normal. Quite a tough one. This was still only LV21 level Thunder Domain space. This would be even more exaggerated if the level was raised to the control stage. Then the Thunder Domain space skill would be even more exaggerated. The only weakness of this skill was that it consumed too much. Even with Lei Bao's strength, he wouldn't be able to support it for too long. After the battle, come over and replenish some stamina. We'll start training later. Bao. Lei Bao shook his paw unconcernedly to indicate that the battle just now had consumed very little. There was no need to replenish, and he could start training directly. All right then. The Thunder Monkey was still lying in the Imperial Beast space recovering. This training would have to be left to Lei Bao himself. While the others were still working hard to recover their stamina and figure out how to break into the tower even higher. Gu Huai was already idly bored and started letting Lei Bao start his daily workout. However, the other five people who were still in the tower, they basically stopped fighting after 10 p.m. or so and found a place to recuperate. Continuous battles would lower their status, affecting their fighting ability, and would also cause them to not be able to utilize their proper strength in the tower, and not be able to break through to the higher floors. In order to pass the level, they could only think of all sorts of ways. Early the next morning, around 6 o'clock, Gu Huai once again looked at everyone's situation and cursed as he closed the panel. This group of people, Gu Huai sighed, but understood that they had made the right choice. Resting well was the only way to get through more layers. Lei Bao, it looks like we'll be working out for another day. Looking at their progress, Gu Huai knew that Ji Fan was probably the only one who could possibly pass today. Sure enough, it was pretty much what Gu Huai thought. It was past 5 in the afternoon. When Gu Huai opened the progress of the crowd once again, he saw the message that Yi Fan had also passed the 30th floor. Currently, the 8 towers had accumulated 194 floors, the goal had been reached, with a total of 240 floors. Tower of Gold, Gua Zhengyi, 12th floor, Eliminated, Tower of Wood, Li Bo Cheng, 26 layers, Tower of Water, Bai Ruachu, 12 layers, Eliminated, Tower of Fire, Ho Min, 25 floors, Tower of Earth, Wang Chong, 25th floor, Tower of Thunder, Yi Fan, 30th floor, elapsed, time, 30 hours, 22 minutes, 52 seconds, Tower of Ice, Li Bo Feng, 23rd floor, Tower of Inferno, Gu Huai, 41st floor, passed, took 1 hour, 52 minutes, 17 seconds, this kid finally passed, Gu Huai sighed in relief, it seemed that the 240th floor was the only hopeful one, looking at the total time Yi Fan took to pass, it was probably close to 5 o'clock when he passed. Still 46 layers to go. Gu Huai looked at the remaining layers and began to ponder. With their strength, and with every fight guaranteed to be at their best, this clearance shouldn't be too much of a problem. The monsters in here were strong, but these guys weren't vegetarians either. With all their firepower, it was possible that just the high transcendent imperial beasts of the monarch level bloodline on the last level would get stuck with them, but the rest should be no problem. Gu Huai sort of realized that these people were indeed steady and they were letting their status recover pretty much before continuing to fight in each game, so it was no wonder they had consumed such a long time. But according to this situation, it's estimated that we'll be in here for another two or three days. Gu Huai sighed as he looked at Lei Bao, who was exercising his control over space. To the side, Lei Bao didn't feel too much. To it, it was practicing wherever it was. It was just that not having that stupid monkey barking at the side made it a little less accustomed to it. Thinking of this, 
Lei Bao called out to Gu Huai, Baby? Thunder monkey? It's recovered pretty well. Tomorrow I guess it can come out to play with you. When Lei Bao sniffed, a bright smile appeared on that little face. The other side. It was 4.51 in the afternoon. After Yi Fan maneuvered the black ruler in his hand and seized the opportunity to blast his opponent to death, his entire body collapsed on the ground powerlessly. Marred. Finally passed the level for me. Yi Fan slumped on the ground and rested for a while before noticing that he could check everyone's progress. Guo Justice can't make it on the 12th floor? The corner of Yi Fan's mouth lifted slightly. It seems that these people from the big families are just like that. His gaze continued to look down. And when he saw that Wang Chong, Li Bo Feng, and these people had only reached progresses like 25 or 26 floors, the corners of his mouth became even more crooked. These people are nothing more than that. I, Yi Fan, am the one with the destiny of heaven. Passed the level in 30 hours. Not worthy of me, Yi Fan. After uttering these words, the corners of Yi Fan's mouth were completely suppressed. He he he. Only Gu Huai can compete with me. He should be about to pass the level as well. Yi Fan confidently looked back and soon he saw Gu Huai's column. Sure enough, he has passed the level. Worthy of being the man who can beat it head on and make me square up. Yi Fan was not surprised to see the three words passed. It was normal for Gu Huai's strength to be able to pass. It seems that I still lost to him. Only I'm an orphan. He has such a prominent family. It's nothing to lose some in the early stages. Soon I can catch up. Wait. Yi Fan reacted furiously at this time. Tower of Inferno. Gu Huai. 41st floor. Passed. Took 1 hour. 52 minutes and 17 seconds. Impossible. Yi Fan rubbed his eyes and fixed his eyes again. But this time, the information he saw was no different from before. Rating the young? Yi Fan's voice rose so violently that his voice broke. 1 hour and 52 minutes? And this guy has already hit the 41st floor? Yi Fan's head instantly went dead. His eyes were godless. This guy was pressurized not to take a break and pushed his way across the level. Right? Moreover, according to the urine of this tower, this 31 to 40 is high transcendent. There must be the existence of a monarch bloodline inside. And this can also beat this so quickly? After holding his breath for half a day, Yi Fan couldn't help but spit out a few words. Marred. This guy isn't human. Right? The third day after entering the tower, the Thunder Monkey had finally recovered more or less. And after recovering, the Thunder Monkey's body strength had once again risen a notch. The recovered Thunder Monkey, roaring and yelling with excitement, yelled over there that he wanted to continue fighting. Gu Huai also quickly arranged an opponent for the Thunder Monkey. In fact, there weren't many opponents that Gu Huai could arrange for. One was a water mangled giant chapter, and the other was an earth attributed one. And Gu Huai wasn't sure what it was for the time being. The water attributed one was considered relatively friendly to the Thunder Monkey. But the earth attribute would be slightly more restraining to the thunder monkey. Gu Huai looked at the current situation of the crowd. And compared to yesterday's progress, it had improved again. Not to mention the two, Guo Zhang and Bai Ruachu, who were eliminated after passing 12 floors, leaving behind a cumulative 36 floor spread. Of course, Gu Huai didn't mean to blame the two. With their strength, being able to pass 12 floors was already quite good. Gu Huai's gaze was mainly on the other few. With the difference between these 36 floors, Gu Huai could only eat 20 floors, and the remaining 16 floors still needed their help to make it. If they couldn't even get through their own, then let's not talk about doing them a favor. Wang Chong and Ho Min both passed the 28th floor and are currently on the 29th floor. Li Bo Cheng and Li Bo Feng are on the 29th floor, resting for the night, and are probably going to challenge the 30th floor in a little while. Yi Fan, this kid is not bad, he has beaten 3 more levels. Very good. Gu Huai looked at the progress of the crowd. They had accumulated 212 floors now, and there was only a gap of 28 floors from accomplishing all the goals. Thunder Monkey, we have to work hard too. Gu Huai turned his gaze to Thunder Monkey and directly opened 42 layers for him. A top tier commander bloodline, a sky blue giant beast of the realm of primary commander. The main reason Gu Huai chose to be an earth attribute level was that the Thunder Monkey didn't seem to have the ability to fight in water. A sky blue beast with a primary commander and a bloodline that wasn't too low could still bring great pressure to the thunder monkey when it didn't open the fourth gate. At the same time, Gu Huai now wanted to test the state of the thunder monkey. Entering the 42nd floor, thunder monkey instantly opened the eight gates. After all, there was a whole big realm difference. Even if thunder monkey's physical strength was strong, it was impossible for him to fight the water mang giant chapter with his physical strength. With the current strength of the thunder monkey, the normality of it was the level of a high transcendent. And only by opening the eight gates of transported armor would it be able to have the strength to fight across realms. Open the door. The thunder monkey that had upgraded its thunder prison dragon body to level 31, which was the control stage, now had good control over the power within its body. 
The effect that this brought about was that opening the door was almost like the norm for Thunder Monkey, and the physique effect brought about by the Thunder Prison Dragon body was enough to offset the consumption of opening the door. In other words, the Thunder Monkey could open the door without any damage. Yeah yeah. Thunder Monkey excitedly headed towards the behemoth like Sky Blue Beast, waving that tiny fist. The Sky Blue Behemoth, whose size could be known from its name, was quite huge, with a height of more than 7 meters, and a body that was made up of stone all over. It was telling the crowd that it was a hard beast. The Sky Blue Beast was very human, and it carried a faint color of mockery on its huge head. It seemed to be saying, even such trash dares to fight me? The Sky Blue Beast casually raised its own fist, thick rock power condensed on top of it, and it blasted out right at the Thunder Monkey's punch. Bang! A huge collision sound rang out. The Thunder Monkey only lasted less than 3 seconds, and like a cannonball, it was directly blasted out, ruthlessly smashing into the mountain. The environment of the Tower of Earth was that it was in the middle of a large mountain. The Sky Blue Beast immediately let out an excited roar. Just like this? The Thunder Monkey was also enraged. How dare this big guy underestimate himself? Hugh Gate, open. The second gate, opened in seconds. The Thunder Monkey's physical strength increased once again, and his pupils narrowed slightly, a dangerous aura in his eyes. Gu Huai was also feeling the changes in the Thunder Monkey's body at all times, and a look of surprise couldn't help but appear in his eyes. The second gate's consumption of the Thunder Monkey is all this low? In Gu Huai's perception, the consumption of the Thunder Monkey's body power had only accelerated a bit. At this rate of progress, it was estimated that it would be able to support the Thunder Monkey in battle for the better part of an hour. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. The Thunder Monkey opened its teeth and claws. It wanted to get its face back. How could it Thunder Monkey lose to such a big guy? Bang. Another pair of punches were thrown. Only this time, the result was completely different from what the Sky Blue Beast had imagined. Its huge face carried a look of surprise. With its intelligence it really couldn't figure out how such a small fellow could unleash such a powerful force. The Sky Blue Beast's huge body retreated back several steps before it slowly came to a stop. Ah hit. This punch was also very painful for the Thunder Monkey. Its fist spilled a trace of blood, but the Thunder Monkey didn't press the slightest feeling of pain. Instead, it acted and wailed. Thunder Monkey landed on the ground, violently jumped up from the ground again. A flying kick. Sky Blue Beast no longer dare to underestimate the Thunder Monkey this time. Hasten to seriously fight with the Thunder Monkey. Both sides were evenly matched in strength. However, Gu Huai could feel that if this continued, the first one who couldn't stand it would definitely be the Thunder Monkey. It seems that the Thunder Monkey that has only opened the second gate, the limit of its strength is that of a primary commander of the Commander Bloodline. Gu Huai had a certain understanding of the Thunder Monkey's strength in his heart. Of course, this was compared to the world inside the tower, and it was completely different when it came to the outside. In the world inside the tower, the strength of these ferocious beasts was completely divided according to Bloodline, and even the skill strength would follow the Bloodline. When it came to the outside, it wasn't simply looked at in this way, and outside, there was also a need to look at what the other party's talent was. The world of imperial beasts, far more complicated than imagined, wasn't simply looking at the bloodline, looking at the realm, but also looking at many, many things. Thunder Monkey, try the third gate. For the fourth gate, Gu Huai didn't want to let Thunder Monkey lie down for a day or two again, so three gates would suffice. Thunder Monkey wiped the ash from his face, and then directly opened the third door. Once the life gate was opened, no one loved it. The Thunder Monkey that opened the Door of Life instantly possessed the power to overwhelm the Sky Blue Beast. Only the advantage wasn't particularly obvious. And after a 5 minute stalemate, the Thunder Monkey was able to defeat this big guy and win. After defeating the Sky Blue Beast, the Thunder Monkey immediately faded out of its 8 gate transportation armor state and exhaled slightly. How's the status? Gu Huai trotted over and looked at Thunder Monkey with a concerned tone. Yeah yeah, good condition? There's still room for one more game? Gu Huai looked at Thunder Monkey oddly. This guy was really good at showing off. However, as Gu Huai felt Thunder Monkey's state, it was indeed not bad. The consumption was quite high, but it was within the acceptable range. As for what Thunder Monkey said about being able to fight again, this was also true. Only if there was another match, Thunder Monkey would have to lie down even if he won, rest for a while, and continue when your condition recovers. Don't open the fourth gate easily. I'll give you some extra points later. Although Thunder Monkey's physical quality had been improved and he could control the power of the fourth gate, the cost of controlling it would require him to lie down for at least a day. In a sparring match like this, Gu Huai still didn't want Thunder Monkey to pay that much. Yeah yeah. Thunder Monkey nodded, clearly recognizing Gu Huai's statement. Time passed day by day. The delay in this secret realm was a bit longer than Gu Huai had expected. It was only on the fifth day that this tower was officially given a thorough opening. Wang Chong, 
Ho Min, and Li Buqing all collapsed at the 30th floor, almost passing. Unfortunately, after passing the 30th floor, Li Buqing passed a few more floors and finally settled on the 36th floor. Yi Fan's final layer was at 43 layers. In fact, with Yi Fan's strength, he could still get one or two more layers with more effort behind him. Unfortunately, the total number of layers was just 240, and with Gu Huai having gotten through all 50 layers, there were only so many layers left. Yi Fan, you finally came out. Yi Fan was the last one to come out. After seeing that there was no point in staying behind, Gu Huai simply beat the 50th floor and came out. The monsters on the 50th floor were indeed very strong. A primary commander of the High Monarch bloodline, even Lei Bao had consumed several minutes before defeating this big guy. If it was for Thunder Monkey to come, even if he opened the fourth gate, it would be impossible for him to be the opponent's opponent. This tower was a bit excessive. This ferocious beast mastered two mastery stage skills, and one of them was still super stage. With such intensity, even if Thunder Monkey tried his best to open the fifth gate, he wouldn't have the slightest chance of winning. Li Bufeng came out a few hours earlier than Yi Fan. He was defeated by the monster on the 37th floor and admitted defeat to himself and came out. Well, I'm out. Yi Fan wasn't in a very good condition. Grimy and a stark contrast to the crowd. The rest of the people had come out outside for some time. Even Li Bufeng had come out for a few hours to have organized himself. Yi Fan's gaze mainly fell on Gu Huai with complicated eyes. He, Yi Fan, was pretentious. He was able to stand together with these imperial in generation with his orphan body, and even possessed more strength than them. Originally, he thought that Gu Huai's victory over him was entirely because of his family history, and if he put that aside, he, Yi Fan, could definitely trample Gu Huai under his feet. But looking at the huge gap that existed between himself and Yi Fan made him realize that even if he had the same background as Gu Huai, he wouldn't necessarily be able to do better than Gu Huai. Worthy of being the man he, Yi Fan, recognized as the best friend of his life, Yi Fan did not admit defeat. There was a hint of fire hidden deep in his eyes, he would not admit defeat easily. Even if Gu Huai was his best friend, come out let's go out together to receive the reward. With Yi Fan's appearance, a five-pointed star formation on appeared right in front of them, with a relevant tip on it. It meant that by going out from this formation, one could return to the initial place. Without hesitation, all of them followed behind Gu Huai and stepped onto this formation. Once everyone had stepped onto the formation, a dazzling light was released from the formation, wrapping Gu Huai and the others all in it. This dazzling light caused Gu Huai and the others to unconsciously close their eyes, followed by a sinking of their brains, and when they opened their eyes again, they returned to their original point, the same place where they had just entered the secret territory. It was only because a blazing sun had appeared in the sky, dispersing the original gray and dead feeling. If it weren't for the fact that some of the specific scenery around them was the same, Gu Huai and the others wouldn't have been able to believe that this was the original place. Just as Gu Huai and the others were immersed under the change in their surroundings, a delighted voice rang out. Thank you all so much. You're the ones who made me see the sun again in this dim world. Woo woo. The crowd's gazes looked over with the place where the voice came from, and they saw a tall skeleton in gorgeous clothes running over with a cheerful face. It should be cheerful. After all, skeletons don't have expressions. Skeleton? The crowd was a bit surprised. Skeletons, which were low-ranked creatures belonging to the undead lineage, were weak, had poor potential, and were difficult to evolve. Generally very few people would contract a creature like a skeleton. Of course this is not to say that skeletons can't work. There are no imperial beasts in this world that can't really work, as long as you are willing to put in the effort. Among the evolutionary roots discovered so far, there is a root that can evolve a skeleton into an overlord bloodline. Unfortunately, the difficulty of this root was called one of the top 10 most difficult evolutionary roots. Once after this root came out, that is, after that fellow known as the undead emperor created this root, there were countless people heading towards this path. Unfortunately, without exception, they all failed. This also made many people begin to doubt the authenticity of this root, or rather, the lack of replicability. Introducing myself, I am Skeleton Gentleman. Gentleman Lee, you can call me Mr. Lee. The skeleton gentleman politely removed the hat on his head and bowed to the crowd, and his tone was filled with seriousness and gravity. When the crowd saw this scene, they couldn't help but stare. Even Gu Huai, a talking skeleton that was also so gentlemanly was unheard of for them. Gu Huai reacted with just a slight stare and followed the skeleton's gentlemanly movements and tone. Hello Mr. Li, my name is Gu Huai. The rest of the few people also hurriedly introduced themselves, and the skeleton gentleman politely waited for everyone to finish speaking before continuing. I know you all, this time is too thankful, so in order to repay you, I elaborately give you a gift, please don't refuse a gentleman's gift, 
That or I will be angry. After the skeleton gentleman said this, he waved his hand, and instantly the crowd felt a power that was simply irresistible descend upon them. Gu Huai was horrified in his eyes. This skeleton gentleman was so strong. I'm afraid that he was an overlord level existence. Another skeleton of a hegemony level existence. If this was known by those old academics outside, I'm afraid it would cause an earthquake in the academic world. The power disappeared. The light wrapped around Gu Huai disappeared. And Gu Huai once again arrived in an unfamiliar environment. Mr. Gu, you've cleared level 50 this time, and my master has a gift he wants to give you. The skeleton gentleman somehow arrived behind Gu Huai. Gu Huai turned around in a hurry. He wanted to check the skeleton gentleman's information, but the skill that made Gu Huai invincible was like a stone sinking into the sea. Not to mention seeing the skeleton gentleman's information, there weren't even any hints. Gu Huai forced himself to endure the shock in his heart and looked at what was in the skeleton gentleman's hand. In the skeleton gentleman's hand was a small skeleton that was only 20 centimeters tall and covered in fiery red. The small skeleton looked exquisite, making Gu Huai unconsciously think of a doll in the skeleton world? It was probably something like that. It's called Red Rainbow. The skeleton gentleman slowly lowered Red Rainbow from his hands. Red Rainbow moved its head and shook its body, its empty eyes carrying a touch of light red soul fire. This is. Gu Huai once again looked his gaze over, ready to check Red Rainbow's information. This time, there was no obstacle, and Gu Huai clearly saw Red Rainbow's information. Fierce Beast, Chaotic Little Skeleton. Name, Red Rainbow. Attribute, None. Bloodline, Primary Monarch. Realm, Awakened First Stage. Skill, Immortal Body LV1, Quasi Divine Skill. Death System, Gu Huai's pupils shrunk violently when he saw this Red Rainbow's information. No attributes, Primary Monarch Bloodline, and a Quasi Divine Skill of Immortality? Gu Huai then felt outrageous. It was too much of a stretch for such a scrawny little skeleton, an existence that could be slapped to death with a casual slap, to possess a quasi-god skill. Gu Huai felt like his worldview was giving way to shattering. It was really that this red rainbow was a bit too outrageous. Bitter. Red rainbow seemed to have sensed Gu Huai's prying and let out a slightly disgruntled sound. Mr. Lee, what do you mean by that? Gu Huai somewhat didn't quite understand. Esteemed Mr. Gu, this is a gift our master has prepared for you. The skeleton gentleman bowed once more and then its tone carried a hint of reluctance. Our master said that if I see someone worth trusting, I will give Red Rainbow to him. I think you are a very worthy trustee. Red Rainbow, call daddy. Gu Huai's heart stirred as he listened to the skeleton gentleman's words in front of him, and to be honest, Gu Huai did feel a little wary of moving towards the skeleton. However, when he heard the skeleton gentleman's later words, Red Rainbow quickly called for her father. Gu Huai froze. God damn dad. Red Rainbow sniffed and skimmed its head in disdain and it could be seen that its IQ wasn't low. Ahem, Mr. Lee, I can accept Red Rainbow, but this strange title is not necessary. As you like. The skeleton gentleman didn't dwell on this piece with Gu Huai and quickly continued. In addition, you may summon your two imperial beasts to accept the gift of this secret realm. A word of advice. This secret realm's gift is a blessing from the great master, who is the god of the undead. And if there is an existence with attributes related to the undead, you can receive more benefits when receiving its gift. You can speak to me if you have any questions. The skeleton gentleman maintained his gentlemanly demeanor. The direction of his face always facing Gu Huai. Can you tell me? What is this feed mainly? Gu Huai was more curious about this. The feed can enhance the strength of your imperial beasts, as well as their bloodline. But exactly how it can be enhanced depends on you and your imperial beasts. Also, you are the one who passes the 50 levels and can get more feeds. So will you start now? The skeleton gentleman still looked at Gu Huai. Start. Gu Huai didn't hesitate anymore at that moment, and directly summoned both Lei Bao and Lei Monkey. Bao, yay. Both Lei Bao and Thunder Monkey had rested well and were in good shape. As soon as the two little guys appeared, they excitedly yelled towards Gu Huai. Good boy. Gu Huai picked up Thunder Monkey and Thunder Treasure and explained to them what was coming next, which made the two little guys even more excited. The chance to be able to make themselves stronger. They were naturally quite excited. Mr. Lee. We're ready. Then let's begin. As the skeleton gentleman's words fell, a force immediately descended from the sky, directly enveloping Thunder Monkey and Lei Bao. This power was black and belonged to the power of the undead system. However, this power did not have that kind of evil aura. It was the kind of power that was extremely pure. Under the shroud of this power, a soothing look immediately appeared on the faces of Thunder Monkey and Thunder Treasure. Ha! The skeleton gentleman was quietly watching from the side. And after seeing Thunder Monkey and Lei Bao accepting the images within this, its tone carried a touch of surprise. Red Rainbow, it seems like you'll be under pressure in the future. 
This new master that master picked for you is not simple at all. These two imperial beasts, both are quite extraordinary. Red Rainbow, who was on the side of the skeleton gentleman, just looked straight at the pure undead power, not knowing what he was thinking. Everything went smoothly. Both Thunder Monkey and Lei Bao accepted this power, which caused their bloodlines and realms to improve somewhat. First was the Thunder Monkey, Imperial Beast, Stone Monkey, Mutant Species. Name, Thunder Monkey. Attribute, Dragon plus Evil plus Thunder. Bloodline, Medium Monarch. Realm, Primary Transcendent. Skills, 8 Gates of Transportation LV33, Top Level Skill Plus. Thunder Prison Dragon Body LV33, Superlative Level Skill Plus. The Thunder Monkey's bloodline was raised from Primary Monarch to Medium Monarch. But the realm didn't change. After all, it had only just broken through to primary transcendent in a matter of days. However, this power made its realm more fulfilling, and it was one step closer to breaking through. Next was Lei Bao, Imperial Beast, Pale Blue Thunder Dragon. Name, Lei Bao. Attribute, Dragon plus Space. Bloodline, High Monarch. Realm, Medium Transcendent. Skills, Cracking Claw LV30, Super Rank, Space plus Dragon Stance. Thunder Domain Space LV24, Super Rank. Thunder plus Space. Arcana, Thunder Cracking Claw LV11, Quasi Divine Arcana. Lei Bao's bloodline and realm had been upgraded, which made the already ridiculously strong Lei Bao even more terrifying. Gu Huai estimated that with Lei Bao's current strength, even if he were to face a high commander's existence, he would have the power to fight or even defeat the opponent. Beautiful. Gu Huai watched the progress of the two little ones and a bright smile appeared. This time, the harvest from the secret realm was really good. It could shorten Gu Huai's time by quite a bit and it would allow Gu Huai to become a professional Imperial Beast Master faster. There was no professional Imperial Beast Master within the class division of Imperial Beast Masters. The Professional Beast Master was a title that was officially customized based on the situation in the Beast Master world, and it was also considered to be a mark of distinction between Beast Masters. Only when one becomes a Senior Beast Master can one apply to the Beast Center for the four times a year Professional Beast Master Examination. Professional Beast Master Examination. Four times a year. The examination was very strict and difficult, divided into two major parts, theory and actual combat, with a total of five rounds of examination. Only after passing all the tests could one become a professional beast master. Enjoying the benefits of the country and being able to freely enter and exit most of the secret realms, the prosperity of a city basically depends on how many professional beast masters are registered and staying in the city. There was also a saying that showed the status of professional beast masters. Those who were not professional beast masters could only be considered amateur beast masters. Yeah, baby. The Thunder Monkey and Thunder Treasure felt their strength being boosted and excitedly pounced towards Gu Huai. Thunder Monkey was jumping directly on Gu Huai's body, while Thunder Treasure flew to Gu Huai's shoulder and hovered. Mr. Gu, it looks like you've had a good haul. Your friends are done as well. Now I'll send you out. Red Rainbow. Bitter. Although Red Rainbow was reluctant, it obediently walked towards Gu Huai. Gu Huai didn't care about Red Rainbow's attitude. It was normal for a little guy who looked past being a newborn to have a little bit of emotion or something. As long as he treated it well, Gu Huai believed that Red Rainbow would soon be able to get along with him. However, Gu Huai thought of the last time he had a hard time convincing the old man to indenture the Thunder Monkey. And at that time, he even swore that next time he decided to listen to the old man's arrangement to indenture the little guy from Uncle Fan's family. But looking at Red Rainbow, Gu Huai could only say in his heart, I'm sorry grandpa. I'm going to misspeak again. At the same time, Gu Huai couldn't help but think of the future picture. According to his own situation, in the future, he would not get a good imperial beast every time before he advanced. In that case, I'm afraid that in the future, he would only have one dragon imperial beast like Lei Bao. Gu Huai could already imagine what kind of expression would appear on his old master and father's face when they sought his imperial beast, and they would definitely scold him for not doing his job. Alas, I'm actually helpless. Faced with a skeleton like Red Rainbow, Gu Huai was truly moved. Not to mention that he possessed the mythic rank talent Infinite Reinforcement, and contracting the Dragon Imperial Beasts that Old Master and the others had prepared in a step-by-step -step manner. Gu Huai also felt that it was meaningless. Out. Gu Huai picked up Red Rainbow with one hand. Red Rainbow slightly resisted, but she only shook and still let Gu Huai carry her. It's still a little heavy. The weight of the Red Rainbow was indeed beyond Gu Huai's imagination. Originally, Gu Huai thought that a red rainbow the size of a palm, which was all bones, would weigh less than nothing, but this weight was really sufficient. It was estimated to be more than 30 pounds. Another familiar glow enveloped the area, and Gu Huai had gotten used to it. Just when Gu Huai thought it would be the same as before, he saw from the light that the skeleton gentleman was waving at him in the light, seemingly saying goodbye. When Gu Huai saw this image, a smile unconsciously appeared on his face as well. 
lifting his hand and shaking it at the skeleton gentleman. Outside the secret realm, it had been five days since Gu Huai and the others had entered the secret realm. Although five days wasn't a long time for entering a secret realm, Gu Hong and the others had once entered a secret realm and stayed inside for more than three months before coming out. Gu Hong, who was a human father, was still worried about Gu Huai's safety. This wasn't. From the third day onwards, he would come to this place every day to wait for Gu Huai for some time, even if he was busy. Don't worry about it. This secret realms is still closed right now, which means they're still conducting the secret realms examination. Li Guoping was also in this place. Although he had three sons and two daughters, Li Bufeng was the most outstanding of all his children. Li Bufeng was also the most likely person to take over the position of the family head, so Li Guoping still attached considerable importance to this child Li Bufeng. Aha! Gu Hang absent-mindedly answered, and as Li Guoping could see Gu Hang's reaction, he couldn't help but find a topic. Old Gu, who do you think has gained more from this secret realm? That would definitely be my son. Speaking of this, Gu Hong immediately held his head high with a proud look. Seeing this look, the corner of Li Guoping's mouth twitched slightly, having known that he wouldn't have looked for this topic where he slapped himself in the face. Just then, the door blocked off at the entrance of the secret realm opened. Gu Hong and Li Guoping both couldn't help but look their gazes over, but the dark demon dragon didn't show up, remaining hidden in space, always keeping an eye on the situation at the entrance. It's coming out. Xiao Huai. Gu Hong stared unblinkingly at the entrance. As soon as he saw Gu Huai's figure, he immediately jogged over. Where was that city lord's appearance? It was properly the appearance of an old father. Old father. Gu Huai was also a bit surprised to see Gu Hong rushing over just like that, but he still responded with a smile. Everyone present knew his identity, so there was no need for Gu Huai to hide it. Not hurt, right? When he came, Gu Hong was still able to maintain his image as a city lord and didn't talk to Gu Huai much. But now, because he was worried about Gu Huai, he couldn't care less. Nope. This was the first time Gu Huai had seen his old man in this state, and he was somewhat touched. It's good if there isn't. Gu Hang breathed a sigh of relief. Looking at Gu Huai's appearance it really didn't look like he was injured. It was then that Gu Hong realized that countless gazes had fallen on him. All of them were juniors, which made Gu Hang's face a little embarrassed and slightly red. The eyes of the crowd looking at Gu Hong and Gu Huai were filled with envy. Of those of them present, only Gua Justice was an only child, but Gua Justice's old man was of the strict type, and Gua Justice probably didn't even feel much of such a father's love. Only a father's love like a mountain. The rest of the people, there are siblings in the family, but also in the extended family. In the big family, the flavor of affection was originally a little more faint. Just like Wang Chong, although he was the son of the Wang family's head and the most outstanding existence of this lineage, but his father didn't just have one wife. All told, there were four women who gave birth to his old man's children. Ho Min's and their situation wasn't much different. Like the Gu family, a single lineage was really rare amongst the big families. Ahem, since everyone is fine, let's all go back. After returning to Hang City, Gu Huai parted ways with them as well. Instead of going to the city lord's mansion, Gu Hong followed Gu Huai home, and there were still a lot of things he wanted to ask Gu Huai in his mind. For example, the little red skeleton in Gu Huai's arms. He had wanted to ask it when he first saw Gu Huai, only that he couldn't speak up because there were too many people. Pops, it's called Red Rainbow. Red Rainbow, say hello to Pops. When he returned home, Gu Huai made the first move. Bitter, Red Rainbow disdainfully bristled. Greeting or something, it wouldn't do it. It was so boring. Red rainbow? Gu Hong frowned, his eyes looking at Gu Huai suspiciously. Your kid's third imperial beast wouldn't be trying to contract this little skeleton, right? Pops is wise. Nonsense. Pops, take a look at red rainbow's panel first. Gu Huai's tone carried confidence. Even if this little skeleton is as good as it is, there's no way I'll agree to you contracting it. The old master and I have already paved the way for you. Not to mention that we are a royal dragon family. You keep getting some non-dragon royal beasts like this. Crap. Monarch bloodline? Quasi-god technique? Gu Hang's mouth recited the words, but when he saw Red Rainbow's panel, he burst out. I'm absolutely fucking bleary-eyed, aren't I? Gu Hong hastily rubbed his eyes and fixed his gaze once again. Fierce beast, chaotic little skeleton. Name, Red Rainbow. Attribute, none. Bloodline, primary monarch. Realm, awakening first stage. Skill, immortal body LV1, quasi-god skill. Death system, really a quasi-god skill? and it's a fucking immortal body? This guy is a bit outrageous. Gu Hong read the panel and felt his three views explode a little. There was no way around it. It was really Red Rainbow's panel that was too frightening. A quasi-god skill was the mark of an overlord bloodline royal beast. If a normal monarch-class royal beast wanted to advance to overlord strength, 
It would also have to get a quasi-divine AoE that started at LV11 level by fusing its skills together before it could break through to the overlord realm. Of Gu Hang's current five imperial beasts, only the three imperial beasts that the baby dragon had evolved had fused out quasi-divine Upanishads, and all of them had broken through to above LV11 level. Only this one of his had taken a lot of effort to do so, but now this pomsize little skeleton actually possessed a quasi-god technique straight away? This was simply. Gu Hong was a bit at a loss for what to say. No wonder Gu Huai would have his heart set on this little skeleton. Truly, if it was him, he would also be interested in this little skeleton and treat it as his sixth imperial beast. Pops, what do you think of this skeleton? Gu Huai heatedly smiled and asked knowingly. Gu Hong couldn't help but give Gu Huai a blank look. This brat, really had an itchy skin. Just make up your own mind. But the old master and old fan and their family have already discussed it. This time, because of you, it's already been pushed back once. This time, if it's going to be trouble, you figure out a way to talk to the old master yourself. Okay. When Gu Huai heard this, he also had a bit of a headache. Old Fan, also known as Uncle Fan, who Gu Huai had a headache earlier, was known by his full name, Fan Rue. Fan Rue was a loose cannon, but had once received help from the old master and owed the old master a favor. It just so happened that Fan Rue accidentally obtained a precious dragon imperial beast in a secret realm, and it just so happened that it had recently given birth to a cub during this period of time. So the old master searched for it and secured the cub for Gu Huai. In order to repay the favor, Fan Rue directly rejected everyone and agreed to the old master's request to prepare this cub specifically for Gu Huai. Gu Huai had put it off once before because of the thunder monkey, and now if he pushed it off once more, he would have to wait for Gu Huai to advance to senior imperial beast master. For an intermediate beast master, Gu Huai would have no problem spending half a year, and Fan Rue would be able to wait. But if he was a senior beast master, it would take a year or two and that would be a bit too long. With such a long time, we can only let the old master push it. Gu Huai could already imagine the old master's anger, but what could he do? Have Red Rainbow wait for another year or two for himself to reach senior imperial beast master before contracting? This time would be a bit too long, and a lot of uncertainties would happen in the middle, as well as delaying Red Rainbow's development. After thinking about it, one would have to choose Red Rainbow. Evening. Much like what Gu Huai thought, the old man was particularly angry. Only the old master still loved Gu Huai very much, and after knowing Gu Huai's decision, he asked Gu Huai's opinion very seriously before saying to him, he would solve Fan Rue's side, but Fan Rue's dragon cub would not get it. At the same time, the old man warned Gu Huai. He had already searched for the fourth imperial beast and told Gu Huai not to mess around. Grandpa, this I really can't quite guarantee. Gu Huai smiled bitterly, he really wasn't very good at guaranteeing it right now. After all, when the time came to make such a mess again, the old master, even if he was in love with him, would probably rush back from the ten direction seas and smack him hard. The old master was silent for a while before he said in a serious tone, Little Huaya, the reason why your father and I are where we are now, besides our talent and family, there is also the fact that each of our imperial beasts has been chosen by the thousands and selected from countless species to be the most suitable for us. We can all work out the most perfect growth path based on these imperial beasts to help us become the topmost imperial beast masters. Every good. Excellent breed is something that needs to be spoken to in advance. Just like Fan Rue's cubs, the old master paused when he said this, knowing that Gu Huai had heard him. Gu Huai was also silent for a while before slowly saying, Grandpa, I know that you and father are doing this for my own good, paving the way for my future in the hope that I'll be able to take less crooked paths, but I'm not following your roots anymore. Just like Lei Bao, it has already stepped out on a path that is entirely its own. No one knows what its future holds. The same goes for Thunder Monkey. They're both special, unique existences. I mean, well, even if I fail, big deal. I'll get married early and give you a great grandchild. Anyway, you're well so young, and you can still protect the safety of our Gu family. Gu Huai's turn of phrase directly caused Guan, who was listening attentively to Gu Huai, to freeze, and then Guan couldn't help but laugh out loud. You brat. Gu Huai laughed nervously. He knew that the old man had sort of agreed with his idea. All right, since your brat has this kind of realization, then if I don't fulfill you, it would seem like the old man is being unkind. But this is what you said. If you fail, get married and have babies with Jing Jing earlier. It just so happens that old man I'm still young and can still wait until he grows up. Good Lu. Gu Huai hurriedly agreed, while a stunningly beautiful figure unconsciously surfaced in his mind. Jing Jing, full name Gao Xiao Jing. It was the dragon protectoress that Guan had specially chosen for Gu Huai, and was the pearl of the Gao family in Jinghai. As for the relationship between Gu Huai and Gao Xiaojing, it was naturally considered relatively close. After finalizing the relationship of the dragon protector girl, 
Gao Xiaojing was sent by the Gao family to take care of Gu Huai. Gao Xiaojing was three years older than Gu Huai and was a sophomore at the Imperial Capital University. As for why Gao Xiaojing wasn't at Hanzhou University, that one was a rule of the Gu family. The Dragon Protector girl couldn't study at Hangcheng University. As for the reason, it was also very simple. It is afraid that the two are too young, cannot control, rub fire, thus delaying the most valuable years of the Imperial Beast Master. Young people, dry fire, it is indeed very easy to lose their minds. These few years were meant to allow both Gu Huai and Gao Xiaojing to calm each other down. The Dragon Lady and Gu Huai don't necessarily want to get married. The Dragon Protectoress, in a fundamental sense, needed a young girl who was older than Gu Huai and had great talent, to train her up and put her in charge of protecting Gu Huai's safety. It was only that there were quite a few Dragon Protectoresses who would take marriage as a way to further their protection. This point had been made clear to Gao Xiaojing when she became a Dragon Protectoress. The old man chatted with Gu Huai for a few more moments before hanging up the phone. Phew, Gu Huai couldn't help but exhale as well. It was finally settled. The old master also said that he wouldn't even actively meddle in Gu Huai's new imperial beasts in the future. However, there was a wagering condition in it, and that was that Gu Huai would have to successfully pass the professional imperial beast master's examination on his own power in the first semester of his freshman year of becoming a freshman. Becoming a professional imperial beast master in a year and a half at most is somewhat difficult, but it's acceptable. Gu Huai knew how long it took the old master and the old dad to become professional imperial beast masters, as well as their growth paths. Old master had spent half a year becoming a primary royal beast master, and after that, he had spent more than four months becoming an intermediate royal beast master. After becoming an intermediate imperial beast master, the speed slowed down relatively, and the old master himself didn't rush the speed, but instead, he was constantly polishing his foundation. The time he became a senior imperial beast master was half a year later in the light of day. As for passing the professional imperial beast master's examination, it was within two months after becoming a senior imperial beast master. All told, it was about a year and a half, and at that time, the old man was also near the end of the first semester of his freshman year. In fact, the old master's speed in the early part of the year really wasn't that fast compared to some geniuses, and even in the college entrance exam, the old masters wasn't even shortlisted as the top scholar in Hangzhou. The old master had played steadily all the way. The speed in the early stage has not been fast, but it is a steady stroke. The battle power in the same realm has always been invincible and even able to easily cross the level of the battle. After arriving at senior imperial beast master, the old man's speed did not slow down. When the fastest batch in the realm, more than a month some became primary royal beast masters, more than five months intermediate royal beasts, and a year senior royal beast masters, but the time it took for them to become master imperial beast masters was, on the contrary, not as long as the old master. The old master became a master imperial beast master in the first semester of his junior year, while these ones who were ahead of the old master at the beginning, they only became master imperial beasts one after another in their senior year. Now, the old master had even left all of these people behind, becoming the topmost fighting force in Donghuang country. The few that were about the same strength as the old master could be existences that were a generation older than the old master. In fact, the lifespan of a royal beast master was not low, and when it came to a legendary royal beast master, as long as he or she didn't die, living for 200 years was a very easy thing to do. Some with long lives could even live to 300. Red Rainbow, follow me and work hard together. Bitter. Red Rainbow skimmed her lips and twisted her head to the side. Gu Huai touched Red Rainbow's head and smiled brightly. For the next period of time, everything was peaceful and nothing major happened. Gu Huai also used the power of the family to find Lei Bao and the others a few places suitable for them to exercise, and also called for a specialized private tutor and training team to specifically target their training. Time flew by, and soon, a new semester was ushered in. August 31st, Hangcheng First Middle School, this year's Hangzhou No. One middle school had produced such a person as Gu Huai, which made the executives of Hangzhou No. One middle school riveted and started digging around. The purpose was obvious. It was to increase the advancement rate of Hangzhou No. One middle school, in the first and second year of high school, because the students hadn't started to awaken. The teachers didn't know how talented these students were. The first of June allowed everyone to undergo awakening and contract imperial beasts. And it went through almost three months just to see which ones were suitable to become imperial beast masters and which ones weren't. All the major high schools, I should say good high schools would start digging around in this place even organizing entrance exams, in order to recruit more excellent students to their schools, and to increase the school's advancement rate and the probability of getting into a good university. Hangzhou No. 1 High School, as the leader of Hangzhou, and even one of the best high schools in the entire Hangzhou province, 
was naturally extremely famous. Coupled with this competition between Hang Province and Mountain Province, Hangcheng No. 1 Middle School was even more fiercely famous for once. Gu Huai, a student of Hangcheng First High School, directly took the first place in the competition organized by the two provinces, and deserved the first place. On top of that, there were also outstanding students such as Guo Jingyi, Liao Jinxian, and Chen Hongji, all of whom also received good rankings. Under such circumstances, this enrollment for Hangzhou First Middle School can be said to be a bumper harvest, not to mention the special enrollment of a large number of top students. Even the freshman test on August 31st came with a large number of people. Boss, all these people seem to be here for you. Gu Huai, who was the protagonist of this fiasco, was on top of the rooftop of the school with Guo Zhang and Wang Chong. Gu Huai's identity had been exposed, or rather, the higher-ups of the school knew about it. When Gu Huai had gotten first place in the first place, Gu Huai had had a showdown with the school leaders in order to avoid more unnecessary trouble. At the same time, he also asked them not to expose his information. The school executives were shocked to learn that Gu Huai was actually the youngest master of the Gu family, but they were all overjoyed. This was heavenly good news. Next, they began to lay out their plans. But of course, in order not to offend Gu Huai, they were still very careful, and didn't dare to let Gu Huai show his face, nor did they dare to disturb him, but only advertised with Gu Huai's name. Gu Huai looked at the newbie imperial beast masters below who were participating in the entrance examination, shook his head slightly, and didn't say anything more. Boss, you're not going to stay at the school after it starts? Wang Chong naturally transferred over as well, hugging Gu Huai's thigh tightly. Yeah, there's nothing left to learn inside the school, so it's better to go out and travel outside for a while to improve my experience as well. Gu Huai had long been prepared. He came to the school today just to say hello to them, and by the way, to say hello to MS. Deng Hong as well. There was also the fact that today was the first day of the pointy class assembly, and he himself had to give the teacher face. Wang Chong and Guo Jingjing's eyes were filled with envy when they looked at Gu Huai. It could be seen that they actually wanted to travel as much as Gu Huai did, to see this colorful world. Travel training was a very common training method, only it was something that only those college students from top universities were qualified to do. After all, traveling training, sleeping outside all day, is very dangerous. Every year, there were quite a few college students who had crashed into travel training. Although the two of them had made some progress from when they entered the secret realm and their strength wasn't bad, there was still a considerable distance from wanting to travel outside. It's almost time, the top class is going to gather. Let's go over there and give the teacher some face. Gu Huai heard the bell for assembly. The official start of school was September 1st, but as a top class, it started a day earlier than the regular students. Aha, Wang Chong and Guo Zhengyi nodded. With their families, it was true that they could not put the school's teachers in their eyes, but they both had good family teachings and still respected the teachers, provided that the other party was worthy of making them respect them. The top class. It was a specialty of almost every high school, and it was especially true of powerful high schools. Stepping into the pointy class, Gu Huai realized that there were quite a few familiar faces inside. Gu Huai is here. As soon as Gu Huai stepped into the classroom, I don't know who yelled, and the originally noisy classroom instantly quieted down. Countless gazes landed on Gu Huai in unison, with different eyes. You're Gu Huai. Front row. There was a burly, anxious-looking teenager who stood up from his position, gazing at Gu Huai. The teenager was really burly. A height of 2 meters one not to mention, just that body type, and a small mountain in general. Just standing in front of a person gave a great pressure. You are? Under the gaze of the teenager who was as burly as a large mountain, Gu Huai asked in a cloudy manner. Cam Mountain Shan Yi. Shanya's voice was extremely loud and middle heavy, and his voice directly echoed in the classroom. I see. Gu Huai answered very much to Shanya's face, smiled at Shan Yi, and prepared to walk past him. I heard that you're the first place winner of this two province rookie competition, but Shan Yi didn't seem to let Gu Huai pass like that, and instead directly blocked Gu Huai's path forward. Hmm. Gu Huai looked up at Shan Yi. It just so happens that I had something delayed this time and didn't participate in the competition. That or this first place would definitely be mine. I also came to Hangzhou No. 1 this time to defeat you and reclaim the title of No. 1 in Hangzhou province. And then, Gu Huai found it interesting. He didn't expect that he would come across a scene from a novel. It was quite interesting. And then, Shan Yi froze. He's already said this and you're asking then? Jean Jean. Just then, a familiar voice rang out. After Yamano subconsciously replied oh, his body unconsciously moved to the side. A figure went straight through. And when it passed Shan Yi, the figure turned back and grinned at Gu Huai. Gu Huai, long time no see. It has indeed been a long time. Gu Huai knew who the visitor was the moment he heard the voice. 
It was none other than Yi Fan. After the secret realm ended last time, Yi Fan left Hangzhou City after saying goodbye to Gu Huai. During that time, he did contact Gu Huai once, but it was just a simple chat, and Yi Fan also said that he would come to Hangqing No, one middle school to look for Gu Huai. This guy really came. Shan Yi also reacted at this time, he somewhat did not understand why he had to avoid just now. His face was dark. You kid. The smile on Yi Fan's face closed up, his eyes became ice cold, and all of a sudden, Shan Yi felt the feeling that he seemed to be targeted by a poisonous snake. It seemed that as long as he continued to talk big, this kid would strike without any mercy. This made Shan Yi instantly honest, his gaze vigilant as he looked at Yi Fan. Let's go. I haven't seen you for a long time. It's good to catch up. But soon, Yi Fan's icy eyes returned to normal, as if everything just now was an illusion. Good. Gu Huai didn't care about this at all and followed with a smile. Wang Chong and Guo Zhengi, on the other hand, were tisk 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 tisk. Wang Chong, this stupid big man is not quite right in the head, is he? I guess so. This IQ is worse than even you. What did you say? What do you mean it's worse than my brain? It's very obvious literally. Wang Chong and Guo Zhengi once again tossed words. You two brats, I think you don't want to live. Shan Yi just watched as Yi Fan and Gu Huai passed by feeling as if his face was being rubbed on the ground, but the threat Yi Fan brought was too great, which made him extremely afraid to say anything more. Now that Wang Chong and Gu Justice had directly hit the bull's eye, he couldn't tolerate it this time. What's more, Shan Yi was originally the kind of person who was arrogant to the extreme in their city. At that moment, Shan Yi made a direct move. Of course, Shan Yi still had some sense and didn't summon the Imperial Beast. In the laws of Donghuang Kingdom, it was clearly stated that it was strictly forbidden to summon imperial beasts to fight in non-combat areas within the city. This was a very strict rule, and even the arrogant Yamano did not dare to violate it. However, he was the possessor of the merchant's talent, and his physical quality was extremely high. In his opinion, educating two small macacas was still very much a non-issue. Shan Yi directly blasted out with a punch. Although Guo Zhengyi and Wang Chong were mocking Shan Yi with their mouths, the two of them were not the least bit careless. They knew that there wasn't a simple guy who could enter this top class. A junior imperial beast master was the standard for entering this pointed class. What a strong power. Of course Wang Chong and Gui Justice were naturally not vegetarians. Both of them were not the type of people who only exercised their royal beasts. Especially Gui Justice. The way his old man treated him during this period of time. Gui Justice was somewhat skeptical if he was his own. Too ruthless. Really training to death. According to his old man's words. Although they weren't merged gifted imperial beast masters, if they wanted to survive in this crisis-ridden world, if they wanted to keep up with the Gu family, they had to do everything possible to improve their strength. The strength of the imperial beasts had to be improved, as well as their own strength. That's why Gu Justice's progress this summer vacation could really be described as a leap. This progress was not only the progress of the imperial beasts, but also himself. Just in time, Gu Justice's eyes lit up and he also blasted out with a punch. Gu Justice was a small fatty before. Standing at 1 meter 8 and a half and weighing in at 180 pounds. During this period of exercise, his height had increased by 2 centimeters. And the most important thing was that his original fat was transformed into muscle. And he looked like he had a strong and powerful feeling. When he first came to school, those classmates were a little afraid to recognize Guo Jingxing when they saw his appearance. Of course, in front of Shan Ye's figure, which was like that of a small giant, he appeared a bit fragile. Only, fighting was never about size. Shani looked at Gua Justice who actually dared to fight towards and against himself, which caused a cruel color to appear on his face. If Guo Jingyi had wimped out and retreated backwards, he would have at most been able to teach the other party a lesson. But now the other party even dared to fight with himself. Wasn't this asking for trouble? Bang! The two fists collided together. The expected scene did not appear. Yamano's pupils shrunk, with an unbelievable gaze in his eyes. He had only gained a slight upper hand in this punch. Could it be that this teenager in front of him was also the possessor of the merchant's talent? This instantly made Shan Ye's eyes become heavy. Pops was right. Hang Cheng no. One middle school really did have hidden tigers and dragons. Not bad. Guo Jingyi was in pain. But his face wore a color of excitement. It was finally his turn to act tough. Feeling the surprise on the faces of those students around him. Guo Zhengwa couldn't tell you how good he felt. Teacher is here. Just as Guo Justice and Shan Ye were about to continue sparring. I don't know who said it and the two of them stopped what they were doing. Guo Jingyi hurriedly found a seat and sat down, and Shan Yi still had that arrogant look. The class also quieted down quite a bit in this instant. Gu Huai also turned his gaze to this teacher. Do not recognize. Looks like another teacher from outside. The classroom is quite lively. The teacher was a young man who looked like he had just graduated from college not long ago, 
and the young man's face wore a playful smile. Well, I'm not too lazy to pursue what happened just now. Only from now on. In the future, if you guys have conflicts, just call me and I'll arrange for you to have a royal beast stool to resolve your conflicts. Whoever wins, is right. After the teacher finished saying this, he didn't care if the crowd listened to him or not, and directly turned around and wrote down his information on the blackboard. My surname is Gong. You guys can call me Teacher Gong. Of course if it's a female student it's no problem to call me Old Gong. I don't mind. Mr. Gong made a small joke, making the atmosphere of the class a lot better as well. This is my contact information. You all write it down. You should all use it. All right. I won't bullshit you guys in the first class. Let's go straight to the ring. Everyone use the Imperial Beasts to get to know each other. Let's go. Teacher Gong thundered and turned around. Extremely dashing. His teaching style also made Gu Huai find it somewhat interesting. The top class of Hangzhou No. One middle school was filled with geniuses from all over the world. And there were quite a few pricks. If Mr. Gong were to directly blah 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 in the classroom, I'm afraid not many people would listen carefully. In that case, it would be better to directly pull everyone to the ring and use the Imperial Beasts to get to know each other. As well as establish the prestige of a good teacher. Gu Huai quickly understood Mr. Gong's idea as well. It had to be said that there was indeed a hand. Looking at teacher Gong's figure, the students looked at each other in disbelief. It was clear that none of them had ever seen such a teaching style. Boss, let's keep up. Gu Huai smiled and got up. Anyway, he was only here for half a day. So it was better to give the teacher some face. If you should cooperate later, you should cooperate. As Gu Huai got up, quite a few people who knew Gu Huai also took him as their backbone and followed. Other than that, there were quite a few acquaintances. Gua Zhengyi, Wang Chong, and Yi Fan were the first to be mentioned. There were also the original two old classmates, Liao Jinxian and Chen Hongji, the two from Hongzhou No, two middle school, by Ruachu and Lin Yi. There were also several people who had participated in the tournament with Gu Huai. These people Gu Huai didn't know very well. He only remembered that girl with a high ponytail, Yao Yi Yi. She seemed to have made it into the top eight. The rest were just familiar. The top class practiced superior education. And the minimum requirement to get in was to become a junior beast master. So the number of students in the class wasn't very high. There were only 24 of them. Those that Gu Huai recognized and was familiar with occupied more than half of them. With so many people following Gu Huai, the remaining 10 or so could only follow. Kid, do you have the guts to fight later? Shan Yi looked at Guo Jingyi, who was farting around behind Gu Huai, and also hurriedly ran over and arrogantly said to Guo Jingyi, according to Shan Yi's thoughts, he would first educate this Gua justice before finding trouble with Gu Huai. Even in this crouching tiger hidden dragon Hang Chang No, one middle school, he, Shan Yi, would be the prettiest boy. Gua justice skimmed his head, raised his head, and looked at Shan Yi with his nostrils, a disdainful face. What class are you, worthy of fighting me? Shan Yi was instantly confused. How did this person talk? I'm the top 16 of the two provinces newcomer competition. You're a little trash worthy? Guo Jingyi only felt a sense of relief after saying this. When he was in his first year of high school, he had watched a TV series in which there was a big brother who pretended to be a bully in this way. At that time, Gui Justice had fantasized about when he would be able to speak arrogantly like this for once. Unfortunately, he never had the chance. This was not it. Just now he felt that it was a heavenly opportunity. So he pressed on without any hesitation and blah 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 blah. Alas. The lines just now are actually still a bit not very good. It should be straightforward what grade you are worthy of fighting with me. So that's fine. Still too young and unskilled. Gua Justice followed up with light footsteps. Gua Justice's voice wasn't small. After all, when saying such words, it still needed a bit of momentum. So Gu Huai and the others heard it. And the corners of Gu Huai's mouth were even slightly twitching. This guy. Gu Huai sighed helplessly. But he knew Gua Justice's character. So he naturally understood that Gua Justice was saying it for fun and simply felt that it was cool to say this line. But the rest of the people who didn't know Gua Justice would feel that Gua Justice was pretending. Especially Yamano, who had just come back to his senses from his state of confusion. He only felt insulted and his anger and blood surged. Damn it, no one had ever dared to talk to him like that. You seek death. Shan Yi directly stormed out, roaring angrily as he directly killed towards Guo Zhang. But before Shan Yi could make any moves, the eyes of Teacher Gong, who was walking at the front, suddenly lit up. Good chance. Teacher Gong's feet moved and his figure flashed. Just a second before both Gu Huai and Yi Fan were ready to step in to block Shan Ye's attack. Teacher Gong arrived on the scene. Teacher Gong very pretentiously raised one finger and blocked Shan Ye's huge fist. What I said earlier. Have you forgotten? So cool. Mr. Gong was refreshed. 
pretending. I'm afraid there aren't many people who don't like it. You, being blocked by Mr. Gong's attack, Yamano became even angrier. But no matter how he moved, he couldn't break through Mr. Gong's fingers. This also made Yamano gradually calm down. He knew that the gap between himself and Mr. Gong, Teacher Gong, get out of the way. I will make this punk pay. Yamano's tone also smoothed out. Although he was arrogant, the person was not stupid. This place was not their mountain city, and his old man's hand could not reach out to this place. But despite his words, he didn't have the slightest respect for Teacher Gong. Looks like I'll have to teach you how to honor your teacher. Mr. Gong's tone was a bit excited, and it was obvious that he had looked forward to this image. After Mr. Gong's words were finished, Yamano felt a force that he was simply powerless to resist coming from Mr. Gong's fingers, and right after that Yamano felt like a toy as he was pushed right out and fell to the ground. Teacher Gong, on the other hand, reached him and looked at him condescendingly. This is the elite class of Hangcheng First Middle School. From now on, follow my rules or else there will be serious consequences unless you possess the strength to defeat me. All right, get up. Since you want to fight, we'll arrange for you to fight that kid first later. Remember, never let anger fill your brain. That would be an extremely unwise choice, especially when it comes to the wilderness. When Mr. Gong said the word wilderness, Gu Huai clearly felt Mr. Gong's body tremble slightly, and he could tell that he was the one with the story. All right, keep up. Next time, if anyone does it in private, I'll simply expel you from the elite class. After finishing his words, Teacher Gong turned around and walked forward once again. This time, the students were a lot more convinced of Teacher Gong. In the Imperial Beast Realm, strength was honored. Although Teacher Gong did not show his full strength just now, his strength was still recognized by everyone. Only no one knew that Teacher Gong was suffering in his heart. Marred, this kid's strength is too terrifying. If it wasn't for the fact that my body is also good, I would have had to turn over in the gutter just now. Teacher Gong shook his fingers without any trace of pain. Worthy of being called a human-sized ferocious beast's talent, it was just outrageous. Teacher Gong's mind also unconsciously floated out information about Shan Yi. Shan Yi, the former N01 ranked student of Mountain City No. 1 Middle School, strength primary imperial beast master, possesses two imperial beasts. The first one is a medium transcendent iron wall giant ape, and the other is an awakened eighth order mountain giant. Strength is extraordinary. The other one, Wei Justice was originally a student of Hangcheng First Middle School, the top 16 of this session of the two provinces newcomer competition, the exact strength is unknown, was promoted indirectly from the students, there was no need to register the information and conduct a small examination like Shan Yi and the others, however, it was written on the information that there was a jade fist stone, and the strength should be up to transcendent, worthy of being Hangcheng First Middle School's elite class, this number of geniuses is indeed quite a lot, this one has only just started school, and all of them are primary imperial beast masters, even if it's compared to the me that was once there. Mr. Gong was once a student of Hangzhou First Middle School's elite class as well. That or he wouldn't have run to be the teacher of the elite class. Data bug. Wait to carefully observe the information of these people and make a record. Mr. Gong this time is but very serious. In the years, there was a small miniature bug, which was his second imperial beast. The data bug. Data bug. The actual combat ability is not strong. The specific ability was that it could observe the battle situation through the pair of eyes that could analyze the situation of the ferocious beasts, connect the relationship between the imperial beasts and the imperial masters, and create a big net for command. It was also because of the data bug that he was qualified to serve as the class teacher of this elite class. Soon enough, they arrived at the ring. The ring place of Hangcheng First Middle School was still very good. This place was temporarily empty. After all, the first and second year senior students hadn't become imperial beast masters yet. So naturally, they didn't need to come to this place to spar. The official start of school for the senior students was again tomorrow, and today only their elite class started a day earlier. You two go on. Watch your step. Battle injuries were inevitable. That's why he had applied for a specialized medic last night, who was responsible for the safety of these students and their imperial beasts, in case any accidents did occur. Having these medics around would also better ensure everyone's safety issues. Good. Gui Jingyi answered his gaze looking provocatively at Shan Yi. Shan Yi snorted coldly, he definitely wouldn't let Gui Justice feel good. I'll be the referee later. Point blank. As Teacher Gong spoke, his person also arrived at the referee area of the ring. At the same time, he casually waved his hand, and the imperial beast that belonged to him also appeared in front of everyone's eyes. It was a wolf that was more than three meters tall. The color of its appearance was dominated by dark gray, and its face was hideous, giving off a murderous aura. Spectral Underwolf, 
a Lord Bloodline Imperial Beast, it seems that this teacher Gong's strength isn't weak, right? It just so happens that I can probe the information of this spectral underwolf. Just take a look. Normally, it was basically unlikely to want to see the information of a royal beast that was stronger than oneself. Not to mention that most people would choose to cover up the information of their own imperial beasts. Imperial beast, ghostly underwolf. Attribute, water plus dark. Bloodline, medium lord. Strength, primary lord. Skills, water body, middle level. Concealment, high level. Spectral underwolf claw, high level. Soon. As Gu Huai probed, the information of this spectral underwolf was clearly imprinted into Gu Huai's eyes. Sure enough, it's a Lord Stage Imperial Beast, and there are quite a few skills, as many as seven. Gu Huai wasn't the least bit surprised that the spectral underwolf possessed so many skills. In the early stages, it was mainly a matter of specializing in one or two skills, which would accelerate the growth of the Imperial Beast, improve its ability to fight in actual combat, and even promote its evolution. However, when it became difficult to increase their strength, these Imperial Beast Masters would learn some new skills for them in order to increase their survivability, as well as to cope with different kinds of battles.